The story begins with the fact that one day foreigners invaded the city of Luncheon. Giant airships began to dominate the sky above the city. There were several dozen of them and they were of different sizes. Mankind began to use steel machines to defend themselves against attackers. Over the years among the people, elite warriors began to stand out. At first they did well against the monsters, but over time things got worse and they had to use fists, daggers, and even teeth. The chances of victory were falling rapidly. There were a lot of monsters and they were rushing into this world with a very rapid pressure. Very soon the main symbol of the city was destroyed by monsters. The very high tower began to fall. The land turned into solid ruins. Before the eyes of our hero, the magnificent city of Longchen was destroyed and the meteor shower, which came right after that, leveled everything to the ground. The name of our hero is Meng Chao. He was lucky because he was reborn in the past before these terrible events happened. After the revival, he noticed that he had a spark and clearly knew his mission. He climbed to the roof of a tall building and, looking at the panorama of the city, swore to the death to protect these lands. He will never again allow the main symbol of the city of Longchong, the majestic tower, to be destroyed. Several years have passed, and monsters have come to this land to cause suffering to people again. Elite warriors began to lose battle after battle, and increasingly fled the battlefield. Soon the city was completely overrun by monsters, and the remains of people hid under the rubble, hoping that the monsters would not find them. Monsters again en masse began to attack the main tower of the city. This time, humanity held the defense of the tower for much longer, but still, the monsters surrounded it from all sides, and it began to fall. And at this time, the warrior Meng Chao at the foot of the falling tower is alone fighting an army of giant monsters. With each monster killed, it becomes more and more difficult for him to continue fighting, because the next monsters are stronger than the previous ones. But he still manages to destroy another huge monster. However, immediately after that, a stone monster appeared out of nowhere and very quickly reached out and wanted to catch him. And he succeeded. He squeezed Meng Chao with immense force and would have gladly crushed him, but he failed. The whole time he was being held in the hand, he felt great pain. When this stone monster realized that he could not crush him, he threw him to the ground with all his might. A few seconds passed and he got up from that pit. He had many big wounds, but he still felt the strength to keep fighting. Clenching his teeth and threw streams of blood on his face, he went on the attack. In the end, he managed to destroy one of the main giant monsters who was in charge of part of the monster army. But suddenly some tentacles began to appear from the large wounds of the already dead monster, and in one moment they began to fly rapidly towards the warrior who defeated this monster. They overtook him at breakneck speed and wounded him in various parts of his body. He thought these words, Mom and Dad, I tried. After such injuries, he could no longer fight, and the other monsters watched with pleasure as the light of life was extinguished in his eyes. The meteor shower has begun again and will destroy everything that remains. Then the events continue in the lesson, where the teacher emotionally encourages the students to look at him. He tells them that they will miss important information about the appearance of monsters. Meng Chao was suddenly awakened by a loud noise. He was completely confused. His classmate came back and asked in surprise, did he sleep in class? And he did not seem to hear anyone, looked at his hands and could not understand where he was. There was one question in his mind. Is he dead? Then he notices an inscription on the board that the final exam is in 50 days. It finally dawned on him that he was not dead, that he was reincarnated while preparing for the exam. He also immediately realized that he would not want to take the exam again and would rather die. While he was figuring out what happened to him, the teacher was looking at him and made a remark to him. When Teacher Yang spoke to him, he jumped up in surprise and said, Are you still alive? This phrase shocked everyone. All the students were surprised the teacher still could not understand what was happening to him. His friend noticed that he was definitely the most abnormal of the sixth grade and added that after such a prank, he would bury him with honors. The teacher was very angry. He told the student Meng Chao to explain why he behaved like that. From the expression on the teacher's face, Meng Chao knew that he needed to fix the situation quickly. He quickly straightened up and began to bow to Teacher Yan, 
and began to tell that he had just had a very terrible dream. Bowing his head, he said that, in his dream, monsters from other worlds invaded Lanchon, and everything collapsed in an instant. And Teacher Yon was a respectable warrior in a dream, but he died. The teacher was interested in such a story, because it partially resonates with the topic of the lesson. Meng Chao remembered the terrifying moment when a giant worm with a huge mouth crawled out in front of the teacher. He went on to say that his death was painless, although he himself believed that being torn to pieces was certainly not completely painless. These details made the teacher even more angry. He could not understand how the magnificent city of Longshin could be destroyed. In his opinion, it was simply impossible. The teacher decided to give him a command and told him to go to the wall, but he had to keep his head and pelvis up and his chest straight. A somewhat confused student asks the teacher if he can hold on to the wall. The teacher walks between the rows and asks Meng Chao when Long Chen went to another world 50 years ago and there was a zombie epidemic, did Long Chen fall then? And after the zombies, the fog descended to the ground and monsters appeared. They lost a third of their population and went through terrible torments, but still, inch by inch, they reclaimed the territory from the clutches of the monsters. The teacher approached Meng Chao and asked him loudly if Long Chen had given up in those situations. A somewhat frightened Meng Chao clearly replied that they had not surrendered and the city had not been destroyed. Teacher Yang told all the students that Long Chen's army is deadly, and some foreign creatures cannot destroy the city. After these words, the students supported the teacher they really liked the story about the exploits of the past. The high school student also added that it is necessary to study well in order to contribute to the future of the city and continue its development, and don't listen to those who sleep in class. And all the students began to shout that Lunchon would win and that humanity would win. And after the elder's speech, everyone began to look at Meng Chao through anger. The group of girls began to praise the elder for his wisdom and spoke very poorly of Meng Chao. Meng Chao listened to all this and wondered why the elder was accusing him like that, but then he remembered that they were enemies. He recalled that in a past life he missed the final exam precisely because a high school student hit him, which damaged his internal organs. Also, when Lunchen entered the battle with the Netherworld, that elder turned traitor and went over to the enemy's side. He told them not to kill him and he would tell them everything. Meng Chao suddenly began to approach the elder. He actually had some kind of plan. The elder noticed that he had an interesting expression on his face, wondering what he wanted to say. Meng Chao began to praise the elder for his words of wisdom and also began to thank Teacher Yang. From now on, he will stand firm and improve to glorify Longchen City before the dark world. The teacher himself was surprised by such a sudden change, but told him that if he wanted to be normal, he could. After that, he was given the task of demonstrating a dragon strike. He was, of course, embarrassed, but immediately agreed to carry out the order. His partner noticed that Meng Chao was being somewhat irresponsible with the punishment, because this technique is quite difficult and he was not even upset. The lying dragon strike is not difficult at all for him, but in his previous life he had not used it at all and simply forgot where to start. His classmates started mocking him. They couldn't wait to embarrass him. They think he's bragging that he's not struggling, but he's actually failing. They began to recommend that he ask for pardon. The elder also couldn't wait for him to fail, and in that situation he would further establish himself as an elder. He prepared himself and began to perform preparatory actions. From the outside it looked quite spectacular, although the reception had not even started yet. Within seconds he performed this technique. It was super effective and mesmerizing. After it hit, the airwave caused the tool on the window to move. Not bad, actually. Teacher Yang couldn't hide the surprise on his face. He was very surprised. His classmates were just shocked. They couldn't believe that his punch was stronger than the older one. They constantly said that it was all an illusion, that he could not possess such a technique. And Meng Chao began to make excuses to the teacher that he hadn't practiced in a long time, so this shot was not perfect but he promised that he would improve the technique in the future. The teacher, so that the students would not focus on what they had just seen, 
said that the lesson was going on. The elder heard his classmates say that as soon as Meng Chao woke up, his audacity and strength had increased exponentially. He himself was very surprised by such a trick and waited for the right moment to frame Meng Chao. Then he saw something extraordinary. It appeared right in front of him while he was still standing in the dragon pose. He began to see a projection of some kind of download. Some kind of spark appeared. It completed joining the personality. Meng Chao is the bearer of fire. It reminded him of a meteor shower in a previous life. When the luncheon was destroyed, that fire broke out of the center of the city and flew right into it. Suddenly he began to see projections with messages. He was once again congratulated on becoming a fire bearer. He was credited with various bonuses, which were proposed to be distributed automatically on all items. Such a message he really liked, he felt very cool at that moment. But only he saw all this. Those around him did not see those holograms. Also, reports started coming in about his injuries being treated. He was very surprised because all the doctors said that these injuries were incurable. He was really starting to feel the torn tendons and other injuries begin to heal. And the coolest thing is that all his special techniques and even the technique of the original bull from his previous life returned to him. But as suddenly as it came, it all disappeared, causing confusion. He panicked because he didn't want the enhancement effect to wear off. He then asked the system to use all his assets to improve his form. In the end, he spent all the bonuses. However, he had an idea to borrow from that system to pump skills to the maximum level. The system responded with a sharp refusal to his request. She added that the fire of civilization grows with the bearer. In addition, she asked him to start promoting his civilization and release new forces and missions as soon as possible. Eventually, the system disappeared and he felt confused because it didn't tell him how to earn bonus points. The teacher noticed that something strange was happening to Meng Chao, but did not show it to the students and then said that the lesson was over. His classmates barely accepted the fact that he had performed this trick, and then they were even more surprised that he remained in a special pose until the end. He began to be called the strongest in the class. But after a few minutes, Meng Chao felt very hungry. He was very hungry. He guessed that the spark energy was taking a lot of energy to heal his injuries and teach him new skills. As his eyes became very dark, he saw someone's very large silhouette approaching him. In his emotions, he caught it and began to shake it. It was his best friend, Fei Xiong. Fei Xiong was amazed at what Meng Chao had demonstrated. Meng Chao asked him to lend him money for lunch because he had forgotten his money. And instead, tomorrow and the day after tomorrow will treat him with double portions. This unequal exchange in favor of Fei Xiong made him very wary. He remembered that Meng Chao had never been so generous. But Meng Chao pointed out to him that they were best friends. How could he deceive his best friend? Fei Xiong, after a little hesitation, agreed to it. It can be assumed that he was reassured that the terms they had agreed upon had been heard by everyone in the class, and Meng Chao could no longer fail to fulfill his promise. Fei Xiong then took Meng Chao's hand because it was difficult for him to stand and led him to the buffet. After they arrived at the buffet, it wasn't long before a mountain of empty dishes grew near them. Meng Chao lost control and ate almost all the dishes and desserts that were there. Fei Xiong was very angry. He said that Meng Chao is a real beast because he spent so much money that Fei Xiong fed on it for two weeks. Meng Chao didn't even pay attention to his indignation, and then Fei Xiong decided to teach him a lesson and wanted to strike him a few times. But at the very moment of the blow, Meng Chao had a reflex, and with the words that Fei Xiong should not make any noise, he hit him in the face with his left hand. From this blow, Fei Xiong flew several meters deep into the forest, his eyes filled with great incomprehension and pity. He felt dizzy. It began to seem to him that it was all some kind of hallucination. When he regained consciousness, he began to run quickly to school to make it to class and shouted that Meng Chao was a real demon. As he passed by, he saw that the cleaning lady was cleaning up the garbage scattered on the street, heard how the cleaning lady was indignant because it is always very dirty here. In some strange way, he wanted to help clean this place. 
As soon as he threw the first bottle into the trash can, a hologram immediately appeared, announcing that he had honestly helped a person and, thanks to this, contributed to the development of the spirit of justice in the city of luncheon. When he entered the school, his lunch companion began to hurry him so that he would not be late for the lesson, which was already starting, and suddenly girls who were also late for class started running out in front of him. Meng Chao stopped and admired them as they ran up the stairs. Was he awakened from this sleepy state by a friend who told him that he really wanted to die? Because you can't look at people like that. Afterwards, Meng Chao told Fei Xiong that he had just made sense of life, that this is a simple commonplace, that it is really worth preserving. Fei Xiong stopped and told him that he admired Meng Chao. He was both shameless and sophisticated at the same time. Fei Xiong then asked Meng Chao about his terrible dream and whether he really orchestrated Master Yang's death and Long Cheng's downfall and also clarified what is his role in that world. Meng Chao replied indignantly that he had not established anything, that it was a dream and he could not change anything. Faishan was very interested to know what his role was in this story. Meng Chao was upset. He wondered if he should say that he was a simple soldier on the front line in this story. He also hesitated to tell him that the war with the monsters had quickly moved to a higher level, and after that, many new and very powerful monsters had appeared. In the end, he decided to remind him that they had once talked about their dreams, that Meng Chao wanted to enter university and become an extraordinary person, and Fei Xun wanted to go to a military school and become a general. Together, they began to climb the stairs to the top, and Fei Xun noticed that they had talked about it yesterday, Meng Chao said. The most important thing is that their wishes come true. They promised each other that they would prepare very well for these 50 days for the exam and would help each other. As a result, they promised each other that they would definitely achieve their goals. All students entered the classroom and waited for the teacher. It was supposed to be a Chinese literature lesson. Everyone was very surprised and upset when the senior entered the class and said that Teacher Khan would not be there and there would be no lesson. The elder told everyone to line up and go to the training hall. Everyone politely made their way to the training hall. And Meng Chao and Fei Xiong reasoned that when there were 20 literature lessons a week, it was not like now. The elder heard someone talking at the end and angrily told them to hurry up and not talk. But Fei Xiong continued to tell Meng Chao about the senior, why he did not go to the rocket class, but decided to become the senior in their class. Since the school gives high school students resources to improve and his family owns their own company, he still has the audacity to take resources from ordinary students. If the senior hadn't taken advantage of his uncle's influential connections, Meng Chao would have been the senior in the class. The elder heard their conversation again and in an even harsher tone ordered them to be silent. He made Fei Shen so angry that he wanted to go and beat him, but Meng Chao stopped him saying that they needed to practice first and everything else was still ahead of them. Later, their group arrived at the health center. When they got there, there were many different exercise machines, and the elder said that this is an independent study. He also added that everyone should choose which area they will train in this lesson. There was even a simulator that could measure the force of the blow. Meng Chao had chosen a simulator and was ready to start working hard to improve his skills. But after the first blow, he felt terrible hunger again. To heal the hidden wounds, the spark took all the energy. The spark helps him restore his body and awaken his skills, but it cannot give him power. Now he feels like a tank without fuel. His female classmates noticed that he was not at all what he wanted to become. The senior also noticed his poor condition and told him to free up the simulator for those classmates who are willing to train modestly to improve. Fei Xiong noted that Meng Chao had been out of training for a long time, that he needed time to recover. He added that Meng Chao must have already forgotten even basic techniques such as bull power. Hearing these words, Meng Chao laughed at his friend, and Fei Xiong began to think that what Meng Chao meant was that he was not training well and that he was weak. Meng Chao began to make excuses that it wasn't what he meant, but that the power didn't work that way. Fei Xiong couldn't understand why Ming Chao was acting like this. He thought they were like brothers, 
but he saw that Ming Chao was bragging to him all the time. In response, he said that Fei Xiong did not understand this correctly, because it leads to the fact that modern force methods, which they, Fei Xiong got ahead of him and said he meant to say that modern methods are terrible. And then he added that Meng Chao was particularly unscrupulous today. But at this moment, Meng Chao had a good idea. He asked his friend to go to the bathroom with him. He quickly assessed the situation to see if anyone else was in the restroom. When they got to the booths, Fei Xiong asked Meng Chao what he was going to show him. With a smile, Meng Chao ordered Feng Xiong to quickly remove his shirt and show him his muscles. This phrase caused Fei Sung to panic. He began to ask what he wanted to do to him, and immediately warned him that he would resist and that he would not be able to defeat him. Meng Chao told him that he had just used the bull force technique through his muscles, and began to ask him if he felt that the force was about to seep to the surface. He went on to say that when Fizen stepped on the floor, he should have felt a tingle from his feet to his knees. Fenson was shocked that his friend had expressed his feelings so clearly during the reception. Meng Chao added that his friend did not yet possess the secret meaning of obtaining bull power, that half of his power had simply spilled over his body. And the most important thing he said was that if Fei Xiong continued to train in this style, he would develop osteoporosis. These words scared Faison very much. He fell to his knees and began to ask his friend to save him from that terrible disease. Meng Chao told him to show more strength and he would watch. He did as his friend said and immediately there was a noticeable improvement. Faison felt that his strength had increased by at least 3% but that would be known for sure in a test. Immediately after that, a spark appeared in front of Meng Chao. He did not attach much importance to this appearance at first, but there were two reports that it helped the average citizen and increased basic learning skills by 10%. And in the second message, it was said that the ordinary resident of the city has become stronger, which means that the city will be stronger in defense, and his civilization strengthened by 10%. It dawned on him that when he taught people the skills the spark had revealed to him, he was given points for it. And in the future, he will be able to teach everyone, and they will become 100 times stronger. And when the time comes, they will be able to protect Longshan City from monsters. It is also a very interesting fact that the stronger the civilization, the stronger Meng Chao. And then another hologram appeared with a message. It said he could choose a prize for his contribution to civilization. This became another surprise for him. He began to hesitate what to choose. After some thought, he chooses a basic shot. Since it was free, it was quite obvious that he would choose the most expensive skill. After these events, Meng Chao was in a very good mood and told his friend that he would definitely send him to the military academy. Faison felt an inexplicable feeling when he saw his friend smile. It was quite strange in his eyes. Then they came to the training hall again. Faison decided to ask his friend where he learned such interesting techniques. Yimeng Chao told him to check the maximum impact first. He agreed and continued to mend his spirit. He focused on doing everything right and showing the best result. When Faison was almost ready to strike, a voice suddenly came from the hall saying that who allowed them to touch the simulator to measure the force of the strike. It was a senior. He said that Faison and Meng Chao went somewhere for 20 minutes and then came back and immediately wanted to go to the coolest simulator. Faison was upset, began to shout to the elder, who does he think he is? That he is not a teacher. And he added that the power of a bull had just dawned on him, and even a teacher would not have stopped him at such a critical moment. And what did he care about him at all? To this, the elder told him that he had seen him perform the technique and said that they were crooked and not even at the basic level, that his blow is not strong enough, and what kind of insight can we be talking about? Then the elder said that if he really wanted to use this measuring machine, he should first step aside and work on gaining bull strength. Faisun was disappointed and the fire went out. He turned around and started to walk out of the simulator saying that his bull power was bad. Faison wanted to beat the elder again, but Meng Chao stopped him, and he suggested an idea since the elder is so wise. 
Then let the power of the bull demonstrate the correct execution of the reception, so that everyone learns well. The elder hesitated for a second, but he couldn't resist showing off in front of his classmates, and began to take off the clock with the words to show everyone the real punch. He got down to business and began to perform the trick while shouting the name of the trick. His impact created a rather strong shock wave. The sound of a loud explosion filled the entire hall. It should be noted that the simulator itself shifted slightly from his impact. Only very strong impacts could move it. Soon his result appeared. As for a student of his age, it was at a fairly high level. The girls immediately noticed that he was gaining strength and broke the previous class record again, setting the record the first time. It was also said about him that he would definitely enter the best university thanks to his strength. In addition, the elder is physiologically smaller than Fei Shun, but his impact force is five kilograms greater. The elder was pleased and told Meng Chao and Fei Qiong that this was exactly the blow it should be, that they were still a long way from it. Other classmates asked Fei Xiong not to do anything now, but to wait for the end of the lesson and try alone. They also appealed to Meng Chao to convince Fei Shun not to do anything now. But Meng Chao only patted his friend on the shoulder and encouraged him. The elder stood between him and the simulator and told him not to approach, and after the lesson, you can try your hand at it. Fei Xiong firmly ordered the old man to go away and not disturb him. Meng Chao was calm because he was confident in his friend, and other classmates thought that Feng Shun would be disgraced and everything would only get worse. He resolutely moved forward and, grabbing the elder's hand, began to push him and tell him to retreat. The elder did not listen to him and was thrown to the ground. Furthermore, he very clearly felt that Feng Shun's strength had increased dramatically, which surprised him greatly. He resolutely moved towards the simulator, and his anger at the elder gave him even more strength. The red aura that surrounded him before the impact began to materialize in the air. The elder was frightened when a very powerful air wave nearly knocked him off his feet, and he performed this incredibly powerful blow. The explosive wave almost blew out the windows. This blow was incredibly strong. The simulator not only moved, but also flew into the air. Scores on the scoreboard increased dramatically, and as a result, classmates began to shout that this was a new record and much higher than the older one. Fei Xiong in particular did not expect his blow to be so strong. Meng Chao told a friend that he was very mean as he had been secretly training this bull superpower technique. Moreover, he directly destroyed the headman in this dispute. With this phrase, Meng Chao greatly interested his classmates they began to discuss something among themselves. He suddenly had a very interesting idea. It was that no amount of money could be used to hire a teacher to receive the superpower of a bull. And this skill is very important in the exam because even an increase in strength by 10 kilograms is automatically 10 points in the exam result. And he decided to do a scene where he asks his friend to teach him this trick. Fei Xiong was surprised at first because Meng Chao himself had taught him this technique 30 minutes ago in the toilet. He then continued with his plan. He told Fei Xun not to answer because his time was very valuable. So he offered to pay him with his resources for his precious time when he would train him. By this time, Fei Xiong understood Meng Chao's plan that he wanted to make money and decided to play along with him. Meng Chao decided to add a motion so that no one would have any doubts, and with tears in his eyes, he began to plead with Fei Xiong to save the child. Some time passed and the whole class asked him to save them. Meng Chao moved to the next stage and began to voice his thoughts. How cool would it be if they all got together and formed a group to teach Super Bowl techniques and all agreed to pay for Fei Xun's lessons? The elder sat on the floor all this time and was very angry about what was happening, but he could not do anything. And all the classmates started shouting that they were ready to pay Fei Xiun for his studies. While there was complete confusion, a hologram appeared with a message. Meng Chao received a plus 11 for his contribution to civilization as the class became friendlier after his suggestion. Meng Chao decided not to stop there and once again emphasized how kind and strong Fei Xiong was and how hard he studied. 
So why didn't the teacher choose him to be the senior in this class from the beginning? After such a phrase, everyone turned and looked at the presenter with interesting thoughts. And the presenter himself, meanwhile, was just burning from the inside with anger. He could not even think that Meng Chao was as cunning and treacherous as himself. But immediately after that, he approached the presenter, wanted to help him stand up and said that it was not serious, while he thought to himself that he was a real scumbag. The old man himself stood up sharply and said that he did not take his words seriously, because everyone knows that he, as the elder, always tries to make everything go well. Although the elder smiled mischievously, at this time he thought that he would do his best in the final exam to prevent Meng Chao from entering the university. Later the class ended and it was the last class of the day. The two friends were standing on the roof of the house and Fake Xiong suggested that Meng Chao take whatever they had earned because he thought he needed it more since he had been devastated all year. But he said that it would be good to divide 70 by 30. He is 70, and Fei Xian is 30. He accepted his fate and decided to ask where Meng Chao learned this technique. Meng Chao was a little confused, but he quickly came up with the version that he came across a forum on the darknet about life science. And there was such information. He studied it very carefully. At the moment, he cannot tell him about the fire that he has. He also added that if Fai Yun is worried about the security of the reception, then he can inform his classmates that the reception is still in the beta version, and there may be bugs, and those who do not want to may not participate in the training. Fei Xiong agreed with his friend and said that he would tell them about it and advised Meng Chao to go home as soon as possible. He stood on the ledge and looked at Lan Chen, and remembered that he never liked the fog, because in that dream the fog prevented him from killing the monsters. In addition, he did not really like the city itself with its narrow streets and overcrowding. He realized that he was like everyone else. He read too many books and watched movies about the past land. Previously, school children attended physical education lessons only two times, and mathematics and literature lessons were much more frequent. And for adults, it was enough to work only eight hours to earn a lot of money and buy a large apartment and eat ecological products. He cried because he clearly understood that this land is a homeland that cannot be returned, and fear is a tomorrow that has not yet come. A spark hologram appeared before him again with a message. Meng Chao was surprised because even the indirect vision of progress was taken into account and the primitive bull method became popular among the townspeople, and Lanchen's overall fighting power increased, and he was awarded contribution points. He suddenly turned his attention to a loud voice. It was an alert system. All the townspeople were informed that fog is expected today, and there is a very high probability that monsters will enter the city, the city's hydrometeorological bureau informed about it. According to the forecast, the main area for monsters to appear will be the area of the Chen Bei Metallurgical Plant. In addition, the Survival Committee ordered the Steel Dragon Corporation to raise its defenses to Level 1, and the other areas were ordered to introduce Level 3 defenses. Also, the voice from the airship emphasized that all citizens should be very alert and ready to fight the enemy. Meng Chao froze for a few seconds. He was already familiar with this feeling of acute stress. Then he abruptly broke off and ran to the stop, but the transport he needed slowly started to move. While he was running after the bus and shouting for it to stop, he was looking at him from the window of a comfortable car and calling him a scumbag. Almost, but he still managed to stop the bus and get into it. This stop is in Hulin area. The bus was very crowded and had to exit through the back exit. He walked and stopped, closing his eyes, telling himself that he was finally home. After the resurrection, he walked through the old market and thought only of warm memories. He stood and listened to the surrounding sounds and felt very calm at that moment. And suddenly his calm was disturbed. Someone called him. A girl asked him to help her because she was very tired. When Ming Chao turned around, he was happy and said that it was Zakao. But after a moment, he had a seizure a very sharp headache and dizziness. He was hallucinating because in the nightmare he got into a very bad situation with her. Wherever she goes, she always brings endless dark nights with her. 
In the nightmare, she became a witch of the dark night which traumatized Ming Chao greatly. While he was rubbing his eyes to regain consciousness, she came closer to him and couldn't figure out what was wrong with him. Then she asked him why he looked like a mouse in front of which a cat was sitting. It was hard for him because he didn't think his sister was like that. But then he got a hold of himself and emotionally asked her if she had the strength. Would she crush him? She was surprised by such a question and said that she would never do such a thing. And at the same time, she thought that she would think about such a proposal. Meng Chao then asked her if she was dissatisfied with anything about him. Since she becomes a witch of the dark night in a nightmare, he wants to understand the reason for this. To this question, she answered that everything was fine, but at the same time she was looking for many shortcomings of her brother in her thoughts. Meng Chao calmed down a bit, and all this annoyed his sister. She did not understand why he began to bully her. He says that his brother needs an excuse to annoy his sister a little, and he thought to himself that since she was not a witch, he should enjoy the fact that he was stronger than her. But seriously, he was determined to do everything in his power to ensure that she would never suffer again or become a witch in the future. As they walked home, his sister kept telling him how bad he was, and he told her in return that she was the best sister and what a wonderful person she was. The number of their apartment was 704, and from the threshold, the sister started shouting that her brother was making fun of her. When Meng Chao entered the middle, he told his mother that he was home, and when he looked at her, his soul rejoiced. She stood on crutches. It was difficult for her, but she still prepared buns for the children and urged them to eat as soon as they were still warm. And she told her sister that she always criticizes her brother. He tried the bun and everything started shaking and he started crying because of the emotions he was feeling. The sister told her mother that she already suspected that her brother had lost his roof. Mom also did not understand why he was crying, because he had just eaten a bun. The man said that there was a lot of commotion because he heard from the street that his sister was complaining about his brother. It was their father. Then he told her to turn on the TV and see if the broadcast from the battlefield had started. There was fresh news. Huge red combat vehicles with very large guns were ready. A battle group of battle crabs deploys to a position where the monsters are expected to attack. These war crabs are the latest development in the military technology of Longchen City. Monsters from the Second World must fall under the onslaught of these majestic machines. On TV, they showed an interview of a professor who said that the last three times when the fog descended, the monsters looked like crayfish, and the girl noticed that the teacher was telling them about the weak points of those monsters. Xiao Cao was about to change the interview when the main warrior of Longcheng City appeared on the screen. Parents saw how much she liked him. They understood that she was already an adult. And at that moment, she paid attention to the area of the apartment in which that hero lived. But in a second, the TV suddenly turned off and very loud noises were heard on the street. Meng Chao shouted that this was an invasion in their area, that the monsters had come. A siren began to sound and an alert said that the Tianfuyuan district was going into stronghold mode, the priority of the power system being defense vehicles. People began to hide, helped each other to climb into the window and close it. The alarm sounded and the defense mechanisms were put in place. In a short time, the streets were blocked by large steel gates, all windows were also closed, and large guns appeared on the streets themselves. And Sony monsters began to crawl out of the fog. They were huge and very strong. The cannons began to fire without stopping. They had a rather large supply of ammunition. The first seconds of the battle looked beautiful. The cannon copes well with the onslaught of monsters. But over the years, the pressure of monsters increased and some of them began to penetrate this line of defense. Then it was ordered to use a high-voltage tower that appeared right in the middle of the street and all the electricity was transferred to it. This is a very powerful weapon. It created an electrical barrier of great density. She simply pushed the monsters out of the street and those who still wanted to pass were cut into pieces. Chow watched the events very carefully through a special window in the metal wall. He could see that there would be a lot of monsters. He had already drunk all the supplements he had to increase his strength, but he still doubted if he could survive this battle. 
Here the father suddenly runs in and asks Chow how the battle is going. He tells him that everything is fine so far. Their grandmother lived with them, she told their father and Chow to keep a close eye on what was happening on the street. The sister said that she will take care of everyone who stays in the apartment. Chow emphasized that the grandmother should take care of her safety. She began to tell him that she had powers and knew everything well. But just at that moment, there was a loud explosion and they all turned their attention to him. It was a huge monster. He jumped on that electric yoke and because of his great mass, he pushed through the stable and destroyed it. Immediately after that, some kind of transformation began to take place in those monsters. Wings appeared in them and they began to fly up the mountain perhaps to fly over the metal wall. Father just saw all this. He realized that these are flying firebugs. He and Chow went to the gun. Father told Chow that it would be quite difficult to deal with this kind of beetles. They would have to get close and then start shooting, and that it would not be easy to survive this night. Other families have already started shooting flying bugs from their windows. Father saw that the situation was very difficult because it was very difficult to get at those beetles and their wings reflected bullets. Chow began to take aim and understood that if it all dragged on, a lot of people would die. And a spark suddenly appeared in front of him with a message. It was about the first combat test. He needed to destroy 10 units of some bugs and three units of others. And the reward will be 1,500 points of contribution to civilization and an improvement of the basic skill by one level. He was ready to start the defense and at the same time complete the task. At the last moment, his grandmother approached him and said that if he is afraid, she can replace him. But it was at this moment that Chow started shooting. He did it quite quickly. He fired three clear shots and all of them hit the same bug and what's more, where there was no armor. Immediately after that, a spark appeared with a message and his techniques began to grow due to being caught in a flying fire bug. The grandmother, in her emotions, hit him on the back of the head and said that he was just like his uncle when there was still a good shooter alive. Chow was not upset with the grandmother, but if she had not interfered with him, he would have torn that beetle to pieces with three simultaneous shots. More. She did not bother him, and he continued to perform the task. With very accurate shots, he took down the beetles one by one, and for each one he was given some bonuses. After several monsters were destroyed, he noticed that his shooting skills from his past life were returning. His father also noticed this and told him that he behaves even better with a machine gun than he does. He quickly came up with a way to justify his shooting skills and came up with the fact that he had an injury last year and devoted that time to shooting skills. Now the father understood how difficult it was for him, but he is a good man. Then he added that he and his son must show all their strength and protect their relatives. And they stood at the window at the same time and began to fire simultaneously. Still, Dad added that there were no problems with Chow, but he advised him to take care of his health. Chow continued to destroy the monsters and said that he was fine. Suddenly he felt that something was wrong. He remembered that there must be another special monster. He had not yet appeared. He began to quickly look for him using the optical sight of the machine gun. Very little time passed and he seems to have seen him. He was much bigger than the others. He was much bigger than the others. It was like he was controlling other monsters. His appearance was simply terrifying. He instilled a very strong fear in everyone who looked at him. In his nightmare, that big monster suddenly attacked. No one simply expected such a power of such a swarm and he then took advantage of this and broke through the defense of luncheon. And it was after that terrible attack that his sister turned into a witch. Several shots were fired at him, but the bullets simply flew away from him. Chow realizes that things are bad because he can't even hurt him. To fill it, you need at least a master level, or even a perfect level. And that main monster began to act actively, and the whole swarm became active. It was like he gave them an order. This change was immediately noticed by the defenders. They warned each other about the danger, especially from that big bug. All the soldiers were ordered to concentrate because the monsters began to try to enter the residential area with greater force, and this cannot be allowed under any circumstances. The defense held up well. So far, not a single monster crossed the defensive circle. Meng Chao focused on completing tasks quickly and getting a reward. At the expense of this, 
he wants to interfere with that monster. He needs to increase the level of fire until the moment when the monster fully wakes up, and there will be very little time left before the full awakening of this monster. The captain of the battle group noticed that there was a super monster unknown to him in that swarm, and he called for help on the radio. But just at that moment, a blow was struck and the walkie-talkie was destroyed. He did not have time to call for help. The father found out about the super monster and told Chow to take his family and run away from the area. He surprised his father very much because he told him to take his relatives and run away from here, and he would stay here. He said he knew what kind of monster it was and had to stay here. That super monster started creating energy balls that can explode like projectiles. What happened next, he launched this bullet and there was a very strong explosion. The scale of the battle increased greatly. This smoke made it very difficult to aim fire at the monsters, and the soldiers had to destroy this super monster and prevent its bomb from hitting again. And the monster itself became stronger and faster every minute. At one point, he charged dozens of smaller bugs with his energy, and they also became stronger. They began to fly down rapidly from the height, and it seems that they were not going to stop. And so it happened, they acted as missiles and carried many blows to the houses. Thanks to this, they managed to break into the residential sector, and they were very close to ordinary citizens. But a second before the tragedy, a swordsman melee soldier runs up and saves those people from a terrible death. A brigade of swordsmen are on the alert. They will not allow those creatures to get close to ordinary people anymore. The battle was gaining more and more momentum. Brigades of swordsmen were attacking in close combat. They shouted in unison that luncheon would not fall, that the earth would win. Meanwhile, Meng Chao destroyed the last monster in his task. Iskra congratulated him and told him about his award, and he said that she should send all the points to improve the shooting skill to the maximum. First, the expert scale was filled to 100%, and then the master scale was also filled to 100%, and now he said to raise the master skill of basic shooting to another level. Iskra congratulated him on achieving the level of excellence in the skill of basic shooting. Now he began to see various subtleties and important points, thanks to that skill. He realized that the gold powder raised the strength of the other beetles, and the main defense is filled with nerve endings and is very sensitive. Now Meng Chao could see right through him and easily detected his weak points, and now he needs to charge with armor-piercing bullets. Now he was ready to destroy this creature once and for all, but his sister came from somewhere and with shouts that she came to help him, she shot in the direction of those monsters. She was thrown back by the recoil from that shot. At this moment, Meng Chao was shocked by such a sudden turn of events, he completely forgot about this weapon. He remembered her showing him that gun, but he remembered taking it from her so she wouldn't get hurt. It was a very scary moment. He watched carefully to see if the monster would notice where the shot came from. At first, he began to spin in different directions and could not understand from which side the shot came. But in a few seconds, Meng Chao saw its huge red eyes staring directly at him. It was the right window from which no one was shooting now, and he rapidly began to go down to that window. In a second, a huge claw began to crawl into the middle of the room with very great force, and then he completely tore out a piece of the wall, and Meng Chao and her sister were right in front of him. It was at this moment that Meng Chao remembered how things had been in his nightmare. Then his sister also wanted to help him, but the sound of the shot attracted the attention of the super monster. It was then that their mother was very badly injured and she was hospitalized, and their sister felt guilty, and probably that was when the darkness began in her. This animal destroyed the house in which he lived for 17 years and caused great harm to his loved ones. In this life, he will not allow the nightmare to happen again, and Chow opened fire on that work with shouts. Due to the fact that he loaded such cartridges, one of the wings of that monster exploded, and then there were several more explosions, each round exploding as it hit its target. In a panic, the father began to shout to Chao, Why is he doing this? And he replied that his father would trust him and not interfere, and he continued to aim intently at that monster. When the smoke from the explosions cleared, it was clear that the monster was very angry. He was not seriously injured, but it was very unpleasant for him and immediately he began to form an energy sphere to launch it into all of them. 
Chow was just waiting for this moment. The spark helped him understand how to act correctly in this situation. And it was at this moment that Chow fired a bullet that exploded right at that monster. Two seconds later, the monster launched its bullet at them, but Chow outran him. And then there was a very powerful explosion. The whole building shook from the explosion. As the fire died down, that explosion tore open the monster's mouth and began to fall to the bottom with great speed. Such a free fall was definitely not in the plan of that monster, and even after a very powerful explosion, the soldiers came across a dead monster and began to report that it was destroyed. They also thought that it was an old sniper who once served in the army and destroyed it. After this news, all the soldiers went on the attack with renewed strength and were determined to destroy all the monsters. Yi Chao was also thrown from the explosion and was all red from the temperature of the explosion. As a result, he flew several meters and fell quite hard to the ground. He saw how his father ran to him first and began to bring him to consciousness. He did not understand in what condition he was and whether he was seriously injured. Chao was very happy that he managed to kill that terrible monster because it was the one that started his nightmare. When his sister ran up to him with a medicine cabinet, he realized that he could change everything that he could influence in his life. She began to make him drink and told him not to die because she had not yet avenged him. It was a joke. She began to move his face and bring him to consciousness, and he said that it hurt him when she did that. While she was mocking him, he really thought that she was a witch of the dark night, pure evil. Grandma also came out and asked how Meng Chao was doing. When the father arrived, Chao asked him to tell the outsiders that he was the one who killed that super monster. Keep his marksmanship a secret. They all promised him that they wouldn't tell anyone. Father told him to breathe because the swarm is already retreating. He felt joy because he really managed to save everyone and change the course of events. The warriors looked at that super monster and rejoiced in victory. But at the very best moment, Chow thought about the fact that he had not received a notification about the death of that monster. His heart almost stopped from fear. Is that monster still alive? And he started to move his paw a little. Chow was bleeding but got up and went to that monster to prevent a repeat of the events. He realized that he was still very weak, that his hidden injuries had not yet healed, and that he had not yet revealed his psionic properties. He also understood that the connection between his mind and body was also very weak and needed more time to train. And that shot was shot with inaccuracies and ended up not killing the monster. He saw that the monster started to move. There was panic in his eyes. He couldn't believe that he wouldn't be able to save everyone. It happened as he thought. The monster came to life and stood on its paws and began to emit golden dust for strengthening. He urgently needed to think of something to prevent a tragedy, and he decides to use the power of the bull to finish him off. He wants to and can kill him himself, but he has no other choice. In a few seconds, a blow of simply unreal power was delivered to that monster. Such a blow killed that monster from the very beginning. It was a great surprise for everyone and a shock at the same time. This blow was delivered by one of the super warriors. They had super strength. Ordinary soldiers idolized him. They called him the sub -Nishin. He alone could replace a hundred ordinary soldiers by his strength. And just at that moment, Chow began to receive messages from the spark about his contribution to this battle. Thanks to him, the underling managed to come to the rescue. For this, he was given 1920 contribution points. He was also given 500 points for the fact that his sister did not become a dark witch and the city is safe. And he had the opportunity to discover new skills such as dragon power and the art of harvesting. An hour passed after the end of the battle. Music played over the whole city. People celebrated the victory. And special scientists took samples and said that you have to hurry because the crab bars can spoil. In fact, they collected black water and it was very expensive. After a dose of energy lunch and eating all the meat, Chow returned to normal. But his head still hurts because he got a lot. Many messages from the spark. Since that fiery golden bug with demonic eyes appeared, it means that the monsters are constantly improving and getting stronger. He realizes that he needs to appreciate every minute in order to become stronger as soon as possible. 
He also noticed that it is not enough to just have perfect skills. It is necessary to constantly practice them in real combat in order to achieve harmony between mind and body. But without improvement resources, he is constantly very hungry, and after destroying a couple of bugs, he needs half a breath to get back to normal. While he was thinking, his sister said to him, Does it smell because there is a harvest of beetles outside? He remembered that in his previous life, after his mother was badly injured by a super monster, and he failed the final exam. In order to earn money for his mother's treatment and his sister's education, he had to work together with his father. At that time, because of the war, there was enough work for the next ten years. He noted that working as a mower is very profitable. Meng Chao asked the spark to open the exchange tablet. He had 2448 points. Pulsation power was worth 1,500 points, dragon power was 2,100 points, and reaping art was 998 points. He was lucky that what he needed was quite cheap, and he decides to exchange points for that skill, and he has been doing it for 10 years in a nightmare, and now it will be even easier for him. And in the next moment he felt that skill appeared in him, woke up and various methods of harvesting became available. He also said to raise the art of harvesting to an expert level. The skills he acquired that day, the skill of shooting and the skill of harvesting, made a certain symbiosis in him, which means he made the right choice. Meng Chao also realized that most of the monsters he remembered from the nightmare had yet to evolve, so when they did appear, he would be much better prepared for their arrival. The father told the children to go to bed, and he himself was going to harvest the monsters, but Chao asked if he could go with him. He said that he might not be able to pass the exam well enough to go to university, and that instead of looking for odd jobs, he would rather become a reaper. My father first assessed the situation and realized that his form was weak and that his chances of entering the university were 20%, so he told him to pack up and he would tell him everything. He understood that the work was quite difficult, but he knew that the one who does it has a great chance to awaken his inner strength. The sister was very worried about her brother. She asked him if he was really ready for such a job, and then she told him that if he found something tasty, he should not forget to take some home and wished him luck in his new job. Although the monsters are very ugly, their corpses are very important to support the strategic development of Lungchen. It would be possible to shoot those corpses just like that, but it is very illogical from the point of view of ammunition and once again exposes the soldiers to danger. But not even five years would have passed before Lanchen would have used up all his resources and died of hunger. But the Ascended can kill monsters by the thousands and no one takes those corpses away. In this difficult time, the army is only there to help and the key role in the defense of the city is played by the ascended super warriors. Over the years, Luncheon has seen various monsters, many of them are still lying where they were killed. Father told Chow not to worry. He would just have to watch what he was doing and learn little by little. Chow replied that he wasn't worried, but when he heard that he wet himself, he knew he wasn't. Special vapors from monsters excite the nervous system, and it is difficult to monitor urine, so beginners often urinate. The father told him not to be ashamed, to put on a diaper for the first time. He did not know that it was already too late. When they arrived, the father said that the director of the companies would decide whether Chow would work here. He asked him to be modest and show wisdom. That director was a great man. He was very experienced in his work, but he did not look very pleasant. At first he refused because he had heard about Chao's injury but his father begged him very much and said that he would bear all the responsibility for him himself. 41. When Chow looked at this, he saw his father handing him a punched card, and the gold card was worth 10,000 yuan. He never even thought that his father had that kind of money. He even thought for a second not to give that card and not to go to that job. And the director agreed. He said that the father's team is simply attached to the company and it doesn't matter who he hires as assistants there. But he made it clear that no one should interfere in his affairs and those of his assistant. Father said that they would definitely not cause him any problems. 
The father told Chow to thank him. The director said that it was not necessary, but that they should go and get to work. Meng told Chow not to contradict director Shunya, and Chow all the time could not remember what he knew about him from his past life. Chow suddenly remembered that it was he who had beaten his father in a past life. Chow asked his father why he, with his knowledge, had not yet started his own company. Meng said that it is not so easy, for that you need finances at the start and those who will bring monsters. He suggested that we talk about this topic in two years, when my sister will enter the university. Chow asked him if he ever thought that there could be more monsters. Chow gave him information about the future, allegedly from the words of a teacher at school, that there is a great threat ahead. And he said that if they want to get rich and rewrite their history, then maybe they should take advantage of such a chance. Bye, he thought once he came back from the nightmare. He shouldn't live in poverty and will try to change everything. He wants to take everything into his own hands. But Meng said that they would work now and discuss it at home. They came to the place. It was full of work. There were several workers and a lot of dead monsters. Meng showed Chow that today they would be working with crustaceans, but more often they worked with striped scorpions. Other workers from the very beginning began to test him and offered him to try different parts of those monsters to the touch. Meng found a relatively intact monster and said they would work slower so he could learn. He covered him and began to tell that he had tender meat in his front ends. The carapace can be lightened or armored, and they use the slime as fertilizer for the earth, and the earthworm breeds very well when it is fed with that slime. The poison that they have in their stings is also very valuable, and in small doses it is used to purify medicines, and it can also awaken hidden possibilities stored in genes, and the sting itself is very hard, then it is used as a sniper projectile. Meng handed Chow the tools and said that you have to try to learn, so let him begin. Of course, Chow started with almost a whole monster. First, with a crude tool, he made himself open so that he could get into the middle. Without a second's hesitation, he set to work. First, you need to get to the main nerve ending. Then, it had to be placed in a special mixture that was designed for this purpose. The butterfly scalpel was perfect for separating the meat from the shell. He easily collected clean meat with the help of a suction cup, and then it was stored. At the very end, a vacuum pump had to be used to collect the precious slime. This is what the fully processed monster looked like. Everything valuable was extracted from it and sent for safekeeping. Meng Chao seemed to enter a trance. He did everything quite quickly. A spark immediately appeared and rewarded him for his first resource gathering. When he turned around, he saw that his father and the whole team were looking at him and they were very surprised. Chow was not attentive and started doing everything very quickly and seemed suspicious. But he said that he had to tell these men and his father something. Seeing his skills, the men eagerly awaited a special secret. He bowed his head and began to tell that since childhood he wanted to become a reaper, he glorified his father because of his profession. Then he began to fantasize that he grew up in the house of a reaper and practiced a lot at school and the teacher supported him and thus he came to such a result. The men then understood everything because his school is considered one of the best. They said that if such a newcomer is at the bottom of the group, then nothing threatens them. Father was surprised the most. He said that Chow never told him about it. Chow said he was ashamed to tell his father because he always looked up to him. Meng was very proud of his son. He regretted that he was so worthless that he could not even help him enter the university so that he would become a great super warrior. Now Chow could safely work at full strength. He explained his secret to everyone and there was nothing to hide. With new strength and inspiration, he started work. He felt the taste of the harvest as in that past life. After some time of work, he came across something that surprised him. A special monster lay there and a spark illuminated valuable resources and indicated their value. Chow, of course, knew the name of that monster and said it was a golden ghost, and Father heard this and wondered again how he knew what kind of monster it was. He explained that the biology teacher had recently told them about him. Chow told the men to prepare a lot of tools, because there was a very good chance of finding something valuable in this monster, and it would need to be properly preserved. While Meng was stunned by Chow's actions, 
A man told him that this kind of work was usually done by Superintendent Gu. So Chow completely forgot that the golden monster with a complex body structure was always handled only by managers. But he decided to check the condition of the carcass of that monster. He smelled the smell of slime and immediately understood that he could not wait because the blood and flesh would begin to change. This would lead to the fact that he would become like a bomb. Man and the worker also confirmed that time is very short. The worker said it would be much worse if they lost valuable resources while waiting for managers. Chow told them to just rest for a while, and he wouldn't let his father's group fail. Chow began to do and only asked his father to be with him. Only Chow started and was stopped by one of the workers. Meng strongly stood up for Chow and said that he was the one who found this golden monster and he would bear all the consequences himself. That employee was a little indignant that he brought his son and babysat him. Meng then said they could leave, that he wouldn't make them do the job. But the other workers said that he was saying some incomprehensible things, that Chow was like a nephew to them. They would not be able to leave them alone. They also said that they are ignorant, but they will still be able to understand one golden monster. They were a friendly team, and if they get rich, then only together. Chow began to do. He also wanted to give it his all. After a few minutes of work, he reached a special area where a special resource appeared. He took it out and told his father to give him the cooling stabilizer. The workers watching from the outside were very surprised when they saw that resource. It was a spiritual round nerve. That nerve was in perfect condition and 80% active, and it was very fresh. The workers immediately noticed that Chow was so young, but already very skillful. Meng told Chow to be very careful, because that beast cannot be shaken too much. And Chow took a closer look and realized that there was something even more valuable inside. Men hearing these words became very wary, and the workers understood because Chao suffered a spinal injury, and that nerve is the best medicine for that injury. Meng grabbed that jar sharply so that Chao wouldn't open it again because people were fighting battles so that they would be common reapers to find this resource. He said he understood Chao's feelings, but they couldn't do that. But Chao said he simply misunderstood him. As a result, Chao said that he is going to the base and will rest a little. While he was walking, he thought that when he arrived, he would think about how to convince his father to open his company. While he was walking, he suddenly heard a loud cry. He immediately turned his attention to it. Then I realized that it was a simio-eyed dragon spider. He had to hurry because maybe it would be his kush. When he was already there, he saw some people. He did not have time to be the first. This old man told his granddaughter that she studied well, and this seven-eyed wolf spider will be a good practice for her. Sueshi immediately agreed. It is a very good option for practice. She said that she would have eight minutes to squeeze all the resources out of this monster. She came up and was already ready to start work. Meng Chao looked indignantly at what she was going to do. They don't know the characteristics of that monster? Suddenly, the stooping owner turned around and shouted in a loud voice that she did not cut. Meng Chao came out and said who he was, then he said that his family wanted to start a resource processing company. Therefore, he allowed himself to suspend them. The owner remarked that the young boy knew the etiquette of reapers. Distracting the reaper while working is a taboo, so why did he allow himself to do this, knowing the etiquette? Chao began to explain to the owner that this monster was stuck in the process of evolution at levels 2 and 3. He began to tell that at this stage his body is very weak and the poisonous sacs in the middle have very thin walls, that it is very easy to get caught and then all the materials will be destroyed. And what's more, if you work like your assistant, then the entire crop will definitely be destroyed. Now the girl understood that Chao was not a real reaper and now it is not surprising that he did not recognize her grandfather. The host said that the young man must have studied very well, but he did not even come to him and look, so how could he know about the process of evolution? Chow said that he has ten years of experience, and there is one insignificant difference between these two kinds of monsters, which is the dying cry. The owner was a little confused as to what Chow wanted to say to all of this. The girl started shouting at him so that he wouldn't scare them, 
And since her grandfather hadn't heard of such a thing, then he was wrong. But Meng Chao began to insist that he was telling the truth, that on the outside, he looked like a simian-eyed spider wolf, but on the inside, everything had already changed. Then he suggested to his grandfather that he should make sure to take off the panzer. Then he decided that it would be better to check again, and at the same time, the girl said that she was watching and studying. She was very angry because of the appearance of Meng Chao, because he ruined everything for her. That grandfather and Meng Chao offered to see how a real master works, to which Meng Chao happily agreed, because everything was going according to his plan. Grandfather took the tool and, like a true professional, began to approach the monster. Meng Chao noticed that Grandpa had an injury because his hands were shaking. This encouraged him even more. He believed that this was his first kush after all. He approached the girl and asked her if she had 300,000 yuan in cash in her account. Out of surprise, she asked him in response why he was asking her about this. Meng Chao drew attention to Grandfather's injury. He has a problem with his nervous system. Then they would need help to complete this harvest, because without his help, they would only collect 300,000 yuan worth of resources. And if he helps them, he will perfectly separate the bags of poison, and then they will be able to increase their profit to one million won. They must have been brought together by fate, and he will take 300,000 yuan for his services. The girl was stunned by what she heard. She could not imagine such a turn of events. Then she said that even though her grandfather is old, he is still strong, and if he needs help, she will help him. But in a few seconds, the grandfather called her in an alarmed voice and told her to look for herself. He said that the boy was quite right. The girl looked at those organs and they were all unfamiliar to her. Grandpa was very embarrassed because he almost destroyed his reputation on some level two monster, because it really was a different monster than he thought at first. The girl asked sharply, Meng Chao, if he wants to say something, let him say it. Well, to Meng Chao, it was a simple seven-eyed dragon spider wolf. To him, there was nothing unusual about it. This answer completely confused the grandfather and the girl. Then the girl asked him whether he would really help for 300,000 to complete this harvest. Grandfather, already excited, shouted that if he helped save 70% of the poison bags, he would immediately give him 500,000. Chow said that he has not yet become exalted in this matter, so he will only be an assistant. It was his plan to have Grandpa do the main work himself. He then said that Chow would be his first assistant and his granddaughter would be his second, and the three of them were ready to get to work. Grandpa immediately began to say what tools he needed. Each of them had a clear number and was for a specific task. Chow said that he knew what Grandpa wanted to do with tool number 12 and number 3. Then he drew Grandpa's attention to the fabrics in the middle and said that the tool would ruin their appearance. Instead, he started recommending how to do better, starting with the vessels and separating the circulatory system. Grandpa actually wanted to do that. He was surprised by Meng Chao's knowledge. Meanwhile, a spark appeared and rewarded Chao for the fact that the elite citizen Ning Shu learned new information about monsters thanks to him and the city of Luchin became stronger. Some time passed and many artifacts were collected in special banks. Grandfather noticed that working together with Chao was very convenient for him. He even thought of teaching him how to make some Guan decisions. Chao did not say his name, and they said his name was Sao Meng. And the grandfather decided to ask him, what would he do in his place? Sao Meng said that he would move from the bottom to the top and use three solutions out of the seven Guan techniques. Grandfather was shocked by what he saw. He was very interested to learn more about his boy and who his teacher was. And at the same time, Chao got an opportunity because he taught his grandfather again. He noticed that the elite learned very quickly because he showed just a few movements and the grandfather immediately understood what he meant. Grandfather was very interested in him, that he so simply showed him a new way of working. He asked him about his mentor. Who is he? Chao understood that his grandfather was studying him and that he would no longer be able to get rid of the elite citizen, that he was self-taught. Sao Meng said that he had special principles, so he could not tell about the mentor, 
But the mentor said that the knowledge should be passed on to the people in order to glorify Lung Chen. The granddaughter immediately noticed that Sao Meng immediately started talking about money. Sao Meng said that Miss Ning misunderstood him, that he needs those 300,000 in order to form his team with which he will improve luncheon. He needs them not for personal purposes, but in order to kindle the fire of civilization in this second world. Grandpa Ning saw what he was saying and his eyes were burning. Did he really want to improve Lun Cheng? He is so young, but already thinking about such big goals. And the girl was ashamed because she thought badly of him. Then Sao Meng told them to finish because there was one bag of poison left. He would hold it and Grandpa would get it. Did Sao Men already think that his father was there, or had he already finished his harvest? Less than a minute passed and they were completely done. Grandfather Nin asked his granddaughter how much cash she has in her account. She replied that it was about 800,000 yuan. Sao Meng himself was shocked because they were talking about 500,000. Grandfather said that due to his illness, he had little money in his account, but what he showed him was definitely worth a couple of hundred thousand. He offered to wait until he sold the materials and then talk in more detail. Sao Meng said that it would be an honor for him because he had some thoughts about other techniques, and he added that in a year and a half, Grandfather Ning will be cured of his illness. With these words, Sao Meng shocked the grandfather. He asked him how he could know what kind of disease he had. He said he could see on his hands that it must be Purple King Viper Venom and it hit various nerve endings. The granddaughter panicked at what she heard, told him that if he examined his disease, how can he say that he will be cured in a year and a half when this disease is incurable? He was not too embarrassed by such an important detail. The granddaughter, seeing that he was not surprised by her words, understood that he had some idea and asked him directly if he could cure her grandfather. A spark appeared and for the fact that he will cure grandfather Ning, he can receive from 200 to 2,000 points. And he himself said that it will not be easy, but he has certain considerations. Grandfather was comforted because the doctors have no ideas at all, but he clearly understood that he would have to ask his teacher for him. That's why he thought how to thank him. And he came up with, he suggested to Sao Ming, to conclude a contract with the Thunder Group for the supply of resources. Sao Ming did not show his inner satisfaction, but he knew about this group. It contained the strongest exalted warriors. Even the waste from that group would be enough for them to live on. But for now, Sao Meng said that Grandpa Ning should finish his business with these resources, and then they would meet at Fufu Street and talk in more detail. A message came to the phone that he received 800,000 yuan. Grandfather told Suesha that he was not an ordinary boy, so that she would try to make friends with him. While Meng Chao was running to his workplace, he looked at his phone. He was happy because he thought about his father's reaction when he saw it. When he ran up, he heard shouts from the headquarters where his father worked. His heart immediately sank. He began to guess what was happening and ran there even faster. Meanwhile, his father was sitting on the ground and the manager was yelling at him not to try to trick him. Meng was devastated. He didn't know what to do next. Somehow it happened that that important resource was broken and lying on the ground. When Chao ran, Uncle Joe was the first to meet him. He asked him what happened. Yi Zhou began to tell him that his father had called the manager and said that they had covered that golden monster. The manager immediately started yelling at him because they shouldn't have done that. It was the job of his managers. Meng told his friends that he would take this resource to the manager. His friends said it was dangerous because he could get killed for such a thing, and if not, the man wouldn't have enough money to buy the thing anyway. But he believed that he would come up with something because this was the only chance for his son. The manager immediately began to shout at him for his idea and for the fact that they themselves caught that golden monster. He pushed father and started shouting at him that it was because of him that the jar broke. Then Chow was helped by his father to stand up and asked him if he broke that jar. The father said that it was somehow unclear whether it was him or the manager. Chow carefully examined the can and saw clear traces of grease, and the manager was just covered in grease. It was clear that he did not hold the can, and it fell. 
Chow then told him that in this situation, it was unclear who was at fault, so they would compensate for half the cost. The nasty manager said it was at least 100,000 thousand. Then the manager began to blame the father, that he initially wanted to buy that part and then broke it and now does not want to pay and bear responsibility. He further threatened him that if this incident was found out in their circles, no one would want to deal with him. Then the father in despair said that he would buy that resource for those 100,000 thousand. The manager said that he can sign a contract for three years of work at level two and can take that resource. He laughed and said that he would give him another 100,000 in advance so that he could buy resources for his son and maybe he would be able to enter the university. It was very difficult for Chow to watch this situation. The manager offered father a contract to sign and he himself laughed at that moment. But in a second with a sharp blow, Chow knocks that contract out of the manager's hands. It was an electronic contract. The tablet fell to the ground and crashed. The manager said that Chow made a big mistake that made him angry. He immediately told his guards to bring him to him. Men immediately stood up for his son and shouted that they should not move him. But in a moment, a strong blow was delivered to his face. Meng flew back and Chow caught him. He was very much shocked by these events. Those guards were very cruel and one of them struck again. Chow had to take that blow because he was holding his father. It was a very strong blow, both mental and physical. In a moment, he realized that things were very bad and he needed to act so that he and his father would not be killed here. And very sharply, he used one of his powers and with a very strong blow to the stomach, he cut down one of the guards. However, he couldn't escape another blow from another guard who beat him with electric bats. But Chow also withstood this blow and was already ready to destroy the second guard. From the expression on that guard's face, it was clear that he was very surprised as to why Chow didn't fall from their electric bats. And Chow threw him against the wall with all his might. He would not get up from such a blow. Chow then told the spark to upgrade the ripple power to expert level. He was very angry, approaching the manager. He told him that in his past life, he forced his father to sign that contract. That manager fell on his lap and began to beg him to talk. But Chow gave him the first blow and told him that he would talk to his ancestors. He struck a second blow and said that it was because in a previous life, he secretly changed the terms of the contract that his father could not sue. This hit is because he arbitrarily took money from his father's insurance and they were then unable to pay for his treatment. This blow, for the fact that this sister wasted her faith in justice and took the path of darkness. It was a kick. He flew into the wagon standing behind. All the workers looked at it. He looked like a big fat pig reddened by Chow's punches. Chow wanted to continue. He was no longer in control. But at the last moment, his father stopped him and asked him that he wanted to go to prison. After that, Chow calmed down and asked his father if he was okay. He said he was fine. Other friends of the father came and told Chow that he was very impulsive, that it was easy to hit, but it was difficult to turn everything back. From such recommendations, he himself doubted whether he had done well. All the same, he had an idea to hit him on the leg a couple more times. But he is properly brought up and may not do it. Chow decided that he had hit him hard enough and needed more. He began to ask his father to let him kick him one more time. But suddenly they appeared and shouted for it to stop. It was Gu Ming, the manager of the Zuxin company. Everyone was shocked that they appeared just at that moment. And it was Qin Hu, nicknamed Wild Tiger, the main boss of the Zuxin campaign. Those guards fell to their knees and began to tell everything from their position. Chow remembered that blonde. He was in league with that manager whom he beat. He did a lot of bad things. And that strong man was a very famous warrior. He was exalted on account of thousands of monsters. The guard began to report everything in detail, that they spoiled important material, broke a computer, and also beat a person. Gu turned to Meng Yishan. He asked him if his son did all this. Meng began to say that this is his conflict with the director and he will be responsible for everything and his son is innocent here. In fact, at that moment, many workers began to say that it was the director who started the aggression and that it was he who broke the bank with the resource and the guards were the first to start the fight. Such expressions began to annoy them because it was a complete mess. 
Gu approached Chow and said that he was the one who beat the man, that he should be put in prison for a couple of years. The father immediately began to protest against such a decision and wanted to take all the blame on himself. But Gu said that old Meng should look at the headmaster's injuries. What does he think we can say, don't take him to prison and it will be like that? Chow smiled and said that they needed to call the police quickly and take him to the hospital so that they could determine the injuries. At first, Gu didn't understand what Chow was hoping for, if from afar it could be seen that the director was barely alive. Who then came over and took that manager with one hand and lifted him up the mountain to look around? He understood everything at once. He saw the perfectly executed power of the pulsation. Outwardly, this is a terrible state. This power makes the victim feel unbearable pain. But the bones and internal organs are not damaged and the examination will not show anything. And out of anger, he himself launched it forward with quite a lot of force. And he said that school children today are very, very interesting. Chow asks Mr. Hu if he is interested now and surely wants to beat him up to avenge his brother-in-law. Hu asked in response who he took him for. And he added that considering its power of pulsation, what should he do with it? Chow thinks that Mr. Hu will turn a blind eye to all the rules and deal with him himself. But he definitely saw its power of pulsation, and now he is confused. That is why he behaves so discreetly. Chow reminded them of the material. He said that the two parties would compensate for half, so that they would calculate how much he owed and he would pay immediately. He also reminded that the director owed his father and the team payment for performance, and he also wanted to resolve this immediately. Father and the team were very surprised how Chow talked to them. The two directors were starting to get nervous. Mr. Gu broke down and shouted at Chow that even if the injuries were not detectable, he would still have to pay for the treatment. Chow responded with the same emotions, saying that because of the injuries the guards inflicted on his father, he added that they used ancient techniques, and who knows what bones and organs he had damaged. With every word that was said, father and friends all no longer understood where this conversation could lead. And he added, even if the father is fine, what about his injury? Mr. Hu was very surprised by this turn of events. Chow became very interesting for him. He was very interested in this whole situation. Chow a little did not understand his laughter, but asked them how they see the solution to this problem. The two directors were completely unprepared for what awaited them when they were on their way here. Mr. Gu began to explain to his partner that the spiritual spherical nerve of the golden spirit has recently appeared on the market, and if it is of perfect quality, then its price is 300000 Mr. Hu told Chow to pay 300000 and he could take the resource and leave by himself. It was already a pretty good turn of events for Chow, but Hu added that he understood he didn't have that kind of money right now, so he offered him a promissory note. He could wait. Chow came up and held out his phone to prove that he had money. Then he told Mr. Gu to accept the money. Mr. Gu was very surprised when he saw how much money he had. The father immediately began to approach to ask where he got the money from, but Chow preceded him and told him not to worry about the white money. Chow asked Director Kin that he had already given him 300000 and could he take the material, and he said that he didn't care about him now. He quickly raised it from the ground and asked his father to prepare a mixture of silver nitrate, and they put that nerve in that mixture to keep it there well for now. But one director looked at it carefully, and at one point, his face went into a state of shock. He saw that it was a crystallized nerve and its value was one million. When Director Hu heard these words, he almost exploded with anger, but it was too late. Chow told his father that after the harvest, he saw something in it and decided to study it. He went on to say that his father had taught him not to take someone else's, and he thought that Director Gu had also noticed that. Mr. Hu, hearing that his partner guessed about the risk but did not tell him anything, became even more angry. Then, he knew about the conflict between the father and the manager and he offered to share that resource equally, and as a result, everyone would earn several hundred thousand. Now two directors with angry faces were looking at that beaten manager, but Mr. Hu eventually refused and had to buy it back at full value, risking to be mistaken that it was not the special resource he thought it was. 
Hearing this, the father and his friends breathed a sigh of relief. Mr. Hu was both very angry and interested in the boy's personality. He said that he forgot him, that he could take his crystallized nerve and leave. Chow with his father and the team happily returned and went to collect their things. But one employee, who was the leader of the group, told them to wait. He would ask what Meng would do next. Meng didn't have time to say it when Chow got ahead of him and said that they had a new monster delivery man and they had capital to boot and they would be getting ready to go. He said, if they really have a job, is it possible to go to work for them? Chow knew that something serious might happen to Mr. Hu right now, but he was already angry. And besides, there is a certain Shin Hu. Can he stop him from taking his fate into his own hands? Chow said that they definitely won't have a problem with corpses, so they can take many Reaper partners and have enough money for everyone to live well. And that worker began to take off his clothes and tell Mr. Hu that he had enjoyed working with him, but he was leaving at the end of the month. And the other workers began to discuss that Meng and Li are leaving, that they have many corpses of monsters. Mr. Hu immediately flew up to Chow and began to threaten him because he did not understand where he was getting into. Chow knew that no matter how brave he was, he wouldn't dare do anything to him in public. Mr. Hu himself was a little confused because Chow showed no emotion. He couldn't understand what made him nervous. Suddenly, a voice rang out from afar and they began to come closer. Mr. Hu did not yet know what was coming to them, but Mr. Gu saw a gray-haired demon among them. It was Master Ning. Mr. Hu, for some reason, did not know Master Ning, so he was still calm. But when they got closer, he saw that Shen Yupin was with them. He was the deputy captain of the Thunder Team. From a great and formidable warrior, Pan Hu turned into a frightened cat. He quickly ran towards Shen Yupin and began to ask him why he was here. At first, Yu Pen did not understand who it was leaning against him, but then he saw and said that it was old Hu. At this, Hu began to say that he was not old, but that he was Hu's child compared to him. He said that he remembered how he was lucky enough to be on a team with the great Yu Pen last year, and Wang saw his prowess in the battle against the Eagle Demon, and asked what brought him here. He replied that Ning. She said that he had a friend here and he came to see because there was an opportunity for cooperation. Hu looked at Chow and Ning. They were discussing something emotionally. With that, he turned on his friends and told them they were pitiful nothings. Chow suggests that his father go to a second, quieter place to talk to Grandpa Ning and Deputy Shen. But when they were already leaving, he remembered something, what he wanted to do from the very beginning when he came here. He approached the car and looked under it. There was the first director. He was shaking with fear. Chow told him not to be afraid because he is a well-mannered man. He just wanted his thing back. In order for him to be hired here, his father gave him a card for 10000 but now he no longer works here, so he asks to return the card. Manager Shen was shocked by what he heard because his brother-in-law saw it all, and he understood that he was in very serious trouble. Grandfather's granddaughter also saw how scared he was, and in general, this situation looked quite funny from the outside. Mr. Hu began to fume with anger. He is having the worst day today. Chow grabbed the card from his hands, which were shaking a lot, and added about the insurance money that the company withheld for everyone, that tomorrow his father and friends will come to solve this issue, and he thinks that they will do everything right. As a result, he thanked director Mr. H.U. for his understanding. Mr. Hu was ready to just tear that manager to pieces, and they watched as that happy company went to another place to discuss important matters. Mr. Hu picked up that manager and told him he didn't have workers' comp insurance, so what was that guy talking about? And he said that he would explain everything. In the end, Mr. Hu hit him again himself. Grandfather said to Chow that the Thunder Group recently opened a training school and they will be able to kill many monsters and they will need some experienced reapers. And Chow began to ask his grandfather if he would help him sell the crystallized circular nerve because he does not have such sales channels. Grandfather said that in three days there will be a fair of rare materials and there the level of goods is quite high. His thing can be sold quite expensively. Grandfather also suggested that they could go there together. 
Chow said that he would definitely come there and the cars had already arrived for them. Several cars picked up the father, his friends and Chow and took them home. In the car, Chow was thinking why when he taught Faishan a 10% technique and he was given 10 points. But when the grandfather of an elite citizen and a much stronger technique was given only 70 points. But he himself realized that it is probably because Faixin has more prospects. So he needs to find a group of young people in whom everything is still ahead and guide them on the right path. As they drove in the car, he remembered something. That in a past life, in the last stages, brain worms were highly developed. They killed key figures of people. They entered the human brain and affected the nervous system. There are also many monsters that can control the human mind. If those monsters find out about him, they will immediately want to catch him and read his memories. If his secrets are discovered, not only he, but also his family will be in danger. Until he found a way to defeat the other world, he couldn't tell anyone. He understands that he needs to become an authority, to explain everything to everyone in the future and for them to believe him. Chow told his father not to worry too much about today. Vine met a master on the darknet and he taught him a lot so he must enter the university. It was not clear to the father what he could do on these perverted sites. Chow explained that everything there is within reason, that he communicates on the forum. Father was worried about Mr. Chin Hu or whether he would take revenge on him, but today Chow was cool. Chow told him not to worry because when he became a bachelor and the whole university was behind him, what if Kin Hu dared to do something against him then? His father told him that he is a good boy, but he needs to get some sleep because he has to go to school tomorrow. A message from the spark that he received a reward for reducing the chance of his sister becoming a witch to 2%. Chow is just furious. He has already changed the story so that his mother and father are alive and the chance that his sister can turn to the dark side still remains. He does not understand where the darkness is hidden in her. The second day came. Chow came to school. His classmates told him that when he left, Xiong showed them some techniques and they felt super strength like real bulls. They all managed to improve their strength by two times. During one of the breaks, while Chow was sleeping, a student suddenly ran into the class and said that the class teacher had found out about their secret group. And now the class teacher Wang is talking to Xiong and wants to disband their group. Chao immediately guessed who was the one who told all about them. He promised himself that he must teach him today. Chao suddenly jumped up from his seat with very strong emotions, asked in his voice, who is that jerk? Almost everyone from their class joined this group so they definitely wouldn't tell. Chao began to reason that Fei Xiong was so kind and honest, who could have a conflict with him? Chao put everything in such a way that his classmates themselves guessed that it was the elder. They told him that he was not ashamed. He was silent at first, but then abruptly turned around and began to speak to Chao so that he would not blame him. Chao said that he didn't give a name, but he gave himself away with his head. He began to make excuses that he definitely didn't do it, but actually told his uncle the manager. And he added that he considered that method of force as a workaround. Did the classmates not understand what it had to do with what he said? The elder added that the exam is becoming increasingly difficult. And if someone realized that one of them was using some incomprehensible techniques, then they could be disqualified altogether. And the second objected to him that, from what did he take it? That the Faishan technique is a detour. He said he investigated and found that the technique originated on the dark web. He added that Chao knows as well as anyone that the techniques from those sites are very dangerous. Meanwhile, Chao received a notification that the teacher had already partially mastered that technique and would teach everyone how to use it in the future. Chao received 50 points for this passive contribution. At first, Chao himself was surprised that the teacher started teaching that technique, but only he and his friend knew about it, and he decided to play out another scene. He began to say that it was all his fault because if Fei Xun got angry, he would not want to conduct the class. His classmates asked him if he had decided to surrender. Suddenly, a confused Fei Xiong runs into the clave and the first thing he does is look for Chao. He told him that Teacher Wang was very interested in the bull super strength technique and wanted the whole class to learn it. 
but Fake Xiong hadn't told him anything yet because it was Chao's technique. He wanted to ask him first. Chao then continued his game and suddenly jumped up and began to say that Fei Xiong had told him that the teacher had forbidden their group to practice. At this time, the elder, not suspecting anything, told them to stop thinking about all delusions and join him in conscientious work on themselves. But just at that moment, Chao shouted that Teacher Yang had indeed banned the secret group, but he said that the whole class should learn the bull superpower technique for the senior. It was a blow to the back. It was at this moment that the teacher came in, and the elder was in a stupor, that the teacher paid attention to him, or was he all right? Chao then raised his hand and began to tell the teacher that he was wrong. The elder became afraid of what Chao had come up with this time. The teacher also became wary. Chao began to say that Fei Xiong had told him that he had not fully mastered the technique and doubted whether he would be able to train his friends. So he asked Chao to find a way to dissuade everyone from training. The elder and the teacher were intrigued. Chao went on to say that he agreed with him and came up with the crazy idea that he had taken the technique from the darknet. And Fei Xiun is so honest and correct that he believed all of this and even told some of his classmates. And he himself did not know how to tell everything about it now. Chao again twisted the situation to his advantage. He specifically told it very energetically and with emotion to make it look believable, and the elder was broken. The teacher told him to control himself. Chao apologized and said that he was simply tormented by his conscience, and as everyone knows, he is well-mannered and always calm. The teacher partially agreed with him and then wanted to say something. The teacher said that he looked at that technique and it meets all the standards. So as long as all the students are under the teacher's supervision, they will be able to practice that technique freely. Chao suddenly wanted to ask something. He said that the school allocates bonuses for the senior because he wastes energy on the whole class. And now Fei Xiong will also waste energy. Then maybe the senior will share the bonuses with him. For more convincing, Chao asked the opinions of his classmates. The girl said that she thought that the old man would not bother. For a few seconds, everyone was waiting for the elder's reaction. He had no choice but to start playing along in the game that Chao started. Then, he sharply said that if it would be beneficial for the whole class, then he had nothing against it. Fei Xiong was very surprised at Chao's ability to twist everything, and Chao asked him if everything suits him now. The elder said, Fei Xun, what he deserved and he himself thought that Chao had taken half of the bonuses from him so easily, and his uncle had to work very hard to get these bonuses assigned to him. Then the teacher decided to speak so that those who want to enter the university should listen carefully. The first stage, which will come in this school, will be standards for impact strength, shooting skills, and 100-meter running. This year, 150 students will be able to graduate from their school. The second stage will take place in the city education department, where a virtual system will be used to identify intellectual capabilities. The third stage, a real battle test. They will have to go to the outskirts of the city where there is fog and monsters. The road of ascension, it is the road of life and death. It will bring great glory but also great pain if you do not have special talents. One boy objected. He said that this is not fair because if he does poorly in the 100-meter race, it does not mean that he is a weakling in battle. The teacher was outraged by such a phrase. He sharply replied that there was no justice in this world from the very beginning. When Lanchen entered the other world, they were defenseless. Monsters attacked all the time, and they didn't say it was unfair. And at a critical moment, Podnesans were born. Now they are high-flying birds with various privileges. But these privileges did not fall on them from heaven. They had to fight for them as for life. Chao listened to all this in silence, and it was more difficult for him at that moment. The teacher said that this year, the percentage of disabled and seriously injured students on the exam has doubled, and deaths have also become more frequent. And even those who have become disabled will not be able to receive social assistance from officials. Chao understood that the rulers were conspiring to do something and wanted to prepare as soon as possible the greatest number of subordinates for the future struggle. 
The teacher sincerely recommended those students who are weak in combat not to take the exam because it will be a real battle and in case of something, you can lose your life. The teacher invited everyone to the training hall, and if they are not super athletes, then they will not pass the first stage, and then they should not be disappointed. All students, without exception, were very depressed morally. But the teacher, in order to encourage the students a little, said that whoever passes the first grade will receive twice as many resources for improvement from the school as a reward than last year. They had their own slogan, Starting today, they will give up their swords and fists to expand Longchen's living area and glorify him. The teacher said they would start in a few minutes. The students began to say that one did not get enough sleep and would not show a good result. Another began to say that he pulled his leg and now it hurts and he will definitely run 100 meters in more than 10 seconds. But when it came time to show his skills, the one who didn't get enough sleep delivered a shot that was probably in the top five in the class and the one whose leg hurt ran with a record. The girls were also at their best and showed great results. Chow was delighted with everyone. For him, this was the power of youth. And Faizian once again set a record for the entire class. After some time, the teacher began to notice a certain regularity that all the students who participated in that group improved their results several times. For him, technology became very interesting. Everyone who was involved in the group was in a very good mood because they learned to manage a certain force. Chow was pleased with everyone's result, but suddenly he heard words addressed to him that he was a badass. The older man came closer and began to say that if Fexiung exceeded all records and entered the university, then Chow would still remain a retard. Chao understood that a passive-aggressive verbal attack from the elder had begun. He remembers that then he challenged him to a fight because he could not stand his insulting words. But at that moment, his body had not yet healed. As a result, he secretly injured him with a technique that damaged his internal organs, causing him to have a seizure during the exam and fail it. Meanwhile, training was in full swing, and the elder added that Chao will definitely not go to university, only in the next life. Fei Xiong, Chao shouted happily that he had set a new record, and after that, the elder began to say that it was Chao's turn to show his skills. Chao concentrated and began to warm up before the start. And the elder told everyone that Chao would run the race and that everyone looked at him and supported him. Everyone supported him, said that he would definitely be able to enter the university. He was a little saddened by the fact that the elder would not leave him alone. He crashed with monsters in his neighborhood at dinner and feels weak so he can only use 50% of his strength. One of the students said that now let him show everything he can, and after school he will teach him the bull method. The elder began to say that they all know about his condition. He said that the main thing is to show yourself that you can. While Chow was getting into position, he realized that his body was very weak, and he would not be able to use even the primitive strength of a bull. But this year he used the power of pulsation and we decided to try to use it. Meng Chao was ready to start and blue energy began to gather around him. The elder was very surprised when he saw this. He guessed what Chao wanted to apply. Chao was ready to start and told the elder to move. He is so fast at the start, the older one, that he bounced back from the airstream because he was standing right behind him. Chao started and that blue energy filled the whole hall. His start was very fast. He clocked 90 and ran in 8 seconds and 57 milliseconds, which was very fast, one of the fastest results from the entire school. But Chao understood that it would be impossible for him to show his strength strongly. Therefore, he showed that he was disappointed with his result, that he did not even get into the top three in this school. The elder, along with other students, stood and were shocked by what they saw. Fei Xiong approached Chao to ask him about his speed. But Chao had to say that he knew it was very slow when in fact it was very fast. And Fei Xiun saw that he wanted to brag in this way and it annoyed him. The teacher, after looking at the results, asked Chao if his injury had healed. He said that he is not fully recovered yet, but he has been training in pulse mode for a whole year and has found a new method of training. If any of his classmates need it, he can share it. He said that they can pay with drugs or immediately with money. It doesn't matter to him. One student thought that if their class already had two new techniques, 
then their class would surpass everyone else. Fei Xiong asked Chao about his punching power, which must have grown as well. But Chao told him that he took him for some kind of monster or something. He emphasized once again that he helped his father yesterday, and now he can't even quickly raise his arms uphill. So, in this test, he will just try to show something. The students began to debate his chance given his super speed. Some said that maybe his technique will help him gain about 180 kilograms, then he will pass. And others say that the skill of pulsation will not help in that matter. Chow braced himself and struck the target. As a result, the target bounced a little and he gained 218 kilograms of force. His classmates could not understand how he managed it. They did not understand how he was cured. Some even began to fear him. Here, Chow himself was disappointed because he applied all the strength he had. He wanted to see a greater result. Fei Xiong looked at him and did not understand what was happening here. And Chow explained to him that he did not deceive him, that he was not strong in taking the power of the bull, and here he used the pulsation technique. Fei Xiong thought that Chow had started bragging too much and asked the teacher to come out and beat him, and the other students wanted to join in because they didn't like braggarts. Chow was frightened and offered them all to buy a drink at his expense. It actually worked and those angry students stopped. The teacher told them all to calm down and not bother Meng Chow because they all know what the situation is at his house. Chow told the teacher that he had earned some money last night and would treat his classmates himself. But there is a bottom very flawed topic that needs to be discussed. He turned to the senior and said that he had repeatedly humiliated him and he wanted to end it today. Chow appealed to Master Wang to help him bring justice. The situation was tense. The students were surprised by this turn of events. The teacher was in an uncomfortable position. He felt like he was in a kindergarten and asked Chow what could be the misunderstanding. The headman then said that he simply stimulates him to develop. Maybe he is a little strict, but it is for his good. But Chow took out some kind of pen-like device and lifted it to the top. When he pressed the button, a voice appeared and said that you will still be trash and if you want to enter the university, then only in the next life. The teacher and students were simply shocked to hear such words and it sounded like an elder. Girls who respected and glorified him were very disappointed in him. The teacher was also shocked that Chow had a dictaphone pen. The elder began to make emotional excuses that he framed him, and the one who carries a dictaphone with a pen means that he has prepared to frame someone. Chow said it happened more than ten times, then he took a recorder to record it. It started after he beat him in tenth grade. Besides, he spoke much worse than he had recorded today. The elder thought that only a few times, not ten, as he says. But he excused himself and said that it was a hoax. Chow began to tell that he found a secret pulsation technique and began to study it, because he is strong and now stands proudly in front of the elder. He was afraid to tell the teacher and his classmates about the technique, because he was afraid that if he didn't succeed, he would fall into an even deeper hole from which he would never get out, because he was most afraid that the elder would say again that he would forever remain a waste. Such a story shocked everyone. None of them could think that there were such problems between them. Chow crushed the handle of the dictaphone and said that he knows that in this recording he did not mention his name and that his uncle is a teacher, so he will definitely not be able to achieve justice. Besides, this is not his way to achieve justice. Of course, Fei Xiong was surprised by Chow's act because there was evidence of it, and he threw the fragments at the elder and asked him if he would dare to accept his challenge. The elder was at first confused. He did not expect such large-scale actions from Chow. And when he understood, he angrily asked Chow that it was he who wanted to become an elder. He said that it did not matter to him whether he would become an elder. But the most important thing was that he should not be one. Chow reassured the teacher because the first stage is until next week. Chow suggested that he and the senior will compete in the same categories as the exam because it does not contradict the rules. The elder agreed and accepted Chao's challenge. Teacher Wang told everyone to continue their studies and called the elder one after him. When the elder passed by Chao, he told him that he was giving him one week to prepare for shooting. 
When they left, the students told Chow that they had no idea that the elder was so cruel, and others said that he was in a hurry because the elder is a member of the falconry club. They go to shooting training every week. Chow told them with a smile not to worry because he also has a very good shooting level. His level at that time was perfect. Then Chow reached out to one girl, but she asked him not to move her, and he just wanted to help her tune her muscles. Fei Xiong saw this and poked Chow, told him to adjust his muscles. As he gathered his briefcase, he thought about how he could teach them the pulsation technique, because for now, they might think something wrong about him. He realizes that he needs to hurry to earn more deposit points to have enough to treat his injuries. Chow found Fei Shun and asked him to go with him because he had something to say. Chow said that he should approach Demon Yang later and ask him for advice on the bull's strength. They went to the big stadium to talk. Fei Xiong began to ask Chow that that teacher was teaching more than just their class, and then him. He will tell the whole school and everyone will know their secret power. Chow noticed several important points because Demon Yang is from the army, and if Fei Xiong tells him about the technique, he will look at him in a completely different way, and this will help him achieve his dream. The second point is that Chow wants to overthrow the elder, so they need to enlist the support of the demon Yang, since the old man has a mentor. When Fei Shen heard his plan, he could not control himself and just started shouting. Chow begged him with all his might not to shout, but to just listen to him. Chow said that they will not be able to hide the things that are happening in their class, then they themselves should be more open to everyone. And if thanks to this they manage to win the support of the demon Ian and the school principal, then they will do very well. Fei Xiong suggested that they go to the demon Yan together, so that when the time comes they will enter the military school together. Chow said that it was not for him. He needed to find a master in the field of pulsation power more. And the demon Yang knows exactly what strength and courage are, and he would be able to teach Fei Shun the perfect strength of a bull. Fei Xiong said that Chao wants to find a princess who perfectly teaches the pulsation skill. Chao mentioned about her that she is actually a very good teacher, but she is still quite young now. It is in the future that she will reveal her power. Fei Xiong asked Chao with a stern face why he was smiling so strangely. Chao suddenly became serious and asked him how he knew about that princess. He said that the technique was for girls. That princess saw live broadcasts on the social network. She would gather several people and give them buckets of water. And when she spoke, they simultaneously poured water over her. And only then was her true essence revealed. With water, you could see the ripple effect very well. She made it so that all the water flew away from her in an instant due to the reception of the pulsation. And then she wanted to repeat that technique but improve it. Chow watched her broadcast and saw that she was still very weak right now. Then he thought that the phone had a very small image and the slight ripples were very hard to see. And then he remembered that you can display the image on the TV. She said to pay attention to the vibrations in the abdomen. Chow thought it was a good thing the TV was in high quality because he wouldn't have seen anything. While he was watching, he himself noticed a lot of mistakes in her performance. And suddenly the front door opened and there stood my mother and sister, surprised by what they saw. Chow did not understand why they closed the door and the sister told her mother to come in later. Chow himself opened the door and asked why they did not come in. And the sister asked him with surprise whether it is possible to come in now. And he could not understand that she had tents. They entered and Chow took the phone and went to his room, but he thought that his sister was somehow suspicious. She turned on the TV and it showed Chow on the phone. The sister was shocked that she could watch that broadcast and not pay for it. Chow wrote her a comment saying that she still needed to work on some things, but she only partially read his comment. He realized that it would probably be better to write her in private messages, but he understands that there are many messages and she is unlikely to see his messages. Then he came up with an idea that was sure to work. Suddenly she received a message that some user under the pseudonym Old Fireholder sent her a million flying shuttles. She has never had such a big horse. She was sincerely surprised that she has such viewers who are ready to give her such gifts. She will thank him for his support. She said that she understands that her skills are not yet perfect, but she will try not to let her viewers down. 
Fei Xiong also watched that broadcast, and after that gift had ended, he was disappointed that money rules everything in that world. Meanwhile, her sister also watched her on TV and was shocked that her brother gave her 10,000,000 yuan. She thought that something might be wrong here. She went and stood by the door to her brother's room to find out what was wrong with her brother, because that money would have been enough for their family to live on for three months. Through the gap in the passage, she saw how Chow was holding a piece of meat in his hands. It scared her very much. After what she saw, she was sure that her brother had lost his mind and she should tell her parents everything so that they could talk to him. She was still standing by the door when she heard him say that he was going to make a tutorial showing how to use the pulsation skill to turn this piece into mincemeat. And thus, he planned to get the princess contribution points. The assistants of that princess told her that her broadcasts had become very popular. They also said that her broadcasts are even better than Professor Wong's lessons. She said that they cannot be compared because his method is combat and it is not suitable for all people. That is why less people watch it. They told her that today they had a meeting with the president of the Martial Arts Inventions Association, so she should come. Besides, the higher circles of society would be there. She told them to go and she would come later when she cleaned up. While she was walking, she saw a message from someone who gave her 10,000 yuan. She did not open other messages because she was annoyed by advice from different people. But she opened that message only because of the money. At first, she did not see anything unusual in that message. But after reading a little more of the text, her interest increased dramatically. When she read to the end, she became very interested in what was written there. For her, there was simply too important information that would greatly change her life. She immediately called her brother and told him that she would not be able to come to the meeting, and then she asked him to come to her because he had to see for himself. He came to her as quickly as possible. He asked her what could have happened, that she was in such a hurry. She showed him the message and told him to look at it carefully. The brother was interested because there was a clear formula and a clear idea, and he also could not think that there could be any detours in that style, and that anonymous person pointed them out. Her brother asked her who could send such a thing. She said that she still does not know who it is, but there is a video. The video showed Chow holding meat in one hand and tofu in the other. The brother said that the power of that master is simply amazing. He turned that piece into minced meat in half a minute. But in the second hand, the tofu did not even move and he practiced all this at home. And for her, the most terrible thing was that in his technique, seven or eight variants of the pulsation technique were combined, about which she knows nothing. The brother could not understand why the stranger showed her all this. What benefit was he pursuing? She said that he told her to start telling everyone about these techniques, and when she promoted this new pulsation force technique, she would contribute to the development of Lung Shen. Her brother told her that this is very serious and she needs to tell the teacher soon. And the princess, in her thoughts, could not figure out who that strange bearer of fire was. Father and Chow stood on the balcony and looked at the night luncheon. The father said that Chow has already grown so much that he can even become the support of their family. Chow's mother told the man what her sister had seen and said that only he could speak to Chow. Father didn't know how to start that conversation, but he said he would keep it short and ask Chow to just listen. It was a difficult topic for him, and he remained silent for a while, creating discomfort for himself and Chow. To make this difficult task easier for himself, my father smoked. He said that first of all, he has exams coming up soon and he has to put all his strength into training. And when the exams are over, and if he is interested in a girl, then he can bring her home and he, as a father, will support him. And secondly, the situation in Lunchena is relatively bad, and so that he does not forget about contraception. When the father finally said that, the milestone really wanted to dissolve into smoke. And Chow, in his mind, could not understand what his demonic sister had told his mother. He then received a message from the spark that the elite citizen Yan Feijo and the princess had received an epiphany about the true power of the pulsation. And Chao was given 99 contribution points for this. And she began to push that information gradually, and Chao received constant reward notices.
he finally found the right way for him to use the spark. He couldn't tell anyone what he knew, and there was a lot he didn't know, and he needed to create a secret and unpredictable teacher. Then he could rely on him to learn various secrets from him. Now he has to build that secret teacher a good reputation on the darknet, so that when he refers to him, he won't be considered a fool. As a result, he went to his room, and his parents wondered what would happen next, although his father said that this was the time of youth. Chow sat down in a chair and thought what image should he create for the old fire bearer. And then he got the idea that he would be a wild but very strong improv teacher. Chow was sitting in the darkness and he was acting on behalf of that imaginary teacher. He was answering people's various questions and giving advice. Also told the story on forums that will really help people to make him a very good reputation. Now the favorite awkward questions to him will have one answer, that it's all an old teacher from the darknet. On an account of emotional discussions on forums, he liked to tease people and then leave the dialogue. The spark worked to the full. He constantly receives messages about his contribution to the development of luncheon and various awards. He looked at that and understood that at this rate, 3,000 points would be collected overnight. The next morning in one of the elite houses of Lucan, that girl, the princess, asked her father that the truth and the power of repulsion are so strong. He said that she was really strong because that was the only way they could fool the princess of Ripple. She did not understand and thought that she had been deceived because the technique was fake. But the father said that it is not fake, but very dangerous, extreme, and very wild. He said that there is a saying that he who is half a step ahead of the era is a talent, and he who is three steps ahead is a madman and that repulsion technique is at least three steps ahead of its time. She clarified with her father that the technique is much stronger than what they know now. He said that the price of that technique is 20% increased oxygen absorption. He urged her to start thinking with her head, because a 20% increase in oxygen absorption is not just a couple more breaths. He couldn't understand why he would turn a good and working piece of machinery into something very complex and dangerous, beyond all levels of skill. The daughter was very interested and alarmed by what she heard. The longer he trained his repulsive magic power, the scarier it became. And the one who created that technique is either a genius or a madman and most likely very dangerous. That technique was created for times that will be a hundred times more cruel than now. This is for warriors that will be ten times stronger than they are to fight monsters that will be ten times stronger than they are now. He saw this as an opportunity. If the equipment was released on behalf of their family, then the government of war ministers would listen to them more, and everyone else who is interested in such methods will be useful. But his daughter interrupted his momentary triumph and said that the information had already spread through the forums. Her father told her to make a publication that their Yan clan had nothing to do with that wild pulsation technique, and he, for his part, will involve people to monitor the situation. She asked her father about her grandfather if they would tell him. He said this, he is still in a state of loneliness and all their team is working with him on version 2.0 without stopping. Now with all the information her father had told her, she wanted even more to find out who that old fire bearer was. The next morning, Chow woke up at six in the morning. He expected a better result because for the night only 1443 contribution points were accumulated. When they had breakfast as a family, the sister drew Chow's attention to the fact that he was playing on the phone at the table and his mother supported her because they only eat at the table. As it is, they always teased each other. When Chow left, he reminded his parents to supervise his sister so that she did not forget to practice her stances because they are very important in perfection. And his sister told him that he was a stupid brother, but in her mind she wished him a good day. When Chow was driving to school, he saw a new broadcast and started watching it. She told that a new crazy and dangerous pulsation technique appeared in the city. The consequences of its improvement are unknown to anyone. Chow hoped she wasn't talking about his newest pulsation method. She said that the founder used their clan to cheat and they would reserve the right to legal intervention, and they hoped that the creator of that technique will come to his senses and destroy the order with it. The commentators in that broadcast supported her. 
they said that it was very dangerous. Chow was very surprised because, in the future, it was Princess Yang Faizhou who introduced and perfected that new pulsation technique. Chow began to fantasize about him telling her about his knowledge and the latest secret techniques. Then he would tell her to delete the video because now she sees the old man's teachings as unnecessary. But then she would have to kneel down and hug his legs. He imagined her kneeling and begging him for forgiveness. He really became interested in what form she asks for forgiveness. First, he was going to the fair of valuable resources, but before that, he needs to improve his knowledge of the initial art of harvesting. He was heading to the bathroom. He needs to awaken as many memories as possible to find a way to heal. He was a little disappointed because he expected more, because 1,758 deposit points came out for the whole day. He will hope that he will be able to find the memories that Grandfather Nin needs. He sat down on the toilet and began to raise the level, gradually reaching 432 points, which he spent. And suddenly, memories of various plants appeared in his head, and he realized that this was what was needed. It was the juice of the root of the hundred-year-old red heart grass and the wings of the red queen bee. With the help of these specific tips, Grandpa Ning will definitely be able to find the treatment he needs. He still has 1,200 deposit points left, which is just enough for basic treatment. He spent 1150 points and his recovery process was at 71%. This procedure was very pleasant for him. When he finished that procedure, he boarded another bus that would take him to the fair. While they were driving, he saw through the window the tall building in which the fair will be held. When he arrived and approached her, he was amazed by what he saw. There were luxury cars, people were flying in the air on jetpacks, and all the guests were dressed as if for an evening ball. He was in a very uncomfortable position. He immediately lost the desire to go there. In his imagination, the fair should be held in a completely different way, where there would be a lot of people. They should all be shouting for a better price. But he could not retreat and there was no time to change clothes, so there was simply no other choice. Gathering courage, he went into that big house because the fair was on one of its floors. He expected to sell this resource now at a very high price. When the elevator doors opened, both Chow and the guards were surprised. They immediately said that he is a schoolboy, and the fair is for high-quality materials and entry is only by passes. Chow was a little confused and uncertainly said that he was invited by Grandpa Ning. But the guards didn't care about anything except the pass. If it wasn't there, they didn't let them in. A little disappointed, Chow went out into the corridor and took out his phone, and the guards discussed that some schoolboy wanted to deceive them. Chow called Ning's grandfather and asked him to come out and meet him because the guards wouldn't let him in. Ning said he wasn't there yet. He would be back in ten minutes and told him to give the phone to the security guard. Chow came up and told the guards that they wanted to talk to them, and he thought to himself that they were not the organizers of the banquet and would not decide whether he would pass the exam. Grandpa said he was Mr. Ning Shi and gave his invitation number. Then he said that they should definitely miss the young man at the fair. The guard began to apologize and said that they would do everything. The security guard respectfully said that Mr. Ning before hanging up and asking for Chow's forgiveness, began to open the door for him and invite him inside. Grandfather also began to apologize because he thought that it was because of him that he was offended. But Chow told him that it was his own fault for coming too early and added that even if the grandfather did not hurry, he would wait for him. Chow entered the hall where there were many people, they were all very expensively dressed, and he constantly heard conversations about very large sums of money. For some, 100 million was expensive, and for others it was trifles. He was a little uncomfortable to be alone among such people, in whom the topics for conversation were only about money. In different corners of that hall, different people were bragging about their gains in order to appear more wealthy in relation to others. Chow became a little difficult because... He alone saw those cool hotels in a state of ruins and all the beautiful girls in expensive dresses turned into naked skeletons. He knows better than anyone that today they are important people with influential connections, 
and tomorrow they will turn into burning ants in their death throes. It doesn't matter how rich someone is or what class they belong to because it's just an illusion. But in this life he feels completely different, as if he clearly knows that this is a game and he knows its rules. He is interested in whether there are still luncheony places where he will not be able to enter. Well, of course, only food in this world is real, because it gives a real sense of the power that is needed to work against monsters. While Chow was eating, he heard that those people began to discuss him, that he was a strange, hungry schoolboy. They considered someone like Chow to be some kind of second grade, not very different from monsters. They discussed that when they destroyed all the monsters, they would surely start to destroy the likes of Chow. But others said that dealing with such people is not interesting at all. He listened to all this and ate at the same time. For him, what he heard was very crazy. He would never have thought that those higher circles of society would have such an opinion about the common people. But the information he had and what he heard just made him laugh. Those people heard that someone was laughing but did not understand who it was. And then Chow saw Mr. Ning and began to call him to him. Mr. Ning was dressed in an understated but sophisticated style befitting an older man. And his granddaughter was simply beautiful, in a very beautiful red dress. When they approached Chow, Ning immediately asked him if he wanted to brag to everyone. Chow at first did not understand what he wanted to tell him. The granddaughter explained to him that he specially dressed so that everyone would pay attention to him and tease him and she herself asked if he had such a way to become famous among the reapers. Chow was a little confused that his friends also paid attention to him, but they did not know that he had an incident. He said that he did not want to attract attention. It was a certain coincidence and said that Mr. Ning could pretend not to know him. Ning didn't really mean that, but that he thought his mentor had told him everything about how such events were conducted. And then Chow decided to tell them that he didn't really have a mentor. He just met a grandfather on the internet named Old Firebearer, and he often gives him various advice, but he doesn't know if he can call him a mentor. The friends were very surprised because they thought that his mentor was some mutual acquaintance of theirs, and the one whom they called Chow they had never heard of. That old man, very strong and wise at the same time, he gave up earthly goods and directed all his strength to improving people's lives. The friends listened intently as Chow talked about that old man's strengths, but their expressions showed disbelief. Chow told them that they should be more confident in their conclusions at that old man's expense and could not have doubts. Suddenly, Mr. Gu began to complain to young Mr. Zoon that someone had beaten him. Very emotionally, he told that the person who did this does not recognize his teacher. Mr. Zoon pointed his finger into the hall and said that maybe he was referring to him. He was pointing at Meng Chao, who was talking with Ning's grandfather and his granddaughter at that moment. Chao told the grandfather that he asked his friend about his illness, and he immediately told him two things. The first is the root juice of the century-old heart-devouring grass and the wing of the queen bee worm. He hoped that Ning understood what the old man meant. Listening to what Chow said, Ning immediately saw the logic in those components. The principle of knocking out a wedge with a wedge works there. By its nature, the red bee is the sworn enemy of the purple viper and is able to decompose its poison very quickly. It also produces another poison that can stop the heart of purple vipers. A thousand-year-old herb, its toxicity is so great that it causes very active stimulation of all muscles. And in the combination of all those components in the right proportions, it will be possible to neutralize the poison of the viper. Nin thought about all this in his mind so that he stopped moving and his granddaughter was worried about him. Everything was fine. It was very important to him. Now he has a way to get rid of the disease that he has had for years, and it took the old fire bearer a few seconds to solve his problem. Chow, an elite citizen, had the opportunity to improve his knowledge, and he received an award. For people like Ning, he was given more points, and in his eyes they looked like sheep that he was shearing. Chow gave the information as if he himself did not understand the essence of the method, and the fire bearer did not say anything else. 
Ning himself had to understand the essence of that method, and that's how everything turned out. Ning said that he and the scientist will derive the correct formula and do everything. Ning asked Chao how he could thank that fire bearer, because the method was salvation for him. Chao said that he did not need anything, neither fame nor wealth was important to him. According to Chao, the fire bearer generally despises money. Next, Chao offered to show Nina a few more techniques from the technique of seven guan solutions that the old man had shown him. In this way, Chao showed what a good sage that old man was. While Chao showed techniques and received contribution points, Mr. Gu asked his friend what that schoolboy was doing there. Meanwhile, an influential man wanted to challenge Nino, but he found out that he was sick and realized that everyone would think that he took advantage of this opportunity. It so happened that that gentleman heard all this and understood some things for himself. Mr. Jun began to think that Mr. Gu was beginning to cause him trouble, but he will help him because they have common interests. They discuss that Ning Shi is sick and has lost 90% of his success, and that schoolboy is his successor. Mr. Gu regretted letting Chao go with Mr. Hu that day. They decided to talk to Chao that day and try to frame him. And at this time, Chao and Ning were sitting at the table, and Chao continued to show him secret harvesting techniques. He showed it as if he didn't understand it very well himself, and Ning had to understand through his experience what he had in mind. Ning was shocked at how high level those techniques were and that old man was handing them to him just like that. Shi worried about Grandpa again, but he was fine. He says she just doesn't understand the power of those techniques. Ning decided to question Chao once again if that old man really allowed him to talk about the improved techniques, and then what does he want in return? Chao shook his head and said that nothing was needed. The old man said that the lovely arts, harvesting techniques and strength are all the quintessence of the wisdom and work of the Lucan people. They were received from the people and will be returned to the people. Chao said that the sage was very hopeful that Pan Ning would recover and be able to learn advanced techniques. Ning began to consider himself a disciple of that old man and he will try to make Longshan better. The granddaughter also glorified that old man because she understood that he had raised such a boy as Chao. Ning, under the impression of Chao, once again emphasized to her granddaughter that she had established a relationship with him because he was a hundred times more reliable than that Mr. Lao Feijian. Then he told her that he would go to the guests and that she should look after Chao. It was difficult for the granddaughter to accept such an idea because Chao was still an apprentice and three years younger than her. Nin was very surprised by what he saw. The granddaughter also did not understand why he did it, and all because Chao was standing between them and holding plates full of food in both hands. Chao and the granddaughter were sitting together and discussing something, but the granddaughter was thinking in her mind what exactly she should do. The young man slowly approached them from behind. He was angry with Chao because he laughed at him and his friends at first, and now he has a crush on his girlfriend. Such actions of Chao made him very angry, and his relationship with him was resolved before it even started. He came over and asked Shui what she was doing here. Then he asked what kind of weirdo is sitting with her. And then Pangu said that he knew that schoolboy. He said that he is a poor man from a poor district, and I can't even understand how he got to that event. And the second said that it was funny to him because he was speaking from the Alliance, and they have nothing in common. Chao and Soyushi have not yet responded to those people's comments. Then he asked that Chao is surely the successor of Grandpa Ning, and suddenly Soyushi poured what was in her grocery into his face. She was not ashamed at all and sharply told him that he would leave them alone. That young gentleman was shocked that she did that and reached out to her with his hand. But Mr. Gu reminded him that there are many people around and that this is not a place where you can relax. He abruptly turned around and walked away and thought that Soyushi herself had given him the reason to take action. He himself was wondering how things would turn out. Soyushi asked if Chao was okay, and she begged Chao for that man and said he was crazy. Chao said that he was fine and to see that she acted very abruptly. Soyushi was very embarrassed because of that situation. She kept thinking about how she should get closer to Chao. 
Suddenly, a voice rang out, saying that the bidding would begin soon. The presenter wished everyone good luck. The first lot crystal, circular nerve with good appearance and freshness of 70%, AIN is very useful and its starting price is 900,000 yuan. In a matter of seconds, the price rose to 1,300,000 yuan. Chow was very impressed by the principle by which bidding works. After two hours of bargaining, they moved on to another activity. It was necessary to find out what kind of object was presented. A group of blood wolves got some material, but no one has told them what it is yet. The captain of that group said that they found that item three days ago in the distant fog, but they don't know what properties that material has and where it can be used. As soon as a buyer is found, they will pay for the expert's work. The two gentlemen began to talk about the rumor that the gray-haired demon Ning had taken an apprentice, and Ning himself was a great master, but he was sick, so they suggested that his apprentice show his knowledge. So Yushi yelled at him to stop talking nonsense. Mr. Meng is her grandfather's friend, and it has nothing to do with their families. But he continued to say that Ning is injured by snake venom, and now he is losing level and making friends with anyone. He needs to learn how to get out of the game in time. For a second, Ning thought that the sucker had completely lost his temper, because no matter how much he himself wanted to lower his status, he would not be able to speak like that now. But Chao confidently said that he would be able to research this material. He himself thought how to become famous, and here was such an opportunity he could not miss it. He had a plan to publicly embarrass Chao, and when Ning intervened, they would both be humiliated, and his grandfather's dream of Ning being pushed from the top would be fulfilled. And so Yutsi will understand that she made a mistake. She looked at him at that moment and guessed that he would do his best to humiliate Chao. When he got on stage, the group commander congratulated him that he would be the first to look at that material. As soon as the commander removed the screen, a strong energy was released from that object that everyone could see. Discussions began in the hall that the monster must have needed hundreds of years to grow such a powerful item. It took Chow a few seconds to discover what the resource was. He noticed that the group was very lucky. It was a water dragon's eye but he still didn't say anything in his voice. In a moment, his attention was drawn, something strange in that stone. He took a special device for magnification to take a good look at those suspicious areas. He looked at that resource from all possible angles for some time to be 100% sure. As a result, he said that he did not know what kind of resource it was, and in the hall, they immediately began to say that Mr. Ning was mistaken in it and why he then considered it for so long and in general he was told to leave the stage. Suddenly he pushed Chow and said that he did not expect such a failure from Mr. Ning's friend, but he knows what it is about and will tell everyone now. The host asked Mr. Zun to tell everyone about that resource. In the depths of the mist, far beyond luncheon, grows a solitary herb that bears fruit every three years and there is a very small chance that she bore the mutated phantom eye fruit. And after this fruit was eaten by a wild boar, it turned into a small bone. And the super monster of the third level, the red-tailed golden boa, really likes to eat those wild boars. Under the influence of digestive juice, that fruit will gradually become a crystal, and it is the eye of the water dragon. And to sum it up, that resource is the eye of the water dragon. The captain confirmed his words that they were really looking for that monster, and it had the remnants of a boar's wool in it, and there was forest grass nearby. The people in the hall praised Mr. Zun, and at the same time oppressed Chow and Ning, saying that the old man did not understand anything if he took such a person as his student. Nin was very surprised by what he heard in his address. He blames his granddaughter for being very impulsive with Mr. Jun and also involving Chow in that situation. But someone was smart enough to say that he was just a schoolboy, and the fact that he was friends with Nin could not mean that he should know everything about that resource. The presenter then asked what the cost of that material was, which everyone was worried about. Almost immediately, he replied that the cost is 5,250,000 yuan.
The presenter was surprised that he answered so quickly and also named such an exact amount. He wondered what the reasons were. He thinks that the harvest was pretty rough and he was damaged, so it is suspected that he lost a third of his strength. Otherwise, a water dragon's eye in perfect condition is worth at least ten million. He said to the captain that their group had grown very quickly, and it would be good for them to work with good professionals. The captain told him that he would tell their director about his proposal. He immediately offered one man to buy that material for five million five hundred thousand thousand. He said with a smile that he really called him young, and he offered a group of wolves six million. The captain of the group naturally agreed and thanked the buyer and Mr. Zun for their help. Zun advised Chow that entering this profession is easy, but the peaks in it are very high. To become a great reaper, you need to inherit the great wisdom of the whole family. He noticed that people like him living in rented accommodation would never be able to touch such a treasure as the eye of a water dragon. He also said that he doesn't know what made Mr. Ning choose him, but he should understand that his mistakes are not only hurting him. Nina's friends began to question him. How did he get to such an event? Mr. Gu added that he also knew him because his father worked as a lowly job as a simple reaper, but he had the ability to steal and they kicked him out. Meanwhile, the captain offered the buyer and the expert to discuss the details of their contract. So Yushi was very angry with Lao Jun. She couldn't believe that he would allow himself to insult Meng Chao like that. Ning was also disappointed by this situation and really wanted to help Chao regain his reputation. Suddenly, Chao said that he really thought it was a water dragon's eye, was shocked that Chao was still saying anything at all, and Chao was very angry because that braggart threw dirt on him, misidentified the material, and now he just wants to leave. Zun said that Chao has already used his chance and now wants to come up with some trick to justify himself. He said that he didn't really know what the material was, but he knew for sure that it wasn't a water dragon's eye. Ning thought that Chao had come up with something to save his reputation, but he advised him to say nothing and get off the stage. He immediately saw that it was a water dragon's eye, but when he looked again, he was already sure that it was a demonic dragon's eye. That was why he had been looking at that item for so long. Zun said that in order not to be ashamed, he invented some kind of demonic dragon's eye. Ning knew that Chao was not one to talk nonsense, but the demonic dragon eye was strange even for him to hear such a thing. Chao repeated the information about forest grass and that it bears fruit every three years. He said that every reaper who studied well knows that information. But in fact, a ghost eye fruit can mutate twice and then it will turn into a demonic eye fruit. And if first the golden-maned boar ate the fruit of the demonic eye, then the hardened core of the crystal will become the eye of a demonic dragon. If they are going to use a demon dragon eye as a water dragon eye to increase their strength, the one who takes that device will instantly lose his mind and die. Bye. Once again, I repeated that you cannot take one resource for another. The gentleman who almost bought that resource did not know how to react to him, whether to be angry with him or thank him. Zun continued to point out why Chao is saying anything else because he has lost his chance and it looks like he wants to regain his honor. There are 15 types of demonic dragon eyes in the world and he's just a schoolboy, so he definitely couldn't tell which one it was. That's why he said he didn't know. But the Reaper must be honest. Bear any foolishness when you only know part of the information is a very frivolous decision because the consequences will be terrible. Zun began to get nervous. He accused Chao of just lying because it was obvious to everyone that it was the eye of a water dragon. Chao said that the favorite of the demonic dragon eye species has little toxicity. You can make a small hole in it and take the powder, then put it in the toxin tester and a reaction will occur. Jin said that he bit Chao's idea because he immediately knew that no one would do such a check because the resource would become unusable after such a thing and therefore, it was impossible to check his version. You may not check, but when young Mr. Guo starts bleeding from all possible places and becomes abnormal, that's when he admits his mistake. Jin asked Mr. Guo whether he would really believe him or that schoolboy from the rental housing district. Mr. Guo smiled and thought that he was just a drinking buddy with him. 
but suddenly his attention was drawn to the phrase eight million that sounded from the hall. Grandfather Nin offered eight million for that resource and said that at the same time they will check whether it is the eye of a water dragon or a demonic eye. People were very surprised. They started discussing that maybe he is his illegitimate son. And Mr. Guo said, if Mr. Ning took part in this, it will be very interesting for everyone to check what will happen. Zun was very angry because a resource worth several million will be ruined because of the foolish thoughts of a simple boy. They brought a special set of instruments. Mr. Ning himself will handle the operation. He put on special equipment and began to work, while all the spectators watched with great interest. Later, multicolored rays began to appear that came out of that resource. The presenter noticed that a very strange smell appeared. The captain said it was the power of the resource leaking to the surface. Mr. Gu thought about how much trouble that boy had brought them. So Yushi also watched this process with great interest. She was sure that Chao was right. People, after they smelled that smell, began to think that there really could be poison. Later, it was possible to obtain a little powder for the experiment. All that remains is to add a few drops of a special solution and everything will become clear. And immediately after the reaction, the poison appeared. Everyone started saying that the schoolboy was right. And Ning said that he is not some schoolboy, but Pan Meng. Ning himself was shocked because he did not have the information that Chao told him but simply trusted him. And so Yushi was amused by this situation because now Zun was very embarrassed in front of everyone. The man who was supposed to buy that material was very angry with Zun. Zun was very embarrassed because he was embarrassed in front of all his friends and influential people. And Chao began to get opportunities because those people learned about a new resource and increased their knowledge. He managed to discover a new way to earn deposit points. Zun decided to just leave that hall, but he heard someone tell him to wait. Chao decided to say a few words to him, hoping to get more points. He said that he and Ning were just friends, and since he initially called him a mentor, he decided to tell him a couple of tricks of the profession of a mower. Jun, did you think that schoolboy would be able to tell him? It does not matter how strong the reaper is, he must have the courage to admit what he does not know. Because at that time, Zun had only superficial knowledge and began to tell, and this could have cost the man his life. But so far, he did not accept his words, because Chao haven't received the deposit points yet. He said that he should understand him correctly, because he advises him from a pure heart and does not want to humiliate him. He also advises to think carefully about it. It can change his life. Because if he doesn't change, it can end badly. Zun blew even more angrily because he took Chao's words as a threat. Chao said that it is not a threat at all. If he does not understand it now, let him just remember the words that Uncle Meng said to him. Suddenly, someone covered Chao's mouth so he wouldn't say anything more. It was Nin and Soyushi. Nin said that his friend had good intentions. He just didn't know how to express his opinion properly and advised everyone not to pay attention to him. Zun began to blame Ning for letting that stupid dog in here to bite people. Does he not respect his grandfather? Ning himself was starting to get angry with Zun for saying such things. Ning said that his grandfather raised a very good grandson. Ning said that Zun wanted to make him angry so that he would provoke his grandfather and he would take advantage of the fact that he was sick and crush him. Chao and Soyushi were shocked to see Grandpa Nin in a rage. And Ning said, let his wish be fulfilled. Will he dare to publicly clarify his relationship with him in a month? Zun laughed and said that in a month they would know whose jade method was true. When that day comes, he hopes that no one will say that his grandfather is insulting a disabled person whose hands are shaking. Ning menacingly said that even a disabled person could handle Lao San Tong. All the guests were surprised that Ning's demonic hand summoned poisonous hands for battle. They couldn't understand who that Meng Chao was that Ning himself stood up for him. It came three hours after the end of the fair. Ning said that he would send the materials that Chao needed through Sueshi. When they went outside, Pan was standing there. He said that he had been waiting for Meng Chao for a long time. He handed him his business card and a card with 300,000 money on it for his work, 
and told him to call if he had any questions or needed help. He handed him the cards and left, while Chow stood and thought what to do with them. Suishi told him to take the business card, but not to approach him unless absolutely necessary, as he was also a major and his methods of assistance might not appeal to him. Chow understood her and listens to her advice, and at that moment he received a message from the spark. He saved the elite citizen Yan Jianan and received 333 contribution points. He couldn't understand how it happened because that man was the father of the Pulsation Princess. How did he save him when he accepted to teach in the exhibition? Ten minutes ago in the distant fog, three of the five-star pods severely injured the super monster. In blue armor was Pan Hu Hu in purple Sao Yan and Yan Jenian, the father of the princess. They have very little left to completely destroy him. They have prepared a new attack that should end everything. But suddenly with that monster, something started to happen. Xiao Yan shouted that that monster had started to mutate. Very rapidly, his physical appearance began to change. It was very scary. The chances of his destruction immediately decreased significantly. In a matter of minutes, he completely mutated and became completely different than he was before. But the group had no choice but to continue the fight because he would not let them go just like that. Very large and strong limbs appeared in him, with which he sharply threw away one warrior. He also grabbed another soldier by the leg. He still had a chance to free himself. He did not attach much importance to the fact that he was caught, because he saw an easy opportunity to chop off that limb. But when he tried to do so, he was shocked because his huge weapon was destroyed when it touched that limb. Jan saw that his comrades had been captured and began to consider his next course of action in his head. But in a moment, one of the limbs was already flying towards him, and he needed to somehow escape from it. He realized that even with his speed, he would not be able to escape the blow. So he decided to use all his strength and try to repel it. It was a miracle, but he managed to parry that blow. And he quickly rushed to the attack, because all hope in the battle was only on him. As he attacked and approached the monster, the monster threw out his lamps to stop the warrior's attack but he clearly and with great force repelled his counterattack and moved forward. Then the warrior felt that he would be able to defeat that monster and continued the fight with zeal. He fought and waited for the perfect moment to strike back, and later that moment came. He put all his strength into this blow because he understood that if he doesn't succeed now, then he and his friends will end. From his blow, the monster let out just a mad scream. He used one technique at the most critical moment, and in a moment that monster simply exploded and turned into minced meat. Jan himself was shocked because he used the latest pulsation power in a stressful situation. His standard strength has doubled with her help. His comrade Hu could not understand what happened to that monster, and the other partner saw that Ian had an incredibly strong pulsation power. Yang himself could not fully understand how he destroyed that monster with his own hands. He stood and did not move. His comrades asked what happened to him because the monster is already dead. He realized that this time his family is under great threat. The next morning, the group returned home. Jenian was kicked very hard on the head by someone, and he said why he didn't die in that foggy forest. He flew into the wall from that blow. It was a strong bearded man, and his legs were like a robot's. He told him if he messed around on earth, let him go to heaven. The princess ran to the sound of a loud noise and was very scared. He said that he would rather shoot him now than leave the Yan family in his hands. But the princess stood in front of him and began to ask her grandfather to lower his weapon. He said they had no idea what a terrible mistake they had made. She said that their clan is not the strongest in Luncheng, but they are not so easily manipulated. She asked the grandfather what he was so afraid of. He said that he was afraid that when the old madman who created that advanced pulsation technique found out, he would be really angry and the Yan clan would disappear. He revealed that they were true pioneers who had survived the initial zombie disaster and were learning the ways of ascension at all costs. Luncheon Peak long ago learned that in the depths of the fog hide much more terrible monsters than they know now. To deal with them, those old sages study how to improve the techniques that are now known. He said that that magical pulsation power was most likely created in this way, and her father just took her and used her. 
He joked that the old man took one look at their beautiful princess and decided to give them that opportunity. But unfortunately, it is not so. Jenin got up, but his grandfather's work leg hit him again. He thinks that Jenin ruined everything, and now he has to think about how to save his family and whether to save it at all, because one wrong move and it's all over. The princess said that her father's death would not change anything, and when they offended the old man, is there really no way to fix everything? He was embarrassed because what could be the case when those old men are unreachable for their family? Will that old man himself forgive them? And if not, then they will surely end. The princess decided that she herself would publicly apologize to the old fire bearer. If he is still angry, let him be angry only at her and not at the whole family. The grandfather said that he looks at his third son and his daughter and advises him to go and be just a soldier and not think about family affairs. The princess went live and apologized to the old man for her previous broadcast, where she disparaged the great new pulsation power and how people perceived her as bad because of her vision. She hopes that the old man will give her a second chance. At that moment, Fei Xiong was watching that broadcast with Chao and was very angry at the one who insulted his goddess. And Chao received a message from her, where she asks for forgiveness for her family. Chao began to fantasize about how he would forgive the Srinchesa on behalf of the old man. She understands his position and the fact that status and resources will only offend him, so she asked what her family can give him, because they are ready for anything. He wrote that the old man is very resistant to stress, and they can use all resources to insult him. And he himself thought that it was difficult to maintain a cold and distant image when such a large fish fell into his hands. Fei Xiong continued to get angry, and Chao decided that he would not send such a message to her, and suddenly a loud sound behind him. He saw that the older man was passing by and was looking at him intently. He remembered that the elder's family had a large corporation, and he needed to stop him from using the family's power against his parents. And on behalf of the old man, he wrote to the princess that she would help him check the Zuohan Corporation within three days. The princess was very surprised. Chao wrote that there are some problems. The princess could not follow the logic in that request, but she herself wrote to ask for something. Therefore, she was even happy that she could please the old man and wrote that she understood everything. Chao was actually surprised that she didn't ask any question in response. Chao left the house and went to school, and his sister told him that if he got bad grades, she would laugh at him. Chao said that her dream would definitely not come true. While he was walking, he thought that the day had finally arrived, the first stage of the exam. Several days had passed since Yan Faizhou publicly admitted her mistake. Now, thanks to the magical power of pulsation, he received several thousand deposit points every day. The secret damage to his body has been completely healed, and he has managed to acquire various skills during this time. It happened that when he approached the entrance to the school grounds, an older man got out of the car. He said that scum will always remain scum and Chao may not even dream of waking up that terrible place of Tian Fu Yuan. In response, Chao told him to enjoy his last day as a senior. Chao's words made him think. Meetings for teachers were held in the conference hall. Teachers were asked to identify possible problems early and solve them. He was the headmaster of the school and the elder's uncle. Teachers discussed their classes and complained that there were very few strong students. Later, they started showing the students who were on the list. The teacher showed Master Van that his student was there. Fei Yun from Class 6 got into the list. His ability was strength. Later, other teachers noticed that the students of the 6th grade were much stronger than their students. They asked Master Wong if he knew any secret, but he said that the students trained themselves. Again, 6th grader Meng Chao has a great result of strength and speed, 19th place in the overall rating. The teachers were shocked by Meng Chao's results. One teacher said that if Chao had not been injured, he would have been in his class. The principal of the school was present. He also looked with interest at the results of the students. And the elder's uncle thought at Chao's expense that he dared to fight with his nephew. And if he had not received that injury, then he would have dealt with him a long time ago. The teachers were even more shocked when the senior got on the list. 
His results were even greater than the first two stages, and he saw the school record for the power of the blow. He was in ninth place in the rating. Chao's friends began to worry because they saw the strength of the elder. They thought that Chao would score better in the first two exams. The supervisor said that for the sixth grade, the first and second stages are over. Then they have to go to the shooting range. All the teachers and the principal were also present in that hall. The students lined up and greeted everyone present, and the principal praised them all. The instructor announced the first couple. It was Senior Zhuo Haozhan and Meng Chao. There were certain weapons and cartridges in front of them. After the start, they must collect those weapons themselves in two minutes and shoot all the cartridges. There were different types of targets that moved and stood still. They were awarded different points for different hits. They were told to take their seats and get ready. In less than a minute, the elder was ready to shoot. He had one minute and seven seconds to shoot all the bullets as accurately as possible. And Chow at this moment was still collecting weapons. The senior took aim very quickly and started firing from the machine gun. All the shots he fired with a machine gun hit the top ten. Everyone wondered how he managed to do it. Meng Chao was still collecting weapons and everyone said that he had no chance because there were only 40 seconds left. But Chao assembled those weapons very well and clearly. The director paid attention to how he was doing it and said that it was wonderful. All he had to do was assemble the gun. And he finished collecting weapons. Now Chao was ready to start shooting. He started shooting with a gun and all the shots were in the very center. Fei Xiong was also surprised that Chao hit all ten balls, but he understands that he already has very little chance of winning. Then Chao shocked everyone because the next weapon he took was a rifle, which is usually used to shoot at moving targets. Another comrade thinks that his tactic is not to shoot at moving targets at all. Chao took aim and used his skill. He started shooting and gets right into the top ten, but Facian says that he was very slowly collecting the weapon, and now he definitely won't have time because there are only 20 seconds left. After 10 seconds, moving targets will open. The older man had a rifle and 20 rounds of ammunition, and Chao had a pistol, a machine gun, and 30 rounds of ammunition. Master Wang noticed that Chao was not worried at all. He must have been more worried than Chao. The elder's uncle said that Meng Chao was the student who was looking for ways to improve and ended up in the hospital because of his very hot temper. He thinks that it will not be easy for him in the future. And the second teacher asked the director's opinion. But the director looked at the time with one eye and said nothing. He repeated again and again that everything is very good and wonderful. There were ten seconds left and moving targets began to appear. Chao braced himself and was ready to start shooting. These are senior shots. There were misses, but also a lot of hits. But he knew he could do better and decided to aim better. And the next volley performed better. There were more hits that will bring him more points. And his last shot, he actually hit the nine. He completed his marksmanship test, and he even had two seconds left. His uncle was pleased with him. Teacher Wang also praised him, but he wondered how Meng Chao would get away with it now. Suddenly, one student noticed that Chao had closed his eyes. He really closed his eyes and wanted to feel the moment when he would start shooting. And in one moment, he pulled the trigger and fired all the cartridges in the direction of the targets. And just as time ran out, Chao finished. The shooting test was over. His classmates thought that he would strike back at a crucial moment, but his mood collapsed. The elder was satisfied. He thought that this was a hopeless attempt by Chao. He overestimated his strength. The elder's uncle said that a short man will always remain so, that people like him never bring any good to society. Fei Xiong told Chao that his results this time, but Chao interrupted him and said that his results are very good, they should match his skills. Fei Xiong understood that he was disappointed, but he brags again in front of him. The results began to be announced. Senior from class number six in shooting scored 515 points, and the total score was 1414 points, which is 11th place among the entire school. Everyone was expecting him. Because he trained in the club and his results are such that he should study in rocket class. Next, Meng Chao's results were announced. He scored 588 points in shooting. Such a turn of events shocked everyone. Teacher Yang was very happy when he heard.
and his total result was 1434, the elder's uncle was shocked, and the director behaved as if he knew it had to be like that. Hearing his results, the elder was at first in a stupor, and then I got furious because he couldn't get such high results, because he missed many times. The elder was certain that his results had been confused with Chow's. Chow said if it weren't for a few misses during the test shot, his results would have been better and he still ran out of time. With this phrase, Chow finally finished off the elder. His uncle praised him and told him to calm down and go get some rest. And Teacher Wang praised him and told him to also go to class and calm down. But they did not go to class but went outside. Zhao Jun said that he did not humble himself and asked Chow if he had the courage to fight with him. Chow behaved calmly, a little surprised by such an offer. But then he smiled and said that he agreed. In 20 minutes in the garden, the school children always solved their problems there. The school administration did not interfere in the affairs of the school children. They stood facing each other. Zhuo Haozhang had trapped Chao in his previous life and had a complete advantage over him. In this fight, Chao wants to make him taste despair. Chao said that the two of them wanted to go to university and asked him not to overdo it this time. He replied that, of course, after this fight, regardless of who won, all their dinners would be used up. But he had another plan in his mind. He wanted Meng Chao to never stand before his eyes again after this battle. They will all begin then. Chao thought that he had given Zuo Haozhan on a chance and hoped he would take it. Yi Chao sprang from his seat with great speed to attack one. Haozhan was pleased that he had a chance to vent all his anger. They clashed in battle. Haozhan said that this year, Chao had only studied ripple power, and he had studied the bull primitive method in addition to ripple power. He continued to throw punches. It was difficult for Chao to dodge, and Haozhan said that he was no match for him with his fighting level. But Chao was determined that he would not lose this time. Cursed battle ensued. Gradually, after each executed and deflected blow, the power increased. They began to use all possible methods of combat. Kicking began. After a few minutes of fighting, Haozhan felt better than Chao. But this is only the beginning. Chao threw punches, but his opponent successfully dodged them. He then said that Chao's pulsation strength was very weak. And suddenly, Chao countered. He couldn't dodge and hit the target. The blow was strong enough. Chao flew back, but he regrouped in the air and got back on his feet. Hausen, Chao said, so that he would surrender. He specifically drained him so that Chao would continue to attack, and Hausen would be able to test his new heart-destroying punch on him. Chao attacked again, and Haozan couldn't wait for him to use his technique. He had a very strong premonition when he would use that technique on Chao and see his face when he realized that he would not enter the university. In an instant, his entire body contracted and he changed his fighting style from the strength of a primitive bull to the strength of a dragon and a snake. He was already thinking about how he would deny that Chao would not be able to enter the university now, but he thought to himself that, because of Chao, no one would even ask questions. Chao noticed that he changed tactics and understood his intentions, so he gave him a chance, but he remained as vicious as he was. Chao has changed from a high school student to a man who has returned from doomsday. His force application technique changed to a master level technique from the future. Chao's blow was such that it penetrated his spine and damaged it. In a moment, he began to fly away from the great force of the impact. He flew a few meters and hit a tree with quite a lot of force. He is a little confused by the blow, could not understand if he lost and asked why he can't feel his body. Chow went to him and wiped the blood from his face. Chow began to tell him that during the exam, he held back his strength and succumbed to it several times. This is only the first stage for him and he did not want to show all his strength. And if he had seen his real strength, he definitely would not have wanted to fight him. Haozhan was shaking, realizing that Chao had set him up. Chao said that he specifically took the second place in the class after him, so that after the shooting they would go out together and no one would disturb them. But he reminded him that he was giving him a chance. He told him not to bend the stick. Haozhan was confused and did not know how to react to this. And Chao simply said that now he has begun to bear the fruits that he sowed in the beginning. When he came to his senses a little, he started shouting at Chao, 
What did he do to him? Chow started toying with him and began examining his wounds to answer his questions. When he examined him, he found a pen that records like a dictaphone. He noticed that Kao Jat is also learning from his mistakes. Chow, with a sharp movement, hid that pen in his sleeve and then put his hands in his pockets and told him that his spine was cracked, and that's why he couldn't feel the lower part of his body now. Given Lanchin's medical technology, he should ask some doctor to operate on him. Then he will undergo a couple of rehabs and he can continue to live as a normal person. And in the meantime, he destroyed the handle of the dictaphone in his pocket and told him to lie down and not move. And he would call the students and teachers. Anger and malice simply distended Haojan from the fact that he was aware of the hopelessness. Chow added that he would not be able to become exalted now, but it would be better for both him and Longchen. Haojan began to shout at him that he would die a horrible death and uttered all sorts of insults. Chow received a message with a reward for wounding a common citizen, which would save many lives in the future. Ten minutes later, all the teachers and students went outside. Haozan's uncle immediately began to accuse Chow of beating the disciple very badly. The director and the teacher were very surprised. The uncle said that the education department would quickly deal with that criminal. Teacher Wong said that Chow was very impulsive and it must have been him who threw his anger out after their meeting. When they started to lead him, he stopped. Master Wang was begging him not to make another mistake. And that uncle began to ask him, what did he think of evading? Chow said, he will go to the education department himself and he is not going to bow down. But not all the evidence has been collected and processed and he is afraid that if he leaves now, it will be destroyed. With this phrase, he made the teachers very intrigued by what he had come up with. Chow said he installed eight very high-quality cameras. This phrase put that uncle in a stupor. He did not know what to think next. They did not fight for street lunches, but to share experiences. And Haojian is so strong that he will definitely not have another chance. So he decided to put cameras in order to watch the recording later and learn. In the same way, in the lessons, Teacher Wang showed them a video where they had to analyze what was happening on the video. While he was saying this, one of the teachers had already collected those cameras and brought them to the principal. Chow turned to the teachers who taught him, he said. He only recently recovered from his injury, and his arms and legs are still very weak. How could he injure Haozan so badly with one blow? He asked teachers and students to watch the video and clear their doubts. Did that uncle tell Chow that he thought the school would blame him for nothing? No, that's why they will watch the video now. Meanwhile, Haozan, who was sitting further away, saw how his uncle wanted to help him. All the teachers and some students opened the cameras and started watching the fight. At one point, Teacher Yan and the teacher, along with the principal, were shocked by what they saw. Master Yan was just furious, pointing his finger at Haozan. He came up and with all his anger began to ask him if he had used any technique against Meng Chao during the fight. His uncle advised him to think carefully before answering, and he was confused. Teacher Yan was putting a lot of pressure on him. He decided to say that he wanted to use the power of the dragon and the snake. The teacher told him to think carefully because if they do not understand the cause of the injury correctly, then the treatment will also be wrong and this will remain for the rest of his life. He dared to say that it was a heart-destroying blow technique. Master Wang was also very angry that his student used such a technique during training. The uncle immediately understood that now he would not be able to help him. Classmates asked teacher Yan to explain to them how Hao Zan got that injury. At first, the teacher waited for the principal's reaction, but he simply remained silent. He agreed to tell them that Haozhan had dared to use one very serious technique during the fight that killed people, a heart-destroying blow. Since he was weak in this technique, he began to move more slowly and the explosive force was concentrated on his spine. The moment Meng Chao punched him in the chest, that ball of energy exploded and broke his spine. They were shocked because it is very mean to use such a technique on a classmate, and then it turns out that Chao was just defending himself. Fei Xiong said that Hao Jiang himself paid for the crime and it had nothing to do with Meng Chao. Teacher John asked the principal what he thought about how he explained the situation. 
The teacher still decided to try to get out and said that it was caused by a personal quarrel between them, that Meng Chao must have specially provoked him. Chao noticed once again that it was just an exchange of experiences, and at the expense of that trick, Hao Zhan said in advance that he would show him that trick. Therefore, in his opinion, it is better to evaluate all this as a random incident. Chao's teacher did not respond to such arguments. Chao said that, as a result, there was only a couple of days between him and the elder, which was not worth using that terrible technique at all. Chao added that it wouldn't be good if this case blew up. It would be bad for him, Hao Zan and the school. In his thoughts, the tutor was furious. He felt that Chao was commanding him. But he understood that if the case began to be promoted, his future work would be called into question. The director said that Hao Zan is still lying down and should probably be taken to the hospital. The principal instructed teacher Yang to interview Meng Chao in order to write a report. The teacher asked him how much force he held back during the strength and speed tests. Chao told him about 30%. The teacher could not understand why Chao did this. Chao said that there is no fun without difficulty. The teacher decided to ask him whether he did it on purpose. Without much thought, Chao immediately said that he did it on purpose. The teacher said he needed an explanation as to why Chao said it was self-defense. The teacher was more inclined, besides, it was a warning blow. In his opinion, Chao wanted to get rid of the potential threat. Chao asked what the teacher meant, saying that if Chao had not provoked him, he would hardly have started fighting with him. But why should he leave his fate to some unlikely? It's like a scary monster is standing in front of him, and you start to wonder if he's hungry, if he'll take pity on you, or if he has some kind of mental trauma. All he could do was stand next to the prepared trap and see if that monster would get there. He himself decided to kill him and therefore fell into that trap. Chao could not kneel down and ask him not to attack him. The teacher listened to what Chao was telling him without interrupting. Then he said that this explanation suited him and let Chao prepare for the next exam and he would take care of everything. Chao smiled and thanked for understanding. He said that he always knew that that teacher was the kindest and fairest in the school. The teacher told him not to sneak around and if he really wanted to say thank you, was he thinking about entering a military school? Chao immediately said that it was none of his business. But Fai Yun dreams that, becoming a general, he would better help him. The teacher, on the contrary, thought that Chao liked military men. Chao said that the soldiers are very cruel. Every time they fight, they turn the monsters into mincemeat. It is very good if you can collect 30% of the resources from them. The teacher then asked what his style was. Chao said that he enjoyed gently cutting open the monster's skin, gliding along their blood vessels and delicately touching their organs. Save every drop of blood, collect every organ in its entirety and save it properly. Transforming monstrous monsters into exquisite art is also her mastery of the harvest. Chao wants to devote his life to art. Teacher Yang was startled by the way Chao described his interests. He wondered if all the students were so weird these days. But suddenly he decided to ask Chao one more question. He asked if Chao really saw his death in the spring that day. Chao was stunned by that question. He couldn't understand what the teacher meant when he said the phrase that day. Chao then realized what he meant the day he returned. He said it was just a dream and did the teacher take him seriously. The teacher stepped aside and said that he was a member of Longshan's regular army, the Red Dragon Army. When he served, he had certain notions that if all people are mortal, then as a warrior he must die on the battlefield. Fight to be buried in the belly of a huge monster. It is fierce to pierce the hearts of monsters with your bones. It was the best way for every warrior in the Red Dragon Army to die. He was a very formidable warrior and laid. Even then, there will be a great contribution to the defense of Longcheng. So he thanks Meng Chao's disciple because he dreamed of dying on the battlefield. He bowed his head because such a short story and the teacher's wishes made Chao a little sad. And the teacher himself only had a good laugh at this. He was not afraid of death. Later, an ambulance arrived at the school, which was an unusual challenge for the school. The former senior lay down and his uncle accompanied him. He told him that it was all over with him now. His uncle told him not to be too upset because modern medicine is much better than in the old days. 
At that time, they began to use monster nerve cells and alien auxins for stimulation. Even paralysis can be cured, but it will take some time. But he said that he would not be able to participate in the exam and definitely would not become ascended. His uncle advised him to forget about such thoughts for at least a year, and then in a year or two everything will be visible. In the next moment, Hao Zhan fell into a fit of hatred. He said that he wanted Meng Chao dead. He asked his uncle to help him kill him. He turned sharply to make sure that no one had heard it. He said that no matter how strong he is, there are still people in the school who are watching, such as Yan Dong Xing. He better call his father. He has more opportunities than he has at school. Hao Zhan smiled sinisterly and told his uncle to wait and told his father to deal with Meng Chao's family first. Before he died, Hao Zhan wanted to make him suffer ten times more than he was suffering now. This is a beautiful place that shone very brightly, was the financial center of Longchong and Xinchong Embankment. The woman in red came to director Zhuo for an explanation, and the woman in black asked her not to disturb the director and put her in a difficult position and to wait a little. Suddenly, on a voice call, the director told the assistant to let his daughter-in-law in because he had already finished training. The assistant did not have time to introduce her as she practically ran into the office. She cried and said that Zuo Daon had no right to ignore Joe because they were once so close, and he saved his life. While his brother's wife spoke, he stood looking out the window at the night city. He said that he remembers his brother's kindness well, so he will buy his brother's fortune and all interests from the corporation for twenty million. In his opinion, twenty million will be enough for his treatment. The daughter-in-law was very angry because her husband worked for the benefit of the corporation for thirty years, and thanks to him, she is now so strong. And Zhuo Dao just wants to throw him out of the corporation and thus profit from someone else's grief. He said that it was not his fault that she did not understand his kindness correctly, and that when he dealt with things, he would come to the hospital and visit Joe. These words didn't calm her down. She continued to get angry. Oswo Down said that he understood her condition and why she was reacting like that, and that's the only reason he wouldn't react to her phrases. When she understands, she can come to him again and let him hurry, because his brother's illness will not wait. And it was not time for him to have a discussion with her. So he said into the voice machine that Miss Joe was already leaving for his assistance to escort her. Suddenly, two large guards opened the door and asked her to leave the office. He thought that when he dealt with Joe, then he would be able to completely seize power in the corporation, and then he would become the real king. Suddenly, he wanted to take a photo card with their family. He knew for sure that his son would become much stronger than him. His phone suddenly rang in his office. Zuo Dao calmly answered his brother-in-law's phone call. When he was told about the situation, his heart sank sharply. He questioned who dared to maim his son. It turns out to be Meng Chao, a kid from the rental district. He immediately became a wild beast. He wants to destroy Meng Chao's family and make him suffer worse than death. Suddenly, an employee runs into the office and excitedly reports that some people say that their company sells fake products made somewhere in underground factories, and even Luncheon wrote about it online. But the answer he received was a cracked wall, which is why Zhu Dao threw something at it out of anger. He started yelling at him, why hasn't he figured it out himself? He doesn't understand why the PR department gave up on them then. Such an answer shocked the employee. He simply did not know the inner state of the director. Just as another employee runs in and says that several checking organizations have come to them and they are already coming up here. In a second, another employee says that three banks want to review their loans and maybe they will ask for their money back. Another employee brought the bad news that their underground workshop had been declassified and all their plans had been exposed. That was not all because the reporters already knew everything and they were also in the house and it was impossible to restrain them. Zuo Down was on the verge. His psyche almost exploded. He couldn't even say anything at first. He just stood there in a stupor. From such a sharp stress, he still suffered damage. His body failed and he started coughing up blood. Panic continued to grow and he could no longer stand on his feet and simply fell back. He was tormented by the lack of an answer. Who could frame him? 
In his psychologically wounded head, there was also a question, why did it all fall on him today? Meanwhile, Chow stood at the bus stop and waited for the bus to go home. Did he consider all the events that happened today? Did he do the right thing and could he not use such methods to correct the situation? But suddenly he heard a scream. When he turned around, he saw that it was Fei Xiong running to him and asking him to wait. He stepped closer and directly asked Chow if he might be in trouble because of today's incident. He smiled and said that he would not have any problems and told Feixin that he was already on his way. Chow was already forcefully escorting Fei Shun home, and he said that if any help was needed, for Chow to tell him, because brothers should help each other. Chow said he understood him. Then Fei Xiong went home to rest because today was a hard day. In a moment, a bus drove by and Chow leisurely approached the door. As for today, he definitely did the right thing. His father now has a connection with the Thunder Group, but he is more concerned that Zhuo Haozhan's parents don't go crazy and do something terrible. He took out a black business card from his pocket and couldn't believe that he would have to go to that Mr. No. He was desperate because he was still very weak. He needed to attain enlightenment as soon as possible and regain his strength. Suddenly, a new message from the spark grabbed his attention. It said that under his leadership, the crimes of the Haohan Corporation, which was involved in the production of low-quality medicines, were destroyed, and for this, he was given 5,000 deposit points. He was surprised because he could not understand exactly what contribution he made and what he managed. Besides, the reward is so great. Were their deeds so terrible? While he was thinking, his phone beeped that a message had arrived. Chow was shocked to see a message from the princess. She wrote to him that she had done everything possible. He had completely forgotten that he had asked for her on behalf of the old man. Then he wrote to her that they checked that company so that it disappeared altogether. The princess excused herself that the old man said that the company was a problem, and she made the problem go away. The old man asked her how much she destroyed that company. The princess began to list the problems that they had, including bankruptcy, various inspections, problems with the law, and much more. As a result, they lost everything and will never be able to return. Chow, on behalf of the old man, did not write anything to this, which made the princess think. She further wrote that if she hadn't checked for herself, she wouldn't have even believed that that corporation had started passing off corrupted monster blood for super monster blood. And such actions are already a crime aimed at all residents of the city of Luncheon. If it weren't for the super predictability of the old man, it is unknown how many people would have suffered at the hands of that corporation. The princess said that she understood how the old man hated that corporation, but Luncheon was a city of justice. Their Yan clan had to make everything open to everyone. And now that the Tower of Exaltation has intervened, and Zuo Sitnian has been sentenced to imprisonment for the rest of his life, and their entire clan owes several tens of millions, and Zuo's son will no longer insult his disciples, is everything okay with the old man now? She added that if he needed anything else, she could try to do it. Chao was a little shocked by the actions of the princess. He did not understand what else could be done here when Zuo was already in prison for life. Chao wrote back to her on his behalf, saying that there was nothing more to be done and that she should not make any more noise about the subject. She understood very well that the old man did not want to involve himself in that story, so it must be completed. Chow sighed with relief. He dealt with the problem that hung over his family, but he noticed behind him that he felt somehow strange. And the Yan family sat on the sofa and thought about the situation. The princess relayed the words of the old man that he said, Okay and so well she was a little confused, or does this mean that he has forgiven their clan? The Yan clan took this mission very seriously. The princess's father put a mask of her face on himself and organized all the affairs on her behalf. Therefore, he also thinks that the old man is satisfied with their work. The father gave the phone to the princess and said that the old man did not even find fault with their family's mistake. Suddenly, the grandfather jumped up and hit his son very hard. He asked what his son would want that old man to attach to them. The princess was already used to grandfather beating her father and asked how he knew that the old man wanted their clan to deal with the Hao Han Corporation. 
grandfather told her that he had an old friend, the demon Ning Shi, and asked her if she remembered him, to which she replied that she remembered, but she thought he had been poisoned and was now terminally ill. Ning. She was about to finish all his business, but a couple of days ago, he said that the old fire-bearer gave him advice, and he came up with a new medicine recipe and asked his grandfather how many resources were needed. And then the grandfather thought, could the old fire-bearer and the old weirdo be the same man? And he decided to check. The princess was very impressed with her grandfather's ability to solve mysteries, but then she couldn't believe that they were one and the same man. The grandfather's son stood up and said that this is definitely not possible because the power of pulsation and the art of spinning are completely different directions. One person cannot own two at the same time. Grandpa hit him again and said that the future of the Yan family was in Faizhou's hands. Grandfather asked her if she remembers the video that Chow sent her on behalf of the old man, and he asked if she remembers the interior of the room and what is the status of that person in her opinion. She guessed that he was either from third or ninth school based on his uniform, and the atmosphere in the room was very similar to a rented accommodation. The father wanted to get up, but the grandfather hit him again and told him to learn from his daughter. The grandfather said that the demon Ning told him that the old fire bearer has a student who is studying in the ninth school and lives in a rented house. His name is Meng Chao. The father stood up again and said, If it is the same person and the old weirdo has super strength, but how did the grandfather know that the old man wanted to fight the Hao Han Corporation? The grandfather hit him again and said that he checked that Meng Chao and the son of the director of that corporation have a very bad relationship and recently had a serious conflict. The princess said that now all the details have come together and it all really makes sense. Grandfather said that everything is true because it cannot be that some boy humiliates the apprentice of the old firebearer. Therefore, that corporation backed itself into a corner, raised an unreliable successor, and paid for everything. The father was already afraid to say something lest he get caught again, but he said that he understood everything and would never again dare to provoke such an expert as the old firebearer. But the princess asks a logical question. If the old fire bearer is so strong, why did they need to pay attention to that Hao Han corporation? Grandfather said that in this question they need to pay attention to the word he said, and he said the word problem. The father said that he did not see anything important here except that they had to solve that problem, and the grandfather shouted that it is not so. He asked his son and granddaughter, what does the Hao Han Corporation mean to the old man? And he himself said that it is just a piece of shit that is not worth the old man stepping on it. He asks that when they insulted him, which of them slept normally after that? The princess said that she slept very badly and could not sleep for several days. In fact, they all didn't sleep well because they were constantly feeling anxious. Therefore, the old man took pity on them and gave them the task so that they would complete it and calm down and begin to sleep normally. Grandfather said, it was good that the old man was kind-hearted and it was good that grandfather dealt with it himself. Princess, I was thinking about how many different subtleties there are. Father decided to say again, despite the fear of being hit, that in the course of the Hao Han Corporation investigation, they also found out Meng Chao's identity and he wondered if the old man would be angry that they did this. Grandfather poured tea and told him that he had only just thought about it, and he and Nin had already discussed everything long ago. The old bearer of fire didn't tell Meng Chao to hide his identity, and through him he imparts various wisdom and secret techniques. The fact that the old man let his students swim freely is probably also a kind of training. The grandfather also said that to relatively friendly forces, the old man could reveal more information about his disciple and they would come to his defense. The granddaughter clarified whether those friendly forces are their family, grandfather said, so she understood correctly. Without the Yan family's perfect pulsation skills, it is impossible to reach the greatest peaks in improved pulsation power. Grandfather told Faizhoff that she would make friends with that boy Meng Chao if possible. She was surprised by what her grandfather said. She realized that she had to go this way for the sake of her family's well-being. 
and she decided that she would take a responsible approach to this matter and find out what interests she and Chow have in common, so that it would be easier to get closer in the near future. Grandfather praised her for this approach, because she is the heir of the Yang clan, and the entire future of the clan is in her hands, and she should not be as ungrateful as her father. The princess's father was very upset that his father had such an opinion about him. One of the city markets where they sold all kinds of things, they just got a demonic pig. Meng Chao's mother uncertainly walked between the rows and thought about what to buy. Suddenly, one woman recognizes her. Their children study together. Her name was Pan, and she asked her to help her choose the meat. Mama Chow knew that she liked to brag, and now she would have to listen to her. And then she asked Pan, did her husband get a prize because she bought a lot of meat? She was embarrassed, but said that her husband brings the pennies. She said that today was the first stage of the exam, and her son ranked 32nd out of the whole school and went to the second stage, so she decided to cheer him up. Chow's mother was visibly embarrassed when she heard about the first stage. And Pan saw this and remembered Chao's injury last year and understood why she had such a reaction. Pan then said that her son would always help Chao because he and the little boy played together and were almost like brothers. But Chao's mother said that her son would definitely be able to enter the university. Pan said she needed to go home and quickly prepare food before her son came back. This meeting depressed Chao's mother very much. She was angry and asked the seller how many pieces of meat that woman took. He said that three pieces. At this, she told him to give her four pieces. When my mother came home, she threw the food she bought on the table. Sister Chow was delighted but asked if they could afford it. The husband also paid attention to the size of the fish and asked his wife if today was a special day for them. She angrily said that today is the first stage of the exam, and Chow did not tell them anything because the results are probably bad. Therefore, when he comes, they should not ask him anything but simply eat as much as possible. The sister told her mother not to worry because if Chow didn't go to university, she would definitely go and protect their family. She liked this idea because her brother would have to obey her and do what she said. She imagined herself as a majestic warrior with a very large sword, and Chow would tell her how cool she was and how he underestimated her. She stood with a broom in her hands and dreamed. But mom said that she was more worried about her because she always rushes to the elders, so she asked her sister not to tease her brother today. And my sister already wanted to break away from her brother, but today she won't. Suddenly the door handle began to open, and suddenly Chow began to enter the house. He was thinking about the Yan family corporation because he just said the problem, and they took such terrible measures. In the future, he needs to be more careful when using the old man's personality. Chow entered the house and did not even pay attention to his relatives. The sister and father immediately understood after Vin entered the house that Chow did not pass the exam well. Chow's mother moved the plate of rice and told Chow to sit down to eat. There were many different dishes on the table that looked very appetizing. Chow was amazed at what an appetizing table his mother had set. He thought that a large nest of demonic pigs had been destroyed and they were on sale at the market. The father said that there was no discount and invited him to eat. Chow was embarrassed. He thought that something had happened. The father tries to answer him as naturally as possible that everything is fine, just that their life is getting better, because what could have happened? Mom also said that he was worrying for no reason. The sister went to her brother and hugged him and told him not to worry, because if there is a need, she will be a support for the family. Chow said with a fake smile that with a sister as a support, their family would definitely be fine. Chow decided to say that today was the first stage of the exam, and he managed to take eighth or ninth place. He doesn't know for sure because he didn't attach much importance to it. But in any case, in ten days he will go to the city education department for the second stage. His family's initial reaction was quite normal, even a little less than he expected. Then they started saying that this is a pretty good result and he is well done. But in a moment they realized what he said and there was just an explosion of emotions. They were shocked by such news. But Chow did not react in any way to their strange reaction for him, but simply asked them what was wrong with them. With his calm reaction to the reaction of his family, he interested his relatives even more. 
The nurse decided to clarify the situation a little and asked Chow that he became eight in his class. But Chow said that he clearly said that he was the eighth in the whole school. He said once again that at eight or nine, I started stroking my sister's head and asked her what was happening to her today. She began to cry and said that now he will enter the university and become a good man. And Chow thought, why is she crying? She fell on the floor and said that the ninth school is one of the key schools and the first 10 students will definitely enter the university and become the underclassmen. She began to cry even more because she would not be able to mock her brother, but would become dust under his feet. Then Chow understood why she behaved like that. The father also calmed down and asked Chow about his injury. Had it healed completely yet? Chow replied that the practice of pulsation power, in conjunction with the genetic drugs and supplements received from Mr. Ning, had completely healed his injury before the first stage began. But the father asked again, because he told him that he found a method on the internet. Chow was already confused about who he was talking to. He said that it is not necessary to go into details, because the most important thing is that they cannot worry, because he will definitely enter the university. The father was confused but saw his son's joy and did not want to torment him with questions. He decided to praise him well, hugged him, and said that he was the coolest. It was the most difficult for my mother because she spent half the day thinking about the complete opposite, and here is such joyful news for her. Suddenly Chow notices that his mother is taking pictures of him. He asks her why she is doing this. Today he is very handsome and she decided to take his picture. But the sister tells the brother to look at himself on his mother's page in the social network. Mom posted his photo and wrote a description of his achievements. Chow looked at it and immediately saw that his father and sister had already put hearts under the note. In fact, he was a little embarrassed. He asked his mother to at least delete his photo because he would be embarrassed. She says that she has no right to brag about her son's achievements. She didn't even write what specific place he occupied, so he has nothing to fear. Mom decided to tell how Mrs. Pan made her angry. Her son took 30th place in school, and she was flying with joy like on a skating rink in the market. And her son took 9th place, and even in the 9th school, so is she bragging a lot? Chow asked his father for support because he sees something brewing. But the father said in a humble voice that he could not help him. The father said that his mother had long ago told everyone that their family had started a company. A small recovery company, and according to her, her father became the director of the corporation, and now he is ashamed to go out and see his neighbors. And mom was happy because she already had 15 hearts on her post. The most important thing is that Ha Pan also looked at her post. Mom was very happy to show everyone how people react. Cho jumped out of his chair with one thought in his mind that he needed to make some money urgently to move out of the area. And the sister managed to make fun of her brother once again. She said that he is now a star in their district. Chow was very angry. This situation charged him so much that he wanted to start acting even more intensively. Some time passed. Men washed all the dishes. Mom continued to rejoice because she already had 30 people rate her photo. My sister was in such a good mood and she decided to watch TV. But Chow stopped her and said he had something else to say. For tomorrow, Saturday, he made an appointment with a well-known doctor at the King Yan Clinic to check my mother's legs and suggest that we all go there together. Father and mother immediately understood what Chow was talking about and knew that the clinic was known for its technology and prices. Mom began to justify that event and began to say that perhaps it is worth going to a simple clinic and not spending so much money. But Chow says that there is no joint replacement with a special technological prosthesis at that public hospital. Mom started to protest because it sounded very expensive. She has been walking like this for 20 years. She just walks a little smaller than the others and asks Chow if he's starting to feel ashamed of him. Chow told Mom not to worry about the money because he will become a household name and earn a lot. Man told his wife that their son had already grown up, but that she should not forget that she still had her husband. Meng then decided to advise her to listen to their son. Mom's mood rose so much that she wanted to dance with her husband. Chow smiled and had a good idea. When Mom's legs recover, Chow will book her and her father the most luxurious room in the hotel, and then they can enjoy a candlelit dinner. 
and they will ask the orchestra that he played only for them, so that they can dance only as they want. It will be an evening in which they will not deny themselves anything. The sister was in awe of her brother, how cool he is. But she immediately pulled herself together. She can't think that her brother is cool. For her, it's all a hallucination. The next day, the morning in Kinnan Medical Center. The doctor read the medical history of Miss Meng. The main problem is that her legs have been compressed for a long time and some parts have poor blood supply. But currently, with modern technologies, this is not a big problem. Now the doctor needs to check Miss Men's condition at the moment. If she is not comfortable, she should tell him. The doctor closed his eyes as green streaks began to appear on his body. Suddenly, he opened his eyes and his pupils dilated. He had another pair of pupils, but they were like the pupils of a snake. Those green stripes were also on his hands. He touched his knees with his hands. Eventually, Miss Mang's legs also began to emit green light. Miss Mann said it felt like something was running down the middle of her legs. Quite a nice feeling. The sister told her brother that Dr. Su looked very strange to her, and Chow told her that he did not see anything strange in him. Psionic energy accumulates in the body, and when it becomes a lot, it begins to manifest on the body in various signs. This is the level of psionic signs of the exalted first star. And when the exalted person reaches the second star, transformations begin in his body. Organs are stimulated and mutations begin. The doctor has pupils and may even have wings. Chow noticed that Dr. Su was really working hard and desperately on himself. The sister had a few more questions. Why the doctor did not send my mother for an X-ray or an MRI? Because the state hospital has a lot of different equipment for such actions. Chow explains to her that one who has reached the third star of ascension can first look inside his body and examine his organs and his condition. At the four-star level of development, they can consciously manipulate psionic energy to conduct controlled and precise oscillations and expand the range of the vital magnetic field. Also, at that level, especially the workshops can push off the Earth's magnetic field and begin to fly. And at the five, star level of exaltation, the possibility of psionic penetration appears. The ascendant can use his own magnetic field to assess the state of the other person's internal organs. In this case, neither X-ray nor MRI is needed. The sister was delighted with what her brother told her. She thought that the world of the exalted was simply fantastic. The doctor said that Miss Ming's condition is excellent and that injury from more than 20 years ago will take some time to heal. Considering her condition, the doctor strongly recommended special treatment for Chow. It was a program for biochemical restoration of bones and nerves. This is the latest technology recently developed by the Monster Institute. The regeneration and growth of monster cells is used to activate the genetic potential of the human body. Freshly grown osteosins and nerves of the lower limbs perfectly grow and there is no rejection. Thanks to that technology, you can play sports, improve, and even fight. Chow carefully studied the information the doctor had given them. Mom asked the doctor that such a technology must be very expensive. And Chow asked if this new technology is not dangerous. No one can guarantee complete security, but a lot of people have used it and are fine. Many exalted ones who were injured used that technology and are now able to fight again. The doctor said that as long as Miss Meng doesn't mind doing particularly hard sports or trying to run the 100-meter dash in three or four seconds, there shouldn't be any problems. Then Chow agreed and said that they would use that method. But his mother stopped him and once again asked the doctor about the cost of such a method of treatment. The doctor offered them a special plan where they would promote that technology and advertise it. Therefore, they will have a 40% discount. The family was still shocked by the cost. For 97% of the population, such treatment is impossible. The promotional price is $3 million, but the doctor is very interested in learning about the technique of seven guan solutions that Chow possesses. So if he agrees to show it to him, the price will be $2 million. The family was surprised. What was the doctor talking about? But Chow immediately agreed to show him all the techniques. The doctor also added that the treatment will last seven months, and it is not necessary to pay the entire amount at once. 
payment for the first stage will be 500,000. Chow was pleased that the situation had turned this way. They agreed with the doctor on such terms. Mom still decided to ask Chow if it was worth spending so much. Because it may be better to put a special alloy, it will be much cheaper. But Chow said, if Mom doesn't want him to be distracted from the exam, then don't bother him. Mom was surprised by her son's answer. Mom was a little disappointed because she never thought that her legs would cost so much. Chow said that it should be so because his family is the most important thing he has. Mother, sister, and father were very pleasantly surprised at how Chow had changed dramatically. The doctor stressed that Chow should not forget to bring his mother for treatment. Chow was very grateful to him. The doctor said that he would greatly improve his treatment technique thanks to Chow's information. Chow received an award for giving elite citizen Su Yuan a whole new understanding of medical techniques. They all said goodbye to the doctor and headed home. When they were passing by the parking lot, the sister noticed a car. She began to look at that car and asked her brother because, in her opinion, that car was from the era of the Earth. It was called Light 50. In this era, having a personal car is a great luxury. No one in their neighborhood has a car, so it's no wonder his sister has this reaction. And he had a good idea that when he became exalted, he would also buy a car for the whole family. And he asked his father if he likes the light 550 car. Father did not see anything special in the car. He liked the three-dimensional maneuverable suit more. It is more convenient to climb the stairs with it, and it is much cheaper. But Chow caught him on the fact that he needed a car for his company because it would not be appropriate to walk to important negotiations. He says that even if he wants the car, nothing has been done at his company yet. But even if they wanted to buy a car, they definitely couldn't afford such a rarity. He does not understand at all what kind of family can afford such an expensive car. Then Chow offered him a car. The powerful wolf father also liked it very much. They began to imagine how cool they would feel when they had their own car. My sister also thought about her dreams, and she quickly ran up to her brother and started talking to him. She said that he wants to buy a car for his father and pay for his mother's treatment. Then what gift did he prepare for his little sister? Chow said that he had taken care of it and made an agreement with Master Ning a long time ago. She should be taken to school and taught to dance and sing and be a real lady. The sister was not very pleased with such a gift from her brother. It's been two weeks since they were in the hospital. Buses arrived and picked up the students and took them to the city education department for the second stage of the exam. Chow was sitting on the bus and decided to look at all his achievements. A spark opened and showed his performance in different styles. He has 233 deposit points remaining. Chow understands that he spent more than 2,000 points in order to pass the exams, and he will definitely pass them if nothing happens along the way. Suddenly, one classmate decided to ask Chow about his maximum impact force, that it was 290 kilograms, or is it true? Fei Xiong said that Chow's strength compared to his was simply bursting, so she definitely overcooked it for 300. All the classmates started to get angry because Chow did not share with them the secret of his strength. Fei Xiong was also very angry and Chow wondered why it was so difficult for him to hide his abilities now. Suddenly, they all fell silent because someone entered the bus. It was Teacher Yang. He told them to cool down their emotions before the exam. The teacher said that they should remember that when they set out on the path of the exalted, they should first develop the mind. Because when you become exalted, but do not gain intelligence, you will become a slave to that power and be worse than zombies and monsters. The flower of the mind blooms from flesh and blood, but it is free from them. And if they have super strength and super speed, it does not mean that they have a big heart. And they will be able to learn the truth only when they get into a life and death situation. At that moment, it will become clear who they are, rags, thieves, or they can choose a completely different path. Become a true master of your power and use it in the right direction. Master Wang was telling them all this from the perspective of the warrior he once was. Later, he said in a voice that they could leave because they had already arrived at the city's education department. The buses stopped and all the students started getting off the buses. They were brought to a place that was much lower than the whole city. There were many destroyed houses and in general the place was like a big battlefield. 
It was a zombie statue. Luncheon became stronger, and people like this converted moons into residential quarters and built protective walls. It was a sculpture of an exalted warrior in battle. In this place, ruins were specially left and even statues were erected. Only in that city, the atmosphere of those times was preserved. Masters were specially invited there to preserve it. There were many different sculptures. It was like a memory of those hard times. Chow passed by that place and said nothing because it was a place of mourning. He was the only one who really understood the importance of those sculptures, because he was the only one who really fought for his life, not counting the teacher John. He swore that he would never again allow the forces of evil to enter his land. All the students walked along a long corridor that led to the tunnel. Fei Xiong and Chow stopped and looked at the majestic statue. Fei Xiong asked Chow if he was exalted. Chow said that soon they would also become like that and be able to protect people as well. An entrance to a special place was built in this huge crater. The first decade after luncheon moved into the second dimension was an era of obscurity, destruction, and bloody sadness. They lost most of their energy resources and industrial potential while trying to save a large number of people. Gradually, they turned into monsters that oppressed the weak became beasts that devoured raw flesh. The mysterious virus quickly spread among the residents. Those who were infected quickly turned into zombies. The epidemic quickly spread throughout the city. People who managed to survive, they began to hide in the ruins of the city and they were interested in only one question. Is this the end of civilization, the last day of luncheon? With every minute, the zombies became more and more. People left their relatives and fled in different directions just to stay alive and not become zombies. But only those who were lucky managed to escape, because in a real race against zombies, a simple person of the Earth era had no chance. No, this was not the end of Lucan, but in fact it was his rebirth. That secret virus created zombies, but it also created new antibodies in humans. Initially, their capabilities were written in white in the genes of people, which they could not exceed. But these restrictions have been removed. And after that, people began to be able to absorb psionic energy directly and get on the path of ascension. In this way, the likes of war god Lei Zongchao, the strongest exalted warrior in Longchen, were born. And this was Yun Fadian, the richest man in Longcheng. In such difficult times, all the great ancestors who have already died paved the way for survival. Chao wonders if he can save everyone. With his fire and loyal friends, will he succeed? Fei Xiun was very interested in those illustrations and looked at them for a long time. Chow had to hurry him. Further, they had to go down, even lower on the circular stairs. The second decade after moving to another world became the era of heroes. They descended into the Great Hall, where in its center was a large red flag. After the scary zombies, Luncheon faced a much stronger threat with a variety of monsters. Dozens of different types of monsters of various sizes have replaced the threat from zombies and began to destroy Luenchen with renewed vigor. But by that time, the city had become much friendlier and more organized and entered into battle with the monsters, giving a worthy rebuff. But soldiers always wrote suicide notes before the battle. The very main phrase of all soldiers' earthlings, the most powerful forces of expeditionary earth civilization, Fei Xiong was shocked and began to emotionally tell Chao that Teacher Yang was right. After all, earthlings are the strongest living beings in all worlds. Chao was a little hurt by such attention from his friend. He asks him if he is slapping him on the shoulder like that, or has he already started to take revenge on him? Because a couple of days ago, during training, he beat Fei Xiong. Fei Xiong was angry because he really wanted to hit him as hard as possible. Chao began to descend and told Fei Xiong that he had eaten away at his plan. In his thirties, Luncheon entered the era of expeditions and discoveries. Every day, the practice of martial arts and the system of psionic technologies developed more and more. The combat effectiveness of the Red Dragon Army exceeds that of any army in the Earth era. The city began to change. And over time, various things began to fly in the sky. It could be exalted. Later, they recognized that there were large catacombs under luncheon and built a majestic tower of ascension on top of them. 
Various new martial arts, new technologies, new ruins, new viruses, new antibodies, and new monsters. This is a completely new world waiting for all the residents of Luchin. The fourth decade became an era of great construction. With the gradual decrease in the threat of monsters, Luchin began to rebuild and grow very rapidly. After capital construction, Lanchin became like a three-dimensional city. The area of urban territories was more than five times larger than the largest agglomerations of the Earth era. New generations of supercomputers have a computing power more than a hundred times that of the Earth era. And now it's time for the fifth decade. That voice in the speakers spoke and made everyone feel a powerful emotional explosion. He said that today is the era of victories, the era of glory, a new era of aggressive progress. Taking into account the experience of the fallen heroes of the predecessors, a new generation of Lucan has grown up. The future of the city and its residents will now depend on each of them. As the eyes continue to descend, Chow noticed that in his previous life, Longchen had only made a few mistakes, but they had grown and led to his downfall. In this life, he must correct all mistakes, fix all annoyances, and choose the most correct path. Teacher Wang was waiting for them downstairs. They lined up and waited for orders. He asked them to show him the power of the Ninth School. Commander John spoke important words to them and set the direction. He is the commander of their group. In that place, all the groups had their own flag and the teacher held the flag of their group. When the other groups went down there, Feixiong drew Chao's attention to the other group's flag. This is the flag of one special school. It is the only one for the whole district, so it must be very strong. They call themselves a constructive school. Comrade heard that the parents of all those students from that school are exalted in the rank of at least four stars. In his opinion, it doesn't even make sense for them to compete with them. Chow heard Fei Xiong pondering what his classmate had said about the four-star score. It turned out that he did not understand what this meant. Chow asked him if he had ever read the forms on the dark net. The exalted are divided into nine levels. From the first to the third level, this is the earthly level. When you reach the fourth level and the ninth level, these are heavenly levels. And from the seventh level to the ninth level, divine power begins. Everyone knows that. Faizian had a great excuse because his mother told him that there was a lot of unhealthy information there and he did not go there anymore. Suddenly, Teacher Yang hit Faishan on the back of the head and told them to shut up because something was about to start. A man addressed all the students from the stage. He said that all these students are the best of the best in their district of Hulin, and they are their hope and their protection. He hopes that they all understand that the road to ascension is not just the road to fame and fortune. And this road is connected with the life and death of millions of compatriots and even with the prosperity and death of Lucheni. They all have a lot of worries and impressions now. And now he asks them to think calmly and carefully. What do they really want? Why should they get on the road to ascension? He hopes they can answer these questions. If not, they fail the intelligence test. In a moment, Teacher Van approached his students with a wheelbarrow with special jars on it. It was a special activator of brain cells. After taking it, it develops the brain and allows it to process more information. The teacher told them to accept quickly because in an hour the test would begin. Taking into account the fact that everyone will rest for one hour, a performance was organized during which they will talk about the special specialties of the bachelor's degree. A girl appeared on the stage. Her name was Ning Soyushi. She is the vice president of one of the universities, which is directed to resources and related to the land. She told about the key faculties. Bye. I calmly listened to her and drank what was in that jar. Resources are the first element of civilization development. Especially for Lucan, it doesn't matter whether he continues to develop or remains at the previous level, but resources will always be the issue. One of the branches of the agronomic university is the cultivation, collection, and care of spiritual plants. Also, they study the manipulation and biochemistry of animals. Another very important aspect is the collection and processing of resources extracted from the depths of the earth. She said that you need to be the best in all directions. Then you can have endless prospects for improvement. Chao, listening to this, 
could not understand why they were telling it now in the form of a lecture, because it would only add excitement to the students. One boy told him it was an old tradition of intellectual testing, because only with the help of money can you stimulate them to get on the road to elevation. And as for peace at the moment, this is the task of each student individually. It is also connected with the test. Schools that are leaders, their students were calm and looked confident. Their spiritual elevation is at a very high level. They were already preparing by similar methods. He paid attention to the first and second schools, how they look in this atmosphere and how their ninth school looks like. The students of the ninth school were dressed in black suits and all stood silently and waited for the next orders. And in the ninth school, students talked among themselves, turned in different directions, and their clothes were simpler. They actively began to discuss different universities and which one is better to enroll in, in order to be able to help the city as much as possible. Fei Xiong, like everyone else, began to talk about it and to suggest that Chao enter a military school, because in his opinion the future is his. Also, there will definitely be a chance to become a hero. You have to go up to the undergraduate level first, and the heroic faculty is without a doubt the most important, but you have to have very high grades to get there. According to Chao, the Martial Arts Department of Longchong University or the Resource Recovery Department of Agrarian University would be suitable, and Fei Xiong again saw arrogance in his explanation. Comrade added that the Faculty of Martial Arts is the strongest specialty, and the Faculty of Resource Recovery is the richest. In both cases, the entrance scores must be very high. Suddenly, everyone began to pay attention to one of the boys from the construction school. He moved away from his group and began to walk in the direction where the group from the ninth school was standing. That arrogant classmate also knew the reason here that it is an old tradition when strong schools nominate their best student in order to scare other students from other schools. The competition is very high because, after the test, the district will give each school resources to improve, but the amount of those resources will be based on the ranking. It was a student of Jin John Peng Construction School. He stepped into the middle and loudly asked Meng Chao to come out to him. Therefore, the comrade became very embarrassed as well as Meng Chao himself at this moment. They had no idea what he might want from him. Suddenly he came and asked him what happened. Let him deal with him. This disciple didn't expect it, but he had heard about Chao's friend. He had heard that his secret sword of deadly rage was quite good and had even injured one weak student from their school. Was he proposing to compare their scores on this exam? Chao's friend's name was Jiang Lei, he answered him sharply. He is not afraid of him and is ready to compare the results. He was satisfied because he had added excitement to this exam. He will be looking forward to the results to see the strength of the district's key school. He was already walking but suddenly turned sharply and swung to strike. He did it very quickly. A powerful air wave was created from his speed, and Jiang Lei and Fei Xiong were startled by such a sudden movement. He really didn't expect that so-called respected disciple to act like that. He began to sneer and apologize for scaring Jian Lei so much, although he did it deliberately and got pleasure from it. For him, there was a blow below the belt because he was ashamed in front of everyone. Chao sighed and realized that he needed to step in to protect his classmate's honor. Chao said that many brag about power, but they do it honestly and this is the first time he has seen a master like him using trickery to demonstrate his power. Chao, showing no emotion, asked him that he was interested in acting in this style. He defiantly replied that one should treat any opponent seriously and do everything possible. Then why rely on brute force if you can win with the mind? Chao said that this is the first time he has heard that someone equates this kind of reception with intelligence, and asked him why he was looking for him. He heard that Chao is very good at shooting and that he even maimed Zhuo Hao Zan. He had played in his club for several years and was practically his student, and he wanted to see that. At the one who had maimed him, he began to look directly into Chao's eyes with a very malicious look. But Chao simply pushed his big pike away from me with his hand. He said he wasn't used to seeing boys so closely. Fei Xiong and Jin Lei were delighted by Chao's actions. Jin Jianpeng himself was shocked, 
because even the top 10 students in his school are afraid of his gaze, he released 70% of his killing intent, and Chow didn't even blink. Suddenly, his friend called him because a student of the Agricultural University came down from the stage and is walking in their direction. In the background, Chow began to wipe his hand, and Zhao Peng started to mend his clothes because his parents and that girl have a business relationship, and he also has a good relationship with her. They started going to meet that student and saying that there is nothing interesting about the ninth school. Chao's friend began to reassure him not to worry because that Amball had already left, that he needed to be calm until the second stage would soon begin. Chao said that he was completely calm and afraid that it was Jin Zhao Peng who would start to worry soon. Suexi, Nina's granddaughter, ran and greeted Meng Chao. Chao looked away at first, but when she called him, he immediately turned around. She ran by that amble and didn't even notice him. Everyone who was there was shocked by what was happening. Jin Zhaohan immediately imagined Meng Chao and Suexi together and was in a state of great confusion. It was a very strong blow for him, in terms of peace and harmony before the second stage. Chao's friends were mesmerized by her beauty and did nothing yet, and Chao asked her why she came. She came to find him because... There is no other reason for her to be here, therefore, she is from another district. Chao did not understand what she meant by that and just stood and admired her beauty. She paid attention to how everyone looked at her and did not regret that she wore these rags. She decided to compliment Chao that there are many students from the ninth school, but Chao looks the best. Fei Xiong and that friend were simply devastated by what they heard. He stuttered, tried to address her and called her. She suddenly turned around and recognized that boy and asked him that that student was from her. Jin Xiaopeng couldn't come to his senses. He was getting worse and worse every second. He imagined something very exciting, but his expectations did not come true at all. All the students formed a circle and watched as Chao communicated with Miss Ning. Chao asked her again why she was looking for him, and absolutely all the students were very angry with him and even his friends because he didn't tell them anything about his relationship with her. She said that she wanted to help him with admission to the faculty of their agricultural university. In her opinion, he should definitely go there. She said that when the exam is over, they will go there and she will give him some materials and introduce him to some students. Chao thanked her for her kindness, but he was already worried because Fei Xiong was just bursting with anger. But Chao tells her that he has not yet decided where to go. Suexi was confused by such an answer. She did not expect this at all. She began to insist that he should get an education and become a professional reaper, and their faculty is the best in that direction. Then there was an even bigger shock for everyone present in that hall. There was another cry. A pretty girlish voice called out for Meng Chao. Thysian almost fainted when he saw her. It was his greatest fantasy. It was pulsation princess Yang Feijo, she impulsively shouted at Meng Chao. Suexi immediately tensed up. She was interested in how she knew him. She suddenly ran up to him and immediately caught his hands. She looked very pleased, and Chao was in an uncomfortable position. He told her that you shouldn't do that in public. Suexi was also very surprised by Feijo's actions. Chao's friends were also freaking out. From what they saw, the two famous and beautiful girls were paying a lot of attention to Meng Chao. The best students of other schools were horrified because they thought they would be bullied by other students. But here, they are being bullied. Faitov asked Chao about the training video where the new pulsation power was shown. Was she wondering if it was Chao? She began to thank him, and especially a big thank you to the old firebearer for his useless contribution to the Yan Corporation. Chao immediately understood how she had calculated that Meng Chao was him. Because in that clip, his hands were clearly visible, and a great master like her, when she touched him, immediately knew who he was. He was most angry that she had done it in front of everyone, when he could have gone into a separate room and groped him as much as he wanted. Students from other schools who wanted to dominate were broken morally and retreated. Feijov and Suexi began to ask each other, what are they doing here? Feijov said that she came to tell Meng Chao about the martial arts department of Longcheng University. In her opinion, he suits him very well. Say she scornfully asked Feijov how she knew Meng Chao. Feijov said that he was injured last year. 
Sueshi came up with the idea that her grandfather had invented a new version of pulsation, and Chow's injury was complicated, and they began to work together. And thanks to this, they started to communicate. She asked Meng Chow if he would confirm her words. He was surprised at the story she made up, but he said that's how they met. Feijhoff was pleased that she managed to establish contact with Meng Chao. Sueshi's girlfriend said it didn't matter if he knew the princess, and it didn't mean he would join her faculty, because he needs to realize his talent as a mower. She also said that her university also has such a faculty, and if Chao wants to, she can choose a dual education. Feichov began to laugh at the fact that there is a faculty of martial arts at the agricultural university because it sounds funny. Sueshi's girl started asking Fajov what she meant by their beast spirit style being worse than the super kill style. They started to get angry with each other, and Chow began to reassure them that he might not get enough points to enter the bachelor's program. He added that it is worth waiting until the end of the second stage of the exam and then talk calmly. They were already angry and said at the same time that they were inviting him to dinner. Chow's friends were just furious because he had two beautiful girls, and they didn't have one. The speaker drew the student's attention to the fact that there were three minutes left before the start of the exam. That aggressive student told his friends to remember the name Meng Chow. He wants to see what Chow is capable of, and at the same time the girls continued to fight for him, but he was very offended by what he saw. Suddenly the speaker said that all students should pay attention. Circles appeared on the ground and everyone had to stand clearly in a circle. Then they were told to take their seats. They need to relax and enter a state of deep meditation. Each circle was signed individually for each student. After a minute, those who speak or move will be considered trespassers. The first violation will be recorded and the second will immediately result in disqualification. Suddenly something began to appear from the ground. It was from the ground that three spears appeared that surrounded Chow. He was surprised when he saw it. Vanna began to separate into different parts and seemed to come alive. Chow thought that this is what that super intelligence looks like. It started to take some form. Chow said that it didn't look very good. But Chow thinks that these are the most advanced technologies, and there is probably no reason to worry. It was also created with genetics and psionic energy in mind and it became like a mask and smoothly slipped onto Meng Chao's face. It looked like a pretty scary red mask. That mask began to merge with his face and launch certain substances into him. Then began the fall into the virtual, but at the same time real world. Suddenly, Chao found himself in front of a huge worm, like monster that had dozens of huge teeth, and in the center of that mouth was a girl who was screaming for help. There was a strong wind, Chow showed no emotion. There was a strong energy raging. Suddenly, Chow turned his head to the side and saw another person being eaten alive by mutated rats. While all the students were in anabiosis and their minds were in the simulation, the teachers looked at the screen and saw them from the side. They immediately noticed that this year's exam is much more difficult than the previous ones. Master Wang said that 120% pain and fear was the standard for being selected into the Red Dragon Army. Another teacher said that the time is completely different. The war is moving to a new level. And if those students do not pass the virtual test, then there is no point in sending them into the deep fog. Specialists followed the results of students. A student from Gen Fei Year School, he has a mental index of less than 40%. Suddenly, it began to decrease to 30%. He is already more than 60 seconds behind the red line. He failed the exam. He must leave the hall where the exam is held. Suddenly, doctors appeared and took him out of that hall on a wheelbarrow, and it was announced over the loudspeaker that student Jen Fei had failed the exam. The teachers could see how that student failed the exam. He was eaten by a giant monster. Teacher Wang, after what he saw, began to worry about his students even more. Next, the teachers watched how the students of the constructive school passed the exam. He confirmed his reputation that he is the strongest in that school. His psyche was like metal. A teacher from that school said that for their students, such exams are like a performance. At the same time, they began to look after Meng Chao and noticed that he had very strange indicators. In the simulation, 
He stood and was surrounded by monsters from all sides, but there was not a drop of fear or excitement on him. Speaker and examiner, she was also very interested in his statistics. Teachers from other schools said that with such indicators, he could lead a constructive school. Another teacher asked if that kid eats the brains of monsters all the time, and Chow himself expected something completely different. He expected a much larger scale. That monster launches a swift attack, but Chow dodges without much effort. He thinks that everyone said that the test would be very scary. And they said that there will be so many terrible monsters that all the students will put their pants in fear. He decided to think. Maybe he missed something and decided to take a look and take his time. At that moment, he was in the air and just landed on the back of that monster. He did not understand because, according to the stories, everything was supposed to be very difficult. But in reality, it was very simple. Then he climbed up to that monster's head and said that this one was even a little cute. He did not understand how these simple monsters could scare someone. He was not worried at all. Well, now he understood what is happening here and is ready to practice a little. He saw another monster in the distance and it started running towards him. It was the same one Chow was standing on. A beautiful and large sword appeared on the side of that monster. The monster he was standing on also started running to meet another. They had a plan to crush Chow, but he perceived it all as a computer game which means that for him there must be items that he must collect. After a few seconds, those monsters hit their heads at full speed. It was very grand and epic. He expected this and successfully jumped up and started running on the back of one of them. At the end, he jumped on the big tail and began to descend from it as if going down a hill. He had a lot of fun. In this way, he very quickly got hold of that sword, which he had noticed before. He effectively grabbed that sword and is now ready to put on a real show. For the past few days, he consulted the demon Yan about the art of swordsmanship, and he was able to hone his art as if he had participated in hundreds of battles. Meanwhile, one monster was injured after their clash, and the other monster was very threatening and angry. He was staring at Chow and wanted to knock him out of his emotional calm. In a moment, many monsters of various sizes appeared in a small radius from him. He was pleased because for him it was perfect training, with all aspects of real combat. Suddenly, those other monsters started a rapid attack. There were several of them. They were a little smaller than the previous ones, but also faster. He started the battle and those monsters attacked him from all sides. After a few seconds of the night, Chow received minor injuries. He felt that a monster was flying behind him and wanted to bite his neck. Here he decided not to experience such pain on himself and began to act as sharply as possible. He turned around with an incredibly fast lunge and made a counterattack. That one he managed to destroy quite quickly, but there were others. He fought and tried different techniques on them. At first they seemed to him ideal for training, but after destroying a certain amount he realized that he would have more fun with bigger monsters. And very quickly, he ran in the direction of the first monster, whose mouth was divided into four parts. He ran at him and felt no fear, then struck the first blow. But something incredible happened. That monster pierced him with its massive tail. Chow rushed at him at full speed. It was an injury not combined with life. The monster swung its tail with great force and flung it into the large rocks that were nearby. That was the end of this session. He was dead. His teachers were very surprised because they saw that his attack was very chaotic and did not understand what he was hoping for. The other teachers thought they were seeing something incredible, but it was a brief flash. The teacher from the coolest school calmed down because at first he was worried that some ordinary student would not become better than his special students. But the supervisor saw something strange and expected that it was much further. Suddenly Chow opens his eyes and vaguely sees that monster from behind. That monster was surprised, although he is a computer simulation, but he did not realize it. Chow reappeared and all his times were healed. He himself did not know that such a thing was possible. So, death without fear does not end the exam, but simply rebirths the student. He understood that the exam was going on for some time, and if he did not give in to fear and panic, then it would not end earlier. And now, with even greater interest, he went on the attack to try again. But this attack ended. Even faster than the previous time, the monster simply caught him in its mouth. 
This time, only his sneakers remained from Chow, and in a moment he reappeared behind that monster, and his so-called wounds were counted as well. That monster, despite its menace and power, clearly showed a lack of understanding that its victim appeared again and again. Chow also had a very strange feeling when you seemed to die and suddenly come back to life. Yi Chao went on the attack again and everything looked very similar to last time. But for him, it was an ideal simulator when the conditions are like in a real battle, but he is immortal. This turn of events surprised the teachers very much. Teacher Wang and Teacher Yang stared and remained silent. And other teachers began to say that he is a little dumb and his fighting technique is also very strange. Was Teacher Young very surprised when he realized that Chow had decided to practice such a radical technique during the exam? He didn't understand how Chow was not afraid of failing the exam. Later, the teachers began to be surprised by the fact that he looked like some kind of monster because he had already died many times, and his mental state was around 10%. The teacher from the special school swept up and told them to watch carefully because Chow began to practice the art of swordsmanship in hundreds of battles. This style of the ninth school seemed quite interesting to him. Later, after several deaths, that big monster was chopped into various pieces. Monsters don't resurrect like that there, and even more so with a sword stuck in the eye. Chow was even tired. Sweat was pouring down his face. Suddenly, there was a spark. The art of swordsmanship has greatly improved. Many teachers have recorded many different moments on the example of real combat and will teach their students in the same way. For the fact that he taught them new methods, he was given an award. Chao Yi had no idea that there were still elite teachers there for which he was given awards. He lay on that dead monster and caught his breath. While he was lying there, he thought about what he should do next because it is impossible to finish the exam in time, and he has mastered the skill of swordsmanship quite well. After this kind of training, it was difficult for him to come up with something, but he began to turn his head to the side. It occurred to him that he must have used data from the Monster Research University in his sleep, and he figured out what he would do, because the internal structure of virtual monsters is the same as real ones. His mood rose even more because he will be able to do such things here. He took his sword out of that monster's eye because it would be his tool for work. Soon wine will reach a completely different level and time is very precious. He needs to practice in everything. He just wants to use those monsters to raise the initial harvest level to master level. He felt such a buzz, he really liked it. He understood that he had already managed to fight with the sword and now he would begin to improve further. Great opportunities opened up before him. One could not be afraid to make a mistake because it is all a simulation. He stood and thought from which side it would be better for him to start dissecting that monster. He had little to do with these kinds of monsters. The only thing that disappointed him a little was that there were not enough monsters and he thought that he would not have enough. Suddenly, he heard a very loud noise behind him and turned sharply. Just a terrible and terrible noise reached him from the other side. It was strange for him. He did not know what to expect. Suddenly, he saw just a giant paw of a monster whose steps shook the ground. Also, among the cloud of dust that he found, the giant limbs of another monster could be seen very quickly. These were completely different monsters. They were the size of multi-story buildings. Then he realized that there is a second wave much stronger than the first. The passion for battle awakened in him again. He liked this more than the art of harvesting at the moment. If he had such an opportunity, then he is willing to further improve his skills. Teacher Yan was very uncomfortable because all the teachers started to look at him strangely because they thought that he was the one who gave him such instructions. And he thought why they were looking at him because he is not related to that abnormal boy at all. The speaker checked how long this exam will last. It was five minutes before the end. That time ended very quickly. The speaker said over the loudspeaker that those candidates who did not drop out passed the exam. And then additional time. Those who want can continue. The difficulty will gradually increase. The student himself will decide when to finish. Fei Xiong began to remove his mask and leave that state. When he fully regained consciousness, 
he immediately began to look at the large list and look for his name there. He found himself in the 443rd city. He was very glad that he passed that exam. He immediately began to tell Chow that he had passed, but Chow was still in the mask and was not his. Fei Xiong noticed that Chow was smiling very scary at him. It was strange because he has a whole hall of girlfriends here. That friend of theirs noticed that this was impossible, but agreed that there was a point in his words. And another classmate began to ask Fei Xian how he trained because he entered the top 500 in the entire district. He smiled and said that there was no way he was just thinking of Meng Chao talking to two female students. And then, to make it easier for him, he imagined that the monster was Meng Chao. And he immediately began to overflow with anger and he began to attack the monster with great force. Other classmates began to complain that they did not have the same rage as Fei Shen. At the moment of the battle, they simply had a fit of fear and they froze and did not move and the monster destroyed them. And suddenly someone called Fei Xian and asked him how he was doing. Fei Xiong said that he couldn't stand it either and left. Chao replied that he had already played and there were so many monsters that there was nothing he could do. His friends were shocked by this kind of expression about the game. They did not realize what he wanted to tell them. Suddenly, someone started yelling for everyone to look at Super Chao's rating. Rating. Chao managed to take 21st place among 500 students who passed the exam. One classmate asked that even those unicums who train every day in the virtual system still can't match Super Chao. Suddenly, there was a loud bang from one side. Everyone was frightened by that blow and the reinforcement of the floor cracked. It was that student John Penn from the elite school who was considered one of the strongest in his school. He was very angry. Someone came up to him and asked him what is happening to him today because he made so many mistakes. The one who spoke to him was called the head of low high. He said that he had high hopes for him and had no idea that his psychic qualities would turn out to be so simple. He said he regretted seeking special power resources for him. He began to understand that it was all because of that boy. Another student said that Meng Chao was in the top 30. He probably does not perceive fear by nature, and it is not surprising that Zheng Pen could not scare him. Luo Hai was curious. He asked if it was Meng Chao he was having trouble with. Chao saw what they were talking about him and was already preparing for the conversation, and at the same time rewards started coming to him. His friends remembered his scene with the girls and started asking him about his relationship with the princess, while another started asking about Ning Suishi how he met her. They became even more angry with him and threatened that he would not leave that place alive if he did not tell them the truth. They declared him a public enemy. Paragraph 2191. Chow sat down and said that he just wanted to help them all so that the two female students brought them information about their universities. Later, Chow was already able to endure this kind of slander and decided to become a victim himself. He began to say that he and his friends were not worth it and he would tell them to leave. After this, all those who were angry with him immediately softened and began to apologize to him. They told him not to tell them anything and to let them be here. In addition to Chow, there were other cool guys there. When he passed by, the girls couldn't look away. And when that Zhang Pen was walking, the boys did not respect him because of his act. Chao saw that they were heading straight for him and he needed to come up with something quickly. He immediately changed his expression and told Jin Zhang Peng that he had some business with him. Chao began to shake his hands and say that there had been a small misunderstanding between them. Because they are still young and their blood is boiling, that petty conflicts and rivalries are normal. That second disciple was listening to this and Chao said that it would be a while before they would all be in the same trench and defend Lungshan from the monsters. Chao asked him if he noticed how difficult that test was. This is all due to the fact that a great threat is looming. Chao then asked him what he thought if they would interfere with each other at a time when the war was coming, or was it normal? Chao's friends heard him say all this and thought that he was doing the right thing, that a conflict could be avoided. Other students from other schools also think that this is a rather wise idea, and Chao saw that they all liked him and understood that in this way he would contribute to the friendship of young warriors. The girls continued to praise Chao. 
they congratulated him on his good result, and Suisha was offered to go with her. John Peng saw this and once again began to think that Chow was doing all this on purpose to mock him. Chow began to get angry at the same time, and at the same time he was very pleased to feel such attention from those girls. But he understood that when they are here, he will not be able to make friends with the students. Suddenly, someone from the side began to reach out to him. It was that cool student from the Low High Constructive School. Chow was very surprised that he wanted to meet him, but immediately he also gave him his hand and said that he was Meng Chow from the Ninth School. He said that from today, Meng Chao is the main person in Hulin District. He wished Chao well in the final exam and then they would meet again. Chao smiled and said that he also wanted him to get into the top ranking. Suddenly, girls came up to him and began to drag him somewhere, and he addressed all students of the constructive school. He said that he was waiting for them all to know more about him and understand that he is quite quiet and that his fame is not important and the girls pulled him even harder. Chow shouted that he does not like to brag, but likes to contribute a little. They pulled him harder and harder, and against such a background, what he was saying looked strange. Looking at all this, Ju Pen asked Luo Hai if he should deal with him, and Luo Hai asked if he meant Meng Chow, and began to explain to him if he understood the meaning of competition and friendship as Meng Chow did, his results would be much better. Japen became even more angry that his supposed friend was paying attention to such a thing. Luo Hai turned around, looked into his eyes with a sinister look, and asked if he disagreed with him. Because if he doesn't agree with him, then let him deal with Chao himself and he won't even bet a penny on him. He went on to say that if they were both sent into the mist, Yupen would be fully armed and Chao would be barehanded. In the end, it was Jun Peng who would die. These words brought him into a stupor. And then that stupor grew into wild and enormous anger and hatred. Chow had to deal with Suishi and Fajhov. He said that they could not go with him because of the dinner, to which they simultaneously asked him, why? Chow was embarrassed, but said that the two of them were very beautiful, and if he went to eat with them, he was afraid that his classmates would kill him out of jealousy. The girls looked at each other and did not expect that such a situation could happen. Then they smilingly asked him if he wanted their inside information that they had prepared. Chow said that he really needed that information, but it would be even better if the two of them came to their school and told the information about the final exam and faculty selection to all the students. Ten days before the final exam, Chow received paper media from the girls to study. All the students very quickly understood that information from him. The girls Fijoff and Sueshi came to school and tried to tell the students everything they needed to know. With three days left before the final exam, the students were practicing and Fei Xiong said that he and his friends had arranged to make fun of Chao, only to have the opposite happen again. Afterwards, the spark sent a notification that all of Chao's hidden injuries were completely healed. He was very pleased when he received such a notification. As Chao lay there, he thought that he had never had such an experience in his past life because he had to stay after class to control everything. He had a very good bed then. He missed it very much. Suddenly, when no one expected it, real anxiety arose. Anxiety, anxiety, anxiety. The students ran into the corridor. Fei Xiong said that he didn't hear a warning from the security about a possible monster attack. But another said that this is a special alarm. There are many gaps in space in the city, and monsters can appear right in the city. Chow jumped out of bed and looked out the window. He was really in a stressful situation. Huge bolts of lightning struck all over the city. They burst out of those portals. A big storm started. The whole sky turned blue. It was all very scary. Luncheon has never seen such an attack. Chow was shocked because in his past life at this time, he was in the hospital and lying in a coma. Now the real test begins for him because he has no memories of this event and he will experience it for the first time. But the storm was getting stronger every minute. The lightning started to strike much more often. Something terrible was coming to Lun Cheng. Suddenly, at one moment from one spatial portal, huge tentacles began to appear. That ugly creature was simply unimaginable in size, and it was also falling from the sky. It looked like a huge eye that was infected with some kind of horrible contagion. In a short time, it completely left that portal. 
It was bigger than many houses in Luncheni. The people had already heard of this kind of monster before, and it was a sky-splitting demonic eye. All students began to run outside and prepare for battle. The disciples said that the brute was strong in group and mental attacks, and that you couldn't look him in the eye. Fais Yun panicked and said that the textbook said that he moved less and that his tentacles were weaker. They ran to an approximate temporary position. Most of the ordinary students were in panic and fear. They thought they couldn't do anything with such a super monster. Some began to cry and asked, where is the army and where are the exalted warriors? Chow had to command them. He ordered them to concentrate and calm down. Also, that they start using breathing and meditation techniques. Suddenly, a loud noise was heard from the sky, which was getting louder and louder. Chow discovered from which side the sound is coming exactly and will turn his head there. And armored airships began to fly out of the bay. Chow added courage that they are not alone in this battle. They were heading straight for the big eye to try and destroy it as quickly as possible. Fire was opened from all possible weapons at the same time. In order to start aimed fire, the airship had to get closer. He showered shells and bullets on that terrible monster. Suddenly, the door of that airship opened and an exalted warrior could be seen there. He was a warrior who specialized in sword fighting. Another section opened and there was also a female warrior raised, but she was a sniper. Another warrior like a heavy weapon that deals maximum damage to the monster. And another alcove opened, and a warrior of very high rank was raised there too. The first warrior in red armor decided not to delay, and began to act. He could fly mainly because of the jetpack on his back. He flew right into one such monster, as several of them appeared over time. He flew straight at him and didn't feel an iota of fear. He managed to dodge those huge tentacles well. It was a very strong warrior. In a very short time, he came close to the monster's shelter. Monster tried his best to defend himself, but the warrior had already started swinging for a super strike. He specially sped up as quickly as possible and headed straight for the center of the eye itself. It is not surprising, but there was the weakest place. In a few moments, there was a powerful explosion from the back of the monster. That explosion of talc increased the revolutions because those monsters were empty in the middle and filled with various gases. Another girl is elated. A warrior sniper noticed that beautiful attack and praised her partner. She also had a jetpack on her back, but she was a ranged warrior. Looking at the successes of a friend, excitement was awakened in her. Suddenly, she flew up to a close distance to the monster. He was already sinking his tentacles into her. Another moment passed, and a huge bullet flew out of her super weapon and flew straight into the center of the monster. It was just fantastic because 80% of the monster just fell apart into very small balls. Fei Xiong watched everything with great interest. He shouted and encouraged the soldiers. Chao from the side got used to the reaction of Fexen and many other students. He realized that this is probably the first time they see how the exalted warriors fight. That's why they have such an emotional reaction. But suddenly one student began to shout for everyone to look because one of the monsters was attacking the airship. The monster from the height began to descend rapidly and collided with that airship with great force to destroy it. But he managed to resist. Then the monster began to envelop him with its massive tentacles. He began to pull him down and destroy him in this way. He himself will die, but he will also destroy the airship. He was called the Steel Demon. The students who were panicking now began to panic even more. Chow also saw this. Such a sight greatly disturbed the faith of the disciples. At the moment when everyone saw the fall of the airship, they began to radiate fear and it resonated. With each passing minute, their hysteria grew and they began to see more and more reasons for complete defeat. Chow understood that fear had spread through the mind waves like a virus. He needs to find a way to stabilize their mental index, find a way to raise their morale. Suddenly a song started playing. Everyone was surprised because it was not the time for songs. Chow realized that this song would definitely help them, that it would definitely calm their mental index. It sounded very loud from all loudspeakers, and Chow began to set the rhythm. The words were get up for the sake of loved ones. The monster's teeth are near. In no time, almost everyone was singing this song and their fighting spirit grew very rapidly. 
Something strange began to happen. The monster was confused. What was about to happen? Suddenly, what a light began to rise to the top. And the students have already completely changed their fear to fearlessness and courage. Mental index is a very important thing. And that's why luncheon includes music at some critical moments to help people raise their mental index. Those terrible monsters were still a little over the city before complete victory was still far. Are. To everyone's surprise, there was also a completely different monster. There were different monsters in different areas of the city, but there were also exalted warriors. Every tall warrior had his favorite weapon that he was the best with. He pierced that monster right through. His power was so great that the blow of those spears just shone like the sun. But that was not all. He won one, while the other was almost too late, pounced on him from the back. Suddenly, someone fired several shots with a laser weapon at that monster. It was another sublime. They always work in pairs to cover each other. That warrior jumped up and his next range targets began to appear. A few seconds and the nearest monsters were shot by a professional shooter. These were two exalted warriors in another area of the city. And this is the third warrior from that group. He, like everyone else, possessed unique techniques and unique armor. Thanks to her great skills and super strength, that woman warrior dealt with monsters very effectively. The exalted warriors played a key role in this battle. So far, the monsters could not do anything against them. Later, special spotlights appeared on the roofs of buildings, which immediately began to attract the attention of monsters in the form of an eye. They all chose one monster and began to direct their light into its many eyes. In a moment, the monster on which those spotlights shined began to behave very strangely. He began to shake all over. And after a few moments of such radiation on the monster, it exploded very violently. It was a special radiation that was focused on the monster's eyes. Facian said that as long as their mental index is at a high level, they are not afraid of that demonic eye at all. And another student said that no monsters and zombies could match the power of Luchin. Chao breathed a sigh of relief, because now each of them has a mental index of 120%. He is afraid that in this state, they won't even notice demon teacher Yan. Then they became so bold that they began to say that the townspeople were fighting monsters behind the school fence, and they also wanted to help and contribute to the defense of luncheon. Suddenly, behind their back, someone shouted to them, What are they doing there? It was Teacher Yang. He was in full combat readiness and had a great sword. Fei Xiong immediately asked him if he was going to fight. He began to speak for the teacher to take them with him to this battle. The teacher sharply replied that Fei Xiong should not talk nonsense and quickly turn back, and that none of them should take a single step outside the compound. Usni began to say that the committee issued a decree that when monsters attack, everyone should help each other and fight together. Monsters destroy the city, and they have to sit here. The director also came to the students. He said that he fully understands them and supports them in their fighting beliefs. Chow listened to him attentively. He said that in order to survive, they sacrifice themselves all the time, but the sacrifice must be valuable. Every drop of blood spilled must pay for itself. He asked if they understood this. Fei Xiong asked the director in response, why then he can go fight? They are already old and crippled. All potential has been squeezed out of them. Their death does not matter much. And the students are still young. They are like the rising sun. All the students remained silent and listened to what the director was saying. Meng Chao understood all this very well, but he also listened. The headmaster said that they are the students, the future, and the hope of Luncheng. And if they really want to fight, then let them wait until he and all the teachers are dead, then they have to step over their corpses and take their weapons, just so they can fight today and do as they please. Fixian wanted to say something else to the director's words, but he sharply told him to shut up. Luncheng is a district army in another world. Everyone's life belongs to the city. Even death should be dignified. The director began to increase his muscles in front of the students. He straightened up and became three times his usual size. He was also an exalted famous warrior called Sun Daxon Heavy Cannon. His hands were scarred from battles. Chow was delighted with what he saw. Now he doesn't wonder why a heavy gun doesn't need a weapon. 
because his fists, like two thunder hammers, are filled with gunpowder. If you touch them even a little, then death immediately. He shouted that he was Sun Daxing. He had joined the army at the age of 17 and had been a soldier for 40 years. He had killed a thousand zombies and tens of thousands of monsters. His body was left with large scars and a piece of tooth stuck in his spine. He approached Fei Shun and said that he had given everything for the sake of Long Chong so that his death would be worthy, and began to ask Fei Shun how many monsters he killed and how many scars remained on his body. What has he done for Lucian? He hasn't even grown a hair yet. What value will his death bring? Fei Xiun now understood everything. Well, they should stay here and believe in their defenders. In the older generation of Lucan, they will hold the city and buy time for the students. And their mission is to train hard and use the time and resources that the soldiers won for them. At the end, he said that they should get their right to a dignified death. Fai Yun, after the teacher's speech, was in a pensive state. Chao understood the director perfectly because he once lived all this and in much worse situations. The students remained as they were told by the director and saw them off to the battle. But suddenly Chao had a very disturbing feeling. He remembered one moment. What exactly in this battle? The director was dragged into the sky, and there he was badly injured when they were suddenly attacked from behind, and he died from those injuries. Chao shouted sharply for the director to wait. It was very difficult for him. He wanted to try to somehow prevent it. The headmaster turned sharply and was already angry with the students, but Meng Chao, he was willing to listen. Chao started running up to him to tell him something. He began to tell what he had read on a forum in the darknet about those monsters that they can take into the sky with their tentacles. He doesn't know if it's true, but he advises Teacher Yan and the principal to pay attention to the attacks from the mountain. Teacher Yan listened to him carefully and thought that it would not interfere. He thanked him and said that Meng Chao was getting back to everyone and also took care of security. And now they definitely went to the epicenter of the battle, filled with inner emotions to defend the city. Chao looked at the director and a reward came to him for Sun Daxin heeding his advice and his chances of survival increased a lot. Chao noticed that the director was signed as a hero. He was even higher in rank than the elite of the city. He wondered what kind of warrior one must be in order to be assigned the rank of hero. Faizan immediately began to ask Chao, what should they do now? Chao himself began to get a little angry because of the frequent questions of his friends and said that they would all go to the training hall and seek the right to die. His friends have never seen him in such a state. They all started running after him and said that they would train as hard as they could. And Fei Xiong said that he would fight Chao until someone shouted. Later, it happened that Chao punched one classmate in the face and quite hard. On the turn of the other, he kicked, also sparing no effort. Faishin was lucky because Chao threw him over his shoulder and threw him to the floor. There was quite a loud bang in the hall from that hard landing. Chao faltered a bit. He told everyone to get up and add some strength and then they would be able to repel his blow. But Faishiong said that he needed to rest for a while followed by everyone else who also said that they would take a break. Chao approached the beaten Faishan and asked him why he is afraid of pain. He is very rude. Faishiong sharply replied that it was a lie that he was simply tired. He needs to rest a little and he will fight again and figure out how to beat Chao. Chao smiled and said that he will look after him to fulfill his promise. While the others were improving, Faishiong told Chao that he was getting a little worried about his family. Chao said that now everyone is worried about their relatives. This is such a moment and generally such a time. They understand that now all they can do is improve. But do not forget that they are ordinary high school students, even if they run home now. So what can they do as a result? Most likely they will interfere. Therefore, he will repeat again that now the most important thing is to train hard. Meanwhile, in the area where Chao lives, there were quite active actions in that area, large military vehicles were involved. The captain explained that there were a lot of monsters in that region and he asked everyone to help the Red Dragon army and go to the shelter in another street. Just at that moment, a huge and vicious monster destroyed that captain's walkie-talkie and attacked him. 
It was this message that Meng Chao's father was listening to because these events were taking place not far from their home. He gathered his relatives and told them to go to the place they were talking about on the loudspeaker. He urged his daughter to keep up. Grandma told granddaughter Xiao Kao not to worry she will look after her, and her job is to look after the dog. They and many other people ran there, the father emphasized to his daughter that they should not be separated in any way. When all those people were running by the side street, a purple light was seen there. Suddenly, a portal began to open there rapidly, and a huge monster in the form of a rhinoceros burst out of that portal. It was very unexpected. The military don't know what happened there. In a moment, there were already several such monsters. People panicked. They tried to run away from those monsters. Men heard a loud noise behind him, and when he turned, he was horrified by what he saw. He told his men to stick together and not let the crowd crush them. Grandmother told him not to worry because she is under her protection. Suddenly, something terrible happened. Several more monsters broke out into the street and began to attack men and his wife. No one could have predicted such a situation. She was on the verge of death. But suddenly, something flashed to the side. It was the silhouette of a girl who ran at great speed and seemed to grab a sword. It was Xiao Kao Shi with that sword jumping on that monster's head and shouting to her parents that she would protect them. That monster felt that someone was on his head, but he still didn't have time to react. Just as the monster was about to do something, Xiao Kao was already preparing to stab him from above. She stuck that sharp samurai sword into his head with all her might. But the other monster continued to move in the direction of her parents, and she suddenly started to push away from the first monster in order to destroy the second. A monster is still when they kill other monsters. They have one goal, that is to destroy people. And Xiao Kao catches up and strikes very fast. The air started to glow from her speed. And now the consequences of her lightning-quick blow became visible. That second monster's face was cut off, and Xiao Kao jumped into the air. She did all this very effectively and landed very beautifully. She was very pleased with herself, asking mom and dad how cool she is. And mother, father, and grandmother were horrified by what they saw and only had time to shout her name in a very disturbing voice. It was just a terrible situation. Xiao Kao had no idea, but behind her, a huge monster had already opened its mouth to grab her. They still had time to shout when she saw a monster behind her and she looked back and saw him. At the last moment, when he had already closed his mouth, she managed to dodge and jump to the side. And that monster ran forward with great speed due to inertia. He stopped very quickly and began to turn around to attack her again. And she already understood that she would be dead. She spent all her strength to save her parents and now she can't even stand up. She thought about her brother. If he got into the afterlife, she would throw a tantrum at him. Meng and his wife rushed to her to try to save her. But the chance that they would have time to do anything was very small. And at the last moment, when the monster was already in the shelter of her, some powerful explosion took place near the mouth of that monster. And thanks to him, the monster moved aside and did not touch her. It was just a miracle and she was in a stupor because she only thought that she would die. When the monster ran near her, she noticed a big wound on him from that explosion. It was a grandmother. She rode behind a prong with a big gun, said they really thought she was useless. She then continued to intensely fire at that monster. Although she herself could not move as fast as that monster, but riding on a prong, they were on par. They ran around him from the side, and she kept shooting at him. Suddenly, the monster began to change its direction sharply. He began to turn around. The grandmother did not understand what the monster was up to. He first moved away from people, but now it seems wants to attack again. Her weapon is too weak to kill him. As a result, he was heading straight for Sao Cao again, his grandmother yelling at him to run away. She told the Fang to save her granddaughter and she would try to stop that evil demonic boar. Zubik was a very advanced creature and understood her immediately. Grandma suddenly jumped uphill and opened fire with her weapon again. She landed right on that monster's groin and stuck her weapon into his head. She screamed for the fat creature to die and she started shooting. Just in time, the prong was able to pull Sao Cao to the side and there was an even stronger explosion where the monster was. Immediately after that, the monster fell to the ground and stopped moving. The granddaughter screamed in hysterics to her grandmother because she could not see what happened there. When the fire itself was extinguished from the explosion, 
but the smoke remained. It became clear to the grandmother that she was sitting on the tip of the face of that monster. Granddaughter with a tooth quickly ran to her to see if she was okay, and immediately the grandmother raised her hand and said that it was all easy for her. Sao Cao was immediately happy that the grandmother was okay. It was just wonderful that everything went well. But in the next moment, her expression began to change dramatically. Tears immediately began to well up in her eyes because the smoke began to clear and the full picture became visible. That monster was definitely dead, but there was a lot of blood on its mouth. Also, the hole in his head was huge because the grandmother stuck her gun in him and started shooting him in the middle. Grandma told Sao Kiao that she didn't cry because Grandma was fine. She was smiling and waving her hand. But the real picture was just terrible. That huge horn of the monster completely pierced the grandmother through. She still asked her granddaughter not to cry. Tears were streaming down her face, but she faked a smile. For her, it was just a tragedy. The weapon from which the grandmother was shooting was simply torn apart because the explosive force from the shots had nowhere to go and tore that weapon apart. Their area was very badly damaged. So many defense mechanisms were destroyed. Chow arrived on the bus, which began to run in the morning and ran quickly to the house. There were many corpses of monsters on the way to the house. People did not understand how these creatures appeared in their old neighborhood. They said that their defense system is very weak. It takes a long time to clear the rubble and harvest the monsters. Chow quickly ran and opened the door to the house. He immediately started calling everyone to make sure they were home. Chow saw his mother and father. He asked them if they were okay. They were beaten, but the father said that they were all right and that their area had a good harvest. Paragraph 2443. The father turned his head and said that he heard that in the middle of the battle someone awakened the power of the high one. Now there will be a high one in his area. Chow saw that everything was fine with them. Then he asked what happened to his sister. He asked where she is and begged his father to tell him the truth. The father returned to him and could not tell him anything. Chow started walking past her parents and immediately headed to her room and started calling her. When he walked up to her room, he thought that he hadn't looked at her for just one day. And had she turned to the dark side? He began knocking loudly and asked if everything was fine with her. And can he go into the room? She did not answer him something clearly to his question. Chow opened the door and saw that his sister was covered with a blanket and shaking. He came and silently sat next to her. He thought he would tell her to calm her down. She cried all the time and told him that she was very weak. She told him that she managed to save her mother and father, but she couldn't save their grandmother Wang. She snuggled up to her brother and said that Grandma Wang would die and become a zombie. Chow immediately thought what they would have to do next. He began to calm her down and told her to tell him exactly what happened. She told everything and still said that it was all because she was weak. Chow spoke sharply to his sister that Grandma Wong had made a heroic sacrifice to protect her city, and if she was conscious, she would definitely not want to see her in such a state. The sister continued to cry, but said that she must become very strong so that in the future this will not happen again. But Chow explained to her that strength of spirit is real strength, because if you don't have a strong spirit, you will become a slave to your strength. And in this case, not only will you not save anyone, but you will create an even greater tragedy. The sister understood him and stopped crying. Mother came into the room and told Chow that the military brigade of eternal life had come there. Chow asked his mother if there was a happy farewell at the grandmother's house. Mom said yes. Chow said that according to tradition, there should be witnesses at the funeral and they, as neighbors, will be witnesses. He began to call his sister so that the two of them could be witnesses, but she refused and said that she did not want to see her grandmother in such a state. Chow reminded her that she had just said that she wanted to become stronger. Did she not have the courage to look at Grandma Wong? He once again told her to come with him and they would take her on her final journey. Other neighbors gathered near her apartment. They discussed that she would become a zombie Others confirmed it because a special team came for such cases, but so far she was conscious. Chow and his sister walked past them and told them to stand aside because they were her neighbors and were coming to her to be witnesses. They came and saw that the grandmother was lying with her stomach twisted, 
the doctor said that the virus was gradually spreading and healing the wounds, and respiratory functions decrease, and the death rate of brain cells increases. As soon as the zombie got out of control, she was chained to the bed. Her own granddaughter was sitting in the corner and was also crying. Chow approached her and said that Xiao Chow would be staying with her. It was very painful for her to watch all this. She thanked Meng Chao and his sister for their support. Xiao Chao wanted to tell her something and wondered how to start the conversation. But suddenly the grandmother almost became a zombie and began to chaotically and impulsively wave her legs and arms. She changed, her eyes turned white, she became a real zombie. The granddaughter immediately hugged Xiao Chao out of fear, and she was also very scared, but she remembered her brother's words. She told Xiao Zuan not to cry because the grandmother is not in pain now. She began to hiss very loudly like some kind of animal. The doctor said that 85% of the brain was dead. Within three minutes, she would completely lose her respiratory function. In her body, all three of the strongest viruses exceeded the maximum indicators. The doctors assessed her condition and found that we were lost for salvation, and did the relatives agree with them. The grandmother's granddaughter was forced to agree with the doctors because she herself saw what happened to her. Other neighbors from far away also watched it, and the doctors said that the patient had signed an agreement stating that the body would be handed over to the Army Eternal Life Brigade in the Red Dragon Army. According to the procedure, there must be two witnesses. Chow and his sister agree to be witnesses in this case. Now the doctors needed to hear the direct consent of the witnesses. Sister Meng Chao had already become noticeably braver. She said that she agreed. The doctors further said that they would include the original recorded video of the donor. The doctors asked to watch carefully so that the following manipulations very clearly corresponded to the will of the donor. A grandmother appeared on the screen. She was holding the same weapon next to her, and with her was a tooth. She turned to her own granddaughter, Zuan. If she is watching this video, then the grandmother is dead. She even then started joking that she died and became a zombie. The first thing she told her was not to cry, because she had loved to do so since she was a child, and thus she was not at all like Xiao Cao's neighbor. After they started watching the video, she became even more hysterical, and even Chao Cao was quietly but also crying. She said that she did not need to be sad, but luncheon had moved 50 years ago, and she asked how people live like this. She said that there were many tragedies in her life, but she managed to live to such an old age. She decided that she would donate her body when she was as young as her granddaughter. She remembered that at that moment she was 14 years old and Luncheon had not yet moved to another world. She had a sister older than five years and she suddenly fell ill with an unknown disease. Doctors said that there were three such cases in the whole world and the time of death after the disease was discovered was one week, and her sister decided to donate her body after her death so that in the future, humanity would learn how to treat such viruses. After the death of her sister, the doctor handed over the picture that she drew with her last strength. In that picture, there was a star who was smiling and looked very much like a little sister. She made a paper crane from that picture and thought that when she carried it with her, her sister would always be with her and protect her. That's why she now also wants to become a star, and she will be able to watch over Qin Yuan and Xiao Qiao, watch them grow up in peace and happiness. The girls were very moved by the story of the grandmother. Regarding the tooth, she said that when she will study, she will not be able to take care of him. She needs to give it to the neighbors, Uncle Mi and Xiao Qiao, they take care of it. Xiao Qiao said that she will take care of the tooth. Now she has written everything down and can take a breather. She also said about her husband that he constantly said that he had given his whole life to the Red Dragon Army and that he would definitely want to join the ranks of the Eternal Life Brigade after his death. The doctors asked relatives and witnesses if they understood everything that was said in the video or if they might have any objections. The three of them said at the same time that they had no objections. The doctor said that the family members and witnesses do not object and the conversion ceremony is starting right now. The doctor said that everyone should bow three times to express a very deep respect for the volunteer. The first bow, no matter how hard the granddaughter tried, she could not hold back her tears. With every second, 
demonic forces were awakening more and more strongly in the grandmother's body. Meng Chao and his sister silently paid their respects to the grandmother who had saved Xiao Chao's life. Third bow, everyone present bowed to show respect. Then the doctors continued their work. They began to introduce virus inhibitors into her. Next, they needed to act faster, so as not to miss a special moment when there would be no turning back. They will insert an audio-visual image that the volunteer herself chose into her cerebral cortex. For a while, she calmed down and just lay quietly. Three minutes passed and the breathing apparatus and special mask were removed from her. The doctor said that they are going to conduct a final test and ask all family members and all witnesses to leave. They left quickly so as not to waste time. One of the doctors started the preparatory procedures. She did a certain ritual and was ready. In the next moment, the shackles that bound the grandmother were opened. She immediately got up and sat down in a second. She had very long and sharp nails on her feet and hands. For the first couple of moments, she just sat there and did not show any alarming signs. But suddenly, she jumped out of bed on the ground and started running to the doctor while laughing evilly. Her granddaughter screamed very loudly and called her. And she stopped at the last moment and looked at her granddaughter. But the doctor already held the gun over her head and only one second saved her. The doctor began to speak. Does she remember the oath she gave when she applied for admission to the Brigade of Eternal Life? Zhao watched carefully what was happening, and the doctor began to repeat that oath. Their will will defeat all material and immaterial enemies. She also listened carefully, and the doctor continued. Even after death, they should never be under the rule of bacteria and viruses. The doctor activated a special regimen that is intended for such cases. He was ready for any turn of events. He got into the grandmother's head and began to suggest information to her. It was very interesting for Chow to watch this. He realized that the doctor was exalted and he could possess the mysteries of the mind. After he started doing his thing, the grandmother started to scream and behave very chaotically. It looked very creepy. Her granddaughter was very scared, but she still screamed and encouraged her grandmother, saying that she would be able to beat the disease. That girl was left alone, and she said that the girl's grandfather and mother and father were looking at her from heaven. She had to overcome that disease. At one point, her chaotic movements and screams began to subside, and it became noticeable that there were tears in her eyes. So she completely calmed down, just stood and cried. Her movements became smooth like a human's. They began to check her with a certain device and found that the degree of brain mutation was under control. The central nervous system was not damaged. The reaction to sounds, to color, and the reaction to stimulation with fresh blood was normal. Fragments of memory preserved deep in the subconscious help her to control herself. The doctor said that she is no longer a wild zombie, but one who continues to fight for her relatives for her homeland, even after death. She began to cry because she heard and realized it all. The doctor is exalted. He gave the order to salute the immortal warrior. The granddaughter cried nonstop, but she was proud of her grandmother. Chao also said goodbye to her. He thanked her in his thoughts for saving his sister. Xiao Chao was also important, but she took control of herself because it was because of her grandmother's protection that she became like this. Special soldiers took her to a special car of the immortal regiment. Some people are already dead but continue to live. They died but continue to live in the raging fire. Many people gathered for her farewell. By that time, she was completely in control of herself and walked alone. For people like her, they are great heroes because she will continue to fight for their safety. A special helmet was worn on her head, which helped her control herself, and it also constantly scanned the state of her brain and all other indicators. Her granddaughter shouted after her that she must take care of herself and let her protect luncheon. She heard those words but could not react to them, but inside she felt calmer that her granddaughter said this. And she began to climb the stairs to get into that car. No one present would ever see her again. Xiao Chao cried once more and asked Xiao Zhuan for forgiveness, because if she was stronger, she could have saved Grandma Wang. She told her not to say that, because yesterday when the grandmother was still conscious, she told her how great Xiao Chao was. She turned sharply because these words surprised her. 
She also said that her grandmother said that she was the bravest girl she knew and that her granddaughter should learn from her. She could not believe that these were true words and questioned whether it was true. The granddaughter said that she will live at the school and can the tooth be left with them. Xiao Chao told her not to worry. She would take care of him. Then the girl remembered that her grandmother had said that she put all the important things in the dog's collar. When they opened that collar, two things started falling out of it. One of them was my grandmother's wedding photo, and the other is the picture she told about in her appeal drawn by her sister. The granddaughter asked Xiao Chao to keep that grandmother's star, and she would keep the photo of her when she was still young. That same evening, the sister told Chao that she no longer wanted to live in Longcheng No. 1. Chao did not understand her at first. She repeated once again and added that it doesn't matter to her how strong the psionic energy is, how much better the area is. She just doesn't want to live there but wants to stay where she is now. She firmly said that Tianfuan is their home and she will not back down even one step. Chao said that he understood her and said that she was all grown up. He immediately received a message that the chance of her turning into a demonic witch had decreased even more. Then she said that she does not want to learn to sing and dance, but wants to train and become strong. Chow agreed. Then he will train her, and they will start with a two-hour qigong stand and do this every evening. The sister did not like this exercise and started screaming for someone to save her. The alarm clock rang at six in the morning, but Chow had no plan, no plans to get up. There was one day left before the final exam, but Chow was a little exhausted. When he fell asleep again, he woke up from a loud sound. It was his sister who woke him up. She said that the exam was coming soon and he needed to train. She quickly got herself together and told her mother that she was going to school. A Chow just came out of his room and said that he would take revenge on her in the evening. Mom told him that he was very cruel to his sister and called him to eat while everything was warm. Chow got dressed and went to eat while watching the news on TV. Grandfather Nan was interviewed there, and he said that he not only wanted to create a fund for the bearer of fire, but also open free online classes to pass on everything he has learned throughout his life to all residents of Lucan for those who want to learn. He said that he had recently been seriously injured but had received very important information from a secret elder, and after that, he received enlightenment and started a new life. Chow was shocked when he heard that information. He immediately began to receive various notifications from the spark. There were quite a lot of them. Because of the interview that Grandfather Ning gave, a lot has changed in Lunchang. It turned out that the roles of city residents are not fixed and heroes are not born. Any commoner can become an elite. Now he understood everything. He was helped in this by Director Sun and Grandpa Ning. They guided him to the right path. He is determined to become the hero of the city. Also received a notification about the Thundercross sword and that it can be exchanged. Chow realized that with Grandpa Ning's input, that sword could be upgraded to expert level. He is very proud of himself that he is contributing to luncheon. Among the monsters of another world, there is one legend. The legend of a human city that suddenly appeared in the middle of a mountain range of monsters. About 20 years ago, a mighty nine-headed diamond dragon soared on a mountain ridge. He subjugated a lot of monsters. Having found himself in the center of respect, he decided to demonstrate his power to the entire ridge and raise the city of Lunzen to the ground. It was the 8th of June and it was the day of the final exam. The diamond nine-headed dragon met very determined opposition that day. It was a very large-scale battle. Trees and pieces of buildings flew like leaves in the autumn wind. The ten strongest exalted warriors of that time joined the battle against that super monster, united by the mission to protect the city. It turned out to be such a great force that even the doomsday monster had to flee. But this time, Luncheon didn't want to let him go just like that, because whoever interfered with the final exam would be punished. The monster was in a panic because he was not given a second to catch his breath. There were endless attacks of people on him. Humanity paid a huge price. It took them three months to kill the diamond nine-headed dragon in its lair. The scale of that battle is hard to imagine. Thousands of vehicles, tens of thousands of soldiers, and hundreds of exalted super-warriors were involved. 
Monsters possessed all kinds of intelligence, just like humans, clearly sense the determination of humans. Since then, the day of final exams on June 8th has become a forbidden day for monsters, a large training complex of the school. The children of Lucan can finally focus on passing the entrance exams and do their best to get good grades. The speaker told everyone to put on their headphones because there would be a sound check. Chow said that the examiner who came up with the idea of performing standing Qi Gong on a moving platform must have lost his mind. The speaker told them to draw a diagram of the rhinoceros dragon's main organs in its shell and point out its weak points. Chow very quickly completed several tasks in a row. Four hours passed and Chow raised his hand and told the teacher that he wanted to finish the exam. The teacher was of course surprised, but he could not interfere. It was the will of the student. And in general, there was still an hour left until the end of the exam. But Chow pressed the button to pass the exam. He left the exam hall and thought that he had checked all the answers three times and there should be no problems. Then he remembered that in the other halls, there were medical capsules to restore strength. He decided to go and try them. An hour passed and the students began to leave the examination hall. They looked tired. Fazion said that someone should show him the smart guy who invented such an exam and he would give him a full spade. Another student completely agreed with him, and another student asked them if any of them had seen Super Cal. Fei Xiong suggested that he restore his strength in the medical capsules first and then go find Chow. They agreed with him, but you can't give him the opportunity to brag and you definitely don't need to ask him how he passed the exam. Fei Xiong came over and said they wanted to use the capsules, but she was very surprised by the size of Fei Xiong and said that they need to register. One of them said did they hear there was some weirdo in that exam who passed the exam an hour before it was over. One said maybe he's just super lazy. Suddenly, Meng Chao comes out of one of the booths, all wet and in a smart combat uniform. Everyone except that girl was, once again, suddenly surprised. His friends were already used to this and tried not to show their emotions. Chao did not wait for a question from them and decided to ask them himself how they passed the exam. They said that it was Chow who passed an hour earlier and now he will start bragging again. Another boy asked Fei Xun if he would like to beat him up a bit. But Fei Xiong said that he had already tried and it didn't work. But they found a solution and everyone said at the same time that they were tired and went into the booths. Chow did not understand why they were behaving like this. Another hour and a half passed and the matter came to the reference service on the results of the exam. While Chow was quietly eating his lunch, they discussed from the back that they were very interested in his results, but they could not ask him because he would immediately humiliate them. Fei Xiong particularly wanted this. Chow heard this and turned to him and wanted to say something to him. But Fei Xiong covered his ears with his hands and told him not to say anything because he would not listen. He had guessed that they were strange, but now they were showing it very openly. Chow realized that Fei Xiong was tormented by the fact that he did not know his results, and Chow decided to enjoy it. In the end, Fei Xiong couldn't stand it and told Chow to tell him what his score was. Without thinking at all, he said, 939 points is the first place in their school and 1084 from the whole city. They began to say that it would be better if they went right now to be tested by real combat. They simply turned and walked away from him. Chow saw this as a lack of mental preparation in them because they are very vulnerable, a military base with a huge concentration of weapons and soldiers. The soldier went out onto the road and started to stop the bus that was carrying students who were taking the exam. The students showed their tickets, but the soldier said they had to get off the bus because then they had to get on an armored train to cross the river. Gradually, they all got off the bus and headed deep into the base. Fei Xiong said that he had wanted to see that river for a long time, but his father told him that it was very dangerous there. Chow said that there is a place where monsters attack the Zanian district every day and that Fei Xiong wanted to become their lunch. Such an expression, Chow upset him. He was offended. In a moment, the siren went off again in the area. One of the students saw that there was a monster in the Red Dragon River and Fei Xiun ran to him because he also wanted to take a closer look. Under the huge bridge, 
A huge water monster was raging, but suddenly they began to hear the sound of metal airships. They were just beautiful super weapons. They flew towards that water monster. When they got close and hovered over that monster, they started dropping huge bombs. Monsters also have intelligence, and he saw that bomb fall near him, but nothing happened. But not even a moment passed when an explosion of enormous force broke out from under the water, which tore the monster into different pieces. He immediately floated to the surface of the water, and a large red spot of blood appeared around him. Immediately, the silhouettes of other monsters began to be seen who had come for a free lunch. Those airships were just incredibly powerful, and they were also equipped with huge nets that lifted that monster out of the water. But when the second airship was descending, various monsters jumped out from under the water and wanted to attack it. At the same second, the cannons mounted on it were ready to fire. And in the next moment, they opened fire on all those monsters and crushed them in a matter of seconds. Fei Xiong and the others immediately began to rejoice and said that they were humans, the strongest monsters in this world, that they would definitely win this battle for survival. A soldier with a soldier girl noticed this and said they were a bunch of scumbags. Because when it's time for the real test, so they don't forget to put on a pair of diapers. Fei Qiong did not take their words seriously, but on the contrary began to get angry with them. After some time, an armored train began to approach along the bridge in their direction. He was approaching very quickly. Despite the large number of wagons and hundreds of thousands of kilograms of steel armor, he drove to the center of the military base and stopped there. They must enter the train quickly and do not waste time. After they enter the train, they come under military control and must obey orders. In a fairly short time, all the students were on board the train and it started to start. They started entering the center of Zanon District. It is quite dangerous. Fei Xiong was looking out the window all the time. He called Chao to look at the so-called stream of steel. Suddenly they began to drive by the famous huge cannon of luncheon. That cannon was truly incredible in size larger than most air machines. One student said he had heard that engineers were currently doing renovations, that gun, so that it could shoot nuclear bombs. When the other students heard this, they were very surprised and asked him if it was true. One student calmly said that he would very much like to see with his own eyes that huge cannon in full combat readiness. A girl who was passing by and heard his words said that she might not want what he said, because if it comes to this, it will mean that luncheon is in a very, very bad situation. Meanwhile, at that very moment, Chow began to have a very strong headache. In his memories, there were moments connected with that gun, when huge monsters came to her shelter. And in a moment, the cannon fired its decisive shot. And in the background of just huge monsters, a nuclear explosion exploded. When Chow remembered this, a cold sweat immediately began to flow down his face. He tried as much as possible to drive those thoughts out of his head, and he himself would very much not want it to come to that. Over time, that cannon began to move further and further away from them. Then they came to where there was a huge accumulation of military equipment. There was also a huge wall behind which the eternal fog was visible. There was just a huge amount of weapons of various sizes. Chow said that they had finally arrived. Strange plants of enormous size could be seen beyond the fog. There was quite a strong video and you could see old buildings where people once lived. Night soon came and they were all in the big barracks waiting for instructions. Later they were lined up in two lines for boys and girls. The commander said that the boys go to the left and the girls to the right. They had to wash and change into combat uniform. The captain said that they have ten minutes for that matter, then muster at the same place. Those who are late will be counted as those who failed the exam by real struggle. Fei Xiong was very tense because the water was very cold. Chao showed him how to do it and doused him with cold water from a bucket. He said that he was going to become a general and told him to wash himself quickly. Chao couldn't wait for the real battle between them to begin. He was one of the first to get dressed. Fei Xiong also almost got dressed and began to ask Chao why those clothes are so thin and full of wires. Chao continued to get angry at him for asking him stupid questions and told him to get dressed as soon as possible because there was little time left. The time is up. Those who are not successful should stay here and wait until the exam is over. 
Next, a presentation of the four main combat professions will be shown. At the same time, his combat comrades will help them adjust their combat form. This girl was a senior lieutenant of the Red Dragon Army. She is recognized as a heroic spirit who became a guardian angel of black metal, an ambassador of the spirit of heroes. A large and powerful machine gun was presented. Suddenly, the machine gun started firing, and the property of the guardian angel of black metal is as follows. This is absolute invincibility. In front of her was an energy shield that stopped all the bullets, even when a huge rocket was fired at it. Thanks to the maximum connection with the spirit of the warrior, she managed to catch that rocket with the bare hands of the spirit, and that rocket exploded at the moment when that material spirit held it in his hand. But in a moment that girl with her super spirit flies out of that fiery layer. She began to approach that machine gun at a very fast speed. And in the next second there was nothing left from that machine gun. One super hit blew it into small particles. When Fei Yun looked at all this he really wanted to try such a class. Because there was a super wild and powerful force. He couldn't hold back again and started moving Chao and saying that that class was his dream and Chao begged him to calm down. Chao felt sick after Fei Shun's hug, but he said that that class is very difficult. You need to possess a whole group of qualities to even try. Fei Xian said that the dream should be, maybe his mind is not very good, but he has good personal qualities. In a moment, Isam Chao was a little delighted. The two of them looked at each other and couldn't look away. A very beautiful truck began to approach. Large robot machines that could easily fly and perform favorite tasks were spinning near him. It just looked great. One mechanic equals an entire legion. Fei Xiong was also delighted with the mechanic class. Chao noticed that the role of the mechanic is really very important because technology is constantly developing. And the fighting style of the stream of armored vehicles, which uses drones and tanks controlled by AI, all this constantly raises the status of the mechanic. The next style looked even more interesting than the previous ones. There was a beautiful girl whose eyes were of different colors. She had very interesting skills and style. She was like someone who summons monsters and can control them completely. In literally a few seconds, just out of nowhere, she was surrounded by her animals, who are completely under her control. She controls them with the power of thought and indicates their goal this is a very formidable weapon. Chao thought about everything. This option is also good in its own way. The faculty of beasts can get a lot of resources and the combat effectiveness is also very good. All this time they were being prepared and now a hose was attached to Chao's neck from behind. Chao was still thinking about the weaknesses of the beast master. When he controls them, Certain nerve nodes open up and can be a very easy target for external influences. And there are a lot of secrets in Chao's head. He needs to be very careful. Psionic energy enters the body, activates psionic arteries, releases genetic potential, and spreads energy throughout. Thanks to this approach, you can deliver blows of simply incredible power. This warrior is the main of the four professions. There are many famous exalted people named warriors. This is the end of the introductory video. Chao thinks that when you fight and use a glorious body, that's what he likes the most, before that he feels like he wants to hold back. Suddenly, he was hit with a helmet from behind on his head. The captain reported that all communicators were successfully connected. All physical indicators are within normal limits. All the basic information that he might need was displayed in the Chao on the helmet. They had a clear mission and plan that they would have to follow. 12 o'clock at night, the test with a real battle has started. A local battle is going on in one of the quarters. The soldiers bravely started the battle. Those who had firearms clearly performed their functions. Warriors who had swords and knives in their hands will also fight with dignity. And those who tore monsters to pieces with their bare hands were especially good. Chow began to step aside after the sellout began. He walked and considered the situation so that wild biting rats do not run outside the territory where the exam was held. The outer perimeter is treated in advance and sprayed with special pheromones of natural enemies of ferocious rats. Chow himself was well armed, especially with grenades. 
He immediately understood that this meant that there would be a limited number of rats on the outer border, but he has already figured out how he will act. But there were groups of students who did not want to waste time and take the test at the outer border. It was a student of Fang Da First School. He was a little surprised that his teammates were drinking like that. The second was Ji Fang from the second school. He said that fighting the fierce biting rats with the two of them was not fun at all. The third was Lao Hai from the constructive school. He said that they should not underestimate Meng Chao from the ninth school. In general, there were quite a lot of those monsters and, as is typical of rats, they could easily gather for various promotions. One of them had a machine gun and started spraying bullets at the attacking monsters. He asked, what does Lao Hai mean by that weirdo with many grenades? They will see what he is capable of when he comes to them. Lao Hai himself chose a pair of pistols and was very good at them. He almost kept up with that machine gunner and the number of monsters killed. And he never left the thought of what Meng Chao was going to do. And as far away from the crowd of monsters as possible, a box with reaper tools lay behind the ground. Next, he began to dig a small hole. Then Chow began to make some kind of elixir which included sugar and chocolate as well as high-energy bud. It was necessary to stir very well everything that was in that jar. Next, he took a piece of the mass that he had and began to make a ball from it. In a moment, the dandelion was as round as possible. It emitted a very specific aroma. He threw her into the hole he had dug in advance. Literally in a few moments, Many different worms, which were like small monsters, began to crawl out from under the ground. Chow deftly caught one of them with tweezers. It looked like a small dragon. He cut it into two halves with a very precise and expertly clear cut of the knife, and a single vein appeared in the center. He began to squeeze drops of some substance into the jar with the mixture he had prepared first. As a result, what came out had a very good smell. He just got high from it. The teachers from all schools continued to watch the exam. They were all very surprised by Chow's actions. At first, he just walked around and did nothing, but now he started playing with worms, and he is not, not even a single score. Master Wang didn't respond to their conversation because he already knew that Chow didn't do anything just like that. He immediately noticed Chow's skill in harvesting, he immediately wondered when he had time to learn like this. Chow found one dead rat and carefully began to cover it. But at the same second, he was already under the crosshairs of another rat, which was going to attack him. And in the next moment, that monster jumped on Chow. But for some reason, he missed. Maybe Chow shifted a little at the last moment, and that saved him. Until the last moment, Chow was doing something with tweezers in that jar, and the monster was behind him again and this time he would not miss. And a second before the collision, he turns sharply and pierces that monster. He couldn't help but complete that operation to the end. Now he noticed that the monsters had noticed him, and quite a few of them were running in his direction, but he was ready for that attack. With very precise and extremely fast blows, Chow began to humiliate the monsters. In a quick fight, one regularity followed. He did not make cutting blows, but only direct stabbing blows. The teachers noticed that he became more lively and that although his technique was not bad, it was a little strange. The second teacher noticed that the angle of his blow was just perfect because when he delivered it, he killed everyone at once, including the female. They saw him sit down on the ground. Now they wondered what he would do next. Chow set up a portable heater and placed a plate of some kind of substance on top of it to heat it up. The teachers discussed his actions. They said that he must now be cutting out the female's reproductive valves. That liquid from beetles probably has properties to irritate the nervous system. He poured some medicine into that plate. And then I mixed it all very well. Then he began to collect that substance in a syringe. The teachers realized that it turned out to be an excitatory regent. He inserted the capacity of that syringe into a small piece of soft sponge and began to fill it. Finally, he has completed the preparation of that special drug and can begin to work. He suddenly jumped up and started running somewhere. The teachers praised him. They did not know that there was such a capable student in the ninth grade. But another teacher said that he has a very big difference in scores between other students, and it is unlikely that he will be able to do anything. When Chow was running, 
Someone was standing on a high tower in the distance, but it was not important to him now. It was the principal of the school. He specially chose such a place to watch it was the best. He said that Chow was running to the sewers. The director thought that there were traps everywhere and it would be better for him to run to the central zone, but it was his choice. He wondered if he would surprise him today. He tore off a piece of that sponge and threw it on the ground. After running a few more meters, he again tore off several pieces and threw them on the ground. The teachers watched him with great interest. They did not fully understand his plan. Did they not understand what he was waiting for? Suddenly, one of the teachers asked the soldier to turn on the thermal imaging mode. When the teacher saw it, he was horrified. You could see an incredible crowd of those rats there. It looked like they were all going crazy. Master Wong had guessed Chao's plan earlier but wasn't sure it would work, but now all indications were that his plan had worked. Several hundred already wild rats ran towards where Chao was now with even greater fury. When they got as close as possible, he threw grenades at him in different directions, and everything around began to explode, and the rats quickly died. Other participants of the exam who were nearby were shocked, who could make such a large series of explosions. How many grenades did you need to have? They guessed that someone wanted to pluck a hundred rats at once. Fei Xiong, who was fighting with a sword, also heard this and immediately realized that it was Ming Chao's handiwork. He definitely won't ask about his results that time. At the moment, Chao was in fourth place, and his friend Lao Hai was in second place. In one place, there was a very fierce struggle. The three who stood in the center and were in the leaders saw that Chao in a moment took the fourth place in the rating. They could not really react to this because they were busy with a very intense shooting. As soon as a moment appeared, one of them said that how did he manage to kill 700 rats in one moment? Another began to ask if Ming Chao had set up this series of explosions. They said that he did not take a single bullet with him. How could he kill so many with the help of grenades? And another was interested in where he found such a concentration of rats, because there are more of them in the factory where they are. Luo Hai told them not to glorify him prematurely because he just killed a few rats. He said that the second half of the night is much more important. Another added that in the second half of the night, ten times more points are given for each predator than for ferocious rats. One of them saw that Chow took the cheapest sword with him to this exam, rats. You can kill anything, but then he has no weapons. Chow came out of the sewers while hiding in a tree. He looked at the table of results and liked what he saw. He suddenly jumped down from that tree because he already had a plan for the next course of action. If he wants to enter the best specialty, he will have to give his best. He looked at the ground and saw many dead beetles there, just as they had died after the explosion. Then he decided to dig up others for himself because he needed live bugs. He found a large scorpion soon enough, and it suits him. The teachers were tormented by guesses. What was Chow's plan? One thought that he wanted to make the onigiri he had made before, but he didn't have enough pomegranates. Another teacher noticed that this time he only chooses poisonous bugs. They are all good for field combat. The captain of the military base also looked after Chow and could not understand one. He looked like a simple slug, but he fights like an experienced soldier who spent a couple of decades in the depths of the fog. He became very interested in Meng Chow. Suddenly, Chow began to dissect that scorpion. He took some green nerve out of it. Literally in a few seconds, he did the same with the other two monsters. What he got, he began to mix well. It had a green color. The teachers were shocked when they saw him applying that poison to his sword. He completely covered his sword with that poison and it started to glow. He decided to conduct a test to see if that poison would start to flow from his sword at the most inopportune moment. Stickiness was at the maximum level. Test 2. What is the speed of action of the poison? He found some animal and cut it to see what would happen. Literally, in seconds it would die. Then Chow killed several more of them and lay down next to them in their blood. He even took one and began to rub himself with it. This is so that their smell would stick to him as much as possible. Now he has completed his training and is fully prepared to face the second wave of monsters. At three o'clock in the morning, the loudspeaker said that the second wave of monsters was beginning. In various places of that location, massive metal bars began to rise. Special monsters were waiting there for their time. 
they were much stronger than the previous ones. Not everyone was as vigilant as possible behind this student. The monsters were already standing, but he did not see them. Those monsters are much faster than rats. They easily dealt hard blows to those students. And they continued to tear them apart. It was quite cruel. When they would have made mincemeat of those students a little longer, the monsters retreated sharply. The headmaster of the ninth school said that all supervisors should be very vigilant. The very first thing they should do is protect the lives of students who know the exam. Chow waited and they heard his smell and several of those monsters ran to him at once. They were very sly and nimble as Chow watched and those in front, one sneaked up to him from the top of the tree. And in the next moment, they all started attacking him at the same time and he was completely calm. He was specifically waiting for the moment to start fighting back and that moment came. In the air, he caught his sword in order to attack. And in one moment, he kills three monsters at once. And thanks to the poison, he does not need to inflict serious wounds on them. Even a scratch is enough. But there was another one behind him who was running rapidly towards Chao. It was the same one he wounded, but he couldn't get to Chao because the poison destroys their hearing and balance system very well. But suddenly it was already flying at him. Another one was not yet injured and was very lively. It was easier for him to kick him from the U-turn to parry his attack. Only he landed on his feet and he flew at full speed. One more. Chow destroyed him with a very strong blow to the head with a knee. Now that he has passed the tests, he can begin. Now he only goes on the attack to score a lot of points. Monsters ran to meet him because they were attracted by his smell and he skillfully maneuvered between them and delivered cutting blows, and in a moment the monsters fell. Just a couple of moments and several huge monsters were already lying on the ground, and Chai was walking on. Now the teachers were able to see a very good sword technique. One tried to pretend that his technique was stronger than Lao Hai's, while the other said that it was impossible because Lao Hai's father was an exalted six-star super warrior, Luo W.U.'s heartbreaking sword. The onlookers were getting more and more and they told no one to make any noise because Chow started heading towards the middle of the factory. Also, Chow continued to use the remnants of grenades and confidently moved forward. Now he realized that he should have started from this area right away because there were many more demon cats. But suddenly, he notices that the group of monsters is not paying attention to him. So there is something that interests them more. Did he decide to go and see what the matter was? He sees that, in the center, three students are defending together, and monsters are attacking them without interruption from all sides. One of them saw Meng Chao and asked him why he had come. Did he think Chao wanted to take the cats away from them? Another student immediately asked him if he was a fool to say that. Another just cut the monster into pieces and said that it was forbidden to take monsters in this exam. He said that especially in their situation because they would soon be very tired and unable to fight, for example. He would gladly share the cats with him. Chow looked at them and understood that the three of them were running out of strength. He thought that since they were on the same exam, he would help them and began to pour a tube with a strong aroma on himself to attract the attention of the monsters. As soon as he did that, all the monsters turned towards him. So many demon cats he had yet to be attacked at the same time today. When they retreated from those three, Chow told them to quickly sit down on the ground and recover their strength. They did so, sat down in the lotus position and tried to use every second. One of them said that they would be able to watch Meng Chow fight at the same time. He needed to come up with a plan, how to act as efficiently as possible. So today will be his first such attack. He starts running to meet them. He has only one chance. It was something divine. He had never moved with such speed today. He ran zigzag across all the monsters and dealt them a poisonous blow. What was visually very difficult to catch up with, literally in a moment dozens of monsters were already lying down. Chow was satisfied because he managed to do as he wanted. There is literally one last shot left and all the monsters that were there at that moment will be destroyed. Chow managed to fulfill his promise. He saved them and destroyed them all. The one who was first in the top said that he thought it was a skill and it was just a poison sword. He was curious to see what Chow would do next when the poison was gone. Lao Hai watched him carefully. He noticed that his attacks were not critical, but his tactics were as energy-saving as possible. 
But such self-control is much more difficult than putting all the miles into one blow. He also wonders what else Chow will come up with once the poison wears off. And just at that moment, the poison ran out and the sword became the standard color. Then he decides to change tactics and at the same time teach Luo Hai and others to earn a little deposit. And they immediately became intrigued when they saw that the poison was gone. And then a demonic cat is already flying at him. But Chow caught him with his hand and began to say that weapons are not only bullets and swords. Because in a real battle, everything around them will be their weapons, for example, their battle suits. And he pierced that monster through with his sword. The three were very surprised because they couldn't understand what Chow was talking about. So it turns out that Chow passes the exam and teaches them at the same time. They saw that his hand was bleeding and began to say that he had overestimated the sweetness of the battle suit. And immediately, some kind of foam came out of the suit to stop the bleeding. And Chow said that it takes a lot of resources to dodge the attacks of demon cats. But if you use a combat suit as a shield and use decoys, it becomes much easier to take them down. And three monsters flew at him at the same time he was not visible behind them. They tore his suit. But what is the difference? It does not affect the points. He shouted to him that Chow now has not only a poison sword, but also a combat suit. What will he do next? The other two were also thinking about it. What would he do next? Chow threw his helmet on the ground and loudly repeated what he had said first. He began to take off that torn gel suit, and he repeated again that everything around them is their weapon. Their bodies also fall under that term, they are also weapons. The main feature of demonic cats is stealth and speed. One of them decided to attack rapidly, and Chow left their main advantage in an instant. And that monster himself ran into Chao's rather weak blow, but together it did its job and he was destroyed. From the other monsters, it was clear that they did not expect such a thing from a naked warrior. Chao stood half naked and said that it is very easy to deal with them. A few more monsters came there, but they were in no hurry to attack. While they were thinking, Chow decided to use the first aid kit. He smeared the ointment on his hand and began to bandage it. And then he drank three energy drinks at once, which will give him strength. Lao Han now understood why he had traded the resources after the second stage for the first aid kit, because he had long ago decided to use the trauma tactic in exchange for life. When that student looked at this whole performance of Chow, he realized that he was actually much stronger than him in martial arts. And the other also thought about it, only it was about shooting. But the three of them were sad that they were not as fierce as Chow. While he was catching his breath, one of the group asked him if he was going to continue. Chow said that he had not used up all his physical strength yet, and the loss of blood did not stop him from continuing the fight at all. In modern times, injuries like his are very easily treated. And he went on the attack again and said that the goal of this operation was to destroy as many monsters as possible. Wouldn't it be a waste if you don't squeeze the maximum energy out of your body? Chow continued the battle by himself. It was completely different than with poison. His punches were much stronger. He also had to move faster to avoid injury. And the fact that there was no armor meant that he only had one chance. They stood and looked at it, then decided to ask him if he was not afraid to die. Chow replied that he was afraid. He told them to remember that if someone is very afraid of dying on the battlefield, he will most likely die. And at the same second, that demonic cat realized its strong stealth and speed and was on Chao's rear. But Chao heard him and began to quickly return and said, If you want to live, you must fight for the opportunity to survive. If on this battlefield of another world the monsters are stronger, time and space are unstable, then a huge number of accidents can happen at any moment, and all they can do is end the battle as quickly as possible. It was the exam supervision room. There were a lot of people there. The colonel himself came to see it. He told the commander to check that guy, and if there are no problems, then such a talent should study at the Lucan Military School. Another soldier turned to the colonel and said that he did not even ask his name. Was he not afraid of sending him down the wrong path? This man said that, considering his temperament, he had better go to the martial arts department of Longcheng University, then his future achievements would be incredible. Someone spoke to the two of them to calm them down, because Meng Chao was alone. 
She said that his father is a reaper, and he himself is familiar with the demon Nin, so he will definitely enter her monster university, and the two of them have nothing to fight about. In that surveillance room, who was the first to notice that Meng Chao sat down? He is seven and the monsters did not attack him. They are probably afraid of him. He opened the score table and saw that he was in 213th place out of the whole city. Enough killings for now. Now he has to wait for the next stage. They talked among themselves that Chao had scared all the demon cats. Although their physical strength has recovered, they can no longer humiliate them so effectively. And Luo Han told him to kill as many as he could, and that would be enough, because Chao was definitely not thinking about the boss in the next stage. And this one said that he can't even imagine what the boss will be, his year? Suddenly, a message rang in his suit. He was informed that the boss would be a python with broken blades. That student was in shock, because this is the strongest snake of all the snake monsters. He did not understand if the teachers were completely out of their minds. Chao also received such a message. He didn't show his reaction, but in his mind he also thought that his annual exam was just abnormal. He told Chao that they thank him a lot for his battle experience, but he wants to ask him how he plans to deal with the boss given his condition. Chao simply waved his hands and said that no way, because he has enough points to enter a simple bachelor's degree, then why fight further? With such an answer, he shocked them even more than the first, they could not understand how he wants to enter a simple bachelor's degree. He laughed, said that he was joking, but in his current state, he could only follow them and take advantage of a lucky chance. And they all asked him what he wanted to squeeze out of the monsters. Chow said to enter the university for the gold major, they will meet more than one python monster on their way, and he will follow them, and when their strength is gone, when they are out of the fight, he will seize the opportunity. Then Luo Han realized that Chao had killed all the cats on purpose, so that they fight as hard as possible with the final boss. But how could he know which monsters would be used in the finale? Chao paid attention to the table of mortality. He guessed that the topic was specifically raised so that the students would understand that the final boss would be very difficult. He will pay attention to it, but they will not. Chow said that maybe in the virtual arena, the battle like they arranged today is normal, but in the real battle, it will only lead to much bigger problems. That disciple Shi Fui pondered over Chow's words, and Chow himself received an award because he listened to him. Luo Hai also understood the point and asked Chow if he really started planning all this a month ago. Chow also received contribution points for him. He also understood everything but said that Cao used this wave of monsters. It was not fair, and Cao got bonuses for him. He began to go somewhere and said that, considering how much he had taught them, he hoped that they would be able to seriously injure a few dens and let him enjoy a couple. They were already close. This is the third wave. They were even bigger than the demonic cats and an order of magnitude stronger than them. They prepared and advised each other not to fight more than one python at a time. One of them said that if there were bullets, he would fight three himself. Suddenly from above, above them a huge python climbed out of the wall. Where the entrance was, there was another huge python. Suddenly, the third python just punched through the rough wall, its armor so hard that it didn't even feel a thing. He said that it's good that there are only three of them, so they must destroy them. But there were two more at the entrance, four in total. They were simply huge. They went on the attack. One of them said to be careful. You can't let them surround you. And the third, the one left against the two, sank gigantically. He was very angry with his friends because they left him alone. Very sharp and fast, that snake attacked. He barely had time to duck. He said they were very fierce. In a moment, another attack of another snake was already flying at him. He realized that he would definitely not be able to cope with two. The most important thing for him was to survive and he should ask Meng Chao for help. He continued to just dodge their attacks. But this cannot go on forever, and he began to call Meng Chao. He said that he could not leave him alone against two pythons. He hesitated for a second and two pythons attacked at the same time and were very close. He manages to grab his sword in time. 
He started shouting that those pythons thought he was easy prey. Now he will show them his strength. They didn't care. They continued to attack. He used super speed and ducked to the side and then wanted to deliver a cutting blow. But it turned out that the skin of those pythons is very hard and cannot be cut. With every second, he loses hope more and more for a positive ending. He managed to try again to pierce the armor of that python, but the sword can't do anything there at all. He had a few seconds left because the snake managed to turn around and was still in the process of attacking. He tried to the last, but nothing worked and he had to bow out. He said that those broken bladed pythons have no weak points at all. He did not notice, but her tail caught up with him and delivered a strong blow. From that blow, he flew down with great speed. After a few seconds, a certain silhouette could be seen in the fog. It was alive. He climbed out of that hole and said that those pythons thought that when he was unarmed, he would be easy prey. He began to run away and dodge. With each attack, that monster also became slower. 59 seconds. He said that you can't do anything here because he is so strong. 45 seconds. Monster was getting weaker, but he was also getting heavier and heavier. 30 seconds. At one point, when he bowed again, he lost his temper. 23 seconds. He began to fall and the monster was right behind him. 10 seconds. In addition, the monster managed to wound him again, now in the leg and he can no longer dodge so quickly. 7 seconds. He was driven into a dead end from this place. He will no longer be able to dodge. One second. It was the end. He had no way to bow and no strength to fight any further. He ran away all the time and never struck back. If the fight was not continued within a minute, then it does not count as a push-up of the monster. Chow, at great speed, flew near that python and ripped open its stomach. It made a very loud sound and Chow said that then he would take the python away. He had already said goodbye to life, and that Meng Chao waited until the very last second. Chao, from the hole he tore in that python, collected the blood that flowed out in a river into a bag. When Chao collected that blood, he asked that student if he was okay. Maybe he wants snake blood? He was very surprised at such a proposal and asked Chao why he was doing this. Chao stuck his sword into the ground and began to retrieve a more delicate tool. Chao said it's extra energy so many valuable things it would be very unwise not to process them. Most of the blood of such pythons is very rich in psionic energy. It can also stimulate the central nervous system, release the cellular potential to the surface. Snake gallbladder will clean the brain and improve visual acuity. It is very useful. And there are several drops of heart blood in the heart. It has a very good effect on the body. Those boys thought in their minds, is Chow some kind of savage? Because how does he know so much? They had no idea that Chow was so good at harvesting. Lao Hai asked Fong Da if he was okay. And he said that everything is fine with him and that the python was killed by Ming Chow. Chow started drinking that snake's blood. Those guys didn't understand that, but they definitely knew that he was very terrible in such situations. And then in all of them, it meant that anxiety began, but it was anxiety at the local level. Chow said that someone must be in danger and suggested that they all go together to see. They all agreed. They quickly ran to the rivet welding workshop. It was shrouded in a very strange fog. They began to think that this is not normal. Even if there are pythons, there should not be such a strange fog. Chow decided to warn everyone that something strange was going on here. To be careful. Suddenly, Chow hears a cry for help. He starts to turn around and he notices a student running away from some monster. When he looked more closely, he was horrified. And that monster grabbed that student by the head just at that second. It was a red moon wolf It killed that student, bit his head off. The red moon wolf, the king of dog monsters, an omnivorous animal that can secrete a special hormone. That hormone creates a faint red mist. They often come together in groups. Chow didn't understand how they could prepare two kinds of monsters as a boss for the final exam. And in general, such a February as this one, he thinks that this cannot be, that rather something has gone wrong. Something flies from the mountain at high speed and shouts to the students that there is danger on the exam field. The exam stops. They are ordered to retreat immediately. It was the headmaster's son.
He flew from a great height to protect the students. He smashed that monster hard with his bare hands. Chow began to say to the director that he came because there is great danger here. He said that on the training ground 5,523, the real battle exam was stopped. When fog sets in, students must be evacuated immediately. Lao Han asked Director Sun if they could stay and help him. The other two said they could help too and really wanted to. Chow said that they are still far from exalted, and if they can survive the battle against the Red Moon Wolf, then that's all good, and we definitely can't help it. They heard Chow, but were waiting for what the director would say. The headmaster said that Meng Chow's disciple was right, because this was not the kind of monster they could counter. Then the loudspeaker began to say that the final exam was over and they should evacuate. And the director jumped up in another direction to prepare for battle. On the way, he again came across two more disciples and repeated the same thing to them. Suddenly, another red moon wolf came out of the fog. The boys told Chow that the monsters are not letting them go so easily. They want them to stay. Chow said they would fight through. He said that cracks in the ground are very dangerous. They must avoid them during the fight. About a dozen such monsters came out of the fog to meet them. In general, they were in a pretty bad situation. He said that they should act as coordinated and fast as possible. They all said they understood him and in no time ran off in different directions. The battle began. The student with black hair said that these are just a few red monsters. He is not afraid of them. The battle began. They handled them quite well. They did not have the goal of destroying them all, but only to go through them. Chow was also fighting. He still managed to look after them and told them not to relax. Chow stepped heavily on the ground during one reception to keep his balance. And immediately in that place, a crack began to appear. In an instant, it had increased tenfold, and Chow's friends were shouting at him to be careful because the ground beneath his feet had split open. While Chow was distracted by that crack, a blackberry from the biggest monsters that were there jumped out in front of him. The situation suddenly became critical because he lost his balance and stopped for a second. He managed to block his attack at the last second, but he found himself without support and above a large crack in the ground. He began to fall to the bottom and could not do anything. That fog began to drag him. At that moment, he understood something. Those cracks in the ground are spatial turbulence. They are very dangerous. She completely captured him and slammed. Only a characteristic light remained from that place, and he fell into it along with that monster. Suddenly the same portal began to open in the middle of the forest, and Chow fell out of it together with that monster. He was now in a worse situation because that monster was pressing on him from top to bottom. There was only one way for him to escape. He screamed, look at the cattle, how he will kill him, and sharply reached forward with his head and began to tear his neck with his teeth. And because he could not move his hands, he dislocated his shoulder. It was a very sharp pain. After that, the monster leaned back, and Chow was in pain. He said that now he will straighten his shoulder and tear it to pieces. He hit the tree with all his might at a certain angle. It was very, very painful. But if he didn't do it, he wouldn't be able to move his arm. He managed to successfully exercise his shoulder and started to walk away from that place. He wondered if it was the outskirts of Lucan. Judging by all this, that spatial technique carried him into the forest. But fortunately, this is not the worst place where he could get to, from the hill on which he was standing. He could see the city. In general, he will not be very far. He stood and did not move, so he heard a voice, well, it seemed very familiar to him. He says that in what place did he get? It was his friend Fan. He was in a panic and asked him what is happening here and where are they. Chow told him that they encountered a spatial turbulence which threw them into the city. But as soon as he said it, two other friends came out from behind the thickets. They were Luo Hai and Shi Feng. Luo Hai believes that they are all here because three days ago a huge mist descended and released all the spatial energy. Chow immediately remembered that in his past, Immediately after the final exam, such cracks with portals began to appear around the perimeter of the entire city. It generally became something normal later. Chow was offered a task. The goal was to save himself from the Red Wolves and save as many students as possible who passed the exam. 
The more students he saves, the bigger the reward will be, from 5,000 to 10,000 deposit points. He immediately understood why such a great reward because this task will be very difficult. He knows for sure that he will accept the task, whether alone or with friends, but he cannot leave it as it is. But taking a bunch of scared students through the Black Forest is also a bad idea. One of them asked what they will do next. Chow said that those portals weren't very strong, so they didn't throw them far. The rescue team will arrive soon, but in the meantime, he offers to look around here. Suddenly, not far from them, there was a very loud sound and all the birds flew away from that place. It was another group of students and they said they came across a pack of red wolves. Chow said that a simple tactic of wolves in their fog, it affects the nervous system and drives a person into panic. Chow told them not to worry. And whoever gets scared and separates from the group, they will kill him and the others one by one. But the blood of those wolves stops the toxin that is in the fog. That's why they soaked the bandages in that blood. Chow said if you cover your mouth and nose with cotton balls and gauze, you can greatly reduce the fog effect. Now their goal is to find as many students as possible from the exam and unite with them. Only in this way, they will be able to oppose the wolves. Everything was serious here and the boys obeyed Chow without hesitation, did everything he said. Chow explained everything to them clearly. They were ready to act and save the students. Soon they heard a clear cry for help, and at the last moment Chow managed to save that student. Chow thought, if they run to the gap to the city, they will fall into an area where there are even more wolves. His friends covered him and told him to attend to the wounded. They were lucky that the combat effectiveness of those monsters was at a rather weak level. Chow thought that they could not be allowed to run away. He needs to raise their morale. He told them that they should quickly find everyone who passed the exam. He said, instead of being crushed by the monsters one by one, he proposes to unite, dig trenches, set up battle positions, and start fighting the wolves. The Red Dragon Army and the Exalted Ones are definitely looking for them. They just have to hold out until dawn and they will definitely save them. After that speech, the mental index of those students increased and Chow received an award. Eventually, they found another student. He would be very scared, but Chow calmed him down. Then they found a few more, but there was a wolf. Chow told them to run to the other students and he would arrest that monster. Chow pondered. In that place, it was quite dark and the environment was heterogeneous. It was very difficult for them to find new students. He was afraid that they would not make it. But suddenly, he came up with a very important idea at the expense of light. He said to light the fire and the students themselves will go to the light and at the same time they will simplify the work of those who have to save them. Luo decided to ask Chow if this way they would reveal their location to the wolves. Chow said that they already know exactly where they are now because their sense of smell is ten times stronger than a human's. Even if they hold their breath in the dark, they will find it. And they are people, on the contrary. In the dark, they cannot find each other and begin to think that they are alone and abandoned and fall into fear and despair. In the forest, one student hid behind a tree from a wolf. The more despair and fear, the easier it is to inhale the red fog, then fall into a vicious circle and, as a result, fail. In a very short time, they built a big fire that lit up a large area. Chow said that the fire would summon all the disciples at the same time, and then they would become much stronger. He said that they should trust him, and they certainly would can survive. That bonfire was very visible, and in the distance, above luncheon, the exalted began to fly in search of students. The bonfire grew stronger, and already the first student saw the light and immediately rejoiced. She had hope that people would be waiting for her there. Two more students saw the fire and immediately started running in that direction. The other group miraculously noticed the bonfire as they were heading toward the great tower. They realized that someone wanted to bring everyone together. They turned and ran towards the fire to help their comrades. In a little while, more and more students started running out of the forest to the clearing where there was a bonfire. Chow asked them if they were tired. If so, let them have a quick snack. There were already several fires on which they were roasting meat. They had a little time to rest and eat before the wolves came. Suddenly, a large silhouette appeared from the darkness. 
they began to shout that a new big monster had appeared. Luo told Chow to look because a new monster had arrived. Chow was so busy eating that he didn't understand what he said to him. And it turns out that it was Fei Xiun. There were a lot of students with him. He shouted at Meng Chao. But Fei Xiong immediately asked Chao how he managed to gather so many students, even more than he. Chao replied that he could do to charisma. And in response, I asked him how he managed it. All the other students were very surprised. Fei Xiong said he also relied on charisma. Chao Luo's friend couldn't understand what they were doing. Fei Xiong said that he had lied to them, that his uncle was a general, and that everyone in his family was exalted, and also that there is a beacon in his body and they will be saved in ten minutes. Chao said that he, an even bigger boaster than him, Chao told him to eat because they had a fierce battle with monsters ahead of them. He also told him to put on a mask and plugs because that way it is easier to resist the fog. There were already a lot of them. They occupied a large clearing and lit several fires. Someone asked Chao. He said that they were thrown not so far from the city, so why don't they run in his direction? He said that the lights of the city look close, but it is at least 10 kilometers away and the road lies through a dense forest and fog, and they do not know what monsters are waiting there. Reckless escape will lead to only one thing, to death. Suddenly, in the area where there was a bonfire, some other monster appeared. The fog suddenly began to approach the camp. Many wolves began to howl, thereby instilling fear in the students. They came and wander around that clearing. Pupils took a round trip. There were bad thoughts among some of the disciples. They said that they would all die now because they were surrounded by a large group of wolves. The red eyes of wolves were visible in different places of the darkness. They were running in a circle and inspired fear. Luo Hai wondered if they could survive if the wolves attacked them. Chao told them not to be afraid because the teacher taught them that wolves alone are not strong. As long as they stand on their feet and do not fall from fear, they will not be able to defeat them. Facian supported him and said that he is right because he himself recently killed two people and there is nothing complicated about it. The students listened to what they said but were still a little scared. Luo Hai said sharply to Meng Chao that the monsters were starting to advance. Chao thought that he needed to figure out how to raise the general morale so someone might die first. He told them again not to be afraid because this is the strategy of the wolves. As long as they keep their positions, they will not catch anyone. Suddenly someone started shouting for them to be careful because the attack is from above. Suddenly a dead man appeared. He was killed by wolves. Despite Chao's best efforts, the students were still frightened and practically could not defend themselves. In the distance behind the trees circled what a strange wolf. He did not show himself to the light. And the other wolves began to attack faster and harder. Chao's friends coped with them quite well, but there were only a few like them. Others were afraid. Fei Xiong then asked Chao, What should they do? How many will they be able to save if everyone from the strange school gets together? Chao immediately picked up on the idea. It was very aptly said. He resolutely ordered the students from his school to stand with him on defense. Wolves attacked each time in increasingly large groups. At first they probed and chose the weakest. The students from the strange school recognized Chao as the commander and did not dare to disobey his order. Chao stood up to use the first swordsmanship technique of hundreds of battles. In a moment, together with him, they performed the same technique in sync. After they used that technique, the group of wolves that attacked them was simply cut to pieces. Friend Chao paid attention to this and called students from his school so that he could keep up with the other schools and also defend himself effectively. The students from the second school also raised their fighting spirit and were ready to show those monsters how strong they are. Luo Hai said that he alone from the constructive school found himself on the 5,523 examination field. Somehow he didn't even feel comfortable. Suddenly one of the people present began to talk about the constructive school. Is there anyone from it besides him? Luo Hai thought that they really ended up on the same field. In a moment, everyone began to divide into groups and stand in a circle of protection. Fei Xiong began to praise Chao that he had raised the morale of those worthless with a few phrases. But Chao said that it was unlikely, and he himself thought that the worst would not happen. 
Wolves began to howl as if they were calling someone. And suddenly wolves howled from the forest. Someone answered them, but with a roar ten times louder. Everyone froze in anticipation of something very terrible. Even the wolves stopped attacking. From the darkness of the forest, a huge white paw with red bald spots appeared. As soon as Chow saw that paw, he immediately understood that he would have to deal with that monster. He showed no fear. In a moment, a huge white face appeared from the shadows, that wolf with huge teeth. Luo Hai immediately tensed up because that monster was very terrifying. Chao's friend also looked at it and simply froze in fear and horror that was happening in front of him. Chao stood in the way and looked directly into his evil red eyes. He was neither afraid nor showing fear of the Red Moon Wolf King. It was a horror-level monster. The fog thickened more and more and the monsters paused in their attack. Suddenly the Wolf King opened his mouth and a thick red mist began to pour out of it. Chao warned everyone to be careful because this is a spiritual attack of the Wolf King, terrible red smell. Someone started shouting that the Wolf King has appeared and they will not be able to survive, that they must run away. Some did not have a bandage on their face and panic seized them. Those who were inspired by fog gases began to see those wolves as terrible demons. Chow thought for a moment because he suspected that something was wrong here. A formidable super monster cannot be afraid of a group of students. He could quickly kill them all, so why did he send those wolves to die? He sprayed the red mist, but he didn't go into it himself to kill them. What could he be afraid of? Chow tried to see it more clearly, despite the rather dense fog and he managed to see a sword stuck in his back. Then he saw that that super monster was wounded, and the one who wounded him must be somewhere nearby. They just have to hold on until the arrival of that warrior. As soon as Chow thought this, that sword jumped out of his sleep. He told everyone not to be afraid of the Wolf King because he was wounded and could die at any moment. His goal is to disperse them. Under no circumstances can this be done. That monster began to come closer little by little, he understood that Chow was a serious obstacle for him. Fei Xiong once again supported Chow, because if they parted, it would be certain death. And since they have already withstood so many attacks and destroyed so many wolves, they must hold out until the end to victory. This made the king even more angry. It was clear from his eyes that he would attack a little longer. And so it happened. In the next second he came within striking distance and delivered it to Meng Chao, knocking several students aside. Chao did not expect that he, so fast, he did not have time to dodge and was injured. The monster gave him a chance to start running away. He stopped and didn't continue to attack. But Chao didn't start running away and he started shooting red mist at him from a much closer distance. He needed to come up with something fast. The difference between an ordinary person and a monstrous level monster is not something that can be compensated by mere skill. The situation was very bad and Chow could not think of any way out. Suddenly, all the wolves simultaneously began to attack everyone in a row. Fei Xiong started fighting and shouted at Meng Chow. He wanted to say goodbye. In a moment, he came even closer to Chow. He could not realize that a monster could be so fast. Chow had no choice but to engage in battle with him, and at the same time, he heard screams coming from the other students. And just like lightning in the sky at the very last moment, Director Sun appeared. He delivered a very quick blow of colossal power. From his blow, that wolf broke the ground and it cracked, and at the same time, an explosion occurred from such a quick collision. The Wolf King spat out blood. This blow was very unexpected for him. In a moment, the headmaster struck again, but he was able to dodge, and the explosion from the blow was colossal. After such drastic actions, two more swords, which were somewhere under the rough fur, flew out of that monster. Chow did not think that there might be a moment when he too would stand in a stupor. The principal told him to defend himself. Chow saw that the director was relic-rooted so he could not be drawn into that turbulence. Wolves were ordered to attack all in a row. Chow thought that the headmaster himself went into that turbulence to save them all. Those two monsters that were flying at him, just with a wave of his hand, turned into small particles. The king of wolves prepared for battle. He met a worthy opponent. The director was boldly heading straight for him. He really wanted to destroy him. 
The speed of the director was simply cosmic. He moves to huge distances in a second. He was already in the air above that monster ready to deliver a super blow. But this time, too, the monster ducked from that mighty blow. To be honest, the director himself was a little surprised, because the king of wolves, because he himself was wounded, but he still had enough speed to dodge the blow. But the director was a very experienced warrior, and he changed his tactics and immediately knocked him out of the air with his blow. You were very angry for what that monster did to the students. He just wanted to tear him to pieces. And he does a super double punch. The monster flew away from that punch. But it was not for nothing that he was the Wolf King, and his rank was a horror monster because he could continue the battle after such explosive blows. He thought of something and began to maneuver sharply. Unfortunately, Chow would not be able to do anything to him in battle. The director caught him and with a powerful kick from his leg sent him back to where he was. This technique was called concentration. After a few hits, the monster became noticeably slower. It became easier for the director to hit it. The director immediately thought that the monster had died too quickly. But there was a trick. Chow shouted that the monster was still alive, but it was too late. A powerful blow hit the target. Chow carefully watched the battle, and now he can guess what kind of intelligence the monster has of a terrible level. The director flew away from that blow to Chow, and he helped him to stop. And he thought to himself how strong that monster was, that even a relic as exalted as Director Sun could barely fight him. The headmaster told Meng Chao not to waste any more time, but rather get out of here and take the other students. But Chao told him that Director Sun was injured. The director smiled and said it was just a scratch. He said that he had a spiritual fire to strengthen the blood. For a moment, the teacher pushed Chao to the side because the monster's attack was flying right at them. Chao once again asked if he could handle that monster by himself, and he replied that this is not something that a high school student should worry about. And that monster caught him with its tail and he couldn't escape. Then the monster, in a great desire to destroy such a strong warrior, pulls him to himself with his tail. The director immediately understood that he wanted to corner him in the zone of his attack, and he had no choice but to go to the meeting and play along with that monster. He began to use all his power to smear that monster's pizza, and the monster still running to meet and thus will further strengthen the blow that the director planned. Everything happened as he wanted, at the last moment, he untied himself from his tail and prepared to deliver a super strong blow. The director used ritual and mythological weapons. In this technique, the explosion was almost like a nuclear one. Although Chow had seen something like this before, he also froze at that moment and watched without taking his eyes off it. He was a legendary director, and it was not for nothing that he wore the title of hero. People saw that huge explosion from the other end of Lenchen. As a result, the teacher was on his feet, but so was the demon. The director was looking intently into the eyes of that monster. He realized that he could defeat him only if he died himself, but that time had not yet come. Monster, the king of wolves, also understood that in order for him to kill the director, he himself must die, and he decided to retreat this time. The director watched the wolves hide in the forest and said to Chow that he regretted that they had overlooked the turbulence and not detected it in time, because it all led to the fact that they were all in very great danger. He also said that they showed themselves well, showed the bravery and strength of Lucian. They are the pride of their city. He has already called the rescue team. They will come within 20 minutes at the most. These 20 minutes he will protect them and they can rest. The students were very happy that they were saved and they remained alive. Chao decides to heal his wound first, as he doubts the monsters will let them rest. 2,000 points for initial treatment. Suddenly, his wound began to tighten with great speed so that smoke was coming out of it. Chao thought, it's a good thing no one noticed her and how she recovered. Fei Xiong and Luo Han came up to him and congratulated him on his victory, saying how well done he was. But at one point, Chow looked at the director and something confused him. He noticed that the spiritual fire, the director's condition, is not stable. Maybe he is injured. Chow told his friends to go get some rest, and he needed to ask the director something. He approached the director and saw something terrible. There were huge hematomas on his hands, and the veins were bulging very much. 
There were traces of blood on his face, and there was a huge wound on his chest that was bleeding profusely. The teacher told Chow not to say anything because you can't scare the other students, and even more so, the monsters won't notice. Chow started to say that the headmaster has mortal wounds. Why does he keep using psionic energy? He needs to sit down and take a breather. He has a first aid kit. The director apologized to Meng Chow. He said that he could no longer kill monsters, but he also couldn't sit down or summon psionic energy. That beast is very intelligent. He must hold back and release all his spiritual fire to frighten him. He will stand like that exactly until the rescue team arrives. Chow said that the headmaster is dying, and for some reason a red mist appeared. He said that in his current state. He needs to get better in the medical bay. He shouldn't even move a finger right now. The director said to Meng Chao that people are mortal, that everyone will die someday, and the red fog continued its movement. It doesn't matter if it will be as a warrior of the Red Dragon Army, or as a school principal, or as an ordinary citizen. The end result is they all die. Chow said that he knew that the director was not afraid of death, but a hero like him should not die so easily. The director asked if he was a hero. He sees that the fog thickens again and says that what kind of hero is he if he will calmly look at children in danger and not be able to help them? What kind of hero is he if he's tired after killing a couple of wolves? His condition worsened sharply. He began to cough up blood. Chow sees with his own eyes how the director's spiritual fire is getting weaker. The video started. The fog is getting more and more. Suddenly, a rapid and powerful wave of fog quickly swam towards the director. The fog began to gather around his head and it is possible to drag him to the side of evil. The fog began to feel like it was slowly entering the headmaster's head. But suddenly he makes the last burst of energy and he says that the fog should attack him. In an instant, the fog became very thick but the light energy also increased. And as a result, light energy won, it dissolved that fog. Chow saw how the director's psionic power pushed back that red fog, and that fog suddenly returned to the dark corners of that clearing. Chow said that in his eyes, the director is a hero because he jumped into the pit with turbulence for them. The director said that if he is a hero, then he definitely has no reason to back down. He questioned, Chow, is he wrong? He said that he would take the students to the forest to delay the attack of the group of wolves so that the headmaster could rest a little. To this, the director said that he was leading them to certain death. Now Chow understood. The principal doesn't know exactly when the saviors will come. He said that to calm the students down. But he said once again that they are still nearby, and if not in 20 minutes, then in an hour, but they will find them. He said that his task was to scare away those monsters for as long as possible and not let them get close until the rescuers arrived. And Chow's task is to survive and become stronger. He has to help Longchen defeat those monsters. Immediately after he said this, he started coughing up blood. His condition rapidly deteriorated. Chow just shed tears of pride after his words and the way he looks. And for humans, when they learn that death is permanent, then they must put everything they have on the line. He smiled and said that there are things that he must do, even if he is broken to pieces. And Chow asked if he was right, or he recommended Chow to drink more monster blood to regain his strength, because if he dies and the rescuers don't come, then they will have to survive on their own again. He was very sad at heart, but there were no other options. The director began to increase his energy with the last of his strength, and Chow began to run away from him. Information reached all the students about the state of the director, and they all cried. The director said the main thing is that it is not speed, strength, or even level, because these are quantitative measures, and something like unshakable determination. Chow was very sorry that Longchen is losing such a great hero. What is worse is that he can't do anything. Later, they waited for the dawn. For a second, it gave them hope. The director asked Chow if he thought in the future, Lungshin would be as successful as it is today. He replied that the director should be sure because in the future, Lungshin will be much more successful than today. The director asked, will the children of the future be able to live more happily and not be afraid that a monster will appear at any second? Chow said with a smile that of course it would be, they would be much happier. The director was in a lot of pain. 
He began to fall and said that in the future they will win, and he also asked if they would be able to return to Earth. Of course, Chow didn't let him fall and caught him. Chow began to say to the director that he did not know exactly who would succeed in defeating the other world completely. He did not know if he could withstand all the tests. Chow's tears fell on director Sun, and the director said that he is a stupid child. He took his hand and said that it didn't matter if they could take over the other world. He said that he should remember that. That is the only important thing, so that the other world does not capture them. And the director's strong hand began to fall to the ground. Chow realized that director Su, the majestic hero, had died. That treacherous monster roamed the forest nearby. He felt that strong energy fade away and began to look in that direction. That old war had died. He came closer and began to see what was happening there. Chow slowly put the director on the ground. And that wolf king was watching, and he wanted Chow to run away and leave that stupid corpse. But Chow stood up and began to tie his bandage over his face. That monster yelled at Chow to run back to his house. He won't kill him! Chow asked if he was teaching him how to act. Chow thinks that the beast is wounded and doesn't want to fight him, so he releases it to kill some students and go lick his wounds. For the task of killing the Red Moon, he will receive at least 5,000 points if he manages to escape. Given his results, he won't have a hard time getting into baccalaureate and running should be very attractive to him. But he remembered the director's words that when you know that death is inevitable, then you have to put everything on the map and finish it, even if it blows to pieces. He closed his eyes and thought that he would give his all to complete the last mission. He took out a jar of blood and a jar of bile, and he said that it was a little irrational and that he might not enroll in a bachelor's degree after that. He firmly decided what he would do next. He turned to the spark to help him pump his swordsmanship to the max. The monster was getting angry. He didn't understand what was happening yet. He began to say that he had let him go, and what else was he going to do? Chow told him that the monster wanted to let him go, but Chow couldn't let the monster go. Then he began to prepare for battle and took off his bandage for a second. And he drank a gulp of everything he had to strengthen his strength. And he moved sharply, his speed increased several times. Maybe as the level increases, the energy is spent faster, but this explosive energy is enough for him. Like lightning, he was at his sword and grabbed it. At that very moment, the monster also began to attack, using all its strength. With lightning speed, Chow was already in front of the monster and swung a super strong punch. But it turned out to be not enough, and the monster overtook him and hit him in the stomach with his muzzle at that great speed. Chow just started flying away in the opposite direction at high speed. He flew by, and a battle was taking place from below. The students were fighting ordinary wolves. The monster decided to take advantage of Chao's flying power and continue to attack. From below, his comrades saw that the King of Wolves was going to attack, but they could not do anything. And in front of his friends, that monster bit Chao's arm right up to his shoulder. It was a disaster for Chao. Now he really found himself on the edge of life and death. Having endured simply incredible pain, a certain restructuring began in his mind. Those genetic shackles that bound his true power were destroyed. His entire body began to glow and emit tremendous energy. At that moment, he stopped feeling so much pain. His friends, who were fighting with simple wolves from below, were simply delighted with what they saw. This was a dying breakthrough, a military uplift. Bleeding profusely because that monster's big tooth pierced his shoulder. But with the genetic restraints removed, Chow still had a chance. He began to shout for that monster to die and put maximum force into this blow. He swung with all his might and hit that monster right between the eyes. Everything happened very quickly. From that blow, the monster's head began to bleed profusely, and the sword bounced back and began to fall. The monster began to swing his head sharply from side to side. Chow understood why he wants to drop him and says that he won't succeed. He had to activate the primitive bull method. The monster had no choice but to start running forward and hope that Chow would fall away on his own. He just ran into the forest with a speed that most people do not possess. As he ran, the whole forest shuddered, the trees cracked like simple twigs. Chow was in excruciating pain, but he himself could not get away from it. He felt that he would not be able to do this for a long time and urgently needed to do something. The wolf continued to run and even smashed the trees with Chow's back. 
This was partly his plan. He knew he had to kill him and prevent him from harming people again. Suddenly, despite the enormous complexity of the whole situation, Chow began to notice that power began to appear on his right arm, and it obeyed him. With every second it grew, Chow only needed to take it and use it. A large and powerful hand began to appear from behind him. Who wanted him to possess her? Chow realized that it was Director Sun. It was his heroic spirit. Heroic energy poured into Cao and became under his control. He understood how to treat him. This is Director Sun's last appearance in this world. The super reception of the director and the super mastery of the sword of Chao's hundreds of battles combined will create an even stronger technique that will put an end to him. And Chao, with the speed of light, dealt that Wolf King a final blow in league with the headmaster's spirit. Thanks to the speed and energy that surrounded the hand, he managed to pierce the skull of that monster with it and damage the brain. When the impact fully closed, there was also a very large explosion. Suddenly, in the middle of the battle, all the wolves suddenly turned to one side and looked there. Did the students not understand what happened? Immediately after that, the wolves turned and started running into the forest. Did the students think that maybe they were scared? They began to rejoice that they had won, that luncheon had won. Luo Hai turned sharply and saw them running away. He saw that they were all acting very synchronously. It must be the Wolf King's cry. Then he guessed that Meng Chao had done all this. He must have cornered that king and he called his subjects for help. Luo Hai shouted that they were going to save the king. He started telling everyone to follow him. Everyone agreed with him and started running in the direction he pointed. He thought that Meng Chao should hold on until they arrived. That monster was lying down and almost unconscious, but he still told Chao to run away. Chao was holding a stuck hand in his head, and he was addressing him again. He said that his group is close, and he has the last chance to escape. Chao said, even if he gets eaten by his group, he still won't let him escape. It turns out that his blow did not reach the brain. There is not enough of everything. Chao thinks that he only needs to advance a little and that monster will die immediately. Chao tried with all his might to advance deeper. And he succeeded. The monster screamed as he felt Chao touch his brain. He couldn't move. Chao shifted and felt that he could now kill that monster. He put all his strength into that continuing blow in an instant. Everything was mixed up in that monster's head. Chao destroyed his brains. Did that monster think that these are such terrible people? The monster began to fight in deadly convulsions, and Chow did not care what would happen next because he did what he wanted. Meanwhile, the group of monsters was already very close. They only had a few seconds to run to Chao. The picture was very deplorable. The monster finally died. Chow was lying on top of him and was also in a very bad condition, and behind him was the spirit of the director, who believed that everything would be fine. He bent down and patted Chow on the head. Now his spirit would dissipate. He is infinitely proud that he had such a student as Meng Chow. Suddenly, wolves run out of the forest they have never run so fast before. They were very formidable because they had already seen that their leader of the group was lying and not moving. Chow's friends couldn't keep up with them and the monsters were already very close to him. Lao Hai was in despair because there was nothing he could do. By the time they got to Chao, there would be nothing left of him. The monster got as close as possible to Chao, and in a moment he would kill him. But suddenly, someone started shooting those monsters. There were several dozen of them, but none of them managed to reach Chao. It was a rescue team. They finally found those students. Luo Hai breathed a sigh of relief because he saw the saviors. Now he can rest. Later, when they were rescued in the underground cemetery, there was an offering and respect to Director Sun. There were many people, because everyone loves him very much. Master Yang said that today they were saying goodbye to the commoner of Long Chung Sun Daxing. He was one of the first people of Lukin to protect humanity and the city he gave everything he had. Until the last moment of his life, he continued to fight for the future of Luncheng. He was able to save those children and his spirit is completely at peace. Later, the ceremony was over. Fei Xiong was passing by and came across Teacher Yan. The teacher told him that when he was free, he should go to the hospital and visit Meng Chao because he had been in a coma for the seventh day. Because when they go to university, they will have much fewer opportunities to see each other. 
Faceon thanked the teacher for his understanding and said that he would do so. In the room where Chao was lying, the window was open and a pleasant breeze was blowing. His sister was with him. She told him to get better as soon as possible, and when he got better, she promised that I would not be lazy during training. She said she was told he was like a real hero, but she didn't believe it because she wasn't there. Therefore, she asked him to get up as soon as possible and tell her everything, how it was there. She begged him to get up, to start arguing with her. She asked why he still sleeps. Xiao Chao said that what a hero he is if he allows himself to lie on the bed like this. Suddenly, one day, Chao began to move a little. He came out with a coma, and it is very difficult to bear that injury. And besides, he was tormented by night terrors. Seven days passed, and Chao became much better. He was no longer tormented by terror. He had fully regained consciousness, and Xiao Chao was asleep on the chair next to him. She spent a lot of time with him. He realized that it was a dream. Probably Min was under the influence of the powerful dying biocurrent of the Wolf King's brain. But where did those cocoons and large pools of blood come from in his memories? Monsters are not the fruits of nature, but created artificially. Although he has returned from the end of the world, he still knows very little about this secret world. Probably only when he becomes stronger will he be able to learn secrets and truths one by one. Suddenly he received a message from the spark and he forgot. In total, he received more than 20,000 points and discovered new properties such as the Vajra power that Director Sun possessed. But he has reached such a level that he does not care about the contribution points. But he was very interested to see what new techniques there were to discover. There were a few texts there, but the prices had changed a lot. He thought inflation had happened while he was in the coma. Xiao Chao was so tired that she couldn't wake up even though Chao didn't try to be quiet. She dreamed that she was very hungry and ordered another portion. Who would have thought that such a formidable future witch sleeps so sweetly? He was surprised because he had done so much for her, and the chance of becoming a witch had decreased by only 10%. He already thought that it might be genetic, but there was a situation a long time ago that he does not remember. He just dreams that the indicator showed zero chances. Private hospitals are better than public hospitals, so Mr. Ning placed him in King Yan Hospital. But in this case, the state will only return half of the money, but Mr. Ning and the Yan clan agreed to take the other half, to express their gratitude to the old fire bearer. They were all in the corridor discussing something. Chao's father was also with them. Thanks to the efforts of Mr. Ning and Dr. Su, his body will recover soon. Of course, this level of treatment is beyond the capabilities of ordinary people. Although the very strong psionic energy made him wake up early and become exalted and open three channels, but the cost is such that all other channels are damaged. He thought that he had become a so-called relic exalted. If nothing happened in this life, then he would be stuck at that level. He finished rehabilitation and thought that, in any case, everything would clear up with time and it would be better than just becoming a corpse. In recognition of his heroism, he was awarded three medals, the Survival Commission, the Red Dragon Army, and the Ascension Tower. But the most important thing is that they add points to the single exam. He was on the 34th city from all over the city. Given his great performance, as well as all the extra points, you can count on him to have great results. He can choose any university from the top five. The super elite were all at his feet. They represented Lungshan University. Also, the strongest wanted him to be with them. This is an agricultural university. The military university very persistently invited him. In the medical department, all doors were also open to him. Like everyone, he was eagerly awaited at the technological university. And even at the technical university, a place was already reserved for him. It turns out that its healing can cure only one channel at a time, and then the price increases significantly. He had a peaceful tantrum because there are 108 channels in his body. Even if he becomes the mayor of Lucian, it may not be enough to cure everyone. Majestic and powerful, a symbol of the city which has a great meaning. Chao was walking next to her from that angle. She was simply beautiful. He thought how wonderful it would be if those monsters weren't there. It would be heaven. Suddenly, someone called out to Chao and he turned around. 
It was Luo Hai, he came to say, that thanks to him he also woke up. He showed him his manifestation of power. Chao was delighted and shocked at the same time. He thought he was the only one so cool. Luo Hai said that he had recently opened Channel 61 and could barely compete with those warriors from the martial arts department of Longcheng University. Lao said he invited Chao to a meeting to sincerely thank him. If he had not raised his fighting spirit and destroyed the wolves so skillfully, then he certainly would not have received the support of his father in the matter of exaltation. Chao said that they all did their best together, and he also wanted to thank him and his father for finding valuable resources very quickly, thanks to which he recovered very quickly and even made it to the start of the school year. He was sorry that he couldn't restore Chao's damaged channels. Chao was also not sweet to think about it. Luo Hai asked him if he knew that there were ancient traces of the country under the Tower of the Exalted. Chao said that he had heard that there was an old, starry sky civilization buried deep there that their world could not understand. After the transfer of luncheon, no one knew about it until tectonic movements took place and then it was opened. Luo Hai said that the so-called Exalted Tower is a huge scientific research institute for ancient relics. The tower was built precisely to study that relic. This is a place where miracles happen and everything becomes possible. He believes that as the excavation of ancient relics accelerates, they will definitely be able to overcome certain technological difficulties. He also believed that one day they would be able to solve the problem of the relic ascended so that Chao could also climb to the top of the tower. Chao thanked him for his attention to his problem. Lao told him to come to him. He went on to say that according to the rules, all those who have just woken up must come here and register. Without showing his incomprehension, Chao agreed. But he is in thought, although he did not feel any hostile energy from him. But for some reason, the feeling that he brought him here for some other reason will not leave him at all. To get there, you had to go through a lot of security systems, so one security check was passed. Next, you had to show your registered code. There was also a special camera that checked through the pupil of the eye. Chow applied his eye and the test was passed. And the last stage of verification were fingerprints. This was also passed. The power of the Exalted is very formidable, but it also hides a great hidden danger. They seem to be walking in the middle of the void, guarding luncheon, and a large and massive room began to open before them. The smallest mistake and you can become a slave to that emptiness and start bringing ruin to Lucan and to yourself. Therefore, the tower invites all new ascendants to register in order to avoid this kind of trouble as much as possible. Very radical methods of exaltation lead to madness. In that situation, using his power, he wanted to make a riot and harm the common people in the exalted. He plunged in exalted power, broke many laws, went down the wrong road. At that time, several rockets were fired at him. He no longer deserved to be human. Now he had become a mere monster in human reckoning. Chao listened carefully to Luo Han's story. The new ascended must understand what the right path is. The exalted ones had their own code. They must know the laws, obey the laws, protect the laws, and live in harmony with the common people. They approached and stood on a special platform that began to lift them uphill. Chao was amazed by the tower of exalted ones in the middle, psionic energy hovering around there. Khan said that his father told that the tower is simply gigantic in size, they extend from the ancient relics to a height of several kilometers. They can extract psionic energy from the depths of the earth and fill the entire tower with it. Han said that he was now inviting Chao to the true ascended world. Chao immediately heard many conversations where they were offered a job for a very high salary, buying valuable resources, or needed a reaper for a task. It was heaven. He said that there is absolutely everything here. Moreover, it is much better than in luncheon, but you can only pay with exaltation coins. That's why there are fairs and auctions from the outside. To be honest, he doesn't understand it, because in his opinion, it's not profitable. Chow said that if the trading exalted were allowed to use a simple currency, Longcheng's economy would have collapsed a long time ago. Chow added that all common people are actually in poverty, 
society is divided, and Long Chen's desire to colonize another world is just a joke. Khan completely agreed with him. Khan said that this is the grandest statue in the whole city. This is the god of war, Lei Jikun Chao. This is how a majestic man should be. Chao said he knew someone who could surpass him. They said over the loudspeaker that people should come up one by one because today there are many tasks in the army, but they still shouted who wanted to reserve which task. Who said that the recent sudden fog situations must have angered the city's rulers and they are determined to start a new phase of expansion? They are lucky, despite being in their first year, there is a very good chance that they will be given a task and sent to fight in the depths of the fog. Who saw the expression on Chao's face and asked him if he is not sometimes one of those who oppose going outside the city and expanding territories? He just thought that it might be a little too fast for such large-scale combat, that it could wait and surely save many lives. Khan told him that time is not ticking. Colonizer speeches are heard every day. But there are so many resources around that if they do not come out and seize them, millions of people will simply suffocate in the middle of the city. He understood very well what the top was thinking about. He needed to become important in high circles so that his decision could influence events. Only in this way he could change the course of events. Khan then continued his tour and called again to the same place. Chao became very wary when he saw what Han showed him. There sat a huge man strangely dressed with large tattoos on his back. He did not turn back quickly and his lush beard was visible. He looked very formidable. Chao recognized him. It was a six-star exalted martial master, a master of the Luo clan. When he saw that they had come to him, he began to stand up. He was twice as tall as Chao and very powerful. Probably many monsters just started to run away at the sight of such an enemy. When he stood up, Chao immediately felt his incredibly strong aura. Chao did not show his inner anxiety and out of respect took a step towards the meeting. When they got closer, he greeted Chao and thanked him for saving him. Ahaya. Chao said that Master Luo was shaming him when in fact they fought together to save each other. Chao himself began to thank because Master Luo had given a lot of expensive drugs for his treatment. Maiset Luo said that talents like Chao would increase Long Chen's fighting power. The master said that he invited him this time for two things. Chao was a little uncomfortable. He didn't know what to expect. He said first of all, as a father, he thanked for saving his son. And secondly, he, as a representative of the exalted society, thanks him for his valuable contribution. His sword technique is brutal, brutal, and cuts through everything. It was definitely conveyed by a great man. Good technique, but it is very violent. When hit, its channels crack faster than a monster's skull. In general, it would be surprising if he did not become a relic exalted after this. Law said that he would watch closely because he was improving this technique, especially for him. In a moment, like lightning, he started leaving behind him only a light haze. Colossal speed and smoothness for such large sizes. He performed the technique as if immersed in a trance. Calmness and confidence emanated from him without stopping. It was like a dance of death, which everyone is afraid to see. Each of his sword swings was so fast, accurate, and light at the same time that it seemed as if the sword was on fire. A strong wind arose from his demonstration. Chao watched very intently and pondered what he saw. He noticed that maximum power dropped by 3%, but stability and smoothness increased greatly. Now it is clear why it is outstandingly high six stars. He said that the strike he used to take out the Wolf King's eye socket was most likely a combination of the Vajra and the swordsmanship of hundreds of battles. He said it would be an interesting idea, but he would help Chao improve it a bit. Chao watched carefully, but wondered why he was showing him all this. He easily copied the techniques used by Chao and began to improve them. Master Luo punched the air with tremendous force. The training hall, all shuddering from his blows. He was just an unusual killing machine, super strong but very fast at the same time. While Chao watched, he himself became excited for training. Master Luo said that if an exalted one of a lower rank performs a feat, he gets the opportunity to learn from an exalted one of a much higher rank. Suddenly, an alarm sounded in the training hall. 
The loudspeaker said that the destructive force was too high and the walls could be damaged. Luo Han was shocked that that punch was so strong. Chao's reaction was also very much shocked. Luo Hai said, That training hall withstood the nuclear explosion and did not issue a warning. But this is the situation here. After that, Master Luo told Meng Chao to try further. He immediately agreed. He prepared himself and began to release energy. He hopes to show a super punch. And he did. It was now clearly comparable to Master Luo's punch. A few more times, Chao tried to increase the power of that blow, but it was hundreds of times weaker. He understood that it would be more difficult for him than under supervision. Under Master Luo's supervision, he must quickly master the skills he needs. The master said that only when they pass on worthy knowledge to someone who has contributed, they can transfer the spirit of fallen ancestors from past generations. This is the Ascension Tower tradition. Chao guessed that the Luo clan was interested in the commercial opportunities behind the improved version of wielding the Hundred Battle Sword. He also guesses that they must have heard something from Mr. Nin, so they want to mend relations with the old firebearer. Ah, how cunning Lo Hai is. He said that their future cooperation will be great, much more than one reception. Chao smiled and asked if he meant cooperation or soliciting customers. Law said they live in a turbulent era. They don't know how much horror and possibility lies in the fog zone. If he wants to do great things, it is necessary to form his personal team. Luo Hai asked if he eventually had a team if Chao would agree to become the deputy commander. Chao said that given his circle of acquaintances and he is still afraid of finding a place. He said that those people already have teams ready and he also believes that Chao will show his full potential at the university. And if he doesn't use corporate interests to keep him around now, when time passes and he becomes famous, will he remember who Luo Hai is? Chao began to say that there is a point in all this. Then, if he is so important, maybe he will organize a team and A Hai will be his deputy. And Hai was a little confused. He said that Chao is in the state of a relic. Chao said that using multiple channels and being able to fight are completely different things. Relic Exalted have fewer techniques, but they are stronger. And Hao understood that if Chao lost to him, then he would join his team? And Chao said if he loses to him? In a moment, they ran in different directions and were preparing for training. Both of them were very interested in testing each other's strength. Although Chao was recently very seriously injured, he felt fine, and in a second he was already flying to the attack. And Han also attacked and shouted for Meng Chao to try his Soul Destroyer technique. They both threw similar blows at the same time and used essentially similar techniques, so they just locked up. There was even a mini-explosion from the fusion of those two techniques, but it will be of great power. And Hai appreciated Chao's technique, saying that it was quite powerful. Chao thanked him and immediately began to deliver. Another blow of the same kind. A strong energy attack was already flying at him. He did not expect this. He was confused for a moment. But in time, he touched the floor with his foot and used a special skill. And this allowed him to accelerate very quickly and dodge a Chao's strong attack. After he dodged, he said to Chao, It's a pity that his relic exaltation is not transformed enough. And now he does an attack called Soul Destroyer. Chao dodged easily enough, but he realizes that he lacks enough psionic energy to attack again. And this is the biggest problem of the Relic Exalted, because if he continues, he can damage the canines even more. Hey, that's what Chao said. That psionic channels are very important. The more of them, the more deadly attacks a warrior has. And he, feeling his advantage, began to make many strong attacks and immediately said that he would definitely help him restore the channels, but he should become his deputy in the team. Chao jumped up and flipped and thus ducked. He realized if Hai kept him at a distance, then he wouldn't be able to attack and always ducking was also a bad idea. Therefore, in the future, he will try to close the distance. Let him see the changes in Chao's tactics and guess that he will try to close the distance as much as possible to compensate for the weakness of his relic. And they were already shooting each other at close range with spiritual fire released from their hands. Suddenly, Hai began to retreat to increase the distance because he can always shoot spirit fire, but Chao can't. 
and Chow went on the attack, and there he was closing the distance with every second. At that moment, he thought that in addition to the direction of superkilling, he could also consider others such as the Beast Lord, armored vehicles, or even the Executioner gun. He just got close enough. And I thought that Luncheon is a big city, and he will definitely find a good way to improve it. And his blow was super close. Let him see his fingers in front of his face. Maybe this is the end of the fight. But at the last moment, he used up the energy and suddenly crouched and bowed like that. Even though Chow was very close, this situation stressed him. He wondered how this monster improved. If his main channels were not damaged, he would be able to become stronger than his father's level in the future. It will probably be necessary to exert more effort so that he becomes his deputy. And Hai launches a counterattack, and he'll test his new psionic channel in no time. Chow was caught off guard. He did not expect such a quick counterattack. And he managed to land that blow. Chow had no chance to duck. It turned out to be a very strong blow. He spat out blood from it. It so happened that he spat it right into Hai's face. For a moment, he was embarrassed because he thought that he had overdone it and caused him great harm. But in one second, he stopped because Chow somehow managed to answer his counterattack with another counterattack, and they were in a stalemate. Let him know that Chow can't shoot spirit fire from his left hand. He won't do anything here, and he can release spiritual fire from his hand in a moment and cut his throat. They finished. Luo Hai was happy because he thought he had won, and a Chow asked if he was all right. Chow said that he is fine. It was a great match. He is getting more and more interested in the cooperation that Hai talked about. Chow said that he had things to do at home, and if his partner wanted to, they could practice some more. And happily, asked Chow, will he now be his deputy? Chow was very surprised at such a question because he did not think that he had lost the duel. He was even more surprised because he could not have thought that Chow would not want to admit his defeat. After a year, Chow left and Hai called his father. He told him that Ming Chow said that he did not defeat him. He could not understand anything. His father explained to him that if it had been a real fight, he would have simply poked his eye out, not just pointed at him. He asked, Haya, what is Meng Chao's strongest point? And he himself said that his strongest point is his shooting skills. He is a monster who scored more than 10 hits on the smallest golden target. He asked Hei, who of the constructive school is capable of such results? While he was training, he explained to his son, he also said that Chow had missed his punch on purpose to spit blood and distract him. The interesting gesture he was talking about, he held the gun and aimed it at his eye and pulled the trigger. Father said that in a real battle he would have died many times. Such an explanation drove him into shock. Chow went into the restroom to clean up after the match. While he was wiping the blood, he thought that this fight was not unnecessary. It reminded him of many different things. The system of psionic channels in the human body consists of 108 main channels and 1024 secondary channels. The extremely deadly direction affects all 108 main channels, then affects the psionic magnetic field and deals a powerful deadly blow. But due to this feature, at the moment before the impact, there may be a momentary delay for the accumulation of energy. And then there is the ending, which waits for the death blow to take shape after release. And then there's the recovery you have to face to calm the seething psionic energy in your body. These are three main problems that cannot be solved. At the beginning of the war with monsters, those who possess the skill of the Ultra Killer relied on the skills of deadly strikes to cross the battlefield and achieve great results. As the war progressed, many monsters developed a new power, a powerful explosion of energy on the brink of death. A lot of warriors who used the direction of the Ultra Killer were killed in moments, accumulation, cornering, or recovery. Until hundreds of soldiers died, no one paid attention to it, and then they had to look for a completely different way of fighting. And an extreme style was found, different from the Super Kill style, it focused on 1024 secondary psionic energy channels. The secondary channels were very fragile. They could not withstand the powerful instantaneous release of psionic energy, so they had to give up super strong blows. But as soon as a person enters the rhythm of the attack, 
Then simple techniques become like a flow of water, and he can use the technique without interruption. In that style, such concepts as recording, ending, restoration disappeared. The ability to retreat at any time is the biggest plus of extreme style. In the late period of the war, that non-attacking technique was used to immobilize the monster. And at the moment when the monster was immobilized, they used a fatal blow and ended the battle. This has become the best method of combat for martial arts masters. He was sorry that in Lucan's past life it took a lot of time and human sacrifices to come to such conclusions, and still, they lost. He must make the extreme style appear faster, and for the powerful to notice it, for his own sake and for Lucan's sake. But the problem is that he knows only the basics and will not exactly be able to reproduce the extreme style. He needs to find out who is currently studying extreme style, but which university might they be at? On the internet, he came across an author of experiments. His name was very familiar. His name was Gu Jiangbo. Chao began to diligently remember and search for information about him. And later, he remembered to whom that name belonged. The one who danced with the dagger, Gu Jiangbo, he was the founder of the extreme style. Chao found his biography. He also specialized in restoring damaged channels. It was said about him in his past life that if he had not died early, he would have been able to reach the divine level. Therefore, Chao must meet him. Chao felt a strong desire to know his style to the fullest. If he could touch his feet, even without the old firebearer, he would subdue Longshan. Chao was very glad to find at least some information about him, and he decided that he must definitely grab his legs. And Chao Chao, his sister, was standing at his door and listening to all this. Chao turned sharply towards the door because someone loudly asked him whose legs he was going to grab. It was his sister, and then he heard her telling her parents that he was on stupid websites and had just said he wanted to catch some legs. Chao rushed out of the room and shouted to his sister not to say anything, but he did not have time. She cried and complained to her parents that Chao wanted to kill her. The father said that he had already told him about hygiene, and his mother asked him to wait until his sister left the house and then do his business. Chao was very angry and said that her parents should not protect her, he should teach her. His sister continued to tease him, and his mother told them not to make any noise because his father wanted to say something. He started saying that there are two news. The first is super good. He said that thanks to Chao's good result in the final exam, their family finally had enough points, and the survival committee has prepared a new house for them in Honghu Jiaiwan district. They can get it tomorrow. Xiao Chao was very happy. Mother was also delighted. Chao also showed his happiness, said that he wanted to thank everyone, all his neighbors and relatives. And the other news, the class teacher Chao called today and asked if he had already chosen the goal of the final exam. He said that it should be finished this week, because there is no need to delay admission because of such a small thing. Chao was in a good mood. He said that he understood everything. The sister said that the brother must have forgotten that he was just browsing strange sites. Chao said her face says she's a pushover. Chao's parents told him not to offend his sister, and he thinks that a big dark witch can only hide behind his parents and make faces at him. Then Chao told his father not to worry, because he already knows which university he will go to. Father asked if it would be the Faculty of Resources. Can the Faculty of Martial Arts? because the teacher said that he has enough points for any faculty. He said that the art faculty of the Agricultural University is his future. He received a message about the activation of a multi-stage task about extreme resistance. The description said that he needs to introduce a new fighting style instead of what he has now, because the situation in the war is changing, and with the old style, luncheon is doomed to decline. In the first stage, he needs to help the dagger dancer to perfect the extreme style. Thanks to this, in the future, Chao will reach a strength equal to one of the ten main clan strength. And the reward for the first stage, 8,000 points and the restoration of ten main channels. The next day they arrived at their new home. My sister was delighted with how spacious it was. There was a very large and soft bed. She was very happy. 
but the house was already filled with dishes and they were very beautiful. Chow asked how did they eat, because if they like it, then later they and their father will go to the housing authority and complete the re-registration procedure. The sister suddenly fell silent and Chow asked her what happened. She said that she really likes the new apartment, but for some reason she wanted to move. He asked her why. She began stroking the tooth and said that she remembers how he told that the attacks of monsters will only increase. And the survival committee adheres to the policy that strong families like theirs can leave Tianfuyuan district. And when all the strong leave that area, the weak will remain there. And when monsters attack, the old stable systems will not be able to protect them, and they will be monsters themselves. When she thinks about this, she feels like a deserter and she doesn't want to be one. Chow said that his sister had grown up completely and asked the opinion of the parents. Of course, they did not expect such a turn of events. Mom said that they have lived there for so many years and have many good friends. Therefore, there is nothing terrible if they do not move. In addition, she agreed with Miss Pa to start training after her recovery. Chow asked what his father thought of such an idea. He said that everything is fine for him. The main thing is that everyone is happy. Xiao Chao hugged her brother and asked him if she was too picky. Chao said that this apartment is not the best anyway. It is better to wait until Longshen wins and then they will immediately move to the city center. He said, did you cry? And after that, he immediately started to run away because he knew what would happen now. The nurse yelled for him to stop because she would tell the toothy to bite him. Their parents were truly happy at that moment. Later, on Mr. Ning's recommendation, Chow went to a youth training complex to improve his harvesting and hunting skills. It was called the Summer Training Complex, Thunder Group. Chow and Mr. Ning have already conducted the harvest of super monsters several times, so they had connections in the leadership of the Thunder Group. Further, after submitting the documents, the family received a reply that Chow was admitted to the Agricultural University. Parents were very proud of their son. Faisian also received extra points for the final exam and was admitted to the heroic department of the military school. He managed to gain one point more than in his previous life, so now he will not be an ordinary soldier. Since Grandma Wang joined the Army of Eternal Life, her granddaughter was offered better living conditions in another area and closer to school. Chao turned 18 this year, so according to the law, he can apply for an apartment that has become vacant nearby. Although they did not move to a new apartment in the Han Zuan district, they became more spacious to live in. Summer vacation passed quickly, and school days began very quickly. Chow called his family to come with him. They were going to take Chow to his new home. They arrived by subway in the district of Jusha in the university town. The sister was very happy again. There were a lot of drones flying there. They were put on display to welcome new students, and the drones themselves are very important. They can perform many functions. They can follow, attack, or save. They are used very often by mechanical warriors. When they passed by, the boys were training there. Xiao Chao looked at them. Then she asked Chao because she noticed a yellow glow behind them. Chao said that it is called the Spirit of War. It is a gathering of countless souls of heroes and the agricultural university can be seen in front. Chow was already interested in learning how to study at the university. That's why he told them to go there as soon as possible and see everything. Suddenly, Xiao Chow felt something. It was something very unpleasant. On the approach to that university, there was a very bad smell. Chow held himself in his hands because he had heard a similar smell more than once. For him, it was not a stench because such a smell was given by thousands of monsters that were fertilized by microbes. On the approach, the sister drew attention to the huge skull, which was magnified, and she asked Chow, what is this agricultural university? But her expression was strange. Did Chow tell her that she had a strange expression on her face? He said that without his university, no army would go anywhere. They could not act until the experiments were done and other universities would die of hunger if it were not for this. These tall trees are high-energy bread trees. Their fruit is not only filled with important substances, but the resin is a natural gel that helps heal wounds. Xiao Chao was in awe of the size of that huge skeleton. 
Chow said that this was the biggest monster that ever attacked Longchen. It was 25 years ago. It took five divine-level exalted warriors to stop him. When she heard this, she was shocked that that monster was so strong. But when the agrarian university squeezed everything valuable out of it, its useless skeleton was thrown in front of the crowd. Other students ran past them and said that there was a competition between the faculties of martial arts and the faculty of animal management to find out which specialty is the strongest in agriculture. Chow called his parents to see together who would be the strongest. They gladly agreed. They were also interested in finding out. Chow imagined that it would be such a competition. He would really like it. In agriculture, those two faculties constantly quarrel for various reasons. There was a huge arena on which stood one warrior from one faculty and another from another. A lot of people came to see it. To motivate students to improve, the agricultural department always arranges matches between these two faculties. That warrior shouted that today he will demonstrate to all of luncheon that the future of the city is the faculty of martial arts. And another said that the faculty of martial arts is just a bunch of ruffians who only know how to wave their hands. He added that they are so rude that they can't even find a girl. He had under his control a big monster, a terrible snake. In the next moment, the warrior of arts sprang from his place and went on the attack. The monster immediately jumped forward and raised its shell to deflect the blow, and the monster's owner told him to try to break through its defenses. Another warrior said he didn't take him seriously, but the warrior from the arts abruptly changed his trajectory and directed his attack at the other warrior, bypassing the monster. He put maximum force into that blow in order to end it quickly, and the warrior who controlled the monster stood still and did not even move. But in the next moment, the monster began to move very quickly and change its position, and caught the warrior from the arts, preventing him from approaching his master. The monster, with its tail, neutralized his strong attack and protected its owner. The warrior with the monster said that he was acting carelessly on purpose, and he didn't notice it, and he also said that he was not stupid. The students supported that boy from the Department of Animals. They said that he was a good man. The sister immediately asked the brothers if he entered the Department of Animal Control because he looks very strong. But someone got ahead of him and answered that he had entered the Faculty of Martial Arts. It was Sueishi. She was not in a good mood. She sternly asked why he, having such high scores, did not go to the Faculty of Resources. Chao thought that he should tell her that it would play a very big role in the future, but he said he likes to fight with his hands. He doesn't trust the monster or the technology. He only trusts himself. She did not want to listen to his excuses, she said. She said that he could still come to that faculty in his free time. And during the first year, if he wants, he can transfer to another faculty. She called him after her to take him to registration because there was nothing else to look at. It is not for nothing that the faculty of martial arts is always called the second. They started the procedure and Chao understood why she wanted to help him in that matter. When they left that place, Chao said that it was good that Sushi helped him because the procedure was quite complicated. They saved a lot of time. She said that it was not difficult for her and parents and sister were walking behind. They all headed to the big arch. It was the entrance to the university itself. When they got closer, Sueishi said that only the students could go further. They could lead him to this place. But today in the canteen, they prepared a lot of delicious food and it's all free of charge. So they can go there. Chao said that this is a good offer. He once heard people say that you must eat in the agrarian restaurant. When they set about the food, Xiao Chao was very happy. She was just hungry. She started pushing her parents in the direction of the dining room and her father said they were leaving and for Chao to be safe. When they left, he heard his sister say that his brother is already big and there is no need to worry about him. Of course, he was not very happy to hear it. Sueishi also heard this and told Chao that his sister would be cute. Suddenly someone called him and he started turning around. He said that as soon as he saw which guy was walking with Senior Ning, he immediately knew that it could only be Meng Chao. At first, Chao thought that Ji Fei was arrogant and cold, but when he got to know him better, it turned out that he was a simple talker. Suishi laughed and said if his friend came, she would definitely go.
Chow was not happy about this. He liked her presence more. She walked away and waved goodbye, and Zi Fei called out to her, Goodbye, Elder Ning. Suddenly he surprised Chow by suddenly grabbing him by the neck, seemingly an old friend. He immediately suggested that they found a place to leave his backpack to go to the Combat Institute. He wants to introduce him to everyone. These majestic buildings were the Faculty of Martial Arts and Life Sciences of the Agrarian University. Chao asked Shi Fei why he chose this university. Because his points were enough to enter the University of Longchen? Better to be the head of the crust than the tail of the phoenix, he said. His mother also works here. Well, it's no secret that it is very rich in resources. He then told Chao that among the freshmen in the martial arts department, there were three people he should pay attention to. Among freshmen, they are called the Four Heavenly Kings. They are not only among the top five in terms of final exam scores, but they also have more open main channels than anyone else. He pointed to that girl, Sun Ya. She had the highest marks in the final exam in the martial arts department. Seventy-seven main channels were opened, her body was flexible, and her combat tactics were varied. This is Duan Lian, second place in points, 65 main channels. He has heroic health. He advises him never to challenge. This is Kiang Rui. He is fourth in points, 60 main channels, but he has 90% of the channels open only in his legs. His speed is simply incredible, and his kicks are devastating. Chao noticed an inaccuracy in his story. He said four heavenly kings and named only three. Zifei laughed and said that they say the fourth is him. He took fifth place in terms of points at the faculty. He also has 60 channels open, but they are located more in the hands. Chow told him that he was bragging too much. He said not at all, it's just that everyone praises his hands. Chow said that he was definitely ahead of Xi Fei in terms of points, so he was the third in the institute that they didn't take into account. Zi Fei began to make excuses that it was their fault that everyone knew his situation and therefore ignored him. Chao told him he must know one known truth. Zi Fei immediately wondered what he meant. That the four heavenly kings are actually not four, but five, and he is the strongest. But now it was not at all clear to him. It was a representative of the Faculty of Martial Arts and Life Sciences. He congratulated everyone on admission. It was Jiang Ming, the six-star, exalted, cold-blooded mentor of this faculty. He was very strict, he said. If they do not have a strong will, are not ready to forgive pain during the ascension, then it is not too late to change the specialty. He was silent to give an opportunity to those who changed their mind to leave the formation. After his phrase, none of the disciples retreated. He said that it was very good that they were all ready to walk the path of ascension. Then the girls should go to the right and the boys to the left. Then there will be a game. It is for them to get to know each other better. Chao realized that that mentor looked a bit like his teacher Yang. Eventually, they all began to change into their uniforms. He thinks that as expected from an agricultural university, this bionic suit is much more comfortable than the ones that were on the final exam. In the pot on the head of each student, 2,000 monster coins each. This is the starting capital from the university. But when he put it on, he thought only of one thing. Who invented this horror? The mentor explained that in the agricultural department, all calculations are made for monster coins. Also, in order to choose a mentor, you need to pay with such coins. When they showed how much it costs, the students were very indignant because they only have 2,000 coins, and the mentor is also worth 2 million. Others said that lunch for 150 coins was a robbery. Zifui said that teachers try to encourage students to fight every year. This time, this game is definitely related to monster coins. When Chao saw him, he thought he was very funny with that pot on his head. That mentor started to say something and Chao turned to him. He said that the university will give them the opportunity to earn those coins so that they can enjoy various benefits. But of course, students can use fair competition to earn coins. The upcoming game is just an opportunity to earn coins. After he explained how they were going to mine those coins, 
Zi Fei and the others began to look at Meng Chao's pot as loot. The teacher began to tell the rules. They are very simple. For the next half hour, they will all speak freely on the playground. They have to figure out how to put other people's coins in their pot. The suits they are wearing will not allow them to receive a critical wound. So, for the sake of a lot of monster coins and a lot of resources, fight. In the first second, there was a battle behind Chao and Shi Fei, and they looked at each other. Someone very quickly and clearly hit one after another. In the first seconds of the fight, that student doubled his balance. She was the girl who will be the strongest in the faculty. She had just finished picking one off and saw her next victim. In a moment, she was already in front of him and knocked him off his feet. Those who saw that she was running at them did not even oppose her because they thought that there was no point. And she, in turn, did not look at who she liked more, but knocked everyone down in a row. In the next moment, another student had an empty cauldron thanks to her. At the moment, she was the richest. She stopped for a moment to assess the situation around her. Due to the fact that she is very agile and fast, she did not see the whole situation. Suddenly from behind, someone shouts at her and tells her how cool she is. In a second, she was already unconscious, and that girl said that the monster's coins could not be obtained by flattery. The mentor noticed that that sun girl, who is very good and has a calm character and good technique, is suitable for gathering the spirit of a super monster dragon. He looked at his partner, Lee, and said that that sun girl should go to him, because who knows, maybe she is a copy of her young self. It was Li Yingzi Griffin. She is also a mentor. She said about that girl that she needs to collect 2,000 coins. And the game that year is such that whoever is the strongest will have the hardest time. There was complete chaos. Chow in his style stepped aside and assessed the situation. The rules of the game are quite simple, but getting monster coins is quite difficult. Strong disciples who want Li Yingzi or Jiang Ming as mentors need to actively attack to defeat as many disciples as possible before the weak disciples team up against them. But even if it was possible to knock down someone's crown, it is not a fact that it will be possible to collect coins. There is a very high chance that someone else will take them. The design of the bowl is specially made in such a way that when there are few coins, it is difficult to get them, and when there are many, they fall at the slightest movement. In addition, judging by the size of the bowl, the top of the bowl will not fit more than 150 coins. This means that if the powerful want to collect more, they will have to hold them in their hands and fight at the same time. Girl Sun felt like a fish in water there. She thought in her mind that she was the leader, the four heavenly kings among the freshmen. Someone shouted that the students from the third school, he suggested that they deal with one of the leaders together and then think about what to do with the others. As a result, all the schools united against the four heavenly kings to relieve the pressure from each. Together, they are stronger. Those students from whom the coins have already been taken are still in danger. For a moment, Chow again flew far, far away in his fantasies. For some reason, he began to really like volleyball, especially when girls play. Suddenly, someone blocked his light. He said to Chow that he was sorry. He had already started swinging to cut down Chow, but Chow sharply said that he only had 20 coins and he was excited. It was unlikely that the boy would be able to beat him. He was preparing to attack and said he saw the likes of Chow fleeing from battle. But with lightning speed for that classmate, Chow was behind him. At the same moment, something else filled his pants. Unexpectedly, Chow punched him in the face. Chow said he would not take his coins just like that, but would give him advice. In the future, there is no need to make a magnetic psionic field to release a powerful attack at once, because four, five seconds for a monster will be enough to kill it three or five times. Now he understands that to get those coins to him, it was necessary to find a good way. Several students already had full pots. In Safe, he was also full. Coins were constantly falling to him. And suddenly those students who united in a group saw that Shi Feng's cup was full and decided to attack him at the same time. At that moment, someone started talking to him from the side. Meng Chao told him that he was very funny and asked him if he needed help. He was very happy when he heard such an offer. He told Chao to help him as soon as possible, and the coins would be divided equally. 
He liked Safay's tenacity and immediately agreed to help him. The other students were discouraged after Chow and Fei teamed up because they knew that Chow was quite strong and fought at close range, while Fei was at long range. Now they did not know what to do. Chow thought that now was the moment. He waited for Fei to release his tentacles and with a sharp super kick from his leg, hit him in the stomach. A lot of coins fell from that blow at once. This blow was simply gigantic, but the greatest damage was caused by unexpectedness. All the other students were no less surprised than Fei. They could not even think about such a thing. That blow sent Fei flying far back. He had mixed emotions, he shouted, and asked what Meng Chao was doing. He simultaneously felt great anger, anger, and pain. Chao said that he has more than a hundred coins on his head. It is logical that he should be beaten. After those words, his pain and pain receded and only anger remained. And he began to attack and told Chao that he was not afraid of him. Chao also hit him back and told him to admit that he was afraid of him. There was a strong splash from their blows. A strong student fights with a strong student. Both Chao and Feng had a few coins drop after that hit. Ordinary students only enjoyed the fact that they were fighting and collecting falling coins. And Fei asked Chao why he was doing this, because all the strong students had already collected more than a hundred coins. Why wouldn't he go and interfere with them? Chao answered him in a calm voice. He attacked him because he knows him. This answer surprised Fen very much. In his opinion, this is the dumbest possible answer. His energy exploded. He began to accumulate it for a super strong strike. Now the jokes are over. For just two seconds, he was accumulating that energy as Chao counterattacked with the help of the bull's power. Once again, Fei misplaced his coins. He was overwhelmed by Chao's actions. But immediately, Chao came up to him and gave him his hand. He asked why they all like to use a powerful attack. Don't they know that the time of accumulation, termination, and recovery of the magnetic psionic field is very long? Safei accepted his help but asked Chao if he was crazy. Because when he fought with him, he himself lost a lot of coins. He asked Chao if he had provoked him or set him up for a fight. Chao told him that he was very naive. In a real battle, apart from these six words of victory or defeat, life or death, everything else is not important. An unfortunate hundred coins makes them all indecisive, and as a result, only a third of the fighting force remains. If this was a real fight, they would all be dead by now. The purpose of the game is to see who understands the choice. Teacher Li Zi said that this year the students still lack real experience. She is also afraid that the performance of those four heavenly kings is quite bad. Chao told him that he had 60 main channels open. Usually he should be stronger, but if everything happens as soon as possible, does he believe that he will not last even five minutes? How will he suffer a brutal defeat? Chao then said that when the time came, he would calmly take his coins. So what was the point of his indecision? Safei said, so how? A reward came to Chao. Safei listened to his advice and became more experienced. Chao thought he was getting his hopes up. Now Chao asked him again if he wanted to have sex with him. Poor Safei is having a hard time with Chao's logic. He asked if Chao was exhausting him because he wanted to unite with him. He emphasized that he wants to unite with him. He said that his main channels are damaged. The upper bar is not high. He does not care if he has a golden mentor. But Fei is different, and 2,000 coins is a tough task. With such thoughts, Chao drove him into a dead end. He shouted, what should he do then? Chao said that from now until the end of the game, he would obey him, and everything would work out for them, and the coins would be divided equally. Fei agreed with him. He said that they are going to beat the money out of Dian Lan, then they will take him on the team. Fei was depressed and just obeyed politely. In a short time, there was already another hero with Chao, and they were going for the third one. It would be Jian Rui. They walked and called him a demon from behind. Jian Rui asked the two of them, how could they call themselves heavenly kings? Safei told him to look at himself. Now Chao was saying that Sun Ya surely couldn't refuse his offer. She raised her hands and said that Meng Chao is from the ninth school. Everyone is talking about him and he is not so simple. 
She did not even resist, but immediately asked him what his plan was. While they were walking, the bully asked her why she decided that that boy's plan was his. This is nonsense because he is a relic exalted warrior. His battle strength is weak, and to defeat these three, he used his brain, or could they voluntarily combine with him? Chow heard this and said that this girl is the first in the faculty of arts. She is really very smart. His plan was very simple. The four of them go to collect the monster coins, and his task will be to keep them. At the end, they will divide them equally. They were all very shocked by Chao's plan. First, without his mediation, they compete with each other. They lack trust in each other to unite. Second, in their combat uniform, there is little storage space. They need someone to store their reward so they can fight at full strength. The face of those students couldn't get rid of what they heard. One of them said that, nevertheless, the four of them will fight, so why should they share with him? Chow said that equality is the basis of cooperation. Once so, then he thought of something and began to accumulate strength. Then they will unite to destroy Chow. He smiled and said that in principle it is also possible. Chow said that he definitely couldn't defeat the four of them. He would have no choice but to grab Shi Fei and incapacitate him. Fei couldn't understand why he, Jiang Rui, hated him? Chao smiled mischievously and said because he was familiar with him. Zi Fei then said that in such a case, he had no choice but to drag Duan Luan along with him. And she just started laughing at all this and said that the four of them were just some kind of trash. She told that recalcitrant to listen to Chao because time was running out. And they decided to start acting, while behind them, ordinary students quickly collected coins. She turned to them and said that these friends who wanted to take advantage of the opportunity are now in danger. After her words, they all started to run away and she said that it was her turn to be happy. Very quickly, she began to attack and eliminate competitors. Thus, she showed an example of how to act. Literally, in a moment, she already had a certain amount of coins. She is very strong and she brought some coins. She said that it is enough to take a little from each. First of all, it is very easy, and secondly, in this method there are minimal losses, they don't even have to strain. Chao said that energy conservation is the most important thing in his plan. Zi Fei and Duan Luan were ready to start working according to the plan, and they sharply understood the essence of Chao's plan. They even began to like it. Jian Rui looked at how they were determined to do. It was very difficult for him to obey Chao's will. Chao could see that he was hesitating but understood that he had no choice, and sooner or later he would join their group. In a moment, a student appeared near them, and he immediately neutralized him. He told Chao that he would see what he was capable of. He hopes his fist will be as hard as his tongue and he will keep those hard-earned coins. He said that as long as they, the four heavenly kings, are strong enough and defeat everyone, everyone who is relatively a threat, no one will be able to take away their coins. The mentor said that Gai Meng Chao was quite interesting. He is sorry that it is a relic because he would like to take it. She said that the level itself is important, but there are other criteria for assessing strength and weakness. If he manages to collect 1,900 coins, then she will not mind taking him. Suddenly, Chao began to gather strength to use the dragon and snake power technique. That chief mentor didn't understand what he was doing? In the next moment, he struck several blows on the ground with lightning speed. He made five holes in the ground of approximately the same size as he wanted, and behind him was a large pile of coins. He began to fill those holes with coins, so he spread all the coins, and everyone will get their fate as he promised. In a short time, Chow began to shout to his own that they already had a hundred thousand coins for them to go back. Son. I told Chow that he said it very loudly and now everyone knows that they have a lot of coins and will be a target. Chow decided, need to say something more soon. They have a hundred thousand monster coins, but they are guarded by the four heavenly kings. He said there was another million coins they could take. They needed to think about it and there was nothing he could do. In a moment, his companions were at his side, standing guard over their coins. Ordinary students said that they could take weaker mentors, that they didn't need those coins so much. They were already badly beaten. The coach said there were 10 seconds left in the game. Another mentor said that it has been nine seconds. When there were eight seconds left, 
Chow said that to avoid any bad intentions from anyone, they would take their coins all at the same time at the fifth second. So everyone will be protected, son. I immediately agreed with him. There were seven seconds left. With six seconds left, they were all wondering if someone would try to cheat. When it was five seconds, they all turned around at the same time and started reaching for their coin pit. Paragraph 3969, Duan Leanne. He thought something that John Rui wanted to do something and he shouted. And Chow had prepared three coins in his hand. He was waiting for the moment when one of them would lose their vigilance. And in the last four seconds, he abruptly threw those coins. They were flying to duel Leon. It caught him off guard. To protect himself from them, he had to cover his face. And as soon as he threw away the coins that Chow was throwing at him, he saw a horrible picture. Chow had already used the demon beautifying punch technique. He couldn't do anything. His punch hit him right between the eyes. When he flew back, a lot of coins fell. It was the second second. With lightning speed, Chow gathered them all with one hand, still in the air. The other three stood calmly and did not understand what just happened. Chow H.M. said so they wouldn't misunderstand, but he just took his destiny. And he himself thought that he was very, very, very lucky with the skill of the initial art of reaping because he had very high hand speed and he managed to earn a little. With one second left, Duan Lian was just furious with Meng Chao. The teacher shouted that time is up. Everyone must stop. Anger was just seething Liana. He just wanted to kill Chao right then and there. He shouted that Chao was a real scumbag. Chao told him if he moved it, he would be breaking the rules because the game was already over. And then he said that he is a scumbag. Should he tell the truth? Duan Lian, despite his anger, told him that they had agreed to do everything honestly, that they would share the Monet of the monster equally, and no one could use tricks. And as a result, how did he treat the allies? The other members of their group did not blame him yet, but waited for his explanation. Chow boldly asked Lian why he called out John Rui's name. Sun Ya immediately understood everything, and Juya asked Lian why he called him at that important moment. Chow said that he shouted that name to make Chow think that he wanted to attack him. Chow will be distracted, and he will take advantage of this and attack him. Jian Rui couldn't believe it. Chow said that he has a highly developed body. It is unlikely that his head is empty. He is also in the top five, so he definitely has his own plans. His anger did not subside. He says that Meng Chao is lying to him. Chao said that he had no proof, but Sun Ya and the others had already come to logical conclusions themselves. Isn't that right? They were outraged that he had done this to them, and Lian was very disappointed by the situation. The mentor came. She said that Meng Chao is in first place this year. He has two 5100 monster coins. He can choose any martial arts teacher as his mentor. Other students wondered where he got so much, but one said that they really don't know him. He killed the super monster, the king of red wolves, in the final exam. And here, he had already distinguished himself by painting Duan Lian's face. Chao hesitated a little. He waved his head as if looking for someone. She noticed that he did not choose anyone present, which means that he was looking for the dean or deputy dean. She said that they were very busy. He would make a very good contribution, but still, he was unlikely to receive their mentorship. He thanked for the clarification, but he is looking for teacher Gu Janbo. Can he ask him to guide his improvement? The two mentors who were present there were shocked by such a choice. The students discussed his wishes, None of them had ever heard of such a teacher, except for one. They said that they had not heard anything about him for more than ten years. And is it really worth choosing him over these two mentors who are in front of him? Mentor Lee asked him why he wanted that mentor. Can he tell the reason? He said that he thinks that his field suits him best. Besides, his field of research is the rapid restoration of psionic channels, so he wants to choose it. She said that surely he had already made up his mind and would not change his mind, let him change his clothes, and when she finishes here, she will take him to him. Chow thanked her. He changed in the locker room and everything looked beautiful in him. He looked at himself in the mirror and saw that that form suited him. He immediately became more handsome. 
Now it's time to meet with Teacher Gu. Afterwards, he left the locker room. He saw that there was complete chaos. Therefore, he decided that he could quite handle it himself and go to Teacher Gu in table number four. Chao thought that Master Gu should not worry because Chao's disciple was coming to instruct him. Five minutes passed. This is the third floor, dining room number four. When Chao entered there, he was very surprised by what he saw there. There was a group of people with food in their hands standing on the left side, and also a large group of people stood on the right side. It looked very scary. Chao guessed, this is the canteen only for the Faculty of Arts. Those senior students are formidable and scary even during lunch. Now he understood what real improvement is when you can't relax for a second. And in a moment, someone shouted, take forward, and there began a bloody battle with food. In a moment, the food was over and that fight went to another level. It was simply impossible not to take part there. It's a miracle that no one attacked him yet. Chow had heard all kinds of stories about interesting situations of various students, but for him to be such a fool, he did not expect this. And now some amble flies at him and shouts that he needs his shoulder. Chow had to act. He has to look good at the meeting with the teacher. Chao decides that this is not the time to fight beautifully and uses the technique of wielding the sword of hundreds of battles. There they fought in different ways, but no one did that, he said to Chao, that he was brave. Ma Hong's friends said that he couldn't even beat a freshman, and Ma Hong himself told them to shut up and told Chao that he wouldn't dare go anywhere. Chow said there was a misunderstanding that he was just looking for one person, and he told Chow to wait until he bit him off, and then he would tell him to look for that person. Chow began to panic and shout for him not to come near him and threw a table at him. When that table fell to pieces, he asked where did that strength and courage go when Chow hit him? But when the fragments of the table fell to the ground, he could no longer see Chow himself, and Chow was from above and was preparing an attack but someone warned him where he was. Chow activated the reception. He must protect himself. He cannot give himself in the lunch. Now he understood what the mentor wanted to guide him through. He did not understand how he managed to be behind his back. Chow used a technique, a demon binding blow, but he managed to block in time. He was kindly thrown back by that attack. Although he was not badly hurt, he praised Chow's attack. And again, Chow disappeared out of his sight. He still did not understand how he managed to hide so quickly. He was angry and shouted for that stupid boy to come out and fight. But Chow did not want to fight him. He will not benefit from this. He would rather find a place to hide. He looked straight ahead and seemed to see a good place to hide. He reached that place with a sharp run. He said that the people from the training courses really know how to fight. It is better for him to wait here. It turns out that there was someone else there. Chow was very scared inside, but restrained himself and did not show it. And he said that not everyone fights well there. And the one he hit, Ma Hong, was once a scout in the Red Dragon Army, so you only made him angry with Chow's punch. Chow activated the demon beautifying punch power and asked him if he wanted to try it. He immediately began to shake his head in different directions and say that he does not want to. He wants to live peacefully. Chow told him that it was better not to fight because he was a cultured person and decided to ask him if he had seen teacher Gu Jianbo because he was told he was here. He immediately asked Chow why he was looking for him. He decided to say that it was Gu Jinbo who provoked this fight because he sent one of the students to a place where others were and they do not like each other. Chow immediately replied that he wanted to become his student that rude man began to speak so that Chow would not deceive himself, because that teacher was a simple scientist who had not advanced a single step towards his goal. Simple trash. He also said that he had some project there at the expense of 1024 secondary channels. This is all a lie for money. He told Chow to believe him, because that teacher is greedy for money. If Chow has other opportunities, then let him choose them. Chow said that he was very angry with Teacher Gu, and he believes that the teacher of GU is determined, rebellious, a pioneer who goes to his goal, regardless of obstacles. The rude man decided to ask Chow if he knew him. Chow said that he and the teacher have a long-standing correspondence, and he is determined to become his student. 
The rude man understood from this answer that Chow was not familiar with him. Chow said he was confident he could turn the new fighting style described in the article into a winning new reality. That green-haired brute saw behind Chow Mahong. The green-haired one suggested that they could pretend to be a team and start fighting, then go to the window and jump out. That way they could avoid this chaos. And suddenly Chow sees that a big leg is flying at him. A very strong kick, Chow can only think how his kick can be so fast. From that blow, Chow flew out of that rubble with great speed. Chow thought that he would think about it later, but now we need to get out of that place. He quickly began to approach and decided not to show off. Chow threw the first punch, the green dodged easily, and told him to hit faster. Chow threw another punch and he ducked and he was eating at the same time and telling him to punch even faster because the production must be realistic. Chow began to throw a lot of punches and he did not even blink but dodged all of them. He said, Chow was a little confused as to what was happening here because he was already giving his best. Chow has reached his maximum, but he hasn't hit a single blow yet. He's already seriously thinking about how such a rude person can dodge like that with such a huge speed. It's not logical at all. The one who initially wanted to beat Chow was shocked by what was happening. He didn't understand why those two weirdos started fighting, but that brute kept looking at the reaction of that former warrior to catch a good moment and said that namely, now he just caught one of Chao's punches on the move and together with him jumped out of the window of the fourth floor. Near the ground, he let go of Chao's hand so that the normal would land. At the very moment of landing, Chao's wine was very hard and Green's was extremely soft. Then he said that everything ended well and they ran away. Chao could not fathom how the brute had jumped from such a height as if it were a simple matter. Chao said that they worked well, but he doesn't even know his name, and then he would like to thank him. But you need to know his name. He began to run around the corner of the building and said that these places are full of interesting people. He is not alone. And the last piece of advice, to him, not to think about that teacher. When he went around the corner of the building, he was met by Teacher Lo. Already in a panic, he turned around and shouted at Chow to get out of his way. Chow immediately did so, abruptly moved to the side and did not interfere. The rude one was satisfied because he would now start to run away. But Chow still suspected something in him and decided to do something. As if by accident, he put his foot forward just where the rude one was running. He is rude, jumps at his leg, and due to his great speed, cannot regain his balance. Just when he was facing Ming Chow, he looked at him with indignation as if, why would he do this? Chow smiled mischievously, as if nothing personal. He just made a good joke in a funny situation and he falls hard and begins to slide forward on the ground. Teacher Lee came over and picked him up. She treated him like a child, and he told her not to do that because she would embarrass him in front of the student. Lee asked him if he is ashamed. Does he still have any dignity left? He was depressed because for him in this situation, everything turned out in the worst way. Chow, with great surprise, asked him if he is really Gu Jambo. Chow said that the photo from the official website must have been someone else. He was ashamed and said that the photo was 10 years old. He had not updated the information on the website for a long time. At that moment, Chow felt a failure that he was wrong. But he had to overcome himself and began to convince himself that no matter how much he changed, he definitely knows from his past life that he is very important. And since he is the same Gu Jianbo, he is definitely the future founder of the extreme style. And Chow said in a confident voice that he wanted to definitely decide that he wanted to be with him. Jianbo asked Chow if he would just fall behind him. He said he behaved very badly and Chow still wants to be with him. Teacher Gu was tormented by one very important question. With a serious expression on her face, she asked Jianbo why the best student who took first place among freshmen wanted him so much. He began to panic slightly. He said that they did not know him. Jianbo said that he was afraid of harming such a great talent. When Chao came to him, he said very bad things about himself, that he was the worst teacher. He said this so that Chao would not want to take such a mentor. Chao confirmed that teacher Gu Jianbo criticized himself as much as possible, so much that it took his soul. 
And after Gu Jianbo criticized himself so much, Chao still wants to be with him. Does she not understand what his motives are? Gu also asked him if he might have masochistic tendencies. But at one point, she understood everything. Chao is a relic exalted, and Gu Jianbo is attracted to just those. She thinks that is the reason why Chao wants to be with him. She told teacher Gu to introduce Chao to everyone, because surely he doesn't want Li Fei's tragedy to happen again. Gu told her not to worry. He wouldn't let the tragedy happen again. With that, the issue was resolved and teacher Li went about her business. Gu asked Chao what made him want to join him because of the 1024 Minor Channel Project, and he called Chao after him to reveal the truth about that project. For some time, they walked through thick thickets. They came to the old training building of the Faculty of Martial Arts. Now there is a dormitory for professional development courses. Chao did not know that there was this old building in the agricultural park. They entered the middle and Gu opened the old rusty gate. Chao was surprised that the place he was taking him to was in the basement. Gu warned him to follow him clearly because that basement had not been renovated for a long time. Chao became more and more interested in which place they would come to. When they went down to the very bottom, they came to a huge door. To enter there, Gu began to enter the access code. As soon as he entered it, that big door began to open and dust from ancient times began to pour out of it. Gu said that the 1024 project starts here. He said that actually the head of that project was not him, but Zong Ye. Chao had never heard of such a person before. Gu began to tell about Zong Ye. He was the dean's son in the third year. He was a genius who crossed the heaven level. Gu took out a large bundle of documents about that project, and Chao was very interested in what happened to that person now. Gu said that this person was dead. He died during the first experiments of Project 1024. At the time, just like Gu now, he held this book in his hands and then convinced Gu and Ying Ji for them to start that project. Chao was a little wary when he heard this information. As a result, he himself took part in the experiment, then received internal injuries of the whole body in the end in one of the experiments. And due to a sharp jump in the mental index, he became abnormal and died. Because of his death, Yingzi decided to leave and join the Beast Spirit Integration Experiments, and Gu vainly stayed and headed the 1024 project. When Chao opened the document about that project, he was no joke scared. Gu could not find a way to increase the energy absorption and absorption rate of the secondary channels by 300%. He believed that he had made a breakthrough in the experiment, and the photo showed real horrors. As a result, all three volunteers who participated in the experiment became insane due to the microtoxins in the drug. They experimented many times on the safety of the drug, but were unable to remove the toxin that led to insanity. His friends believed in him, but he ruined their future. Gu said that he lost all his friends. That project is brilliant but is a real curse. Therefore, he does not want and will not take him as an apprentice and will not restore that project either. Chao waited until he calmed down a bit. Chao asked him if he seriously told him that he would not take him as a student. Chao shocked mentor Gu with this question. Chao began to sniff and smelled many different aromas. These were different types of herbs. Chao then pointed out that the enhancement devices were in very good condition and there was no dust on them. He assumed that someone often wipes that equipment. In addition, he noticed that the smell of blood and sweat on the equipment belt was quite fresh. That equipment was not at all similar to the long abandoned one. He told Gu that he would admit that he only pretended to shut down the project and disperse all the students, and actually continued to secretly experiment on himself. Gu vehemently began to deny everything Chao had said and told him not to talk nonsense. Chao now knew for sure that he doubted his actions and therefore dismissed the disciples. Therefore, he decided to carry out the will of his deceased friend on his own. Because, as they say, at the very end of life, the biggest fire is lit. Gu became emotional. He said that that project had destroyed a lot of talented people, and now Chao appeared. At first he tried very hard to follow the path laid by his friend, but this is what came out of it. 
Chow urged Gu to start working together to turn his fallen friend's dreams into a brighter future. He said that when he looks at Chow, he has memories of them. But suddenly he shouted and said whether they were all out of their minds, because he doesn't do that. Chow then told him that if he did not take him as a student, he would tell everything that was happening here to Teacher Lee. Gu was very angry that some boy appeared in his life and started to disturb him. That's how thanks to the abuse of Teacher Lee's influence, Chow successfully entered the 1024 project. Under the guise of an old flame bearer, Chow was able to convince the Yan Clan Corporation, Mr. Ning Shi and Luo Wu, to support Project 1024. Thus, the issue of equipment resources and funding was resolved in one day. With the help of primal healing, Chow successfully replaced Gu as a test mouse in Project 1024. These procedures took a toll on health, and thanks to Chow, the dagger dancer, who could only light up for a moment, was saved from his fate. It was already Experiment 575. At that stage, they added 35% snake venom to the gene reagent. Gu kept a complete documentation of all actions during the experiments. Suddenly, on a special scoreboard, it was revealed that 100% had been achieved. After 500 experiments, Chow happily asked Teacher Gu what they finally succeeded. Gu was delighted he saw 61 flashes. This is the same as 61 open psionic energy channels. Chow was also delighted. Gu called him to try the strength indicator sooner. Chow came out of a special capsule and stood facing a large target. With lightning speed, he approached the target and delivered a powerful blow. Chow delivered the next blow and it was even a little stronger than the previous one. He threw a lot of punches and was very focused. His punches were just lightning fast. It was able to deliver 284 blows at an insane speed, and the power of each blow was 15 times greater than at his school. And the secondary psionic channels were stable, and the effect was long-lasting. Next, they tested the speed of running 100 meters. It was fantastic. He ran it in 7 seconds and continued to run like that for several miles. They were happy and rejoiced with joy that they had succeeded in everything. And suddenly, Chow receives a notification that he has completed the first stage of the task, and his strength has begun to reach one-tenth of the strength of the strongest clans. Thanks to Chow Gu's help, he discovered that method five years earlier, and thereby damaged his health less and will live longer and continue to contribute. Chow was given a reward of 10,500 points, and most importantly, 12 of his main channels were restored. Chow saw that after he became exalted, the functions of the sparks also changed. Now there is a graph there, which talks about the quality of the completed task, and now it is desirable to do everything with five stars. Immediately after that, he received a message about the second stage. He really liked what was said there. Next, he must use a new style to defeat 300 students who are at his level of strength. They should be warriors with different styles. Chow should raise the question of how to find a better fighting style. And he has to start convincing students that the best style is extreme style. After completion, it will be possible to open a special spreadsheet to see how well the task was completed. And the reward will be more than 10,000 points and the restoration of 12 main channels. As they embraced in joy, Chow understood somewhat that he had to fight the first star's offerings for the task. The problem is that there are not 300 such soldiers. But he realized that he would need to deal with everyone in the Argrarn, and then he would go to other universities and be able to convince the entire military school. Suddenly another message came. This was the third stage, an extreme confrontation. There you had to kill a lot of monsters, a thousand simple and a hundred super monsters. There was a very good reward. It was connected to the main channels. Chow was very happy and in such a good mood that he hugged Gu very tightly that he was already developing the secondary channels. But as they developed, he would restore the main channels. Gu was confused and when Chow let him go, he said that Chow hugged him for three whole minutes. Chow said it was because he was overexcited. Gu Jianibo said that he is also very excited, but Chow can go. They will take a break for a few days. 
But Chow said he is full of energy and ready to continue. Suddenly Gu remembered something and it was quite important. Chow asked him what happened. He said that he completely forgot to tell him that today there was a fight between the freshmen of the Faculty of Animals and the Faculty of Arts, and the faculty needs everyone to participate. It started at 9 in the morning, and now it's 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Chow immediately changed his face and became serious, and in a serious voice told him. He was a little embarrassed and said that he didn't do it on purpose. He asked Chow that when he went there, when he met Teacher Lee, to tell her that Gu would visit her today. Chow began to dress and was smiling, he told Gui, that he had already done so much for Longchen, and then Cao would take care of everything. As Chow was leaving, he stopped and told Gu not to forget to style his hair and change into a red suit. Poor Gu didn't know what Chow was saying this to. He jumped from branch to branch with very fast movements. He was lucky to find this shortcut of the rear door of the cultivation center. He hopes that the competition has not yet begun. Suddenly, something interesting looked at him with a big yellow eye as he ran through the forest. Chow, being very alert, also noticed it. It was a very unique animal, a special ghost leopard. The very first thing Chow thought about was how he would harvest it and break it into eight pieces, because he was very interested in seeing its internal organs. And suddenly Chow turned his head straight, and in front of him was a girl hanging upside down on a branch. Chow was in a stupor. He did not understand why he did not feel such a large and magnificent aura. But when he looked closely, he saw that the aura was decently hidden, so he was mistaken. But seeing a certain badge on her, he asked her if she was from the Faculty of Beasts. Suddenly she jumped down from one branch to another and almost caught Chow with her foot. Then she suddenly jumped to another branch, and Chow almost fell from the one he was standing on. She looked somehow evil. He could not understand why. And suddenly, at one moment, the two branches on which they were standing crack, and they both fall down at the same time. The height was quite high, but Chow landed without any problems. That girl and her beast also landed on their feet. Then Chow was happy because he remembered the task. He immediately asked her if she wanted to add him as a friend, then they could practice later. But she just turned sharply and ran away. Chow was very disappointed, and She realized at that moment that he had definitely missed the competition. When that girl and her animal were walking, someone from the side told her that today she showed herself very well, but you should not run around the territory of the faculty recklessly. You can invite trouble. And she answered him that there is one person who smells delicious. The man who was walking with her asked her if he smelled very good. She said again that it smells very good and must be very tasty. She had a great desire to do something. These thoughts made her salivate. And she said that she must eat it and she had very sharp teeth. It was the center for improvement and various competitions are held here. Chow came. Someone told him that he did come, but the freshman competition was over. Chow walked into that hall and immediately had a question. Did they lose? Teacher Lee stood in the center and was thinking about something. Chow looked at the wounds of his teammates and remembered that someone had said that there were no strong students in the Faculty of Beasts this year, and that the martial arts faculty should easily win. But somehow it didn't happen. But Chow became confused by something else. Even if they had lost, why were their emotions so sad now? He decided to try asking Duan Luan what happened here. Chao put a hand on his shoulder, but he jerked it away. Chao then thinks that Duan Luan is emotionally broken. Shouldn't it be that even the four heavenly kings lost? He definitely understands that there are no normal reasons for that huge defeat. Teacher Lee saw him and came over. She said that he had finally arrived. Then she said that she is not his mentor so that she cannot talk to him for a long time, but there is something. Chow abruptly interrupted her and said that he had something very important to say. Chow emotionally began to tell that they had succeeded in the intermediate channels in the 1024 project, that everything was working stably, and the mentor Gu was glad that he got drunk and made him listen to stories. Suddenly she became interested in what he was saying. Chow got a little carried away. And he said that Teacher Gu carried his friend's dream on his shoulders all these years and continued to promote the 1024 project. 
but his love for Teacher Lee did not change. But for this reason, he put many poles on himself. She couldn't believe that he made himself the subject of an experiment. Chow said that Teacher Gu conducted dangerous surveys and feared that Teacher Lee would be very worried if she knew about him. He was also afraid that he would not be able to make her happy. That's why he didn't tell. And Teacher Gu said that during the project, he was all in it, and when it was over, he would be completely hers. She was a little confused and asked Chow why that fool kept this information from her. And as a result, said Chow, Chow then suggested that she visit him. He just needed it. And she asked, is he still drunk? He said that he is probably already in a better condition. And if they came, then let her beat him a little because he is a very big coward. Then he will definitely tell the truth. And she went somewhere and Chow thought that this was all he could do for Gu. Then everything was in his hands. Chow said that the martial arts faculty lost, but why is there such a sad atmosphere? Ji Fei said to Chow that he didn't understand. He didn't fight her in the arena, that he didn't know what she did. This time the competition was such that the loser had to be eliminated. And at that moment, she was left alone from that department of animal management, and there were seven of them from the department of martial arts. He said she beat them all in a row, though it wasn't exactly the worst. And what is more terrible is how she did it. Zi Fei said that she didn't look like a student, and in general, she didn't even look like an ordinary person. Her fighting style was new to them. She fought like a beast. She doesn't even have teeth like humans. And during those competitions, she used them more than once, and it was simply terrible. Her behavior simply drove them all into a stupor and horror. It was a real wild beast that fiercely hated people like them. Chow was a little confused, but he guessed that he had just met her in the forest. Shi Fei asked Chow if he already knew Wu, and Chow said that he had just learned her name from him. Chow said he met her in the forest, but he didn't get to train with her. And Ji Fei really advised him not to contact her in a deserted place, because she might lose control and disperse. Chow told Safei not to worry, as he had already started to improve his psionic power of all body organs, everything would be under control. But Safei had something else in mind. He said that she was not like all of them, she was found in the sand of ghost leopards. It is something like in a fairy tale about a boy who was raised by a group of wolves, and she grew up with ghostly leopards. Safei said, if Chow follows the news, he should know that five years ago, a scouting party of the Red Dragon Army found the lost city of Bai Jinsheng outside of Longcheng. The lost city of Bai Jinsheng was abandoned in the depths of the forest. For many years, the inhabitants of that city had no connection with Lucan and almost became savages. The case of Vu Vu, a special search and rescue group found her in that cave, and by that time she had already become the leader of that group. Her intelligence is quite high. She learned to write and read in one year. She also mastered social norms and reached the level of her peers. And a year later, she mastered the 12-year school program. Connection she has with animals. The faculty of animals took her in without special selection. She is their trump card. Safei asks Chow if he now realizes how talented she is. Chow said that after he told him, he wanted to train with her even more. Safei was disappointed because he told all this to show the difference in strength. After that, Chow sharply slapped him on the shoulder. Chow told him not to worry because Chow wasn't going to look down on him because of his weakness. He had a certain plan that at competitions he would defeat his opponents alone with the help of a new style and at the same time he would advertise it and thereby complete the task. And now he needs to somehow agree with Vu Vu about a joint training battle. Suddenly his phone rang. No one called him for a long time and he accepted the call. It was Suesha who called. She told him to quickly come to the Faculty of Resources because there is a very important matter there. Chow was happy at her call and said he would come soon. Chow told Safei to take care of his wounds. He said that he knows for sure that the faculty of beasts will soon become the most powerful profession. This is a low-temperature room of the faculty of resources of the agrarian university. Chow got to that place pretty quickly. When he entered there, attention was immediately drawn to him. Everyone who was there began to greet him. They all knew him. Chow also greeted everyone. 
For the sake of resources for the 1024 project, Chow sold himself to the resources department. He came there for two hours every day, and along the way helped everyone and gave advice, and thus eagerly received contribution points. When he got dressed, he thought that he would need a lot of rare resources for the next stage, so he needed to try hard today. He quickly finished changing and went to the common room. Ning Sueishi was already waiting for him there. She said that Grandfather and all the professors had gone to discuss support for the Western Front, and she will be responsible for Chao and others in this harvest. She said that the Western Front has advanced a lot and it is a very good opportunity for freshmen. She asked Chao that he didn't seem to get a place. She asked why so and suggested that she nominate him on behalf of the Faculty of Resources? Chow shook his head and said no need, because then he would take someone else's place. He said he would deal with it himself. She emphasized that the strong always have advantages. These can be artifacts from the outside world, or familiar strong people as well. He should use all opportunities. Chow was ashamed and said that there are always boundaries that should not be crossed. She said that the conversation would wait until the evening. When Grandpa came, he would also talk to Chow about that topic. She asked him if he had been tested for defects. At first, Chow did not understand what this could mean. He asked what the spark was. This is a method that will help improve armor against a certain monster. Chow thought that with his new sense, he should be fine. After a second's pause, he said that he could try. Sueshi looked around and saw that they had come anyway. They were students from the Faculty of Animals. He said that their professor told them that she was in charge here today. This year, their freshmen almost lost the competition. They came to ask for help from her and her students to understand the reason why this happened. She said it's good that they came. This is Brother Meng Chao. He is the best in the resource department. He will definitely help them find the reason. He began to thank them that they agreed. Chow said the first thing to do is put the bodies on the operating table. While that student was placing the bodies of the monsters, Chow asked Sueshi what she was doing. In this way, she wanted to show him that no one respected his faculty, and everyone respects their faculty. Chow was a little shocked by what she said. In a moment, the monsters are lying on the operating tables. That student thought that he has never heard of that brother Meng Chow, but he looks quite serious, so he hopes that he is a good specialist. Chow said they would start by dissecting the silver fire lion. Chow said that the stomach of that monster was bloated, and there was a dangerous gas in there. When they started to cut it open, it would explode and damage the internal organs, and they wouldn't be able to find out anything. Next, Chow showed where to pierce with a needle to prevent an explosion. After that, you can start the autopsy. And after that, he said that you can start the autopsy. The other python monster wasn't very valuable. It just needed to be cut so that the impact point was visible. That student thought that Brother Meng Chao was a very good specialist. Chao quickly dealt with everything and went to another monster. They all approached the third monster. It was a rhinoceros. He bent down to one of the wounds to sniff. And I thought that this is not normal. The first thing that came to his mind was to check the temperature in the middle. He was surprised because the competition ended three hours ago and the temperature inside is more than 30 degrees. How can this be? Then Chow started some procedure and began treating the monster with some substance. He realized that he needed to start work as soon as possible. He concentrated and began to work at lightning speed. There was a large wound from a strong blow. Chow thought it was a heartbreaking hammer blow. The abnormal temperature is explained by the fact that this influence also has a heating effect. Chow said that among the freshmen in the martial arts department, there were not many who possessed such strength. He guesses that that rhinoceros was killed by one of the four heavenly kings. It must have been Duel Luan. He could tell from the way his forehead was that Duel Luan was standing right in front of him. Chow realized that he could have used many different techniques, but he used the hammer strike. But he clearly understood that it took a long time to accumulate energy to kill such a monster in one go. Chow decided to ask who owned that monster. The boy raised his hand and said that it was his rhinoceros. Chow asked him if he wanted to use the rhinoceros to perform a critical strike, a wild dash. 
He guessed that the student wanted to end the fight with one blow and take Duan Lian out of the game. Unfortunately, he is also a beginner and the accumulation time is a little longer. This is the moment of Duan Lian's accumulation of strength. Chao said that he had just finished accumulating energy and sent the rhinoceros into battle. But Duan just at that moment had also completed the accumulation and his superpower burst out. When he saw that terrible technique, he panicked and abruptly stopped his technique. And then he tried to bow. As a result of this, he did not strike any blow and did not start to run away. And as a result, he was killed by that blow. That poor student said that everything was like that. Chow told him how he should have done better, and he even had a very good chance of winning. For a second, he felt strong. Chow added that that rhino weighs several tons. If it flew into Duan at a speed of 60 miles per hour, it would definitely not be happy. Chow entered into excitement and said that Duan would be lying under the rhinoceros, and he could take advantage of the moment and bite him. That poor student thought that Chow was really wild and the other students shouted from behind so that he would give them some advice. Chow smelled the fresh balls and said that they were lining up one at a time. Next, he looked at another beast. That demonic pig received many wounds, but the critical one was a blow to the eye. He understood from the technique that it was Sun Ya from the martial arts department who did it. Chow described this situation as Sun Ya opening channel 80, her body moving as much as possible. It was a tense struggle due to which she covered that monster with hundreds of chaotic strikes. Chow said that at first she could send the pig attacking with its head down, without stopping. Sun Ya knew the characteristics of a demonic pig and was forced to retreat to the corner of the ring. But the owner of the pig panicked and ordered her to dodge the blows, and the pig was not created for this from the very beginning. He said that Sun Ya noticed the weakness of that pig and gave a fatal blow to the left eye. Chow told her that she could use her beast characteristics to, if not defeat Sun Ya, at least wear her down for her comrades. In teamwork, when the enemy is strong, it is good to have fewer defeats. She realized her mistakes and thanked him for his advice, and he received 12 points of contribution. In this case, the cave demon spider was killed. It was Jian Rui's work. He has very strong legs. They are like two tomahawks. In addition, he wears boots with very sharp blades. It's just terrible. And that cave spider is still not very protected, but it easily cut the previous beasts in battle. As far as Chao knows, after genetic manipulation, the venom of that spider can be greatly improved. There is still a lot left in that monster's poison. Chao asked that student if he wanted to shoot poison into his legs to glue them together. That student said yes, but Chao said that the probability of success was very small because he is somehow the fastest in the faculty. That student uncertainly asked Chow, how would he act in his place in such a situation where the enemy is very fast? Chow said that he would cover the maximum area around him with that poison, which is very sticky and viscous, thus slowing down the enemy. The student said that in this way, he himself would not be able to move. Chow said that the student will not be able to walk, and the animal, the cave demonic spider, will fly on that slime. He was happy because he understood how he should now act in such situations. Those students cheered up. They realized that the martial arts faculty was not that strong, and the reason was that they had chosen the wrong tactics. And others said that if they used Meng Chao's methods, they wouldn't even have to ask Wu Wu. Still other students said that there is nothing special about the Faculty of Arts. If they follow the right strategy, they will definitely beat them in the next one. Just as they were cheering, Chow raised his hand and said that the Spirit Bee style was not a mature direction. Chow said that in relation to the super killing of the other faculty, they have more problematic moments, accumulation, expiration, and recovery issues. He again advised them to rely on the stamina of monster lords compared to warriors, so that they provoke them to use their strongest attacks, waste psionic energy, and strain the main channels. Constant use of the strongest attacks will be a very strong load on the main channels. As a result, it seems to overheat the gun and will lead to an explosion. As a result, their strength will drop sharply, then students with beasts will be able to give them a decent fight back. 
Chow told them the road to elevation is long. A couple of defeats is not a big problem. And even more so, in the future, there will be an opportunity to develop secondary channels, and then the weaknesses of your style will not be noticeable. Those students suggested that Cheo come next time and watch them crush the martial arts department, and then they will have a big holiday together. Chow said that the holiday is very good, but there is another nuance. He said that he would not like to believe that after hard training, they would still be able to defeat the martial arts faculty. Chow said that from the martial arts department, he and his mentor developed a new extreme style. Therefore, their desire to crush his faculty to the core is likely to be difficult to realize. Then one of them started reminding him that it was like Meng Chao from the martial arts department. He immediately came closer to Chao and said how good he was at harvesting and flaw detection. Why didn't he think of transferring to the faculty of animal management? This is the place where he will be able to fully exercise his powers. Ning Sueshi immediately became interested in what he would answer to that student because she also asked him to transfer to her faculty. Chao knew the mask and began to explain why he had not even thought of such a thing. Because in his eyes, controlling the beasts and directing the beast's spirit are one and the same. With his knowledge, he clearly understands all the advantages and disadvantages. But to control the beasts, you need to open an additional psychic port. This will give monsters that are good at psychic attacks an advantage. Chao said all this about the advantages and disadvantages in order to say the most important thing about the two styles. Therefore, those two styles will just be additions to the main styles in the future, so he suggests a training battle. For interest, he offered a reward of 10,000 beast coins. He said that Vuvu won seven times and he can win one against ten. They all need to defeat him alone. After that, they can get one zero 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 beast coins. They were shocked. They said it was like a joke. It is impossible for one to defeat ten, even if they attack one at a time. But if they lose, then Chow wants them to grant their faculty a place on the Eastern Front. They agreed and said that they are not afraid of any challenges from someone there. Their commander told someone to run after ten of the best students of the beast faculty and let the others raise their fighting spirit, because if they lose, he himself will go to the mentor and tell him to order them. Sueshi was very interested. She said that she would prepare the arena herself. Chao was very grateful for her help. Quite a lot of people gathered there. It was an abandoned warehouse of the Faculty of Resources. That student said, Chao, that the students who will fight against him will use any weapon and any resources in this fight. He asked Chao if he needed at least some armor or some kind of weapon. Chao said he was fully prepared for battle, but had they decided which one would go first? The girl with the big beast herself declared herself in front. Her partner instructed her to show Chao the true strength of their faculty and to try to finish the fight in three rounds. That girl told Chow that her demonic pig had been altered by chemicals and he would not be able to seriously injure her unless he used a weapon. Natiki seemed to have serious words. Chow said that there is nothing to worry about and it is better to start the battle already. She suddenly began to go on the attack, realizing that there was no need to talk. She ordered her beast to use a technique, the ram dash. That monster managed to develop tremendous speed. And in a moment, the animal rushed at him and was able to deliver a blow that sent him flying upwards. This student's friends were happy because they saw the beast hit Chao. They urged her to continue the attack. But Chao landed quite well and immediately on his feet. That student, in this situation, noticed something very strange. When seconds remained before the impact, a light appeared in his legs, from the concentration of strength in his legs. That boy noticed that he jumped back almost at the very moment of the impact. When the impact was about to take place, the speed of the beast and Chayo's speed at the moment of pushing off the ground were almost the same, so the beast just easily threw him up. He realized that Chao had a very good sense of timing. The demonic pig then continued to attack, while Chao dodged with ease. He did not feel any difficulty in this fight at all. He said that the way to meet the pig is very simple but he has many more methods to stop that beast. And he threw some powder and it immediately caught fire. At the same moment, the pig ran by him and that fire was all around her. 
The girl who was driving the animal said once again that the animal is genetically modified, and some kind of fire there will not do anything to it, because it does not feel pain. She ordered the pig to protect its mouth and head, but suddenly noticed that something was wrong. Something still got into the nose and mouth of that animal, and it started to suffocate. She understood it too. The eyes of that beast became even redder. And suddenly that beast stopped obeying her and began to behave chaotically and fell to the ground. She also sensed that her beast, because their senses were connected due to the beast control skill and she lost control of her five senses for a while. After a while, she heard the sound of a dagger. Chow put the knife to her throat. He told her, did she understand now why he didn't need a weapon? That student, the oldest among them, was in shock. He thought what was happening here. He suddenly set out to save that beast and the girl. First, he needs to seize control. He almost succeeded, he shouted to his friends to check the girl's psionic energy. They quickly began to do what the boy said, and Chow calmly stood on the side. They disconnected the control in time and saved her, she asked Chow in a weak voice. How did he do it? In his experimental style, they study secondary channels, so his senses are greatly enhanced. Therefore, when the pig attacked, he felt the air from afar and was able to understand at what moment he should use force to bow. Thanks to secondary channels, it can be faster than others. And the sudden use of force allows you to use subtle techniques that are not available to other people. Everyone present was interested in what he said. They were saying that it was possible that Meng Chao's fighting method was stronger than the strongest beast spirit strike. And others said that it is so. As for the pig he defeated, that pig ran into an explosion. Chow added another powder to the powder that exploded, the smell of that powder the pig hated. During the explosion, that pig smelled that terrible smell for her and began to panic. And Chow also stabbed her in the anus with a knife several times. She became uncontrollable. And the one who controlled her felt everything she felt, the pig in a panic and could not hear how Chow approached her. He thought that Chow was a true professional. Then he shouted, Who's next? This is also the faculty of beast care, Huang Ting. She told Chow to give her advice as well. Her beast, it was a monstrous cat. It was infamous as a reaper of men. His face and look with red eyes terrified people. Chow assessed him. All of his characteristics were perfect for killing primates in the guise of humans. And his hearing is particularly good, so this is his weak point. He has already prepared a device for that cat, an infra-scientific device. Ting told Chow to be careful, and in a moment her beast jumped off the ground with such force that it even damaged the concrete floor. Literally, in a moment he accelerated to the maximum and was already in front of Chow, ready to destroy him. Chao's previous rival, assessing the situation, she was convinced that Chow would not be able to do again the same thing as he did to her pig. And now only a moment separates Chao from a very strong blow of the beast. Wang Tian was ready to catch Chao no matter which way he would rush to dodge. She was convinced that he would definitely lose, and that hit dealt him two strong blows. Chao tried to cover only his head. This surprised Tian a bit. She thought he wasn't going to bow at all, because if it does, it will fall on the cat's sharp teeth. And that girl thought that he would not be able to hide from such a clever beast. She thought that this was definitely the end. Chow flew away from that claw strike, and that beast sensed its opponent's weakness and wanted to continue its attack with even more malice. But just at that moment, Chow attached that micro-emitter to his ear. And at that very moment, Chow activated it, and the beast felt intense pain. He fell to the ground and began to spin from side to side. Friends from that department of animal management could not understand why the animal suddenly stopped attacking and fell to the ground. Cheo's light armor was damaged, but he calmly retrieved the ski knife. Wang Tian was also paralyzed. Just like her beast, her friends yelled at her to keep controlling her beast as Chao was coming towards her, but she didn't hear them. Chao calmly approached her and put a knife to her throat. She started to cry because she saw him coming towards her, but she couldn't do anything. She just stood in one position while Chow said that he had won. The commander of their team suddenly began to intercept the signal. Meanwhile, Huang Tian lost consciousness and began to fall. 
Her friends quickly started running to her to give first aid. In one moment, when the commander almost succeeded in intercepting the control of the beast, he felt something. When he connected to the beast, he felt the same sharp pain in his head as that beast and Juan. It is a great effort of change to cancel that connection with the beast in order to suffer. He approached the beast, which continued to suffer from pain, and saw something. He took out a micro sound transmitter from his ear. Chow was standing nearby and that commander asked him in surprise when he managed to put it there. And in a moment he was horrified because he realized that Chow had specifically given the demonic cat a blow and at that moment had placed the emitter there. But how did he know he would avoid a devastating claw strike? Chow removed his shirt to reveal light scratches. He said he could control the hair on his legs, so he had no trouble avoiding the claws. The students started to get angry. They said that what kind of skill is it to just use one trick? Chow smirked and told them if they thought so, then let them all attack at the same time. Did they say he was so confident? And others took it as an insult, that he underestimates them and considers them weak? Elder Fan said that Chow wants to take advantage of the situation of one against the group to gain fame even if he loses, and thereby humiliate their faculty. Chow just laughed at his words and said that he was thinking too much because Chow would definitely win. And he reminded them all that this was just an academic exchange. Regardless of who wins, he won't say a word about this situation that happened today. Commander F.A. told his friends that the remaining eight men who were ready to fight stepped out of line and experienced Meng Chow's extreme style. Chow stood before them, already out of his light armor and ready to begin. The only thing is that he already had pistols in his hands. All the students were very angry with him because he humiliated their faculty. They wanted to teach him. It was something incredible. One guy with a bare torso is calmly standing and huge beasts are fiercely attacking him. Chow, with a smile on his face, raised the hands in which he held the pistols and said cautiously. In one moment, he started firing dozens of shots into the mountain. Commander Fu was surprised and did not understand what he was doing. Suddenly, one light bulb on the ceiling went out. In a moment, all the light bulbs in that room were broken. The tired room became completely dark. Those students dramatically slowed down their attack. They were thinking how did he manage to break all the light bulbs. They told each other to be careful and not to make sudden movements. And Chow was already standing in complete darkness, smiling. Now is his time to act. With lightning speed, he jumped up. He managed to jump up to the very ceiling of that high room. And in one moment, amidst the total darkness in the air above, he opened fire with his pistols, and the room was filled with sharp explosions of light from the shots. As he fell, he shot continuously at such a height those animals could not reach him. His first shots were to illuminate the room, and the next ones had a clear goal. He aimed at the crystals that were located on the heads of the beasts. As soon as he knocked the crystal on his head, the beast lost control. The student shouted that he couldn't control his demonic pig. Literally in a moment, another student of the faculty of animals shouted that his python was also not under control. What happened next was even more shocking. The python of broken blades and the demonic pig began to fight each other. Commander F.A. was horrified to realize that Chao's target was the transmitters. Next, Moto's turtle struck the cave demonic spider with its tail. Chow was pleased his plan had worked perfectly. Suddenly, one of the students shouts that he can't control his wolf, and another, having lost control of the frog, he shouts for them all to watch out for it to explode. All the animals got out of control. Students began to run away so that those beasts would not harm them. Now Chow stopped. He stood aside and thought that everything was ready. As a result, all the animals began to fight among themselves, and he enjoyed the result of his plan. Three minutes passed, and when the noise of the battle of the beasts subsided, the emergency light turned on. When the smoke from the battle began to clear, a large mountain became visible in front. Chow was sitting on the top of that mountain which had eight animal bodies. They are all completely intertwined. Captain Fu approaches him. He said that he understood why he decided to fight alone against everyone. Use the darkness to destroy the control crystal to allow the monsters to spiral out of control, then used chaos to turn their numerical advantage into a disadvantage. 
Even this battle location was specifically chosen to create the conditions for that plan to be carried out. Captain Fu glanced at Chow and thought that he had calculated everything from the very beginning of the training. Is this boy 18 years old? One of the students of the Faculty of Beasts said that according to the rules of the Battle of Attrition, he is not our opponent. Chow told them that he really wasn't 100% sure that he could defeat 10 Beast Management Faculty Specialists in a row. As they listened carefully, Chow told them that they were all really very strong. They were all nervous because he outwitted them. Captain Fu said he was more interested in something else. Those transmitters specially made so that they cannot be destroyed. So how does he do it? Chow smiled and said that if three shots hit the same point, then those transmitters are not that strong. They were all thrown into a serious shock. That three times at one point is already too much. There are things that simply cannot be done. Captain Fu said it was not possible at all because it was completely dark. He could not even see his fingers. It doesn't matter what level his shooting level is, it's just not possible. Chow said that he is right because most people are not capable of such a thing. The sensation of nerve endings and muscle strength were significantly improved. After that, everything became possible. Fu wondered, is this an experimental style? This fighting style is very different from the beast spirit style. She asked, is the experimental style really as unique as it says? Chow says whether he is extraordinary or not extraordinary and suddenly starts running towards her. He came up and says that they can try and check everything themselves. He says that if they all join the next experiments in Project 1024 as volunteers, then everyone can learn some methods of improving the secondary channels. They all wondered what he wanted to teach them about the experimental style. And what did they think that he just wanted to beat them and brag, or to earn monster coins and go to the front? With strange faces at that moment, they all said, Is it not true? He says that they really misunderstood him. They should ask the graduates of the ninth school, then they will understand everything. He is the kind of person who looks at money like shit. He is also not interested in fame and popularity. He is a person who is detached from earthly interests and will restrain himself only to make his contribution. Now his only desire is to communicate with his fellow students today, and tomorrow with his comrades in arms to improve together. He understands that in this materialistic and frivolous society, his words sound a little impudent. The doors of the advanced training class of the Faculty of Martial Arts are always open to them. If they come, he promises that he will be as honest as possible with them. For one day, it was just too much for those students. They no longer knew how to react to everything Chow said. Captain Fo, after hearing this, began to think that he was asleep. He beat himself in the face and said that he must wake up. Chow went on to say that the experimental one enhances 1,024 secondary channels, which in no way conflict with the main eight channels found in the brain. They were all begging him to stop telling them that they couldn't bear to listen to the benefits of that style anymore. When they returned to the common hall, there were many people around Chow. They were all thanking him for the interesting training. The one he defeated also thanked her very much and said that thanks to him she saw her mistakes and would correct them. The girl who fought him first also thanked her. It was a very valuable experience for her. There were already students from other faculties there. They had already heard about this event. They were delighted and at the same time could not believe it. And one of them said, That means Chao has broken Mr. Zong Ye's record. Did Ning Xueshi tell everyone to leave because the harvest work is completely finished for today? She approached Chao and said that she had seen the martial arts faculty defeat the beast faculty many times, but for them to be grateful afterwards. This was the first time she had seen such a thing. She asked Chao how he did it. Chao said with a smile that he promised to teach them the extreme style he used to defeat them. This is the canteen of the faculty of beasts. They have to celebrate the victory of the freshmen. The students of the Faculty of Animals, who did not go with the main group, discussed that their comrades had gone to defectoscopy and had not yet returned, and the other has already heard that the mentor has already ordered Commander Fin Lin for that, but he is still talking to him about something. The cook was standing in the dining room. He was told that those children would have a holiday dinner, but no one came. This is a waste of food. Suddenly, the door to the dining room opens. 
They discussed the fact that Meng Chao defeated the ten strongest students of their department, and now they are ashamed that they did not come to the holiday. That cook abruptly moved aside, as if they had not noticed him. They said that Chao took advantage of their physical and mental weaknesses, as well as their weak synchronization with the beasts. One of them could not believe it. One of them said that Chao has the best entrance score for the martial arts faculty, but it turns out that he used weaknesses, so he is not that strong. They really wanted to see him fight Wu Vu. She would tear him apart. Suddenly a voice rang out from the door. He asked if Captain Fang Lin was here. Hearing the voice, the cook turned sharply, and when he returned, he shouted, What is this? That big beast, that girl Vuvu was lying unconscious. Chow pulled him by the tail, and on his shoulder was that girl, Vuvu, who was also unconscious. He asked if this is the canteen of the Faculty of Animal Management. He saw the students standing there and asked them if they had seen Captain Fu and where to find him. He said to Meng Chao, how dare he come to their dining room and provoke them? But the other told him to calm down and look more carefully. He didn't notice at first that their leopard sister was on his shoulder. And then he noticed and shouted to his friend to look behind Chao. They were shocked. It was the ghost leopard of their woo-woo. When they calmed down, they asked Chao what he had done to her. Chao was a little confused because the student asked as if he expected Chao to be capable of anything. He told them he was just going about his business and came across her and her animal lying on the ground and immediately thought it might be food poisoning. But they still looked at him suspiciously and asked why he wanted Captain Fu. He said that when he found her on the way, he immediately wanted to take her to the animal management department, but he only knew Fu Lin. But now that he has met them, he will leave Vu Vu with them. He does not want to disturb their world. Because of this, they had nothing to say. They silently inspected it. Going back five hours, this is that abandoned warehouse. Chow answers Sueisha's question, saying that he promised to teach them that style. Sueshi questions him. What does he mean by the method he used to defeat them? Chow said that the extreme style is very powerful. All faculties will be much stronger with it. He also offered to teach her that style. Sueshi asked him what made them succeed in the experiments. Chow Yi replied yes. She is surprised because he wants to hand over such a powerful tool to his worst enemy, the Faculty of Beast Management. Chow approached the gate, which was already opening, and said that that faculty was not their enemy at all. He went outside and said that their enemy was always only monsters. To this she did not say anything except that the main thing was to know what to do. Chow asked her if she could lend him the Regent Creation Room in their department and have all the necessary tools there, she said she could, but why? Because today all tasks have been completed. Chow said with a smile that he just left a note for someone and he needed to make a surprise for her. Several hours passed, night came, there was a full moon. Chow was walking along the road in the middle of the park. He thought he had made the remedy, but he wasn't sure if Vu Vu would understand his note. Suddenly there was a strange sound from the forest several times. At that moment, Chow realized that she must have understood his note. He said, be careful because he is starting to act. Suddenly, he jumped to the side with great force, as if dodging the attack. But in this situation, he attacked. As soon as he was in the forest, he immediately launched several metal rods right in front of him. They were flying fast and there was a shadow that they were going to fall into. But that shadow maneuvered and all the rods got stuck in the tree. But he still had a lot of them. He thought that she was moving fast. Next, he needed to climb higher. He strongly pushed off the branch and flew up. He began to launch many of those rods in different directions, but he energized them. Thanks to this, he wants to understand where they are hiding. She hid between the thick branches, and when she saw what he was doing, she became very wary. And suddenly she quickly jumped up to dodge the rod, but carelessly fell under another rod. Thanks to the improved performance, Chow could tell by the smell of blood that he had entered her. Thanks to his improved sense of smell, he quickly found where she was. He quickly came to that place and saw the rod covered in blood. The depth with which the rod entered the forest is not great, which means that in front of the tree it was slowed down by a target in which it was about to hit. But after looking a little closer, he saw that it was not so. 
that the enemy specially relaxed his muscles and accepted that blow. At that very second, enemies flew at him from the darkness. And it is at this moment that Chao realizes that it is a trap. Just at the same second, huge claws were already flying at him. Chao was taken aback. He turned sharply and started to see if anything could be done. At the very last moment, he manages to avoid the main blow. When he patched it up, that blow was directed into a tree, and he was even more surprised. Because they were poisonous claws, and they left such a huge mark on the tree. As soon as Chao flew a little away from that beast, he immediately saw Wu Wu herself flying behind him. She wanted to grab him, but he managed to dodge. Chao landed on the ground and said that she must have received his message. She had already mounted her tiger and was charging into the attack, and said that she had received ten messages. Chao said that she should be the strongest in the Agricultural University's combat major. She only needs to adopt an experimental style, and this greatly affects its spread. And she shook her head and said that she was the strongest. She said that when she eats it, then she herself will be stronger. And immediately after that, she rushed at Chao with her beast. Chao abruptly took out the metal rods, but she wanted to stir him. She moved his hand to the side, and because of that, he stuck those rods into the tree. When they came face to face, Chao said that it would be more fun for her to fight at full strength. Just then, her beast came close to help her, but Chao did a front somersault and jumped back to a safe distance. When he did a somersault, his cloak flew off him and got tangled on Vuvu, and Chao activated the power, and those rods began to glow and fly around him. His cloak remained on her head. She was very angry. She tore that cloak and cried out that she must eat it. Chao said, This is the feeling when you fight with your own kind. Those metal rods started flying around him, and he said he would let her try his extreme style. And now Chao began to attack. He used an extreme style technique, Water Dragon. She turned back sharply and thought that he was not an ordinary student. He flew at her with great speed and those rods were in front of him and in his hand. In a second, the branch on which she and her beast were standing was cut into several pieces. But that beast had a special tail. He controlled it very skillfully. And as Chao fell down after his attack, he struck him with that sharp tail. But Chao said that his water dragon was not that easy to pierce. He twisted in the air and said that now it was his turn and kicked. At that very moment, Wu thought that this was Cheo's weak point, but he had planned for her to start attacking him right at that moment. Just in this situation, her beast could not interfere with him, and she flew right at him, and he fired several rods into her. When she saw that those rods were flying at her, she realized that she was in a bad situation. She was preparing to take that blow. In order to repel the attack with the least damage, she activated the protection on her hands. Just as all of the rods flying at her ran out, her defenses were destroyed and her arms took some damage. She looked at him with evil eyes and licked the blood from her hand. Chao said that her corrosive claws were not so strong. She became angry, even more so, and sharply tore off her white shirt. Chao froze in a stupor. He did not understand what she wanted to do next. Suddenly, right after that, she grabbed her top and started tearing it off herself, too. She almost defeated him with this alone, but he managed to shout stop and ask her why she does it. Did she say that he can undress and she can't? Chow said that there must be a good appearance. She answered him that these are all their human problems. She activated the caustic claws again and said they continued. Suddenly, she and her beast suddenly began to move in different directions. Chow crouched sharply to dodge the beast's attack and thought it was an obvious move. But as soon as the beast flew over him, he noticed in front that something was approaching with great speed. She became faster. He could not see her in time due to the attack of the beast. He understands that from a direct strong attack, get a strong wound, and she is already in front of him with all her malice. But at the last moment, Chao did something and dropped sharply from the level where her hands were, which she wanted to apply to the level of her chest. He was saved by the fact that he thought he could hang on a branch, but it just flew by. Chow thought that this was very dangerous. He told her it was good that he managed to avoid the blow quickly because the consequences were serious. While he was hanging upside down, she told him to be more serious. He replied that he was very serious. While he was hanging like that, the tip of the gun that he was hiding from her flashed at him. 
Wu Vu's mood immediately rose because she saw him, and now she knows why Chao is so calm. Immediately, he and the beast began to change their positions for the next attack. Chao was embarrassed because he had not yet climbed down from that branch, and they had already begun to act. In the next moment, Vu Vu and the beast were already attacking him simultaneously from two sides. Her plan was to take the gun from him, but his protection did not allow her to do it. Yi Chao threw both of them to a safe distance with a powerful energy blast. Direct attacks of this kind do not work on him. And then he says, what exactly now let them be careful? He uses another technique from the extreme style, the unique dragon cry. After his previous defense, she flew up and was now falling on him and wanted to attack. She shielded herself from his rods again by covering her arms with armor, but that wasn't her main plan. She flew at him from above, against the rod, and her beast from below. At the last moment somehow, Chao was able to move to the side and they flew at each other. This is the perfect moment to use the gun. Chao activated his standing super firepower and began to take aim. He was already planning to end this battle. Before the shot, he said that her beast with its transmitter was in his sights. Meanwhile, when he focused on the transmitter and the beast, she managed to sneak behind him. Chao pulled the trigger, but the shot didn't go off. He was very surprised. And literally a moment after that, she was already on top of him and delivered a very strong kick. It was a very strong blow. Chao flew downwards with lightning speed. When it hit the ground, there was a huge explosion. The blow was so powerful that Chao sank into the ground up to his chest. But he slowly got up and said that it was fast. At the same moment, thanks to his sense, he will feel a blow of great force approaching him from behind. Miraculously, he manages to sit down and avoid major damage. He quickly jumped to the side to assess the situation, but Wu Wu calculated the moment and Chao could not get away from her. She was so lightning fast that she was practically invisible. She, like a real tiger, attacked him from behind and bit his neck. After such an attack, Chao fell to the ground and did not move. She took one step towards him and did not come any further. Wu Vu told him that he shouldn't pretend. She has a good handle on her powers and won't bite him to death. Chao raised his hands and said that he was very sorry. He sat down and asked her if she attacked him in order to disable his gun. She said it was all right because she knew he could destroy the transmitter with a shot. She tells him to obey her. She will be the leader and he will help her. She won't eat him and they will work together. Then they will take all the people and eat them all together. Chao said that such an important matter would be better discussed tomorrow, and now he needed to save his life. And then Chao removes the sticker from his neck. He intended to save her life. When she saw it, she was shocked and immediately felt sick. In a moment, she just started falling to the ground. She was lying on the ground and did not understand what was happening to her. She could not even move. Chao walked up to her and showed her the fake skin he had stuck on his neck. It is used to treat burns and wounds. The blood she saw was artificial blood, but he added various toxins and some poison to its composition. But he told her not to worry because he had medicine with him. Chao injected her with that medicine and said that with her physical fitness, after a good night's sleep, she would be fine. The poison wouldn't do her any harm. She was almost asleep and told him for the gun. Chao said it was a trap to get her to relax and bite him. In fact, he did not plan to use weapons at all, and according to the rules, you can't use weapons outside the arena. Her eyes closed and she thought that he was a cunning person, but she would not leave it at that. But at the end, she growled loudly like a real beast. She fell asleep and Chao was left to deal with her beast. Just at that moment, that tiger sneaked up and started attacking Chao from behind. Chao sensed it and said that humanity has spent millions of years improving the brain. And he abruptly began to turn around and said, why not use it? He used a powerful blow right on the face of that beast. After losing contact with Vuvu, Vu, his combat power was greatly reduced. It was a very strong blow. It left a big mark on his face. Immediately after it, Chao delivered another blow from below. From that blow, the beast flew up and Chao jumped after it with lightning speed. Chao him began to beat that beast. He was unable to oppose him. He gave him another devastating uppercut. He didn't even strain when fighting him. It was very easy for his level. And when he was in the air again, 
Chow sent him to the ground with a very powerful kick. It was a similar blow that Vuvu Vu had hit him with, but ten times stronger. As a result, that beast turned off and lay next to his Vuvu. Vu. Chow stood in front of them and thought that it would be better to put some clothes on her or people might misunderstand. He took the beast by the tail and put it on his shoulder. He needs to take it to the dormitory, but he knows where it is, so he needs to find F.A. Lin. Outside the old training building of the Faculty of Martial Arts, Chow looked at the phone and was horrified because it was already one o'clock in the morning. For the sake of spreading the experimental style, he works a lot. Suddenly he heard many different voices in front. There were teachers and students there. They were dressed in the combat uniform of the Red Dragon Army. There they said that they had to hurry because there was a war. It was Brother Ma. He saw someone approach him. It was Meng Chao. Brother Ma told his companions to go. He would catch up with them because he needed to talk to Ming Chao. Chao took the opportunity to wish them luck. Chao asked him if he was going back to the military unit. Brother Ma said yes, because the attack on the Western Front had intensified and the army was very exhausted. That's why soldiers like him, who are on retraining courses on a business trip, were called up. Chao asked in surprise, why didn't Teacher Gu come to fetch them? Brother Ma gave Chao a big hug and told him that, after dinner, Li Yingzi had run menacingly to Tutor Gu and tortured him there for an hour. Chao asked curiously, what for a whole hour? Brother Ma said that even when they left the office, they were holding on to the chickens and Brother Gu could barely stand on his feet, and Teacher Li looked bright and happy. He himself laughed as he told it, and Chao laughed too. Brother Ma said goodbye to Chao, saying that time was short and they would talk when he returned. Chao said that Longchen would win, he would also go to the front in a few days, and they would fight together. Ma said he would wait for Chao at the front. Chao thought that surely he was saving the peaceful life of the Longchen heroes. The Basement Laboratory of the Old Educational Building Recovery Healing Capsule 37 Chao spent the whole night in it and slept well. He felt very well and began to prepare for the tasks that await him today. He got the idea to make a joke and write a message, Brother Bo. What should you relax in the middle of important things? But when he was looking at the phone, he noticed that today they had to publish aid to the Western Front. Eight o'clock in the morning, everyone gathered at the sports ground because they have to make an important announcement. One of the four heavenly kings, Duan Lian, said that after they lost to the beast faculty, Meng Chao immediately ran to the resource faculty. He gives 80% that Chao went there because of his connections with Ning Suixi. Other students asked if it was true. Duan said yes, and not only that. He also went to a celebration organized by the Faculty of Animal Management in honor of the victory over them. Duan said that, in his opinion, he is a traitor and, in general, wants to transfer to the Faculty of Animal Management. Suddenly, Chao behind him says, why didn't he himself know that he wanted to transfer to the Faculty of Beast Management? Duan turned around and said, this is Super Chao. He asked Chao why he didn't go to his girlfriend or to that wild girlfriend, but came to them, to the losers? Duan told Chao that he thought that with the connections he had, he would transfer to the beast department the next day. And Chao said that he went to them to help them sort out the animals that had been killed. Chao thought that Duan Lian still had a very bad attitude towards him because of that incident at the rookie test. Duan angrily said that this is treason because you help their worst enemies. All the other martial arts students were almost convinced that Duan Lian's words were true. Chao said that the beast management students were not their enemies because they were not monsters. They are just rivals. Their faculties are a competition, not a war. As soon as he said this, the other students began to say that there was meaning in his words, and they thought. Duan angrily said that Chao is doing casuistry in order to justify himself and his friendship with the faculty of animal management. Suddenly, a strong wind blew on that site. All the students felt a cold breeze on their backs, as if something terrible was looking at them from behind. Duan Lian felt it as well. He felt sick and started to sweat profusely. He slowly turned around with great fear and thought that such a terrible thing could be behind him. When he turned around, he was terrified. He asked Vuvu why she came. 
Does she want to bite him again? Some of the faculty of martial arts said that she is alone and there are so many of them and they should be afraid of her. And others said that they should run away, that she would not bite them. Duan Lian shouted at her in fear not to cross the line. Duan yelled at her that this is the martial arts department and she can't do anything wrong here. And Chao asked her why she came. She held out the cloak and said that it was his clothes and let him take it. Chao said what? All the students were completely shocked by what they saw. She said that she found his clothes in the bushes yesterday at dinner and decided to sew them. She told him that he knows she doesn't like wearing clothes. It was her first time sewing. The students almost missed what they saw and heard. Chow was also very uncomfortable. He wondered why she blushed when she said that. He thinks that maybe she is doing this on purpose to put him in an awkward position. And suddenly she hits him with all her might with her fist which was holding his cloak. When Chow started to fall, she grabbed his hand. And she put his hand on her head and she was not very comfortable doing it. Chow didn't understand anything but he started stroking her and she liked it. And suddenly Chow grabbed her by the hands and quickly pulled her with him. She did not expect such a shock. He ran with her and her beast. He shouted to his fellow students that they would be back soon. Chow took her to a place where no one was and asked what she was doing in the end. Chow asked her, why is she taking revenge on him for yesterday's fight? Wu Wu said that it was not what he thought. It was just a custom of ghost leopards. One leopard lowers its head and allows the other leopard to put its paw on it. The one who lowered his head means that he obeys the king. Chow said that ghost leopard traditions are just like that. Chow remembered that among those leopards, those ghost leopards, the new king must eat the old one to inherit power. So she ate the old leopard ghost king? She shook her head and said no. And then she said that she ate not one, but two. Chow felt sick after hearing that. She ate the old king and became a leader. But there was one leopard who also wanted to become a leader and challenged her to a duel, after which she ate him too. Chow said, Then there is nothing good in the fact that she recognized him as king because she can eat him again one day. She thought about what he said. She told him not to think about it, but to watch how she sewed his clothes. And Chow couldn't help but think about that. When she looked at him, she imagined an ideal situation, that he will eventually grow old and lie in the grave, and she will be king again. Teacher Lee said that after all the counting and supervising the students, also after yesterday's competition, 21 students will be selected from the Faculty of Martial Arts to be admitted to military operations. Then she will name everyone who is on that list. First on the list, Sun Ya will be admitted to military operations. Second on the list, Sa Fei will be admitted to military action. The third on the list, Zhang Rui, will be admitted to military operations. The fourth on the list, Duan Lian, will be admitted to military action. She made a short pause and named another student. The fifth student who will be admitted to combat is Meng Chao. A shout started. All the students protested against Meng Chao. They said that he did not participate in yesterday's competition, and he is always not among them. He is always walking somewhere and spends a lot of time with other faculties. Duan Lian said that he thought so. The rich faculty of resources must have played a key role here. Did he help him well? The teacher was not going to listen to that mess and shouted for them to be quiet. She said that the list was compiled by the dean and mentors and there were considered many different factors. Everyone who got on it has great merit to be there. But she said that there is one important nuance. To achieve maximum honesty, everyone who thinks they could be on that list can challenge those who are already on it. If the challenger wins, he can go to the front instead of a student from the list. But she said that not everything is so simple because there are certain rules. First, the place, time and equipment will be chosen by those on the list. Second, after the person on the list receives three challenges, one per day, then he has the right to refuse the duel. Third, whoever is on the list can make a bet, and whoever loses must pay the monster coins and compensate for the damage. Chow sharply raised his hand and asked if the rules could be changed. She said if he doesn't want to accept the challenge, he can refuse. No one is forcing him to enter the arena. Duan Lian says that once again it appears that Chow is plotting again. Chow just laughed at that. Chow came closer to her and said, He said that she misunderstood him. 
He meant that the number of calls, maximum three in one day, is very little. He will not be able to enjoy himself. He thought this was the perfect opportunity for him. And with a smile on his face, he said that he wanted to fight ten. Duan Lian and everyone else were shocked by what he said. In addition, he said that he wants to share the latest achievements with those who are first on the list. And at the expense of the rules, he thought about what he should come up with. And he sharply pointed his hand to the place. Here at that place, let all ten of them attack at the same time. If he defeats them all, then each of them will give him three thousand monster coins. And if they defeat him, he will pay them all thirty thousand monster coins and give up his place on the list. Teacher Lee thought that Chow only had three or five main channels open. Even if he made some progress in developing the minor channels, he still wouldn't be able to fight ten students at the same time. She told Chow that warriors are not monsters, they don't destroy each other. Chow thought if she said that, then the university management knows about yesterday's situation. Chow thanked her for the advice, but he believes in his power, and even more so in the power of extreme style. Chow was ready and said, whoever wants to fight him, let them go. Duan Leon was the first to confess. He said that if so, he wanted to know what that extreme style of his was. Chow sat down and said that this was great, because now he would tell them all and introduce them to the fighting style of the future. Explain to them the secret meaning of extreme style. A mega-strong airflow was coming from Chao's preparation. Duan Lian already thought that he had really learned the inner meaning of martial arts, and in a second Chao jumped out of his seat with a maddening speed. He flew forward and activated psionic energy. Duan Lian said that it was beautiful and activated the psionic energy as well. Chao raised his fist and started yelling, This is supposed to be a super clash. Duan was already preparing for strong resistance and tensed up to withstand Chao's blow. But for some reason the collision did not happen. Chao just flew by. Duan was shocked. He didn't understand what Chao was up to. Mentor Lee was also surprised when Chao just ran past her at breakneck speed. All the students didn't understand what that strange Meng Chao was doing, and he laughed and continued to run without stopping. Duan Lian stood and was depressed. He was teaching himself to be some kind of fool. Duan just exploded with anger because he fell for Chao's tricks again. He understood what was the meaning here, that Chao did not clearly show the place where they will fight and they do not know how big that place is. Duan said that he didn't plan to fight alone against everyone from the beginning. What kind of extreme style does he want to talk about when he is a coward and just ran away? Chow ran quite far and was just walking around the park. He imagined Duane's condition. He thinks that Duan is so dumb that he must have understood the whole point until Chow was away. But suddenly someone started calling Chow. It was Bo's brother, he wrote to Chow, that he had come to see him at the university hospital. He needed to discuss something important with him. Chow was a little disappointed because he wanted to rest in peace. As Chow walked through the agricultural university campus, he noticed something. There was an interesting shop. It said that these were psionic plants. There were also various extraordinary products, Chow noticed among them, a ready-made basket of fruits that were on sale. He thought that would be a good idea. It was an agricultural university hospital. When Chow went there, he came across a sign that said Gu Jianbo would be in this ward, but someone was sneaking up behind him. He tapped him on the shoulder and asked Chow what he was doing. Then he asked again, maybe he wants to steal something here? And Chow did not recognize him and asked who he was. When Chow turned around, he was very surprised because Gu Jianbo had changed a lot. Chow said that Teacher Li was just a healing mage. Chow said, he came to see him at the same time and gave him that basket. Brother Bo looked at him in surprise and asked what it was. There were blue apples, a purple pumpkin, and mustache bananas. From this, he was interested in the orange because it is a normal color. But as soon as he wanted to take it, that orange came to life and opened its mouth like a beast. Brother Bo was frightened and said that the orange wanted to eat him. Chow laughed and said that these are the newest products developed by the Faculty of Psionic Vegetation. They are very useful. Chow said that he specially bought them for him to support him. And Brother Bo thinks that Chow is waiting for him to thank him. 
because he said that it is enough to talk about all kinds of delusions. Did he tell Chow that he likes to cause trouble? Chow said no, and doesn't Brother Bo know that Chow practiced, experimented, and studied all the time? Doesn't he understand what kind of trouble he's talking about? And Bo tells him that he wanted to fill the first ten students of his faculty? Chow smiled and said it could be arranged. Bo yelled that Chow had first driven the beast control students to despair and then exposed their secret weapon to Wu Wu in this form. He told him that if several hundred students gathered and thought to beat him, he would not be able to help him. Chow did not lose his enthusiasm and said that he would be able to escape. Extreme style was made for escape. If he wants to escape, no one can stop him. Brother Bo said that he understands his great desire to spread the extreme style as quickly as possible, but it can affect many people and should not be rushed. Chow told him that it had already been ten years since Ni Zongye's death. Do they have to wait for dozens more years for those blinded by their own interests to recognize them? He said that if they firmly believe that their way is right, then they should do their utmost to spread the extreme style. Only in this way will they be able not to dishonor the deaths of those who died during the experiments. Brother Bo said he didn't even know whether to praise Chow for his wise speech or scold him for his stupidity. Brother Bo asked Chow if he knew that after his case with Wu Wu, the Dean of Martial Arts and the Dean of Beast Control had been discussing something all day. These are two very strong people, and if they hear something bad, there will be very big problems. Chow said that he didn't think that would happen, because at the very least, Dean Zun would definitely support the extreme style. Brother Bo said, Don't let Chao think that that Dean is Zong Ye's father. It doesn't mean he will support his scandals. Bo said that Chao lives in fantasy because he wants to spread extreme style under the noses of the strongest warriors, the spirit of the beast. While Brother Bo was telling him, Chao thought that he couldn't tell him that in the past life, the agrarian rose precisely due to the extreme flow? Chao said that he believed that if they proved the reliability and strength of the experimental style to Dean Zun, then he would definitely support them. He believes that in order to spread the earthly civilization to the whole world, Brother Bo told Chao to go into the office and repeat the same thing to Dean Jing because he was already waiting for him. Chao fell into a stupor. His heart began to beat rapidly. He then shouted that he was speaking quite loudly and Dean Zun should have heard him. As for Brother Bo, Chao said that he set him up. But the brother did not mind what Chao was saying and began to open the door. Brother Bo told the dean that Meng Chao had arrived. Chao was very worried. In his head, he was formulating the thoughts that he would say to the dean. The dean said that Chao must be tired from running around the campus all day and told him to sit down and take a breath and watch TV at the same time. Chao did not understand why he was saying this, but he did not dare to contradict him. The two of them sat and watched a group of people shoot guns. The dean said those people must look very stupid. Dean said that this tactic was developed a long time ago. It was called shooting in a row. She looked stupid, but thanks to her, that army defeated another army and captured the city. So now that he's told Chow the point, does he still think the row shooting was stupid? Chow said that he understands that Long Chen has been using old styles for defense for 50 years. Just like in that video, the line formation that captured the kingdom. Chow continued to say that times changed and technology developed. Those who remained at the previous level of development were destroyed by those who changed to take into account new fighting styles and tactics. Therefore, they also cannot afford victims and cannot wait. The dean said that this is why Cao wants to challenge his fellow students so much, or is Cao so confident that the extreme style can help the martial arts faculty become stronger and defeat the beast fighting faculty? Cao said that it is, but the main goal is to defeat the martial arts faculty of Longcheng University with extreme style. The dean doubted in his words. He said that no one could do such a thing. Chao's feats simply prove that he is a genius who is more capable than Wu Wu, but do not at all prove the superiority of the extreme style. 
and he can't say how that style will affect the strongest divine level warriors. Chow listened to him carefully and said nothing. In addition, in a real fight with monsters in the wild, the extreme style needs more evidence of its effectiveness. Chow said he understood and will do more fights to perfect the extreme style, because this is one of the reasons why he was allowed to go to the front. A self-confident young man, Chow must understand that god-level warriors possess the kind of secrets he only dreamed of. And if the extreme style is going to defeat the ultra-murder, then he must meet the warriors of the heavenly level, and the fight with them will be more difficult than getting to the sky. Chow said that humanity had already reached the heavens and Longchen had a little bit left. He will try very hard to bet stronger and try very hard to show that extreme style can beat them. The dean laughed and said that he had not met students like him for a long time. Then he decided to show Chow what power is above the heavens. What is she really like? And a very strong energy began to flow from him, knocking Chow off his feet, and a huge monster appeared behind him. Chow could not believe his eyes. He seemed to be in a dream. He stood as if in space. The dean disappeared somewhere, and in front of Chow, that monster became a huge dragon. Chow realized that it must be an illusion, but there was no way he could wake up. He raised his head and saw that dragon's huge paw coming down on him. Due to the stupor in which he was, he could not bow and she fell on him with great force. Chow began not to break and began to show strength. He screamed if this is reality and even the end of the world. And that dragon added strength to its blow and drove Chow into the ground. Chow was very difficult, but he would destroy him anyway. He concentrated and there was a powerful solo explosion. The entire space around was filled with Chao's power, and that dragon's armor shook from his power. Fragments of armor were scattered around Chao, in which all the situations that had just taken place were visible. Chao was all sweaty, there was terror in his eyes, but the dean said that he didn't expect Chao to have the courage to attack his dragon. Dean said that he created that beast spirit by extracting the power of a level 8 doomsday killer. Dean imprinted a particle of him in Cheo's brain. He needs to enter a state of deep meditation and he will feel him. The Dean asked, didn't Chow want to get his support? He told Chow to pass the exam with Xuan W's spirit and then he would support him. Chow gradually came to his senses after such stress. Chow thought that there was no exam in his words. It was just a road to development. He thought that because of his son who died in the experiments, the dean was well adjusted to the extreme style. And the dean simply turned around and started to leave the office. When he got to the door, he told Chow not to think that he was helping him through his son. He understands very well what Chow is talking about because he stands at the top of the development of the spirit and there is no further path for development. He said that the beast spirit style had exhausted itself and there was no way forward. He hopes that extreme style will make a new way to development. He smiled and wished Meng Chao luck. He said for Chao to defeat him, for him to defeat the beast spirit style, martial arts faculty, for him to defeat all the enemies standing in Longchen's way. Chao ran out of the office and saw that the dean had left. Brother Bo was waiting for him from the side all the time. He said that Chow was quite happy. He said Dean Zong had not personally supervised students for more than a decade. And this time, Chow managed to play on his character. When Brother Bo opened that banana, he was surprised. Brother Bo gave that banana to Chow. And Chow told him not to worry because he would not disappoint him and the Dean on the Western Front. Brother Bo threw away that banana. He said that Chow should first sort out his right to participate in that campaign. His teacher Lee tells him about his strange methods with which he wants to promote a new style. Chow said he uses the rules rationally and wins with intelligence. Brother Bo said, it doesn't mean he has figured out the rules yet because the final decision rests with teacher Lee. Chow did not expect this at all. Yi Chow suddenly started running while Brother Bo asked him what he was going to do. He said, of course, to end the battle and destroy Duan Lian and the others. Chow waited until nightfall. Duan Lin was sleeping in his deluxe single room. Suddenly there was a loud noise that woke him up. He was very angry because it was late at night, he said. If something is important, let him speak. 
His friend called him and said that several students who had challenged Meng Chao had been taken to the hospital. Duan said he understood him. Duan got up and remembered that in a room like his, the psionic energy should have been more to recover his strength faster, but instead he felt weakness all over his body and pain in his head. He started to get dressed and thought that he should go to a crowded place, because Chao likes to attack suddenly. If he is alone in the dormitory, then Chao may attack suddenly. Suddenly, when Duan put his foot into the shoe, he felt a sharp pain. He suddenly pulled out his leg and saw that there were thorns. Those thorns injured his leg and he was bleeding. He thought that he should call for help. Duan started reaching for the phone to call someone. And suddenly someone came up to him from behind and called his name. At that moment, he became very scared. It was Meng Chao. He put a knife to his throat as he reached for the phone. Chao said he beat him. Duan shouted in panic that this is Chao's secret meaning of extreme combat. Chao released him and began to tell what the secret meaning was. Thanks to that style, he managed to imperceptibly destroy one opponent in a room in which there were six people. Muscle control, he managed to easily climb to the ninth floor and after that, crawl into the narrow ventilation hole. He imperceptibly crept up from behind and struck. When the first ascendant was taking a shower, Chao cut him down. Chao told him to understand that the war had already changed. In previous wars, they fought close to home and at any moment could rest and replenish supplies. And the deadly blows that accompanied the world show not only cause damage, but also raise the fighting spirit. But in future wars, they will go on distant expeditions, being cut off from the main army. Attacking opponents will have no problem with what they were doing at that time. Chao said that they have had some misunderstanding since the beginning of their studies. What Duan thinks is because of Chao, he chose the Golden Mentor. Chao said that he would believe that he had no other intentions. As compensation, he offers to become friends and Chao will teach him extreme style. Duan abruptly stood up and said that Chao never dreamed of such a thing and sent him to hell with his extreme style. He said he wouldn't give up and they weren't done with him yet. Chao shook his head and thought about how unpleasant he was. He stared at Duane and said he had no choice. And in a moment, he took his knife in his hands and struck Duane he had no other choice. Duan was shocked. His eyes immediately turned red and there was blood on his neck. There was a lot of blood. It covered the entire bed. And Chao with a smile said to him, Does he know why he must die? Because he is very narrow-minded. It has already been two months since the freshman competition, and he still hasn't let go of that situation. Meanwhile, Duane was shaking with pain. Chao was wiping his knife and said that time could smooth over their relationship. He is sorry that the campaign will start in two weeks, and he will not be able to leave a fool who can shoot him in the back at any moment. Duan was lying on the bed and couldn't do anything. He was just bleeding. His eyes were very red and he was sweating. He couldn't believe that Chao would do such a thing with such thoughts. Chao remembered that he could give him some good advice. He said that if, in the next life, he meets someone who extends his hand to him with a smile and offers to be his friend, then he better grab that hand hard. Duan shouted for Chao Nika not to go, for him to save him. He continued to shout for Chao to save him began to apologize and said that he would not provoke him again. Tears welled up in his eyes and he wondered what it would feel like before death and that he will die so strangely. Suddenly, he slowly began to open his eyes and thought that he had lost so much blood, so why is he still alive? He got up and felt that even his arms and legs stopped hurting. He got up to turn on the light in the room and suddenly, when the light came on, he saw Meng Chao in front of him. Chao told him not to be offended because he had played a bit of a joke on him. Duan began to peel off what was around his neck, and Chao said that he stuck that bag with artificial blood on him when he got close, and he felt the feeling of death because of certain medicines that disturbed the work of the internal organs. Duan backed away in shock, and Chao said that the fact that they are fellow students is fate. Did he really think that Chao was capable of such cruel actions? Now Chao hopes that he has finally understood what kind of person Meng Chao is and what resentment is exhausted. Yi Chao again tells him that as compensation and their friendship, he would like to teach him extreme style. 
This is the office of the teacher of the Faculty of Martial Arts of the Agrarian University. Teacher Li looked at it and wondered. Duan Luan and the other students who challenged Chao told her that they had lost the battle with him and would fully admit their defeat. Duan said that they must send him on a campaign so that the monsters will know his pill sit. Just at this moment, Meng Chao was standing in the courtyard. He gestured for Duan not to say anything unnecessary, and he immediately corrected himself and said that those monsters knew his great power. Their behavior seemed strange to her, and thus, Chao successfully received the right to participate in the campaign and was given three days off. Chao came to the house and mother prepared many different dishes. She told him to eat as much as possible. She said that they had not seen each other for several months and that he had lost a lot of weight, and Chao said that he had already eaten a lot. According to the sister, her brother has become stronger. My father asked how he was doing at the university. Did he make friends with anyone? He said that he communicates perfectly with his friends and everyone wants to be friends with him. And my sister said that he was boastful. Chao started teasing her for making faces at him. The parents were happy that the house had become more cheerful again. But when the sister said that she would take revenge on him, and Cho replied that he would try a new style on her, they immediately regretted it. Mother shouted for them to calm down and eat in peace. Mom said that sister is very good at studying, she is better at school, and at her age, she is stronger than Chao. The sister said that no boy from school could beat her. And the father added that she was eating more and more. He was tired of carrying food to the house. The sister was embarrassed and said that now her body is growing and she needs to eat a lot. They all said that she must eat right. Father remembered that there is still a little time before the holidays. How did he take the day off? Chao said it was because he got the chance to represent the university at the front. Mom was very surprised because he is only in the first year, because when he was at the exam last time, she was very worried. When Chao had a mouthful of food, Mom said that the most important thing is that he remembers to eat. He said that at that time there was force majeure because a hundred scared students against a hundred wolf monsters. This time, everything will be different. The scale of this offensive on the Eastern Front is very large. The Red Dragon Army has deployed several elite formations. The Tower of Exaltation on that front put out ten exalted warriors of the divine level. It is not only their university, but all other universities are rushing to the battlefield to build and defend new districts. A stream of armored vehicles will be the first to go into battle. Who will be able to defeat them? Chow said that operating with a large army is very important because you can gain experience and expand your horizons. You can also earn a lot of resources for improvement and get new connections. Chow said that mom had nothing to worry about, but if he had said it two years later after training and practice, then she would have worried less. The nurse listened attentively and added that it was impossible to wait for the students to learn. The authorities cannot wait any longer. They need to start expanding this year. If mom wants to blame someone, it's the university. Mom asked what it meant. She said that 20 years ago, the former rector of the agricultural university invented many new technologies. A variety of canned earthworms completely solved the food crisis. Also, the agricultural university developed a new type of greenhouses. They were also completely suitable for people. People began to need more land and better living conditions as well as better work. And the easiest way to solve those problems is to expand safe areas, to then start building new districts, and at the same time get a lot of resources. She said that mom should not be surprised because she will also fight there in a couple of years and expand luncheon. Chow was scared because he thought that it was the blood of the dark witch that played out in his sister. She was happy and noticed that they were all looking at her. Mom praised her that she is very smart, knows many things that she doesn't even know. The father added that after she entered the third grade of the third degree, she became much smarter. She said that she inherited her mind from her mother, and her father was a little upset at that moment. And my mother said that she herself did not know such a thing. She quickly ran to her room to bring them something and prove it. She brought some old box. She said she found that box under the bed when mom was in the hospital. Mom put something there a long time ago. Chow hoped that there was nothing there that would be connected with the Dark Witch. She opened it and there were some letters and boxes. 
and their mom saw the first gift that their father gave her. Father was a little embarrassed when she opened it. Xiao Chao took those letters in her hands and said that they were love letters that father wrote to mother. The father broke away from the moon and began to shout that they should not be watched. But the sister said that it was too late. She did not think that the father was so sweet in his youth. Chao was also interested and told his father to let him have a look. His father told him not to think about such things. But Xiao Chao had this notebook in mind. They were all looking at this notebook together, and Chao was also interested in what they were studying at school in those days. He even saw information there about psionic energy and various types of activation. Parents did not understand what he was talking about, and they wondered what knowledge Chao had. Suddenly, Chao saw something on one of the pages and fell into a stupor. When he looked at those pages, he felt a very strong and sharp pain. He was looking at one sign, and at the same time, his head started to ache. He remembered the moment when his sister was a dark witch. She was very majestic and evil and possessed insane strength. She had wings and could fly. She had insane strength. Chao was very badly injured. She was telling him to drop out of her way, to roll to the edge of the world, the farther the better. She threw him with all her might and said that if they met again, he would die. Just at that moment, he remembered it all. He realized that this was it. He fell to the floor and was bleeding from wear and tear. Now he realized that this was the drawing. The next morning, Xiao Chao went with Chao and said that when he fell yesterday, the parents were very scared. She said that while they are alone, let him tell her the truth, that he is climbing on strange sights again. Chao gave her a slap and said that he had already told her many times that these are scientific sites on the darknet, but some of them are bad. She said he was insulting her again. She ran to the front and said that let Chao wait. When she grows up, she will show him her strength. While Chao was throwing out the trash, she called him to catch the bus. He thought that it would be better not to bother with the subject of witches, because all that would be left for him was to cry on his parents' shoulders. He said he was already on his way to her. But the problem seems indecisive, but he will try to do everything for his sister and solve the problem gradually. Chow put her on the bus to school. He talked to my mother for a long time yesterday and asked her about the details, but she doesn't remember anything, because it was a long time ago. All he managed to find out was that one hospital was involved there 20 years ago. After my mother worked in that hospital, she began to know such knowledge as was not written in the books of that time. But after the constant attack of monsters and the reorganization of medicine, the hospital has been out of business for a long time. Chow then began to guess that Longchen's enemies were not only monsters. He thought about it all the time and analyzed it. He understood that most likely these were not monsters. This bus came to a stop near the Ascension Tower. Chow was met by his friend who said that Chow had come after all. He immediately said that Chow would follow him. He wanted to show him something. He told Chow to hurry in and quickly close the door behind him because no one should see. So far, Chow hadn't attached much importance to what his friend had said about the mystery. But in a moment, his interest grew sharply. He took out some kind of wooden box with a beautiful ornament. And immediately after it, I got another one, but a little simpler. Chow asked him what it was and why was he showing it to him. He started to open that box, and a very bright light came out of it. He said that it was a new sword based on a completely new version of the sword art of hundreds of battles. It's called the Sword of Deafening Thunder, youth version. Chow was delighted. Now he understood everything. It is very sharp and also the back side is involved. The center of gravity is perfectly exposed. It is most suitable for the characteristics of wielding the sword of hundreds of battles. As a raw material, a special alloy was used there, which was mixed with special additives, thanks to which it was possible to achieve extraordinary results. It is very hard and sharp, and most importantly, it is light. The blade has been forged more than 3,500 times, and the teeth have excellent armor penetration and those three holes are made in order to place various precious elements there, which will revive that sword and improve its characteristics many times. It is planned that when it comes to the market, it will be presented in four colors, and it will also be possible to order laser engraving for printing text directly on the blade. Now, killing monsters will be easier than drinking coffee. 
Luo Hai said that that sword was perfect for young people with their needs. This version of the sword is elite, for people like them, for those who have awakened the power. Chao stopped him from telling more. Chao said that he understood that the sword was very good, but what next? Luo Hai sulked, and Chao thought that he had to offer something himself because his fate was in the matter. And he decided to say that he needed Chao to have some good fights with that sword during the expedition on the Eastern Front. He said he would send a special film crew with Chao. This is to create promo videos to advertise that sword. His father suggested making a whole documentary where Chao would be in the lead role. Chao would become a superstar, and sales of the sword would also be at their peak. That movie would be called New Hope. Chao immediately asked why to choose Chao and not his own son. He replied that Chao was more interesting, and everyone knows about him, that the son of the destroyer of souls possesses a strong sword technique. This is of no interest to anyone. And Oso Chao is a completely different matter. It will be very interesting. He would start with the fact that he is a poor boy from a rented housing district who relies only on his own strength, defeats strong monsters, and achieves great success. Thanks to his hard work, he was able to achieve the best swordsmanship technique and finally reach the top of the world. He said Chao is the perfect candidate for the common public because the main audience of their sword of the youth version is ordinary young people. Chao was shocked at what was happening, and Chao began to say that the poor boy was fighting with the son of Luo Wu and as a result defeated the elite member standing above him with a sword of strong thunder in his hands. Chao said, If the film is really made, what will Luo Hai say if the beginning is like this? Luo Hai said it was good, and he is not a high-ranking member of the elite at all. He wants to see how much stronger Chao has become, and in one moment they both clashed in battle on new swords. Luo Hai didn't understand what Chao was doing because he had already thwarted his psionic magnetic field creation several times. He couldn't understand what kind of strategy this was. And Chao just laughed at all this and told him to guess. They continued to fight, their battle speed increasing from last time. Luo Hai immediately noticed that Chao with his extreme style had changed. During the following pirouettes, Chao asked him if he understood that he was not going to win. Luo Hai used some technique in an instant and said that it was not necessary. He concentrated all his strength and his sword split into many pieces and he attacked with lightning speed. Chao saw the attack headed his way, but he didn't dodge it. And suddenly, Chao's sword was knocked out of his hands and flew uphill. And Luo Hai flew past Chao and hit him very hard. He tore at Chao's shirt and there were several deep wounds left by his split sword. But he wanted to hurt Chao so much that he lost control and began to fall himself. As a result, both of them were lying on the ground and Lao Hai was also injured. Luo Hai tried to stand up and said that now they will see which of them will recover sooner. Chao, in pain, laughed and said that now Luo Hai had definitely lost. He slowly started to stand up and said that, in his extreme style, the recovery and stamina are much better than in the superkiller direction. And Chao rose with some effort rose and as a result he won. And Chao came up and grabbed the sword that was stuck in the ground. He said that sword was really very good. He walked over to Luo Hai and gave him his hand. Chao said they fired 1,800 shots, 122 of which were counterattacks. The blade is in pretty good shape after this. Luo Hai wondered how Chao managed to get up at all. Luo Hai said that he now understood why his father forbade him from fighting Chao, because he was afraid that he would not lose his self-esteem. Luo Hai asked Chao if he didn't think he had changed after waking up. Since these things are like cutting Duan Liang's throat, would he do it before waking up? At first, Chao didn't understand what Luo Hai meant. Chao thinks it doesn't matter at all whether he feels the change or not. Two souls constantly live in it. Ever since he was reborn, he ignored those memories. How he turned from a simple man into a third-rate master who is well-versed in bullying, poisoning, and torture to gain recognition. What are these memories that the human brain can neither embellish nor whiten but can only forget? Suddenly he felt a sharp and very strong pain in his neck. These were people disguised to blend in with their surroundings. 
Lions' heads were put on them. They looked very scary. Chow was among them. He was physically and mentally exhausted. He seemed to become a spirit and was transported into his memories and could look at everything from the mountain. He remembered that moment. This is a military operation in which he participated. They were then ambushed in the magical forest. When Chow looked into the electronic binoculars, he saw active movement there. In that village live skinny humanoid animals with sharp ears. Their skin is blood red and covered in a dense, beautiful pattern very similar to psionic energy. Someone approached Chow as he was describing the entities and told him to shut up. The one in the dark lion mask said not to use earthly weapons. He said to leave no one alive. Chow told him that there were children there. He looked maliciously and said that number 99 went blind or became a fool because there are only young individuals of creatures from another world. The instructor said that they were the same as the monster children they had killed before. We said number 99 was his favorite in training camp. The instructor said that Chow is a very good marksman and extremely skillful with a sword. And besides, he is also good at harvesting, which is a miracle for his age. But his character is very soft. It was difficult for Cow to listen to this. The instructor told him to put aside his fit of pity and remember the problems and stress that Luncheon was going through. All their actions depend on whether their friends will die in the future. He told Chow to remember one truth. If he turns into a vile cockroach or a violent demon or a killing machine, as long as the fire of earthly civilization burns, it is worth it. Chow listened carefully to what he said. He turned and said that now he understood everything. He didn't believe Chow and said that Chow should deal with those humanoid children himself, and then he could go to the camp and gain strength. He was in shock. He barely said that he probably wouldn't be able to do it. The instructor clapped his hand on his shoulder. He said that everyone else in the training camp started small, and he joined them halfway. And the instructor went and activated a powerful tail in his exoskeleton. He said that Chow is very old and will not be able to change himself. There are many blocks in his mind. Therefore, it is normal that he is not ready at all. Suddenly something terrible happened. He cut Chow's throat with his sharp tail and just started walking away. The instructor said if he is not ready, then he is not needed. Then let him just die. They didn't even look back. And at the end, the instructor shouted that if he says something in the next life, then the answer should be only one. Chow was crying at that moment and felt very sad, because the answer to any command should have been yes, the instructor. When he was lying down, he heard screams from that village, how those cannibals screamed in pain. He saw in front of him those children who asked him for help, and he could not help. He had a terrible panic. He began to die. Suddenly, he saw the ceiling of the building in which he was and loud shouts of his name. This is Luo Hai. He woke him up violently and asked if he had a terrible dream. Chow woke up with great difficulty and for the first few seconds could not inhale air. At one point, he caught himself thinking, what did luncheon turn into in order to survive? In a moment, he calmed down and said he was fine, then started to get out of bed. Luo Hai said that Chow's wound has already healed and his clothes are restored and gives him to wear. While Chow was getting dressed, Luo Hai said that his father said that there was a monster inside each of them, but it was held back by different rules and laws. He gives Chow some blue liquid and says that every exalted person sooner or later breaks those limits and faces the inner monster alone. Luo Hai threw that liquid at Chow. He asks Chow if he knows why his father lasted so little time at the heavenly level. Chow himself was very interested in such a question, because he was afraid that when he took a step into the depths of the divine level, he would see the depths of his mind and meet his terrible self. Luo Hai said that true cultivation was not only to improve combat effectiveness, but also to be careful of the monsters deep within. Luo Hai added that if possible, there is no need to be in a hurry to refrain from raising your level. Chao wondered if he was really ready now to look into the eyes of the 99th soldier at that tortured soul who survived the end of the world. He suddenly began to drink what his friend gave him. But he drank a little and immediately started coughing and spilled the substance everywhere. Chow cheered up and said that Luo Hai had opened his eyes because he felt that he had improved a lot that month. 
Luo Hai felt ashamed and said, It's good that Chao doesn't mind that he talks a lot. Chao stood up and said that at first he thought their relationship was purely business, but he believes that after today they became real friends. He was surprised that Chao had drawn such conclusions from his words. Alia immediately stood up and firmly took Chao's hand. He was happy to have such a friend. Then they started walking somewhere and Chao asked him if he knew where to find news from 20 years ago, because he has a friend who wants to thank the doctor who treated his father. Luo Hai said that if Cho really needed the materials from those years, he should go to the great library on the third floor of the Ascension Tower. But he said that those who were able to open such hospitals are now dead or have lost their minds or have become great exalted ones of the divine level. He added that he would probably have a hard time finding the information his friend needed. Chow said that one should do everything possible and whether everything will work out depends on fate. Luo Hai said that he could take Chao there if he had nothing else to do right now. Luo Hai brought him there. Yi Chao thought that 30 years ago, the problem of psionic energy interference had not been solved, and various newspapers and leaflets had become popular. Perhaps he could find this sign in them. The administrator asked how she could help. Chao said he needed to study newspapers and leaflets from 20 and 30 years ago. She said that she would help him in need of such materials, but said that the period of three months of the new era might not be available. Chow asked in surprise, Why can't you look at those three months? She showed him the data that then there was a fire and it spilled over into their warehouse. And then, due to the explosion, a certain amount of information was destroyed. She asked if it was by any chance that he didn't need the information for those three months. He thought that according to the timing, Mom shouldn't have faced the XI plan so early. Chow smiled and told her that most likely not. But suddenly I remembered something very important. He emotionally and sharply questioned her that she said that the explosion in the tower took place in June. And when exactly? Luo Hai began to worry about Chow. He said that he was a bit strange. Does he think that the explosion in June is hiding something? Chow turned around with great surprise and asked Luo Hai if he also knew about that explosion, since it was the first time since the tower was built, so his father said. There, a small explosion occurred in the underground laboratories and the fire spread to the surface of the tower, but did not cause much damage. But then the fog came and the father went to fight the monsters. Chow sighed and said, as long as the damage wasn't too bad, it was good. But the administrator was frightened and asked if she could help with anything else. In the first half of June, Luo Wu went into battle only once, on the day of his rebirth. On the same day, after lunch, a strange explosion simultaneously occurred in the underground laboratory of ancient relics of the Ascension Tower. Did he have a question or did he come back from Doomsday? The majestic city of Luncheon and the Ascension Tower in the evening. They went outside and Luo Hai said that he said that it is very difficult to know such information. He asked Chao if his friend or girlfriend needed this information. Chao a little did not understand what he was asking and said no. He told Chao not to worry because he understands everything and began to say goodbye. Luo Hai went about his business and Chao understood that he had made up something for himself again. Chao was riding the bus and thinking about X's eye his rebirth and Longchen's future, many questions he has to solve. But he understands that these are things that cannot be solved in a short time. Three days have passed, this direction is east from Lucan. Because this land is very rich in resources and psionic veins, various magnetic fields collide rapidly, endlessly releasing enormous energy in the direction of the Earth. Countless incomparable monsters with very strong psionic abilities breed there. This area has always been off-limits to humans, but it was in that zone that there was a paradise for monsters. That area could be described in one word as a slaughterhouse. Suddenly fire was opened from hundreds of units of combat weapons, and that huge monster, which was just eating another monster, began to be shot from all sides. A huge airship appeared from behind the clouds and opened fire from its guns. There were several of them there, and with their big cannons and powerful projectiles, they simply destroyed the monsters that came across their path to dust. In addition to airships, there were also jet planes. They all flew in one formation. 
There were also the newest flying machines, much larger than airships. Later, they came across a huge canyon and flew into it. Chao's friend was amazed by what he saw from the window. He told Chao to look at it, because he had definitely never seen such a large-scale front. Chao studied the map and wanted to understand why Long Chen's steel flow lost the battle. He had a severe headache, his reincarnation, the eye of the instructor from his past life, and this battle, which will most likely be a pitfall, is like a snowball that keeps getting bigger. He thought if he went to the general and said that this battle would be a failure, then all people will definitely think that he is crazy. Then it was decided, first there would be a fight near the Lake of Broken Stars. There he would hone his sword skills and increase his strength. And the key battle will be near the Mountain of the Ninth Val, where the strongest of the Divine Level and the monsters of the Doomsday will fight. If the strength is not enough, then he may not even see the warriors of the Divine Level, and in general, then he will not be able to change the course of the war. Later they arrived at the military base on the lake. When they looked down at that base, they felt a little excitement. That base was very large. It was such to cope with the monsters of that level that were there. All the students came to the edge and stood in front of the rope to prepare for the descent. Chow took a special mechanism in his hand, which was attached to a cable. He thought that he must be stronger. They all began to descend, and Chow thought that he should find the answer to the question himself. Teachers from different faculties told all students to approach them. All students lined up in front of their teachers. Suddenly, behind them, a cannon of incredible size suddenly fired. Many were frightened. But mostly, they had a raised fighting spirit. They are a new generation, and they should contribute to the development of Lucan. Then their teacher mentors told them to follow them. They entered a huge room covered by a dome, surrounded by various holographic stands. One of the biggest screens showed Lin Chuan, one of the strongest warriors he was called the Crying Killer. The girls just lost their heads when they saw him. They were delighted with him. Chao knew about him that he came from a poor district, and now he is the strongest ascendant of the heavenly level, a hero who is now fighting at the front. Chao also respected him because he refused handouts from corporations and remained on the side of the people. In fact, Chao also exalted him. He fell to his knees and shouted that he was his butler. Those girls were surprised that there was one of the boys who loved that hero more than them. Teacher Lee quickly approached Chao and took him away so that he would not be humiliated. Chao wondered why he hadn't heard of that hero Lin Chuan in his past life. Because according to his talents and fame, he should be on the same level as Luo Wu. Then Chao must have realized that he could have died in that battle. Chao is determined to prevent the death of his idol and will do everything in his power to do so. Safei told Chao that Teacher Li said she would take them to the cafeteria for lunch and introduce them to the other students at the same time. It was a large common canteen that was placed in the middle of that military base. Afterwards, Chao notices that all the girls are looking at him strangely after Teacher Li has gone about her business. Safei said to Chao that he has a friend who wants to know how he ended up in the women's dormitory. He is very ashamed of such an act. Chao said that all the secrets are in his extreme style. He invited Sa Fei to study it with him. Fei emphasized that it was not him who was interested but his friend, and let Chao follow his words. Suddenly one girl got angry and wanted to beat Chao, but another girl, Sun Ya, stopped her and told her not to be stupid because Chao himself would easily beat her and she would be ashamed. One day, Chao even got scared. Suddenly, a very heavy hand fell on Chao's shoulder. Chao turned to see a student the size of Ambal standing behind him. Suddenly, he started crying and called his name. Chao calmly asked him if they knew each other. Chao guessed that it must be Fei Xiong, and he hugged Chao tightly and began to cry with joy that they met. And Chao asked him how he managed to lose so much weight. But he immediately realized that there was a much more important question. Because if Fei Xiong was here, did he also become exalted? Chao said that it was a bad thing to do, because the elevation would be an important matter, and he did not tell Chao anything. But Fei Xiong said that he received his own heroic spirit and became the messenger of the heroic spirit with difficulty. But now, he just wants to cry. Chao asked him with surprise what was the matter. 
He did not listen to Teacher Yawn and with the help of additional points entered the faculty of the hero's spirit. As a result, he could not keep up with the others and was always lagging behind. With the help of the group members, he began to improve quickly, but this was not enough. He still could not catch up with those students who drank healthy drinks instead of water since childhood. Then the teacher gave him tasks that were impossible to complete, said that he was justifying his laziness and persuaded him to change his faculty. In fact, after a week of being there, he realized that he would not be able to compete with them and was already ready to move. But could he allow some woman to underestimate him, ridicule and torture him and then run away? Chow praised him because Fei Xiong was always like steel in front of women. Then they will conclude a dispute if it runs 62,000 miles and at the same time weighs 300 kilograms. After that, she had to admit that he was a diamond in the rough and she herself was not strong enough. And if he can't, he will leave that faculty himself. Chow said that such disputes look somehow childish and Fei Xiong said that he would not tolerate ridicule. He even signed a statement upon leaving the faculty, and when he won, he just wanted to throw it in her face. Chow was interesting to listen to. He said that Fei Xiong has a lot of drama. At that moment, she was standing behind him and saw how he emotionally told all this to Chow. Fei Xiong said if it wasn't for Xiao Jiang Jing, he wouldn't be as depressed as he is now. Fei Xiong said that he usually started crying after 30 kilometers, but he couldn't be scared when Xiao Jiang Jing was watching. Chow agreed with him. As he ran each lap, he saw her surprised expression. With each lap, her expression grew worse and worse. She couldn't believe he would do this. He already imagined how she would ask him to stop because he was very strong. And Chow asks if he still ran those 100 kilometers. Faishan laughed and said, he ran not 100 kilometers, but 120 kilometers then. She ran in front of him and tried to stop him. She also called the teacher to take him to the hospital. If they did not interfere with him, he would not have stopped. That's how Fei Xian not only defeated that woman, but also was able to receive the recognition of the hero spirit, became the exalted ambassador of the hero spirit. Chao simply glorified such actions and Fei Xun. But Chao remembered him saying he wanted to cry. But can you be proud of all those events? Fei Xian sighed and became even more upset. As a result, he cried again and said it was a long story. Chow felt strange looking at him, but he told him to grunt her quickly. He sadly pointed his hand at that spirit behind him and said that that spirit does not have any superpower. As a result, although he is an ambassador of the hero spirit, he is very weak and almost cannot fight back against the super monster. He was very angry with that teacher, because if it weren't for her and the argument with her, he wouldn't have done that and wouldn't have mastered that spirit. He was just waiting for an opportunity to take revenge on her, and even her father, the god of thunder, wouldn't help her. Chow saw that she was behind Faishan's back and somehow wanted to tell him about it. She came covered in blood with a huge sword, and Chow decided that Fei Xiong did not say anything more. Chow pointed his finger forward and said that the girl he was talking about was not behind him. Fei Xiong, with a strange face and hoping that Chow was mistaken, began to turn around. When he saw that it was her, he jumped back sharply so that the chair and table flew in different directions. He was trembling with fear. Fei Xian told her that they had agreed that if he won their argument, she would stop moving him. Chao also couldn't help it. He thought that Fei Xun's reaction also added weight to his story. Everyone around paid attention to them. Chao and Fei Xiong waited for her to answer. Veyan was a senior in their department. She told him to calm down because she wasn't going to move him today. She completed the task that the two of them had to do, so Fei Xun can pay her with monster coins. Fei Xiong said angrily, Why did she do that? Does she not consider him a warrior at all? She said that they had a task to kill three monsters, and his spirit with boxing skills would take three hours to destroy one monster, and she didn't have that much time, so she decided to go it alone. She said that she would give him his resources in a few days and said that being in the spiritual faculty with a spirit like him was a waste of time. He should understand that. Fei Xiong became even more angry and swung a blow near her head. He asked her that she was looking at his hero spirit who was a simple warrior from above. 
Faishan told her that one day his spirit would rise, be able to fight her Valkyrie, and be stronger than even her father's thunderbolt. After that, the two of them fell silent and looked into each other's eyes. She looked at Chow and said that he was his friend and maybe he could convince him. But suddenly she recognized that it was Meng Chow from the agrarian department. Chow said that everything is true and asked her how she knew him. She turned sharply and thought that people would keep to their own kind, that vile people would gather together. Chow did not understand her strange behavior and asked Fei Shun what happened to his elder. Fei Xiong smiled and said that Chow had long since become a fool in the Fifth University League. Didn't he know? And Chow asked him why. Fei Xiong says that now there is a rumor in the League of Five Universities that there is one boy in the agricultural department who climbed into places where it is impossible to climb, and his name is Meng Chao, that he specifically trained in some experimental style and succeeded. Now many students look at him as a great evil, and the boys can't wait to catch him and have him tell them and then they'll judge him. Chao enthusiastically asks Feishun if they really want to condemn him for such evil achievements. This is the Donghu camp from above. There were hundreds of tents and a lot of soldiers. Chao was a little disappointed because he had paid a lot for renting a tent and food, and the coins that the agrarian had given him had almost run out. He hopes that he will be able to make a little extra money on the front line. He had a lot of food. He gave almost all his wealth for Feishun. There was a system to buy an army box. When he bought all this, he received an achievement, the standard level of an army box, and then he gained strength to improve that level. Literally, in a little time, he was able to raise his level to an expert, and for the last rush, he still managed to reach the level of a master. There were many different plates, and they were completely empty. He was too exhausted to eat it all. Suddenly, his eyes began to twinkle, and memories flooded him. Is it like some kind of flashback of him learning army boxing in a past life? Maybe it was somewhere underground. In his past life, he didn't pay attention to the fact that the uniform he wore was completely different from that of the Red Dragon Army. He remembered that commander and the organization, but he could not remember it. And that strange tattoo, what did it mean? Suddenly, a boar's head appeared in his face and who told him to eat? Chow was very scared because he was in a bad state because of the memories. It was Wu Wu. Chow asked her what she was doing. She said, if Chow eats a piglet, she will learn the experimental style. Cho was very surprised and asked her if it was true. She said it was true. She said that losing to the strong, learning from the strong, defeating the strong, and eating the strong are all laws of survival. She said that Chow can defeat her and eat at any time. Chow was exhausted and told her to stop saying those expressions he didn't understand. Chow thought about her suggestion that she and the beast management faculty was their treasure. If he teaches her the extreme style, it will go a long way in promoting him. Chow said he would teach her that style, but she had to promise him something. She must defeat the other three special students in the ranking of Dong Hu base and including Xiao Jian King. Vu Vu gladly agreed to his proposal. Chow summoned her to the cultivation hall to show the power of extreme style. And Wu Wu saw the piglet, which Chow did not eat, and wondered whether to leave it or eat it herself. In a moment, she grabbed a part of it and immediately put it in her mouth. Chow was shocked by such a strange ability. When he looked around, he saw that half the piglet was gone and was even more horrified. Three hours later, it's a tent rented by Meng Chow. There were a lot of guys there, and Sa Fei just walked in there. Those boys asked him if it was true that Chow entered the girl's shower and was caught there and punished very severely. Another student said he heard he was caught out of place and then it turned out to be him. They didn't care which version they listened to. The main thing was that someone told something about him. Suddenly, Chow enters that tent and says, Is everyone in the congregation? Safei wasn't too happy to be there. He asked Chow where he found so many idiots. They were all bullies at school. Chow told him to calm down because he knows what he's doing. He greeted and said that his name is Meng Chow, and he invites them all to join him and learn a new fighting style, extreme style. But they said that they were not interested in hearing about the extreme style, but much more interested in hearing about how it got into the women's bathroom. Everyone immediately started laughing at that, and Chow also played along with them. 
But suddenly Chow shouted sharply. He said, Who said that? Chow told him to get out of his tent immediately. Most of the students were upset by such a sharp answer. One student said that he said it. His name is Zhang Hongji. He heard that Fei Shun has a best friend who is very cool and he came to see what he can do. He said that their time is precious, so if he can show this unique technique, let him show it soon. They can provide stamina coins and power up materials in exchange for lessons. But if Chao will deceive and talk nonsense, then he can forget about money. Chao loosened his tie, smiled, and said that it was all nonsense. He began to take off his clothes, and Chan asked why he was doing that. And besides, there are a lot of people there. Chao said that it doesn't matter how much he says, because it's all a lie and suggested that he test the power of the extreme style on himself. Afterwards, in that tent, Chan also undressed and told Chao to attack, and no matter what techniques he has there, he is not afraid of anything. Suddenly, Chao used a special stand. He stood in that interesting stance and shouted that it was time to start the fight. Fei Xiong was surprised because he saw that Chao was going to use army boxing. Chan, seeing this, told Chao not to think that if he uses army boxing, he must be lenient. He won't. And in the next moment, Chan sprang from his seat and flew into the attack with fury, shouting for him to get a good hit. It developed a very high speed and flew straight at Chao with that crazy speed. And Chao stood and did not move. Safei analyzed that Chao usually maneuvers a lot, and the size of the tent deprived him of such an opportunity. It would be very difficult for him to dodge. Chao was serious and strained to receive his blow. With utmost composure, Chao skillfully deflects his blow. He used army boxing, technique number six, and suddenly Chao struck his hand with which he struck. Chan was surprised that Chao used a lunge. Did Safei himself not know that army boxing could be used like that? Chan changed his strategy and the very next blow was with superpower. Chao saw this and to restrain his power, he activated his power. It was a very quick and sharp kick to the head, but Chao managed to block it. And suddenly, Chao moved the opponent's leg from the height of the head to the level of the waist. Safei had already seen that fight on a completely different level. He was watching with delight because he saw special techniques such as the inner grip from below. While Chao held his leg, he began to gather strength in his fist, and Chai could not do anything. And with lightning speed and force, Chao struck him in the throat. He flew back and immediately spat out blood. Fei Xiong was not surprised at all. He had had enough of various surprises from Chao since school. He was already used to it. He said that the boxing in Brother Chao's hands is a killer boxing. After Chai, a freshman from the Faculty of Engineering entered the battle with Chao. They stood in a stand and began to prepare for battle. In an instant, the fight began and the sharp blows of the legs and hands did not reach their goal and were blocked. That student thought that this was his chance and tried his best to cut down Chao. But Chao dodged his attack with ease. That student was surprised. How could he do it? And at the same time, Chao charges his fist with a super punch, and just lightning struck him in the stomach. As a result, two students who looked very menacing were lying on the ground and writhing in pain, and Chao didn't even catch his breath. He looked at the others with a serious look and asked them who was next. Observers noted that Chao was very strong, especially in that first lunge. He may not even be a match for their instructor. Another said that in any case he thought he would not defeat him and that a good general would not enter a battle which he was certain to lose. Chao realized that there were no volunteers yet and began to say that as they saw the extreme style improved even the simplest army style. But suddenly, Fei Xiong came out of the group and said that he wanted to try to fight Chao. Chao was a little doubtful and asked him if they need to fight. Fei Shun said that he is also a cadet and wants to try. Besides, his spirit is a stupid soldier. Oh, not stupid, but a private. His spirit said that Chao's boxing was killer boxing. Fei Xiong gathered his strength and prepared for battle. Fei Xiong will show real boxing, which is designed to protect the motherland. The guys from behind supported him. Chao sighed and said, if that's what he wants, then fine. Chao thought that Fei Xiong had done it in vain, but there was no choice. But he is ready to fight with him to show the great power of the new style. 
They came together and were almost ready. Only a moment separated him from the first blow. Fei Yun was actually twice as big as Meng Chao. Chao was in a good mood because Fei Xiong is his friend. And what about those foreign students? He activated the force and said that he was ready for army boxing. Fei Xiong also activated his power and said that he was ready to fight. Chao wondered if he should give in. How many blows can be given for Fei Xiun to inflict? He sped up and started throwing a punch, which was called a quick punch. Chao didn't even blink and easily blocked that blow. He was smiling because he remembered the sweet times when they were at school and fighting there. Then Chao used a special technique and began to deliver a blow to the throat, similar to the one he had already done today. But suddenly Fei Xiong caught his hand and stopped that blow. Chao thought that it wasn't bad, but he wasn't going to give in now. Chao jumped up and lifted Fei Xian's leg to use move number two, hitting the opponent's weak spots. Then, in an instant, he broke Fei Xiong's grip on his hand. Next, they threw kicks at the same time, but they were blocked. Fei Xiong didn't expect it, and Chao started to strike directly at the neck again. Other students were only delighted by such a sight. This fight is much more interesting than the previous two. The other students who knew Fei Xian were surprised because they saw that his strength had increased. They had no idea that he was so good at army boxing. And one of them said, Probably Fei Xian's spirit is nervous about Chao, and that's why Fei Xian has better synchronization. And Fei Xian managed to send a counter blow at a very high speed. From that collision, there was a loud bang. The blast wave almost destroyed that tent. Chao felt a normal load in this fight. It was not easy for Fei Xian either, but he still had strength, and he told Chao to repeat. They clashed again, Chao asked Fei Xun. Didn't he say that he would help him spread the new style? Why contradict him now? Fei Xiong said that the private did not like his army style and wanted to beat him up. Suddenly, Fei Xiong saw Chao's extraordinary speed. He didn't have time to blink as Chao began to disappear. With lightning speed, Yi Chao was behind Fei Xun and began to strangle him. Chao said that Fei Xiong is lying because the spirit cannot want that, which means that Fei Xiong himself wants it. He said that everything was coming together, which was true, because after Chao started bragging in the final exam, after that, Fei Xiong got the idea to beat him up, and he tensed and began to try to loosen Chao's grips. With quite a lot of effort, he managed to throw Chao in front of him, Chao knew that some action needed to be taken. Fei Xiong held Chao's hand so that he would definitely not dodge and began to deliver a super strong kick from the rider stance. But Chao managed to dodge here as well. He had not yet started to show his real strength, but he didn't want to do so in order not to cripple Fei Xun. Yi Chao successfully landed on the ground. But to Chao's surprise, he couldn't get rid of Fei Xiong's delight. Chao realized that things had not gone according to plan and said that he would never brag in front of him again, but let him go so he could keep his honor today. Fei Xiong agreed, but for Chao to train with him every day, because his spirit says that this makes them stronger. Chao once again tells him that he won't brag anymore, and his spirit is his conviction. If he thinks he wants something, he really wants it. Suddenly, Fei Xiong shouted that he didn't care and started throwing Chao off him. Chao actually felt his strength grow with each blow, but he was still far from Chao's level, and he easily landed on his feet. Chao said enough. They won't fight today. He wanted them to learn from each other, not compete. Chao said he wanted to show that with extreme style, even army boxing becomes very strong. And if Fei Xiong continues to attack him, he will have no choice but to run away and attack them. Tent at night. He began to show the experiment that was done by Luo Wu and his teacher Gu Jianbo. Chao prepared a certain presentation. It is a monster from the depths of the mist. Master Luo noticed that the more the mist thickens, the more agile and sensitive the monsters become. More and more ascended die during the period accumulation and restoration. Chao asked them if they understood what this meant. Did someone say they had to get deadlier? And another said that they should improve and learn new methods to reduce the accumulation time. And Chao said that this surely means that their offense will be more intense and their defense will be much stronger in the future. 
Because a genius from the Faculty of Martial Arts of the Agrarian University, Mr. Zong Ye, predicted such a future. Because the development of 1024 channels is no longer a dream, but a reality. Chow said that he understood that his words meant nothing to them, but in three days, his faculty would go to the Lake of Broken Stars and fight there, and he would show the true power of extreme style. And then he hopes they will give a new style in themselves. Three days have passed, the area of the Lake of Broken Stars. The cannons fire intensively in huge shells. The whole of them was the lake. Those shells flew into the water all over the lake. And in a moment they exploded, very strong explosions, so that many water monsters were thrown into the air. Other monsters that were near the lake began to run away from those explosions. They were very large and easily felled trees that came across their hoar, and suddenly one of those monsters was pierced by a large claw. It was a multi-axle ground machine that was designed for swamps and lakes. Luncheon's army had several such machines in use. Those machines were equipped with the latest technologies. They had a special laser that read information. They directed him into the water to see who was in it. In a moment, many large objects began to appear, which floated to the surface. And large monsters began to climb out of the water. They had very strong armor. In the command post, all the information about that kind of monsters appeared at once. Teacher Lee said that those monsters are very serious and the terrain in which they will fight is very harsh. She told them to use their minds and make wise decisions. They need to get their weapons because in a few minutes they will be on their way. They were given super suits. One of the students said that he had long dreamed of using this kind of exoskeleton, which is designed specifically for field conditions. Safe said that they have articulated joints that allow them to rotate 360 degrees, and the increase in strength is so great that he won't believe it when he tries it. And Chao told him that in his place, he would definitely not wear such a dangerous thing as an exoskeleton. And he said, yes, yes. He knows that Chao will say that these things are used in the warehouse to move things and let the developers of the Red Dragon Army get out of here because Super Chow is here, and he knows better. Chow did not wear such armor. He was in standard armor without any additives. He did not understand why such a beautiful armor could be bad, and Safe thought that maybe they had misunderstood what Chow had in mind. Later, armored vehicles arrived at that lake. Everyone from the martial arts faculty got out of it. They each chose different armor and weapons. Teacher Lee told them to remember that this is a real battle and not training. She said that according to Lucan's classification, Area 412 is dark yellow, with the exception of warlords, there are almost no super monsters here. Their goal before dark is to kill 90% of the monsters and make that area light yellow. After completing the mission, the regular Red Dragon Army will enter the area and conduct a thorough sweep. Each of their negligence can cost the lives of army soldiers. She told them everything loudly and clearly and asked if they understood her. They all said with one voice loudly that they understood everything. Then she gave the command to start and gradually move forward. Other teachers from other faculties were also there. One of them said that they are still young and green. When he looks at them, he remembers them at their age. And another asked him when they were engaged in team pursuit and wilderness scouting. Are they as lucky as today's students? Teacher Lu said that the upcoming battle of the king will determine the fate of Long Chung. It is both wonderful and sad. And that teacher said that if they didn't make them suffer, the students wouldn't take their advice seriously. And Lee said she just hopes there are no serious injuries. Safe also had an exoskeleton and slashed the monster with his greatsword. He smiled and said that it was actually very easy. His friend told him that he had only destroyed one, and Sun Ya had already finished off the fifth monster. Safe was surprised how she was so fast, and the friend shouted to him to go forward because he thinks that the monsters will come to him themselves. Sun Ya masterfully dealt with the monsters even when several were attacking her at the moment. As soon as she finished with one group, the next one was already waiting for her. She was only happy to see this. She wanted to break the record as soon as possible and climb the leaderboard. Then she would be noticed by the strongest. But suddenly, as she was swinging for a shot, something happened. Something jammed. 
She failed to prepare for the attack and four monsters flew at her, and she just stood there, and they jumped on her and knocked her off her feet. But she activated very fast movement of her hands and chopped them into pieces. As soon as she finished with them, she immediately told everyone to pay attention on the walkie-talkie that the knee joint of the mechanical exoskeleton can jam when it is filled with grass. Their product was just destroying monsters and was shocked by what he heard. He immediately looked at its hinges and was relieved that they were clean. And he went further into battle with the thought that the probability of a wedge was very small. But as soon as he landed in the swamp, he immediately felt how the exoskeleton began to work strangely. As he carefully tried to get out, someone behind him started shouting that his exoskeleton had also failed and was calling for help. He screams for Teacher Lee to save him. She was just furious. She said, what a shame. In an instant, she simply exploded from the strong energy that rose in a pillar into the sky. The students were quite far from the teachers, but that pillar of incredibly strong energy was visible even from them. A huge fiery griffin appeared above her, radiating maddened power. She didn't want to, but she would have to intervene. Suddenly, her griffin let out an extremely loud roar and beams of light flew out of its mouth like bullets from a machine gun. With the speed of light, those rays reached the students and Sunyaya drew attention to them. And that super light just washed away all the monsters that were around the students. Now Sun Ya was... Suddenly, Duan Lian started screaming for help. He got stuck in the swamp and was attacked by monsters. In a moment, Jiang Rui turned to Teacher Lee for help because he was wounded in the leg and could not move. Safei didn't need help yet, and he didn't pay attention to others' situations. Because I was surprised when I saw Teacher Lee. Does he think that since she intervened, the situation is dire? Suddenly he heard some noise in the bushes and abruptly returned there. Ju catches him by surprise. A monster flies out of those bushes, and Safe manages to react and cuts him in two. But literally, a moment after that, a whole pack of monsters broke out from the same place. They simply kicked Safe and ran over him as a whole pack. Also because of that, his exoskeleton was destroyed. In this way, they gave him a good beating, especially his face. Later, they returned to the temporary camp. And they said that these are small monsters, but if they gather in groups, they are very dangerous. Some of them thought that they would never return to the camp. Teacher Lee said that the students themselves thought, why when they are such strong, exalted warriors, but they were defeated by a simple pack of monsters? She showed them the ranking. It had been less than 30 minutes and Wu Vu had already destroyed 63 monsters. Safei said that Meng Chao was telling the truth, because as far as he could remember, Wu Wu didn't wear a mechanical exoskeleton either. Safei is shocked. He said that only a few seconds have passed and Meng Chao has already become the third. Someone asked if it is possible to switch the Wu Wu camera from first person, because he wants to see how big the difference is between them. She, like a formidable tiger, waves her razor-sharp hands and slashes those monsters left and right, along with her beast. When they saw how she fights from the first person, they all felt sad, because they can't do anything like her. Safe, with a worried look on his face from not understanding what was going on, said that Meng Chao had already become the first in the ranking. All the other students were also just shocked because only two minutes had passed and he had destroyed as many as 50 monsters. Duan Luan offered to switch to Meng Chao's camera to see what tricks he was using this time. Others also said that they were interested in how the shame of the agricultural university achieved such results. They saw the toad fly at Meng Chao, and Duan Lian said that it was the toad strike that caused his exoskeleton to malfunction. Duan comments on Chao's actions. He says that Chao used a quick jump to kill that frog rather than it spraying poison. He said that it was useless, because they say that even if you kill that frog, it will still explode. He noticed that the angle of the blow, this is the first technique of wielding a sword in hundreds of battles, and he pierces her and kicks her at the same time. Duan said that he writes all his actions like a book. Chao then kicked to the left to push the frog to a safe distance, and as soon as the camera returned, it became clear that thanks to that kick, he dodged another monster. Duan asked in surprise, did Chao have eyes on the back of his head? 
Duan went on to say that Master Luo Wu wanted to know the movie about his new sword and that Chao should use it. Therefore, he suspects that someone is helping him to get the best shots. He offers to watch the video from the drone. The other students couldn't believe that Chao was participating in such an event. And Duan said that his other tricks can still be somehow understood. But the case with the werewolf monster, when he did not see it at all but dodged it, is already too much. Safe asked Duan, since they had reconciled with Meng Chao, why would he spread rumors about Chao again? But he said that he definitely did not claim that Chao was cunning, but simply suggested that he should see if he could. And he said that Meng Chao was so skilled and they would all be able to watch and learn from him. Teacher Lee herself said that she was interested in taking a look. She said to switch to the drone and turn on the radio at the same time to hear what Chao is saying. He started filming Chao and it was clear that Chao was just walking down the road. Chao walked and said that the monsters in the wild were nothing like the ones they had fought in the vicinity of Longchain. One monster hid in the bushes and waited for a good moment. There, the abilities of the monsters and the environment are perfectly combined, so the danger becomes much greater than in the concrete jungle of Luncheong. And as soon as he said that, the monster that was waiting waited for Chao to have his back to him and quickly jumped out and began to attack. But in an instant, the sword just pierced him. Chao did not even move, but simply raised his sword to the top and the monster charged at him. Facing them outside of Lungshen, when the warrior state is in panic, it is difficult to concentrate psionic energy and create a magnetic field to unleash a fatal blow at the right moment. Duan said looking at this, but how can he defeat them without a death blow? He doesn't think that Chao can defeat the monsters of the end of the world by relying on basic army boxing techniques. Chao heard what Duan said and said that he didn't know how to defeat doomsday monsters, but in front of him was a simple monster. Before him was a large frog with many eyes, and in an instant, Chao delivered a lightning strike to her weak spot, and that monster just flew to pieces. Chao said that they didn't need to use a death blow to destroy a simple monster. Suddenly, Chao heard a girl's voice. It was Sun Ya. She asked Chao if he could teach her how he destroys so many monsters in such a short time. Chao smiled and said that it must be a mistake due to the data delay. He said that the wounds he inflicted were not fatal. The monsters were still alive and kicking for a long time after the blow, and the drone counted the data only after the death of the monsters. Sun Ya said that there were so many monsters and the environment was so indecipherable. How was he able to precisely control the size and location of each wound he inflicted on the monsters? Suddenly, some projectile flew at him at high speed. And just unbelievable, Chao dodged this projectile. He said that once they learn the extreme style, they will also be able to control their bodies like Chao does. Next, Chao came across another monster and used the rapid dash technique. He delivered a clear and swift blow straight to the heart. He said they needed to dissect thousands of monsters and then they would know them as well as he did. Safei thought that Chao would now start bragging again. And Duan said, how will Chao explain that he bows in advance as if he knows what is behind him? Chao stood and waved at the drone's camera. He said that this skill is best in extreme style and asked the teacher to switch to the camera from the first person. He showed them his hand and told them to look carefully. After improving his extreme style, his sweet body control reached the maximum level. He can even control the knotted hairs on his body and at the same time his perception has greatly improved. Thus, regardless of the position from which the monster attacks, it can sense the gust of wind from their movement in advance and avoid the attack. Duan said that it turns out that extreme style is very good for escape, but it is not a decisive technique for victory. At the moment when Chao dodged the projectiles launched by the monster, he said that at the moment the extreme style lacks the decisive winning techniques, but it improves 1024 secondary channels that do not interfere with other styles to improve. Suddenly, Chao strikes with a sword that he did not see at the monster, and then he kicks him and he flies into the air. Immediately after, he activates a super strong killing blow and makes that mad blow with a sword. 
already with the use of superpower. He advises them to do as he does while the target is in the air due to extreme style control. He created a magnetic psionic field and applied a death blow. This fighting style becomes very effective. But in the end, they are all freshmen, and not all of them are geniuses like their teacher, Li Yingzi. Therefore, no matter how they train in real combat, they will not be able to cross the threshold of 80% of the effectiveness of a fatal blow. Teacher Lee told him that if he wanted to say something, he should not delay, but say it right away. Chow says that he knows that some people think of him as a mean and unprincipled guy, that he is weak in a fight. But in a real battle in thick fog, monsters are much worse than him. Maybe the extreme style is not very beautiful as they all thought and does not have powerful techniques. All students who saw and heard him carefully remembered what he said. But Chow told them the following. The extreme style would help them last on the battlefield the longest and help them survive, and thus they would be able to improve and contribute to the development of Longshen. Teacher Lee also listened to Chow with great interest and understanding. Chow told her that it would take some time for the equipment to improve the extreme style to arrive, but the changes in the fighting style could begin even now. Teacher Lee told everyone to pay attention. In the next battles, they should try to end the battle with simple attacks. The morale of those students who were wounded and their exoskeletons destroyed increased by an order of magnitude. They left unnecessary things at the temporary base and went into battle. Teacher Lee added that this is not an order, but a recommendation. In Tianfu District, Xiao Chiao and Mother Chao were watching the news. There they talked about the lake and the area of hostilities, that there were heavy rains and with the fog came many monsters. Due to the large concentration of exalted warriors, the psionic energy began to come into contact with the radioactive resources in the ground and under the lake, and therefore, there are now many monsters, and they are very actively changing from mutations. Xiao Chao asked her mother if she had heard any news from Meng Chao, because he had been at the front for three months and had never called, and Mom asked her why she decided to call him by his name. Mom said that even if her brother is not at home, she should still call him brother, and reminded her not to forget to take the container with food, because her brother always forgot it. She said he totally forgot to call the house, but he advertises extreme style on his account, so he should be fine. Xiao Chiao hugged her mother and told her not to worry, because when she became elated, she would bring him home and tie him with a string so that her mother would not worry. Mom said she knew she didn't need a leash to tie her brother up. Xiao Chiao then took her package and told her mother that she was going to school, but when she went out the door, she stopped and thought about her brother. And Mom was also very worried and thought that Chao should be alive and well. This is the road that leads to the Danuhu base. The train was speeding to the base to deliver important resources. And the monsters tried in every possible way to interfere with the train's arrival at the base. As soon as the train approached the bridge, fire was opened on the monsters from all the guns that were located on the towers. But in order not to take any risks, that bridge rose up at the very last moment and closed the gate. When the train arrived, it was covered in monster blood and had large scratches along its entire length, and the students went and unloaded valuable resources from the train. Chow was also helping out there and thought that after the torrential rains in November, not only did the surrounding area become worse, but the monsters also seemed to develop and improve faster. They diligently attacked the main road, as if they understood how important it is. The doctor told Chow to put that box in the tent with the wounded. Chow further pondered that the monster's intelligence was growing rapidly. They had even learned interspecies cooperation, and the number of losses among students is constantly growing. But the good thing is that the survival of those students who study the extreme style is much higher. He hopes that this small difference can become a butterfly effect that changes everything. Safei was happy to meet Chow because he and four of their friends want to complete a task in the dark yellow zone. Safei asks Chow if he mind going with them. Chow said with pleasure, let Safei contact him before leaving. Dark yellow zone, near the lake of broken stars.
Chao was the first to rush forward with great speed. Dun Luan said that he didn't want to admit it, but now that the monsters had become stronger, it was much easier to fight ordinary monsters with extreme style. Sun Ya added that in that unstable environment, extreme style is much more stable. Suddenly, Xiao Rui jumped up and ran in the direction Meng Chao was running. Safei told them to hurry and not stop because they wouldn't be able to see the road that Chao had studied, because he himself does not want to walk alone in that damn swamp. Sun Ya said that in this mission, they will keep an eye on Meng Chao if all goes well, they will take him to their team for the Tombstone Forest task. Safei said, to be honest, in his opinion, there is no need to consider Chao's level at all. Even a super monster is not a threat to him. And Duan Luan added that the extreme style is the most effective in saving lives. In the past three months, he had seen many fellow students who were wounded all over their bodies but alive because of that style. And Xia Rui added, Meng Chao is also a good reaper. Safei forgot about Meng Chao's skills, and Sun Ya told them to look ahead because Meng Chao stopped. They all stopped and asked him what happened in front. Chao told them to be quiet and listen. There were very strange sounds of the movement of something quite large. Sun Ya told them to be careful because it might be a snake-type monster. As it turned out, huge snakes with red eyes suddenly came out of the shadows. More and more of them crawled out of that dark place. There were eight snakes. They were mainly targeting Meng Chao. Sun Ya said things were bad because it was a group of broken bladed pythons. Suddenly, Chao jumped up and one of the pythons began to attack him. Safei shouted to Chao to quickly turn back because there might be a super monster among that group. And Chao told him with a smile not to worry. He wanted to try. While Chao was in the air, another python began to attack him. But Chao, thanks to his new strength, deftly maneuvered between them. And at one point, he smeared something from a special tube on the python's skin. And as soon as he did it, he calmly stood up. And one python flew at him to devour him, but Chao did not even turn back, but stood calmly. And in one moment, when there was a very small distance between Chao and the monster, the monster stopped. And he just leaned back and started making horrible noises. Safei was shocked, and Sun Ya asked Chao how did he do that. Those monsters curled up like a ball, tied their mother's hoods. And Chao told them that a little spirit technique, a little preparation in combination with a fast-acting drug that makes muscles harden, and those monsters became like that. Chao said that before they caught up with him, he had already met those pythons and sprayed them with more than 20 kinds of biological drugs in advance. He maneuvered between them and splashed right in their faces. Pythons look and the temperature can be masked with some drugs, and these biological drugs can paralyze the sense of smell of pythons. So when he approached them, there was no way they could detect that he was an enemy. Safei said that the skin of pythons is very strong like steel and its edges will be sharp. How was he able to insert the needle? Chao said that it was difficult to explain in words. He would rather show them everything. As Chao approached him, the python swung its tail, but Chao successfully dodged. He said, for example, he wants to take blood from the heart of that python, but not to cut it open. For that, he just needs to find a special round skin near the heart. By maintaining the correct frequency of vibration, they can easily push the syringe into the skin, thus penetrating deep into the heart and extracting heart blood. This is a special technique that few people know about. After the procedure, the python will fall into a state of long weakness in the wild. In this state, it will most likely be eaten by other monsters, and thus the number of monsters will increase. And to control the number of monsters that will appear as the fog thickens, Chao usually injects those monsters that cannot be brought to the base with a slow-acting poison that he prepared himself. His friends listened and watched his actions with great interest. The biggest feature of that poison is that it is very difficult to eliminate. It will gradually increase as the monster eats other monsters until it reaches a lethal amount. Safei said that if he could treat monsters like that, but if they accidentally killed such a monster and ate it. Chao said that this is the biggest plus of this poison. 
It is unstable to high temperatures. It completely loses its toxicity when boiled in boiling water for 10 minutes. Sun Ya said that Meng Chao was doing it so skillfully, as if it was not the first time. Chao said that only a tenth of the monsters he hunts each day are delivered to the base. Others will also be processed in this way and surprise the monsters. Were they all shocked that he only brought in a tenth of the cattle and his rating was almost the same as theirs? Chao sighed and said, What's the matter? Sun Ya invited Chao to go with them to clear the grave in the forest. They will definitely be able to become famous in that forest. Chao said with a serious expression that no, it is very dangerous. Dun Luan said that he realizes that his extreme style is not very strong against a super monster, but together they will be able to kill him. Chao said that they misunderstood him. He meant that it would be very dangerous for them to go into that forest with him. Safe wanted to explain something else to him, but Chao said that he had waited. He concentrated and began to listen. It seemed to him that he felt something. So he understood, but they did not understand him and were waiting for what he would tell them now. He turned to them and said that a super monster had come upon them. They were shocked to find themselves in such a situation. Such a meeting was not part of their plans at all. It really became dangerous. Chow pointed his finger in the direction of that super monster and said that about five kilometers away from them, he said that it was possibly the strongest reptile monster, possibly a snake super monster. Chow was so happy that after so many days of waiting, he finally appeared. And in a moment, they all jumped up and started running after Chow. Suddenly, as they were running, Chow felt something. He guessed that there was probably someone fighting this super monster, and he needed to hurry. And suddenly, for his friends, Meng Chow began to break away from his friends. Safei shouted at him, Why did he hurry up so much and not say anything? Sun Ya said that he must have sensed something, so they also need to hurry up to keep up. There was a group of warriors. They were badly beaten and scared. That super monster was getting a complete victory over them. They didn't have much time left to die. They tried to run away from him, but they did not succeed. It was a huge super monster that was spitting fire. They kept running away from it. That warrior, realizing that they were doomed, began to call for support. But the very second she stopped, a fatal blow was delivered. They left the goal of fighting a long time ago. Now they only think about how to survive. Suddenly, army soldiers appeared there. They shouted to those students to run away. That monster was huge and had super properties. But suddenly, help appeared, which they called and began to attack that super monster. These were special drones that were calculated in this type of fiery super monsters. They were both ground and flying. The monster immediately switched to them. Flying drones began to surround him from above. They stuck to his skin and started shooting a special laser at the shelter. That super monster roared with an incredibly loud roar from pain. Did the group, when they saw that, immediately think that they were saved? An exalted warrior rushed towards them like a bug. When he saw that super monster from afar, he thought that it was a fiery feathered dragon. To meet such a rare super monster near the lake of broken stars is a great luck. When the group saw that warrior, they immediately rejoiced that now they were definitely saved because it was Sui Shen. The drones continued to attack that dragon, but he saw some very fast movement in the distance. Sui Shen's robot car just flew by there and the dragon had already completely switched its attention to him. And suddenly that dragon began to activate the abilities of a super monster. The fire around him began to flare up very strongly. Sui Shen understood that he needed to think about exactly how to fight him, those flying drones began to melt gradually from that insane firepower. Those drones were Sui Shen. At the last moment, he wanted to call them back, but his signal could not reach them because the psionic fire of the feathered dragon blocked the signal and he could not control them. As a result, they simply caught fire and began to fall to the bottom. And immediately after that, that dragon began to attack. A ball of fire began to form in its huge mouth. And in a moment, the dragon spat out a jet of fire of incredible power in the direction of Sui Shen. Sui, very surprised that that dragon was able to predict his movement and direct an attack in that direction. He barely has time not to be roasted and is even more surprised, because the strength of the properties and the range of the attack do not match the data in the database about such a dragon at all. 
He wondered if this was indeed the dragon he thought of. Now his enthusiasm for the fight had diminished. And literally, in a moment, that long-range dragon was within striking distance. Sui Shen said that he also has a high level of intelligence in battle. He himself rushed to escape so as not to die now. Suddenly, he realizes that he will not be able to escape him in his war machine and decides to split up. He jumps out of his machine and orders it to distract the fire dragon. But that combat vehicle did not fulfill that mission because it was destroyed at the same moment and fell into small pieces. He understood at that moment that things were very bad. In the last seconds, he was thinking about possible options for how to do it. But I realized that in this situation, you can't come up with anything. So he decides to give him one last attack. And suddenly a huge cannon appears from his hand, the size of those installed on defense towers. And he uses that technique. The blue light from it even eclipsed the fire of that monster. It was a very powerful and powerful technique. It was called Fury Judgment and the explosive force just blew off that monster's head. And he fell to the ground and could not believe his eyes. What had just happened? He said that that beautiful opponent forced him to use his trump card. He is even sorry that he died from his super high voltage shot. But the smoke from the shot began to dissipate and Sui Shen's heart sank sharply. He thought that he was really alive. And in a moment he roared again with a roar of immense power and his energy fire flared up again even more strongly. Sui panicked. He couldn't believe what he was seeing. He had survived his strongest attack in the shelter. He no longer believed that it was a fiery feathered dragon. And that super monster dragon looked at him and was only even more angry. Suddenly, someone launched some projectiles in the direction of that dragon. That dragon was so alert that he had time to see them approach. When they exploded, they smoked his muzzle and he could not see anything. That group of students in Sui Shen were very surprised when they saw the one who fired those shells. It was Han Xing. He was a special student in the martial arts department of the military academy. He asked Sui Shen why that feathered dragon had brought him to such a state and where was his mechanized legion. Sui Shen told him not to worry because the psionic magnetic field near the lake created very strong obstacles for his technique and he would have destroyed that feathered fire dragon a long time ago. And those students got another chance for salvation. This time they think that everything will work out because Han Xing is a weapon genius and will definitely win because the magnetic field will not interfere with him. He said that mechs don't need to be classified as a combat specialty at all because they have so many limitations. A battlefield in a wild area where a large concentration of monsters has always been famous for its psionic magnetic field. Sui Shen started to get angry with Han Xin because of what he said, and Khan told him to calm down because he would disturb his wounds. Khan told him to just sit back and see how he would handle the monster. Meanwhile, the fiery feathered dragon was already at full speed attack and was very angry. Han opened fire with his pistols and fired a lot of bullets at the monster. Those bullets were special. When they hit the target, they exploded. Thus, they caused damage and plus, smoke appeared that obscured the monster's visibility. But apparently, that monster has already adapted to that smoke. And through it, its menacing eyes became visible. The monster began to attack and created a huge wall of fire. And Khan continued to attack and retreated to draw the monster's attention to himself. But suddenly his shots began to fly into the beach from the face of the monster. Khan was very surprised because his pools were specially designed for him and always hit the target. He didn't understand why the scorching sweat of that monster was changing the trajectory of his bullets. Han said, aren't his innate skills fire breath scorching stream and fire dance? Then he did not understand why he was healing so quickly. After a few minutes of fighting, the fire dragon seemed to stop feeling the pain of the shots and called to attack. Han continued to fire his pistols nonstop, hoping to find this dragon's weak spot. But after a few more minutes of fighting, he only began to retreat. Han yelled at Sui Shen to call someone for help because that monster was beyond the teeth of both of them. We need craftsmen nearby. Sui Shen understood him that the situation was difficult. Khan asked him to hurry because he would not last long. And what was the surprise of Han and this group of students when Sui just started screaming, save, 
save, save, someone save. Han fought off the monster and asked what the damn Sui Sheng was doing, and he answered him that he was calling for help in this way, because the communication does not work due to the interference of the magnetic field. Hei then told him to take those three and evacuate the place himself, and he would cover them. Sui summoned the reserve spider war machine, and in a very short time they arrived and were ready to carry out orders. He gave the order to the car that it was necessary to transport people, and special claws jumped out of it and began to grab those people. And he himself used the technique of unification, and he seemed to be stuck in that car. Sui told them to hold on as he would take them away from the battle. They were very thin, but one of them, who almost fell from that car, asked if there was another seat. And Hai said that now you can act without hesitation. But suddenly, a majestic, beautiful spirit with a sword appeared. A beautiful girl possessed that spirit. She appeared here on time. I must have realized that it was Xiao Jiang Jing, and she struck a super strong light cross. Monster also did not expect this and received a lot of damage. And in a moment, out of nowhere, Wu Vu appeared with her beast and she activated her poisonous claws. It was a really strong group attack. They managed to injure that monster. They gathered in three to prepare the next attacks. Those ordinary students were shocked because four super students from all universities had gathered there. They were already hesitating whether they should run away or stay and watch the battle. After they said that, Sui Shen just threw them away and said they were on their own, and he himself turned around and ran to those super warriors. She said that soon they will open an additional branch where you can hunt monsters. If they kill that monster, then get the right to go on an independent trip to a new place. I told Su Yu that he did not have a mechanical legion and if he doesn't pull, he can retreat. Sui answered him that he himself did not cause any harm to him, but he was telling him to retreat. They were ready for battle if the two couldn't handle it. Now they have the ability to combine attacks. Wu Wu was also in a good mood that they could fight together against the majestic monster. It seemed that the monster after each attack only became stronger and meaner. He quickly started attacking again. He struck with his tail, but they all managed to dodge. Who said that his bullets don't hit the target because of his field of fire so he can't hurt him? The girl with the sword said she would try to break it up, and she struck a super blow again, a shining cross. The monster saw that attack but didn't have time to dodge. That attack was quite powerful and it really knocked that monster out of rhythm. The energy blast was so strong that it flew in different directions over a long distance. Now that the monster is weakened, who can start shooting because nothing will interfere with him now? He used his full power and used all the weapons he had to precisely injure him. Dranok noticed the insane number of bullets fired at him, and he turned sharply and decided to burn them all with his fire. Sui Shang was happy because, thanks to that cross punch, that dragon's scorching flow was broken and he could now use his power. And in an instant, his drones began to crawl out of the forest and take off. Who said that he guessed that his friend would be ready? He said that he would cover them and let Wu Wu, Xiao, and Han get ready to strike a fatal blow. Xiao stepped back to allow the monster to focus on the legion of drones. They attacked him from all sides and the group had a few seconds to prepare the attack. And the girl Xiao started first. She struck a storm of swords. It was a very strong killing blow. It cut the monster's head off. Immediately after that, Wu Wu attacked with her beast. They tore his flesh with their poisonous claws to a deep wound. At the same second, Han jumped up to take a comfortable position, and he also took his fatal shot, which was aimed directly at the dragon's head. When he fired, a huge diameter laser beam burst out of that dragon's muzzle, and that monster, a feathered fire dragon, fell to the ground with a great crash, and it was very fantastic. It completely blew his mind. They all stood there and marveled at what had just happened. Girl Xiao said what kind of super monster was it that it took both of them super hitting at the same time to defeat it. Sui began to approach and said that he would see what was unusual about him. He began to move the place of the monster where the head was. But suddenly Vu Vu sensed something bad. She shouted to him to be careful. And just in an instant, some red worms burst out of that place. They immediately began to attack Sui. He was very surprised. But he was horrified when those red worms started crawling to his head. He barely had time to press a special button on his clothes, and his robotic legs took him away from that place with great speed, 
but the truth was that one leg was torn off by those worms. One of them shouted that it was terrible because the monster beast had become a zombie. She was shocked because usually monsters become zombies in six hours. Why is everything so fast this time? Now this zombie monster's fire has turned birch-colored, and its fur has turned white. He has completely transformed. His wounds have tightened and a new face has grown from the infected cells. His roar has become much more formidable. She was horrified by what she saw. They told their friends to retreat urgently. This zombie dragon is a hundred times stronger than when he wasn't a zombie, Sui said. What will distract him so that his friends can retreat? He has never seen such great and terrible power. That dragon drooled down on him. It landed on his mechanical machine and it just started melting. He was asking why that dragon's saliva was so caustic. So he decided to eject and send his mechanical machine straight into his mouth. There was a rather powerful explosion right in the face of that zombie monster. And that zombie monster didn't even blink during that explosion. Sun saw that there was not a single scratch on him after that explosion. He immediately began to report on the radio that the monster had become at least a third-level Nazetta. They couldn't handle him. And while he was talking, someone ran past him. It was Meng Chao he heard about the third-level stinger and was happy. He took out three power stones from his pocket, which were meant to perform different tasks. He was just looking for a place to test those stones. One was a fiery crystal core, the second was a frost stone, and the third was a crystallized demon. He immediately inserted them into that sword and eagerly rushed into battle. As he approached the super zombie monster, he began to launch energy attacks with swords at him. The monster immediately paid attention to him. Until now, his friends have reached that place of events. When Sun Ya saw this, she started yelling at him to run away from the Vitamta as fast as he could because it was a fire dragon zombie. They can't handle him. And Chao was just warming up and said that it was completely unnecessary. That girl was surprised when she saw that it was Meng Chao. Chao got as close as possible to that monster because he has such a fighting style. Yi Chao jumped out in front of that monster as suddenly as possible and swung to strike. And others said that how dare he fight such a monster with only swords and even at such a close distance. Chao reached his neck with lightning speed and delivered several punches. The monster tried to destroy it, but Chao dodged it with ease. The wound inflicted by Chao began to heal rapidly. Bai took a look at it and said, It's not bad and recovers pretty quickly. But he boldly goes on the attack and it does not scare him. He spins his swords with great speed and said that the regeneration of the monster is not fast enough for his sword. That girl was amazed that Meng Chao used two swords to restrain that ghost fire dragon and that monster only cornered the four of them. Chao began to maneuver very quickly near that monster, and those who saw it thought that the extreme style was so strong. As the dragon launched some sort of follow-up attack, Sun Ya yelled at Chao to be careful with that dragon's breath, and Chao stood and just barely dodged without even straining. And Chao's girlfriend said that Chao is specifically provoking the ghost dragon to release fire breath? Did she think he was using himself as bait for the dragon to release its venom? Sui Shen was shocked that Chao could fight such a strong opponent for so long, and behind her, Vu Vu was busy with her business. The fiery breath of the dragon grew into super-fast rays that would pierce through the body if they hit the target, but Chao expertly dodged them and stopped some with his sword. Girl Shaw couldn't believe her eyes, but suddenly she smelled what a very strange smell. She turned and saw what Wu Vu was doing. She asked her where she got the meat, she began to shout at Vuvu Vu that now is not the time to roast meat, and she replied that Meng Chao had come, so what was left for her to do but cook? Xiao's girlfriend said that they recognized the hive power of Meng Chao's extreme style, but it seemed that the two of them were at their peak with the monster, and the death blow will still have to be inflicted on them. But suddenly they saw that Chao was up to something. That dragon's cloak would change its mind, and Chao would hit it to buy himself a few seconds. By the time the dragon recovered from that distracting blow, Chao was already on top of him and preparing for the fatal blow. Before the very blow, he strengthened the special stones that were inserted into his sword with his psionic energy, and he struck him. But the flesh was already strengthened because the monster was spinning more and more. 
Chao understood this and therefore directed even more of his energy there, and his sword began to cut into the flesh of that monster. And towards the end, Chao used the maximum power and technique of demon taming. It was just a huge force he alone cut off his head. But not even a second passed, as the virus in his body became active. His friends shouted to Chao to be careful to the stomach of that monster, some kind of mutation again. And someone said that his head was cut off. Why is he still alive? Chao dodged successfully from those red threads and immediately started a lightning counterattack. He jumped to the place where those terrible threads grew from and pierced the center of that infection with his sword. And at the same moment, he applied the property of one of the stones and froze everything there. Then Chow jumped back and grabbed his two pistols. He started shooting where the core was because the frost didn't have time to freeze everything and some red threads were breaking through to the top. Juan was simply shocked at how Chow was able to perform such an operation in such a short time. He saw in Chow's action simply incredible skill, and Xiao's girl was surprised. What was more frightening was that his next reaction was as if he knew for sure that changes would take place in that monster in order to avoid injuries and kill that virus that appeared from the dragon. When Chao finished firing his pistols, he threw what was right at that spot. Chao turned around at the cold blast, and his friends guessed that it was liquid nitrogen. He would freeze the corpse and prepare it for harvesting. They were just amazed by what they saw. They thought that Meng Chao's extreme style was simply terrifying. Sun Ya said that they need to send that dragon to the base quickly because it will be a great achievement for them. Chao said that although he had frozen him, but under the stimulation of blood flowers, his cellular activity was still very high. There was a very high chance that he would mutate again when transported or turn into a biochemical bomb. That girl didn't know anything about that bloody flower. Chao approached the monster and wants to do something. He said that she must have heard of the blood herb, so the blood flower is its improved form. The probability of mutation after the death of the monster is as much as 50%. When Chao made the incision, those red threads immediately jumped out from that spot, but Chao deftly neutralized them. He cut off the tip of that thread and took it for experiments and that friend shouted at him from behind, how does he know how to do that correctly? Chow said he had seen it done, but he had seen it in a book. He asked, where did the three who were from the beginning go? Safay said that when they arrived, he saw three people running towards the base. Suddenly, Chow pulls out a large lump of flesh that looks like a heart. Vu Vu was immediately interested in what it tasted like, but realized that it was bad. But all this time, something was watching over them from the forest. There was a very large number of them. Chow thought that the defeat on the Eastern Front in a past life was probably related to this contagion. He said that this is the sclerodium of the blood flower. It can be called the heart and brain of the virus. Blood flowers are a variety of parasitic fungi on the monster's body. They constantly multiply and parasitize. The sclerodium is located in the middle of the monster, and tentacles extend from it and spread throughout the body. Sclatorium rapidly reproduces in the middle of the monster and improves its abilities to the maximum. When the colony becomes very large and exceeds the maximum level that the monster can withstand, it divides and produces a new sclatorium so that the monster does not die. That sclatorium that's separated is looking for a new monster nearby, and they will survive together until they become strong enough. Dun Luan was immediately wary, and Chao said that means there is another such monster nearby. And suddenly, Chao shouted to everyone to run. Hundreds of big and mad rats broke out of the forest. Duan Luan ran away, but asked, Why they are running away from you rats? They are not scary at all, are they? And Sao Fei asked him if he had taken a machine gun with him, or if he was going to kill them one by one. While they were running away, Chow suggested that girl improve her stamina with extreme style. Suddenly, someone from behind said that extreme style is very good. Chow looked back in surprise. Wu Vu said that the tiger has bad stamina, so she carries him because extreme style gives her better stamina. Suddenly, Duan Luan got caught on a rock and started to fall. Sun Ya and Sa Fei turned around suddenly to see that he had fallen. 
Those rats almost ran up to him, and he roared that he had broken his leg and called for help. Cho turned around sharply and said that he would save Duan Lian and let them get out of here. Chow said that he was also wrong at first, but now he will save him and they will be even. Duan was very happy. But in a second, Duan's face changed dramatically when he felt the sensation of flying and Chao's words that he would send him somewhere. Chao simply threw it with all his might in the direction their friends were running. He inhaled and exhaled several times before an important battle. Now he was left alone in front of a lot of rat monsters, and they began to attack. Chao braced himself and shouted, For the future of Long Chen! He said that in this life, he would not let those monsters succeed. Eventually, that group realized that the swamp rats weren't chasing them. Wu Wu stopped abruptly and thought that Meng Chao had not returned. Sa Fei was carrying Duan Luan in his arms, and he was complaining that Meng Chao threw him so hard that his whole ass hurt. John Rui said that the most important thing was that he saved his life. But how would Chao deal with so many monsters? Suddenly the girl Xiao stopped and asked Wu Wu why she froze and did not run further. But in a moment she saw for herself, she thought. Is there really someone in their world who can wield a sword so skillfully? These two guys also stood up and were shocked. For them, it's just superhuman abilities. Chao's technique sent those monsters flying in all directions. But all the same, there were a lot of them and they continued to attack. And Chao, as if in a state of meditation, was chopping them left and right. He did such incredible techniques that those monsters simply fell into piles in front of him. Yi Chao simply destroyed entire groups of rat monsters with one blow. He continued to do this for some time. He still had strength. But it seems that those monsters just piled up and attacked again. They said they did not value Meng Chao because people stared and opened their mouths when they saw such a thing. Wu Wu told her leopard to watch and teach because she will not always carry him. Then the girl Xiao said why they just stand there and watch. Well, to help Meng Chao. Chao's friends saw that group of warriors going back to battle. Suddenly, Dun Yan told Sa Fei to put him on the ground. He took out a syringe and injected it into his neck. He said that he doesn't care what people think about him because those five warriors are real monsters. He said that his self-esteem would not allow him to run away and watch others fight. And he began to dash towards Chao with that group. The rest of Chao's friends also said that they would join the battle. As a result, they all quickly approached Chao to help him. Chopped, the rats flew in different directions, but so far there was no end. Suddenly they began to grow actively in a chaotic order into something very terrible. As a result of such a combination, a big terrible monster came out which had several arms and two heads. In the battle, when the spirit girl Xiao saw those monsters, she said, What the hell? Those chopped rats began to unite en masse into those big mutant monsters. Dun Luan asked Chao when they would finish killing them because it wouldn't take long. Chao thought that they will never destroy them all because there is a parasite at the bottom. They need to find the main one with the sclerosium core and take it down. Then they'll be done with it once and for all. Chao stopped and concentrated on how to find the carrier of the infection. Duan was already being bitten. He was shouting at Chao not to just stand there, but to do something. Chao told him to shut up because he needed silence. He thought that he would not be able to detect the main rat by sight, so he will rely on his hearing and senses to find the rat that rules everything. He stood and scanned everything around with his senses, sorting through dozens of rats in a second. And suddenly, he managed to find the same rat that controls everything. He shouted to tell his friends that he had found the rat who was in charge. He was from the back of the group. Chao said that he would deal with you, Chief Rat himself. He quickly went on the attack and at the same time killed everyone who came across his way. In a moment, he had already reached that rat and was preparing to strike him hard. He said since she is taking care of other rats, then Sclerotium must be in her. Chao broke through all the ordinary rats and began to deliver a demon-taming superstrike and his blow with lightning speed chopped that white rat into several pieces. His friends and those who were in the other team said that everything was successful, that he was a great guy. Chao stopped and was disappointed. He thought that this was not the rat he needed. He thinks so because that rat was too weak, so the rats are controlled by someone else. And suddenly, a huge snake-like monster appeared. It was simply terrifying. 
Meanwhile, his friends continued to fight ordinary rats. Sun Ya also fought but noticed that Chao was in danger and shouted for him to be careful. That huge super monster started to attack Chao, but he managed to dodge. He realized that that monster is very fast. Now he felt real danger. He was not prepared for such a turn of events. Cho thought that usually the leader of the group is a member of the same species. Must have been the Rat King. And the leader of these swamp rats turned out to be a golden snake. But if the group faces a stronger natural enemy, a strange symbiotic relationship can result. Those swamp rats regularly gave that golden snake the largest individuals to eat, but they themselves multiplied quite rapidly. Therefore, that sclerodium motivated very quickly because he constantly had new food. Now he realized that those rats had lured him into a trap to the golden snake. Things were very bad because a lot of effort had gone into killing that dragon, and the last straw was the Rat King. He was disappointed because he had been doing so well, but now was he going to lose? And Vuvu and the others are still fighting with those rats and cannot come to his aid. Vuvu suspected that something was wrong, but she could not help him. That golden snake began to attack. Chao thought that either they would have time to come to his aid or he would not be able to stand it. He began with all his might to repel his attack, but it was quite swift. It's hard enough for him, he thought. That golden snake is quite a strong opponent. He had already managed to suffocate while dodging his attacks. Suddenly, the golden snake attacked sharply again, and Chao was barely able to repel its attack. He thought he probably couldn't dodge anymore. And at one point, the monster bypassed Chao's defenses and managed to grab him. Chao thought, what a troublesome monster. Chao was completely grabbed by the monster. He thought that after all, the extreme style could not provide continuous physical strength. First he chose the wrong target. Now it's too late to change tactics. The monster held Chao in a trance and headed towards him to deliver a serious blow. Chao thought that he would lose here. But suddenly, some chains appeared. They radiated strong energy. Someone wrapped that monster with them. Thanks to those chains, the monster was stopped and unable to move. Behind that monster, a big fiery bird appeared and a person could barely be seen there. It was Ling Chuan he was called the weeping god of murder he was with his majestic phoenix spirit. Chao immediately thanked him for coming to help. But then he realized how strong this warrior came to help them. For many years, he remains the best graduate of the agricultural university. That girl noticed that the strongest divine level had come to help them. Now they don't have to worry about the outcome of the battle. Vuvu was no longer interested in any. That super warrior started to attack. He told all the students to move further. He used a majestic technique, one of the strongest in his arsenal, to kill that golden snake with a single blow. And then, in order to kill him accurately, and at the same time destroy all the rats at the same time, he used a technique that is available only at the highest level. Huge tongues of fire filled that battlefield. That stream was incredibly powerful. All those endless rats were destroyed in an instant and the previous warriors had to fight them for a long time. The tentacles were retreating from Chao because the monster was already dead. Chao said that in order to achieve such strength, that majestic warrior himself had killed more than a hundred falcon-type monsters and collected their spirits. Chao simply admired him because whoever reaches his heavenly level can simply fly in the heavens. He fell to the ground and killed the last rat that had miraculously survived, said it was over and told the students to come out of their hiding places. Then Chao came up to him and greeted him. Chao could not believe that he really had no friends. He said he knew who he was, that his name was Ming Chao, and that he was from Tianfeng District. He told Chao to rest, and they would talk in the car. Suddenly, a huge car drove up very quickly. Chao said that he was very surprised to see such a cool tracked vehicle. He said that it was a car of the Red Dragon Army. They would probably fight him again for taking it. In that car, the hatch opened and there were other warriors and reapers. They said that there are a lot of monsters here and no wonder those guys had a hard time. They quickly needed to check if there was anything important from the resources. They said that the most important thing was to find the sclatorium of the bloody flower. 
But as soon as they looked closer, they said that Lin Chuan had burned and chopped everything so badly that it would be difficult to find anything there. But suddenly Chow takes out an item and he said that he collected a sclostorium from a past monster. Those professional collectors were shocked that he could collect anything in such conditions. When they looked at the condition of that resource, they were very surprised because it was in perfect condition. They told Chow that he had accomplished a great feat. It would greatly help them in their experiments. Chow smiled and told him to do what he had to do. Lin Chuan said that he saw how Chow dealt with the first monster and how skillfully he fought the rats. It was very good, but he didn't know that Chow was also such a skillful collector of valuable resources. Lin Chuan said that Teacher Li told him about Chow, that he was very capable and even stronger than he was in those years. She asked him to share his experience with Chow. Chow dared to say that perhaps Teacher Li was interested in him as a man. Everyone who heard was a little surprised by Chow himself that he thought of such a thing. Chow decided to say how much he respects and exalts Lin Chuan. He said that he had been following him ever since he was in school. For Chow Lin Chuan, he was the pride of his school because he also studied there. They went to the car together and Chow said that he didn't think he would be so easy to talk to. Lin replied that he should stop praising him because he was getting embarrassed. Three months passed, Chow trained with Lin Chuan. It was Cho who used the majestic super kick thousand moon technique. Lin praised Chow because he didn't expect him to master the thousand moon kick technique so quickly. Chow said that he was very grateful to Lin for giving him two swords that were made from the spines of super monsters. He was also grateful that Lin had taught him a new technique as he felt that his strength had increased fivefold. He told Chow that weapons are good, but there are more important things. Chow needs to learn how to amplify his psionic energy with real emotions. He needs to understand which emotions resonate best to amplify the energy. And Chow asked him if he was leaving already. Lin said that he had been recuperating at this base for a month, and now he had to go to the Tombstone Forest for further advancement. Chow asked him if it was necessary to do this in such a hurry, because he had only recently been cured, and now he was rushing into battle anew. He said that poor boys like them who had no support. They always rush into battle to improve even more and reach the top. Chow asked Lin if he might have psychological trauma because he keeps saying that he was poor. Lin said that it was time for him to go. They would talk more when the mission was over. Suddenly Chow froze because he saw something magnificent. A huge flying cruiser flew up to them. It was called a flying castle. It was owned by the Qingtian Corporation. Chow was delighted with what he saw, saying that the levitation technology was very cool. There was a corporate logo on it. Chow was even more excited because it was a symbol of strength. He remembered that that corporation was one of the most powerful forces in luncheon. For him, it was, it would be good to establish relations with them, with the help of Lin Chuan. And Lin himself stood and watched without emotion, because he did not like everything, because he grew up in a poor area. When that flying castle came down, the ground began to shake from the vibrations it gave off. In a moment, the huge gate opened and lowered to the ground. There was a red carpet. Chow thought that this was some kind of show of power. In a moment, a beautiful girl came out. It was Liu Xia, one of the heirs of King Tian Corporation. As soon as she saw Lin Chuan, she ran to hug him. And Lin told Chow to introduce himself because it was Liu Xia. Chow looked like a third person there, and she told Liang that she missed him very much. Lin told her to listen to him, and he said Meng Chao was standing there for her to meet him. And she said that she knew that this was his little helper. She hoped that she had not disturbed them. Chao thought about how his teammates felt in such situations. And when Chao heard that she called him a little helper, he felt sick altogether. Inside that castle in the air, everything was filled with the latest technology. The crew members of that airship were there, looking strong and having fun in their spare time. They looked special, not at all like ordinary dragon army warriors. They looked very brutal. Suddenly, someone told them to stop being delusional. It was that girl. She said that the whole team had finally come together. 
She will now talk about a goal that is suitable for such an outstanding team. She said that the main goal in a large operation near the lake is exploration and extraction of resources. But recently, there have been many cases when monsters were infected with a very complex parasite, the blood flower. Their scientists conducted thorough research and found that the sclerotia contained particles of red jade. She said that it was thanks to Ming Chao, who was helping Lin Chuan, that they managed to collect the perfect samples of the blood flower sclerosorians. And Chao felt very uncomfortable at that moment. She said that in the new zone where the battles will begin, a lot of such monsters were discovered that are infected with the disease Sclazoria. They conducted experiments and discovered that there are very large reserves of red jade underground. Those soldiers were very surprised when they heard all this. That formidable warrior woman said that probably not only their group knows such information, there may be other groups in that forest looking for that valuable resource. She said that everything is like that, but their corporation has already sent several search parties to that area, and the biggest advantage is herself, because she was born with a very strong sense of psionic energy. That martial girl was surprised because that girl is one of the very few people with such qualities. With such skills and truth, it is very easy to find underground resources. Another advantage they have is Lun Chuan. Not only is he a four-star heavenly level super warrior, but he has been fighting monsters in that particular forest for several years and knows it very well. And the third advantage is those soldiers, because they are already veterans and masters in various fields. They complement each other, and a very great power is obtained. Therefore, taking into account all the arguments, she believes that their team is invincible. She gave a very good speech and raised the morale of that team. Chow was worried that there might be a lot of monsters boosted by the blood flower in that place, and that group is quite small. He thinks it might be quite dangerous. Lin Chuan said that such a schedule of events was unlikely. He said that in the very epicenter of the resource, the radiation becomes very large and it is difficult for monsters to survive there. Also, a risk is always present, but the strongest warriors are always born climbing out from under mountains of corpses. That girl asked Lin Chuan if she could talk to Meng Chao because she had a matter she needed his help with. Lin told them to talk while he went to check on the preparations of the resources for the mission. She asked for his help to provide a reliable reaper. His level might not be the highest, but so that he could protect her if needed. She turned to some reapers, but they were busy. Chao asked her what she meant by the words, not a very high level. She said that the psionic energy is very concentrated in those caves, and like Lin Chuan, they are afraid to operate at full power due to the risk of interference from the magnetic field. On the contrary, the exalted of the first or second star act quickly and clearly. She said that their mission is very important. Its outcome depends on whether humanity will lose many lives or not. Chow thought that in a past life that attack turned into a soap bubble, but he does not think that it is connected with the underground psionic channels. But he does not know for sure whether that mission is connected with victory or defeat, but if he does not join it, he will definitely be very sorry. Chow told her that he didn't think any of the first star reapers would be stronger than him. She said that she immediately thought of him, but that mission would be quite dangerous and she didn't know if his mentor would agree to let him go on that mission. Chow immediately understood that she was thinking about him, but specially waited for him to propose his candidacy. Chow said that beating millions of people depended on that mission, so he would quickly go to the mentor and ask him to let him go. Then she said that she would wait for news from him, and at the expense of the contract and the award, then she would not offend him. Lian Chuan told Chow that he shouldn't agree because she uses people like them, and Chow asked him what he meant. He said she was looking for people like them without connections and strong friends, and she herself is not very influential in that clan. This mission will just show her true place in that clan. Chow said that he didn't think too deeply about the subject. He just wants to fight alongside his idol and asked to be given a chance to do so. Lin Chuan was silent at first and then said that Chow would regret his choice. 
Three days passed and the flying base arrived at the temporary base in the Tombstone Forest. They were getting out of that flying ship and that girl said that some had arrived at that base before them and had already explored the area, so she offered to meet them first. They were met by special soldiers. They looked very strong and self-confident. When they got there, the man said that their group was late because two search parties had already gone into the forest. She said that she knew everything, that they did not know where to look. That warrior said that he was not interested, he was only interested in them being safe. Suddenly, Chow came up to them. That warrior told him if he rushed, he would not be able to save his life. Chow smiled and said he would take care of himself. That warrior stared at Lin Chuan and told him to take better care of his friends. And Lin told him to mind his own business because the people who are with him do not concern him. 